this is Coach Red Pill, and I'm here with Mr. Medeker, also known as the Internet Aristocrat, also known as Jim, a legend in the YouTube community. And he's been very kind to me and has very thoughtfully and, and kindly agreed to um, have a conversation with me. And hopefully I won't be one of his Tumblrisms. That's that's all. That's my minor hope. That's that's all I can hope for in this conversation. <laughs> Jim, how are you? I, I'm doing fantastic. Uh, just uh, getting over the slight end of a cold, so my voice might be a little bit, a little bit, a little bit off. But uh, aside from that, I'm doing great. Well, yeah, but you have to take the right drugs. See, you take the right drugs, and it'll be fine. <laughs> Well, that, that there you go. Yeah, I, I, I'm loaded down with Sudafed. So, what better way to start the day, kind of thing? Yeah? Nyquil and Sudafed. I mean, that's that's what I'm on right now, as a matter of fact. So, good to know. Good to know. You know, uh, uh, <laughs> it's got a powerful kick to it. <laughs> yes, it does. You know, that, <laughs> the the Green Goblin really works. Don't you know it? Yeah, it, uh, <laughs> it'll knock you right on your butt. Yep. Yeah, yeah. That's why they call it the Green Goblin. Anyway, uh, I'm so glad that you're on, and in all seriousness, it's, it, you really are a legend in the YouTube community, and I wanted to jump right into something that I think that uh, I personally am very interested in hearing your opinions as to where you think YouTube is going, because, you know, we've all heard about the adpocalypse, we've all heard about the, the restricted stuff that's been going on, and I'm genuinely interested in what your views are in so far as the future of the platform is concerned. Um. I guess my vision for where the future of the platform is, I think what we're seeing is a kind of a, a muscling in by corporations that were kind of more in the realm of television. Mm -hmm. um, I think that's not just advertisers. I think that's the, the actual television companies that are producing content. And I think they're looking for ready-made platforms that they can just easily move into that have a pre-installed base. Um, and I think kind of with the adpocalypse and just YouTube in general with their terms of service and kind of their guidelines and where they're going, I, I think they're trying to ready it up. I think we're going to see a very bizarre merger of um, kind of older media and newer media with them trying to shift on over into it. And I think that's going to push out a lot of the independent people that were looking for the, I, I guess, advertising model to pay for them. Um, when I kind of look at uh, television stuff, numbers are down. I mean, most kids, most people, when they want to watch some entertainment, they're, they're going online to do it now. They don't want to watch television. Uh, even if you're looking at uh, television shows presented online, you know, even through separate platforms like a Hulu or a Netflix or whatever. But I, I think a lot of these companies, they look at YouTube and they think, you know, my God, all these, the demographics that are hitting that, you know, we're talking prime numbers, right? The, the real people that we want to hit, the 18 to 35 year old male, the, the, the money demographic is there. So it'd be great if we could just move in. So, I mean, you see deals with, um, was it Casey Neistat, the one that did the CNN one for 25 million? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, yeah I, you, you I, see, I, they bought the audience. I mean, I, I see no other reason for that deal. Right. So, I mean, you've, you've got these kind of uh, people getting set up um, to kind of be stuck around. But I, I, I don't know. I just, I don't, I guess, have, uh, I, I think if you were a YouTuber right now, and you thought, I'm going to use the same kind of model that people use the last three or four years, where I'm going to make a bunch of money doing ad revenue, mm -hmm. and I'm going to grow my audience, and I'm not going to have any you know, real opposition. Maybe I'm not saying anything super offensive, but just a little bit edgy. I, I think that's those days, those days have passed. Um, you need to find an alternative model to pay for your, for your brand, I guess. You can't, you can't rely on advertisers to do it for you. I would certainly agree with the first part of your uh, of what you said that the, the corporate media seems to be rolling into YouTube trying to co-op the audience that uh, pretty much came to YouTube via word of mouth and and, and embedded videos over the last uh, decade and a half. Or when would, when did YouTube start? Two thousand four, and uh, so yeah, uh, yeah, that 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 seems eminently reasonable, and that of course shows the success of YouTube as a platform. Uh, regardless of whether it's making money for Google or not, um, it, it's getting the eyeballs. And so the corporate media is clearly losing out an audience, and so they're moving to YouTube. The thing I object to, insofar as YouTube is concerned, is something that I objected to the generalized economy, which is, you see, you have the centralization, a monopoly, basically, uh, of one platform for an entire industry. And that, I find, is exceedingly dangerous. Uh, because, you know, there's VidMe, yes, of course, but VidMe is a very, very small platform when compared to YouTube. And realistically, there's no co uh, competitive uh, uh, platform that can, you know, e even comes close to YouTube. And we see that in just about every sector of the economy, not just online stuff. And so I, I object to that 
on principle because I think that the lack of uh, diversity the, in, in terms of options for businesses are, is very bad because you have what happened with the apocalypse. YouTube just decided that, you know, no more ads for you guys, and that was that. No appeal, no way to compete, no way to jump ship and go to a different platform that would offer a better deal. No competition, which I think is bad. Now, so I think that you're absolutely right that they're all coming to this platform and that YouTube is becoming the monopoly of online content. Uh, um, I think also, and I agree with you, that the ad revenue, the, that gravy train is gone. I don't think that independent producers are, are, are going to be able to, you know, take advantage of that. Sorry about that. Oh, it's the police. Okay. They've come for me finally. Oh, oh no. <laughs> they've, they've tracked you down now. They? Yeah, they, they have. But anyway, you know, in the few minutes before they come to arrest me, but, you know, they're British. They'll wait while we finish here. Um, no, I'll, I'll I, them. I, yeah, well, you know, they're, they're nice. They don't even handcuff you when they arrest you, you know? Like uh, last night when they arrested me, what? no no handcuffs. You know, they were just, please, sir, you know, get up off the ground, clean off the vomit, get in the car, please. You know, it was like that. Anyway, um, no, kidding aside, the, the, the issue of... The adpocalypse, uh, you know, it, it, the ad revenue is not coming back to the independents. That, that seems clear to me. And uh, I, I think that YouTube just realizes that insofar as the smaller content creators, they don't have to share the revenue. Where are they going to go? Uh, even, even people you would think are relatively large, I mean, that have maybe a million subscribers, where are they going to go? I, 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 that's the thing. And so I think YouTube with the adpocalypse realized, hey, we're not paying them any more money, so we don't have to pay them any money of the ad revenue. We don't need to share it with them, and they're not. Um, but I think that they're going to share it with some a privileged few, such as Casey Neistat, such as the Young Turks. And so, like, I think that my vision, and you tell me if you think I'm, it's wrong, Casey Neistat is trying to do, like, sort of like pretending to be an indie, even though he's a part of CNN, Right. Uh, I don't know if you saw recently, he, he had sort of like a little bit of test video of like the, what this new news organization that he's doing with CNN is going to look like. And it looked very DIY, you know, like almost on almost purposefully naive and, and childish looking, right? To, to really accentuate that DIY, DIY, uh, do it yourself, DIY rather. <laughs> Oh man, I'm I'm dumber than I realized. Um, DIY <laughs> no, I aesthetic, that, but you, you see I, what I mean. I, I think hmm? I, I think I know what you're talking about. Um, there was a marketing campaign. Uh, God, this was uh, it's really famous. It was actually atrocious mm -hmm. by uh, Sony when the PlayStation Portable came out. Right. Called all I want for Christmas is a my or all I want for Christmas is a PSP. <laughs> okay. And it was a viral mark. It was a viral marketing attempt uh, mm -hmm. to make it look like some underground hip hop uh, duo that lived in this crazy New York apartment. And uh, all they wanted was a PSP for mom and dad, so they <laughs> did a, a cool rap video with like moose heads on the wall and step ladders for no reason and like slinkies everywhere. And uh, somebody, you know, easily figured out that this was Sony trying to viral something. And uh, it was just, it was so cringy. It was so bad when they tried to do that. Like, if you have the money, just. Use the money to make yourself look like you, you 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 want the thing to look good. Don't try to do the, oh man, I'm just you know I'm just one of you guys. I'm just uh, I'm just a regular Joe, you know, with my uh, with my handheld camera and my cardboard set. I mean, come on, nice set. You got twenty five million dollars. <laughs> yeah, you, exactly. You you can afford to make it look nice. Yeah, exactly. You know, I mean, you know, actually, that DIY aesthetic is looking so cheapy that it's it's looking like he's greedy. That he's just not wanting to let go of any of that twenty five million to add a little production value right. to his thing. You know, I mean, yeah. But uh, I think that more and more of that kind of bullshit lying uh, 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 media approach is is going to proliferate. I mean, because I think that the corporate suits figure that, oh, you know, it has to look crappy, but they don't recognize that the content itself is honest. For instance, I always think of Shoe, in he Shoe, Shoe on Head. Uh, I think that her, her videos look crappy as hell, but there's something oddly compelling about her. But it's not because of the crappy way that she films the thing. It's, it's her. I mean, she's got that, that uh, she's, she's interesting, and that's why you want to watch her. But I think that the, the corporate people are sort of like copying the wrong things. I don't know. But uh, be that as it may, you, you would agree, I mean, you said, and I agree with you, that uh, the, the advertising revenue is not coming back for the indies. What do you think is going to happen? Oh, no, that, that's gone. Yeah. yeah. What do you think is going to happen to like the medium-sized people like Philip DeFranco? Because frankly, uh, Philip DeFranco is, is, 
I see what he's trying to do, and I'm really looking forward to what his project is going to turn out to look like, but I think he's not going to make it. I mean, I, I hope I'm wrong, but I think that with the adpocalypse and the fact that they're not giving him any ad revenue, I think that he's screwed. Uh, what do you think is going to happen to mid-sized guys like, like DeFranco? Now, when you're talking about DeFranco, he was the one that was talking about starting up his own site, right? Or am I right. thinking somebody else? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was the one. Okay. Yeah, he... he okay. He, like, he basically... Yeah, that, to... that's, uh, that's a pipe dream. I'm just going to be honest. I mean, I know that's pessimistic to say, but um, I've seen people attempt it before. I think TJ, the Amazing Atheist, tried to do his own video sharing platform mm -hmm. uh, that lasted all of eight months before it just shut down and everybody got angry. Yeah. Um, and I've seen big corporations attempt to do this. Yeah. Uh, uh, you know, you talked earlier about kind of uh, how monopolistic YouTube is, right? Right. Or at least Google is in owning this one kind of video platform delivery system. Nobody else can really touch it right now. Right. Uh, Stage six was around. Uh, they were backed by Divix, and Divix, you know, had a lot of money. I mean, they, they were basically going toe-to-toe -to -toe with Hollywood when it came to DMCAs, and uh, they had high-definition video, you know, no limits on uploads. It was a really, really big site with millions and millions of users. Um, and this was right around the time that Google had bought out uh, YouTube from the original owners, mm -hmm. um, and and Divix folded. Mm -hmm. Now, granted, there, there were reasons for it. I mean, they had come up with some ridiculous boardroom uh, fight that led them to kind of go down that decision. But e even at that point, it was a losing proposition. You know, looking at kind of the the money that it was draining from them. Yeah, it was just insane. There was no way they could, even if they worked out a deal with Hollywood, even if they got the DMCA thing re resolved, even if they got advertisers in there, they had a deal with Yahoo for installing you know their search engine that kind of stuff. Didn't, didn't come close to covering the cost of even running the site for a month. I mean, it was just, it, they were just losing money. And, and another thing, too, I find really interesting, um, kind of talking about the monopoly aspect, uh, was it in the, uh, it was like late 80s, early 90s, that, uh, and I was talking about this last night, uh, Bill Gates was getting hammered. Uh, you know, I remember Reno, he was getting like a million dollar charge a day, right? Because they were upset that he was pre-installing his, a browser on a computer with his operating system, and they thought that that was unfair. Right, yeah. But we, we're, we're looking at Google now, right? Mm -hmm. Who not only is going to make their own laptop, install their own browser, but then they're going to own the search engine you use and the website you go to. Yeah. So how is it Gates got hit for millions of dollars a day for doing what he did, and Google seemingly walks away unscathed, or excuse me, unscathed for doing something that's much larger than that? when it comes to kind of a monopoly. Well, what's happened is that ever since the 2008 financial, global financial crisis, uh, the regulators have been just gelded. I mean, they're, they're not doing their jobs uh, because they actually don't dare. Because, uh, like for instance, in the banking sector, all of the banks are, if, if they were actually audited, they'd be declared bankrupt, okay? Um, I mean, if they were audited on the up and up and not with inflated prices insofar as the assets that they hold in their... In their uh, uh, and their capital cushions. Um, and this goes into antitrust. The antitrust is completely gelded and it, because it, they're too big. They're simply too big and Google is too big. And Google is now so big that it would be crazy for the DOJ to go after them. They don't dare uh, because uh, they've been co-opted. And so, but that's, that's another conversation. What I'm interested in, you did a really great video uh, about CNN, I mean, you were fucking, and I, I completely agreed with that. Okay, and I mean, they were they were basically blackmailing this um, uh, uh, Han asshole solo guy. Uh, yeah, I, I don't think anybody needs to go over. It. I think everybody knows the story. And if you don't know it, go out and Google CNN blackmails a person, and you'll find all you need to know. So, um, you were really deep into Gamergate. Uh, I'd ask you two things. Would you mind doing a, a very brief recap of Gamergate? And I wanted to ask you if you feel that, because my sense is that Gamergate was sort of like the canary in the coal mine insofar as uh, the press pushing a narrative that is different from reality. So could you like recap uh, yeah, Gamergate? Well, and Go ahead. Uh, sure. Uh, Gamergate kind of started when information came out about a, a certain indie developer and the relationship with uh, people in the gaming press, not just... Uh, developers, but people actually reporting on things. Mm -hmm. uh, they had, had a relationship, they had dated, they got positive coverage because of it, um, and you could kind of see these backroom dealings. Uh, people got upset with that, and they, you know, there's a whole backstory too to people being upset with kind of a narrative being pushed in gaming press for years before that. And so it was kind of like the the tipping point, I'd say, for people getting upset enough to say, you know, what enough of this. Uh, but it, with, it was in, I'd say, within one month of that uh, that you really saw collusion 
because not only did you find out that there were backroom chats where all of these different um, journalists got together to talk about what they were going to cover, they all almost on exactly the same day released the same article saying, uh, gamers are dead. Mm. You don't need gamers anymore. You don't need your audience. They're terrible people. And it was so bizarre to see, you know, 20 or so different outlets all say the exact same thing at the exact same time. Which is exactly what and, happened um, with Milo Yiannopoulos and the whole uh, pedophilia accusation. That that stuff that, that when he was on the Drunken Peasants, that had been around for a while. I mean, over a year, I think almost two years. And then all of a sudden, over one weekend, bam, they all went after him. And all of the stories were all lined up to totally obliterate him. Uh, uh, y- y- you see why I see the parallel between Gamergate and the current media environment. Well, what what uh, floors me is I heard that that was you know they the sixteen year old sent the tape and kind of thing, but I also heard that there that was part of opposition research, mm-hmm. which floors me it, because I was hearing the number bantied about that you know about a quarter of a million dollars was put into trying to take Milo down through opposition research, Jesus. and if you're telling me that they spent a quarter of a million dollars to find two publicly available YouTube videos. Uh, how lazy are these people? And where do I get that job? <laughs> yeah. You can pay me two hundred fifty thousand dollars. I could have shown you. You could have given it to Milo. He could have shown you the list. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. that, that was up for uh, the the drunken peasants was up for a year and a half, and the Rogan interview was up for about seven months. Right. And yeah. it, it, it's amazing to me that they finally were like, "Oh, look, here this is." Mm. Um, you're, but you're right. It it was uh, it most definitely was coordinated. Um, they they saw kind of Milo, and they didn't like him, and they were looking for something they could really nail him with. And when they got their hands on, you know, the, these two interviews, and they could take the um, the context of some of the things that he said and put it together, and be like, "Here you go," and uh, thought it was going to have a, a big effect on him. Uh, one of the interesting things, though, is from you know what I understand. I mean, even though Milo has been deplatformed from Twitter, even though he's gone from Breitbart, if you go look at his Facebook, he's got like two and a half million followers on there. Really? So, he, he, yeah, his popularity is enormous still. I mean, he you know he's doing his book release, he's starting up a private media company. Um, so their their attempt to completely destroy him, I don't think, has succeeded because I think they've underestimated his pull and his appeal, especially kind of within the the group that, that uh, follow him or are interested in him. But it, it definitely was coordinated, uh, at least getting that information out there. And oh no, I believe it was opposition research, and I, I believe it was intentional. Oh, and no question that it was coordinated. My my the the thing that I find interesting is that it, it's exactly what happened with uh, articles you were saying about Gamergate, where they all came out with the same articles where. It's basically as if the press is uh, uh, pushing a narrative and they are all working together and they all agree on, on just about everything and they are trying to distort reality for their uh, readers and viewers, for their audience. Uh, they're basically gaslighting. And, and I'm like, how do we stop this? Because in a real sense, Gamergate never ended, right? I mean, you still have these gamer journalists who are still pumping out this crap. I don't really follow games, so I wouldn't know. So I'd have to ask you and defer to your judgment. <laughs> I mean, but is that accurate? I mean, are they still around, the same old people, and still pushing the narrative, as it were, that differs from reality? Well, yeah, this was just one of the problems, too, uh, kind of when dealing with game journalism is, uh, they leave one site just to move to the next one. But since everybody knew each other mm-hmm. and there was no real professional boundaries between corporations and individuals, um, it, it just became a game of musical chairs. Oh, I'm not working at you know Kotaku. I'll just move over to Rock, Paper, Shotgun. Oh, I'm not working at Rock, Paper, Shotgun. I guess I'll just go over to Destructoid. So it was just kind of, you know, shuffle over here. But we all know each other. We're all buddies. We can all do this. Um, it, it doesn't surprise me that, that that kind of behavior is there. And it doesn't surprise me that you'd see that in mainstream media. I mean, even, you know, if you look at the, is it Project Veritas videos where he's going out and, yeah. you know, getting all these uh, clips and stuff. The interesting thing, it, it le- you know, the, the thing I found most interesting about that wasn't even what was being discussed. It was the fact that all these journalists were hanging out at the same bars. <laughs> like, that you, you know, really, that you could go into these bars in, you know, the area and all of them were just kind of there having drinks together and, you know, bullshitting with one another. And, it, it you know, it makes you wonder, well, how friendly is everybody? Do do they all just hang out and drink? Do they, you know are they friends? Do they go to ball games together? Do their kids hang out? Uh, you know, what, what exactly is a relationship between people at CNN and the Washington Post and New York Times and MSNBC? Uh, how close are they? Because those relationships, I think, determine narrative spins and media pushes. Mm. And uh, you know, it, it, yeah, I, I definitely do see the parallels. I, I see what you're talking about. Um, and it, it's just. Uh, 
it, it, it's creepy, and, and it kind of goes back even to what we were talking earlier about, kind of with CNN and Nystat and kind of pushing into YouTube and wanting that platform. It feels like they, they know their, their, I guess, pull isn't as strong as it used to be, mm-hmm. and they think if they emulate what's popular now on the platform that's popular now, that that will bridge the gap and fix it. Yeah. The reason I was asking where the gamer journalists were now and how the relationships between gamers and, and the audience for, for those publications and those journalists, what the relationship was now, because I was wondering if if there is a clear uh, parallel between the two events, that is Gamergate and, and the relationship with the journalists and now the current MSM and CNN and all that crap, I wanted to see if we could perhaps extend that, um, that analogy uh, and see how the relationship has evolved or if it stayed the same, whereby the gamer press is still pushing a bullshit narrative, SJW narrative, or, or politically motivated narrative, and the audience is still there and sort of like passively sucking it up, you know? Because, I mean, I, I, I don't know, because like I said, I don't really follow gaming. I, I don't quite understand gaming, to tell you the truth. Uh, I, I've... I agree. I think. Mm-hmm. Uh, Go ahead. I, 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 oh, I'm sorry. I, I think what we're seeing, um, and I think this was going on even before Gamergate, and I think this might even play a little bit into the MSM thing. Um, but I, I think what we've seen uh, with YouTube, especially as a platform, where you had game journalists who wrote about and reviewed product, right? And they release information. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then you saw all these independent people kind of come up uh, let's players, reviewers, people like Total Biscuit, and so on. Uh, and they started kind of drawing away that audience. Um, and I, you know, I, I think that there's a parallel there, uh, with mainstream media and we're seeing alternative media. Mm-hmm. I think the same thing's kind of happening. Mm-hmm. Uh, but when you're, when you're looking at the gaming press, no, it, it really hasn't changed to be honest. I mean, it's still just as bad as it was even after Gawker lost the lawsuit, mm-hmm. you know, with Hogan yeah. and people backing them. Um, it just got sold to a new, oh, oh God, what is it? It's the, um, the Spanish. Yeah, Univision. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, but same people. Same people yeah. still kind of working there. Same articles still coming out. Uh, you know, they're still they're still talking about the same stuff. Yeah, um, none of that's changed. And I, I think um, I think they're angry to be honest. And I think they were angry for a while to begin with because they see this platform and this audience being drawn away, and they're like, "How can they do that? Why why are they getting that that um, that heat? Why is, why are people being drawn to it?" Uh, so no, nothing. Nothing changed. They stuck to their ways. Uh, I think they're still just as bad as they were to begin with. But are the audiences um, because they smaller? never really? Yeah, no. That uh, and uh, yeah, I'm sorry. I'm kind of meandering. I think I blame that on the Sudafed. <laughs> um, but but um, I think the audience were o- the audiences were always shrinking. Okay. People want content delivered from people they connect with, and yeah. game journalists uh, just have kind of lost the plot. Yeah. And the guy that they're watching making the funny jokes with the goofy voices on YouTube is m- more interesting. Yeah. So they want to get their information from them. And I think that's the same with the mainstream media. Do I want to watch Anderson Cooper? No. Or do I want to, do I want to watch somebody on YouTube who will tell me basically – the same informational facts, if you could even call CNN giving you anything like facts, but <laughs> will give me the same informational facts, but they'll do it in a funny way, or they'll do it in an entertaining way. And I think I think television's losing that audience too. Yeah, uh, yeah. It, you know, it plays into everything really. Yeah, I I, I think that the, the mainstream media is is they're they're just playing their cards very poorly, and also. Uh, look, it's you were mentioning before how all the journalists hang out at the same bars. I don't have a problem with journalists all hanging out at the same bar. What I do have a problem with is that all of the journalists think the same. That is the problem. That there is absolutely no diversity of viewpoint. You know, because uh, that's the thing that drives me up the wall about the left and uh, social justice warriors and and all that. They keep pushing diversity, but it's a superficial diversity. Oh, you're black. Oh, you're brown. Oh, you're yellow. Oh, you're white. You know, United Colors of Benetton. But at the end of the day, that means nothing. It's what's in your head and how you express it. And that lack of diversity of opinion, that lack of viewpoint diversity just drives me crazy. Because when you have just a single point of view, you are going to uh, you are going to get hit by reality hard because you start believing your own bullshit. If you have somebody who believes different, he's going to challenge you. And by challenging you, your position becomes more robust because you you wind up shedding that which is not effective, that is not reasonable, that is just ridiculous and stupid, and clinging to that which is harder. And Nassim Taleb wrote this great book, uh, Anti-Fragile. Uh, I don't know if you've heard of it. Um, I would suggest you read it if you haven't. Uh, Anti-Fragile is basically the notion that when something is uh, uh, put under stress, it becomes stronger. 
for instance, uh, the skeleton structure, or the bones, right? The more you exercise and the more duress you put on your bones, the stronger they get, the more healthy they get. The problem I'm having with the press now, the mainstream media, is that since they all think the same, they all see the world in the same way, they, nobody is challenging their views and therefore they're becoming not merely complacent but soft. And so when they see different realities, they can't react. The election of Donald Trump is, a, is the perfect example of that. They didn't see it coming. They couldn't even conceive it. I mean, even, even to the final days, they were laughing about the possibility of a Trump presidency. You know, I'm not a fan of Donald Trump. I think he's a moron, right? Though I have to admit that between, you know, between Donald Trump and, and, and Hillary Clinton, I preferred Trump because at least he wasn't going to go to war the second he took office, unlike Clinton, who clearly wanted that. But that's for another conversation. My point is, the press didn't see how popular Trump was because they were all thinking the same, going to the same bars, talking the same shit. And, you know, and I think that that's the problem for, for audience members such as you and I. We don't, you, you know, we, we, if we'd gone by just the mainstream media, we would have been just as blindsided. And a lot of people obviously were blindsided. I mean, you saw all those reaction videos of people <laughs> having a complete meltdown over Trump, as if Trump were an actual Nazi or, um, you know, whatever, you know, as if, as if the day after the election, you know, stormtroopers were going to march down Pennsylvania Avenue. I mean, it was insane. I mean, it was just, I found it incredibly well, amusing. It, it and, and the spooky thing for me, and the thing I've always wondered about is, you know, do I want to attribute to the press the fact that they're idiots? or that they're more malicious than I might expect. Uh, when I look at the reaction to Trump and them saying consistently throughout the election, he has no opportunity. He'll never get the Republican nomination. He'll never get the presidency, right? Right. It was a, a message they consistently said on every single network. Um, now, is that just because they're so out of touch and they, they're they so high on their own farts, they don't know what's going on? Mm -hmm. Or or did they think that we have such power? I, I think, you know, honestly, I think they knew he had a better chance than they were letting on. And I think they thought if we just keep saying he doesn't, will sway opinion and make it happen. Wow, you're more cynical than I am. <laughs> Hang on just a second. Hang on just one moment. So anyway, um, no, I, to, 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 to go back to your point, I think that the mainstream media was not necess necessarily malicious, although I think that there were some people who had a shrewder idea of what was going on. Though I do believe that the actual Hillary Clinton campaign was completely convinced, truly gaslit by the media. I think that they really and truly it didn't even have an inkling that Trump was going to win. I think that they, they cruised into this election thinking that all they had to do was spend money and divvy up the, the electorate like had worked in the 90s and so far as, you know, market testing different messages for different groups. And, uh, you know, they, they ran a great campaign for 1996 and, um, and, and, and they lost. And, and they didn't address the, the, the concerns of most people, which is jobs and, and the economy and, and the fact that most people aren't making ends meet. And, and that's the thing that drives me crazy about, the, um, about the, the, the Democrats. By the way, I'm going to be doing in, in about two, three weeks, I'm going to be finishing up a really, really big video. And I'd appreciate if you if you give it a plug when, I'm, when I have it up. It's called The New Democrats. And it's about how... The, the, the Democrats in early 90s, right, they saw that they were losing elections. They lost to Reagan badly uh, twice uh, in, in 80 and 84, and they lost again in 88 uh, to George W., uh, George H.W., rather. And so in starting in the early 90s, what the Democrats essentially did, and which is also what the New Labour Party did in the UK, and uh, renovated socialists in, in, in the European continent and in South America, is that they all essentially co-opted neoliberal economic policy. And so what you have now is that everybody believes in neoliberalism, that is free movement of capital, low taxes, uh, um, you know, unrestricted uh, movement of labor off sea, uh, offshore, rather, uh, you know, the hollowing out of the manufacturing base and the idiotic belief that a service economy is a superior economy and a more advanced economy than a manufacturing economy, which is just dumb, you know, because, but it doesn't matter what, why it's dumb. The important thing is, see, both parties, the left and the right, though they espouse superficially different aspects insofar as social policy, insofar as their economic policy, they're all in agreement. 
And it is this economic policy that has hollowed out the middle classes and the working classes and created a, a, a hollow economy where you have the top 10, 20% of the populace doing very well, especially the top 1%, the top 1% of the 1%, they're doing extremely well. But everybody else is you know, going down the tubes. You have the top 20% doing well and the bottom 80% with nothing. And it was that bottom 80% that voted for Trump, you know, I mean, uh, working women, uh, uh, poor women, they all voted for Trump, and they voted in huge numbers. And so the whole, you know, vote for me, I have a vagina thing just totally backfired on, with Hillary, because she wasn't giving them what they wanted, which is, you know, meat and potatoes. And my point is, and I'm rambling here a bit. Uh, but <laughs> that's fine. But my point is, see, the Republicans and the Democrats are pushing right wing economic ideology. And the entire population has been led to believe that this is the only way. Uh, and everybody talks the same. They say, oh, you know, I'm socially liberal, but fiscally conservative. But th th that's the, the, the economic policies that we have are hurting our society. They are hurting the society in the sense that young people are graduating college with a huge debt load. Uh, because of neoliberalism. This was predicted in 87, you know, the, the famous Bennett hypothesis that, you know, when you, when you allow more government grants and more student loans, uh, the, the universities are going to suck up that money and, the, and the, the one who's going to pay for it in the end is going to be the student with a huge debt burden. This is exactly what happened. It was predicted 30 years ago. You have all these students graduating with all this debt, so it means that they can't start families until they're much older. They can't buy their first home until they're much older, if ever. Uh, you know, and everybody's living paycheck to paycheck. And this is a rep recipe for poverty because poor people tend to remain poor because they are not able to build a sufficient capital cushion to, to take more risks and, and save more money and, and go up the socioeconomic ladder. And so my thinking is that both parties believe the same economic policies, and there's nobody questioning this. And I'm not saying of going to Bernie Sanders socialism. I think that's stupid, but there is a different way to go about it in terms of decentralization, in terms of closing up borders and, and all the rest of it. But going back to the, tying this back into what my original, the point I wanted to make is the mainstream media still dominates the discourse. And therefore, nobody is hearing any kind of alternative view as to how our economy and our society should be. It's only what these MSM people sell us. And, and, and I think that that is a recipe for disaster for the society. Uh, yeah, I, I must have sounded like a fucking loon with this <laughs> rant. But I mean, it, I get no, very no, hot no, on the collar that's... about it. That, that's fine. Let me, let me try to unpack it a little and just address a, a couple of things. Um, I, I agree with you. I think Hillary ran a campaign that was 20 years too late, yeah, right? Um, I also think that the Democrats, uh, particularly with Clinton and Obama, uh, tapped in not just so much with their messaging towards kind of middle class, working class, but also I think there was a, um, a kind of a luster or a PR that they put on it, and they saw that worked really well. Yeah. You had Bill Clinton playing the saxophone on late night TV. You had Obama being hip and cool on the internet. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And that, that really helped them. And I think Hillary thought, I'll just do the same. Mm. But she found out she was vastly uh, unpopular God. with people online, and it did not work out for her. No. Um, when you talk about economics, uh, you know, I, I agree. I think that uh, a lot, you know, everybody's getting a college degree. It devalues a college degree yeah. because now what makes you unique. Mm. You're leaving with a uh, forty thousand, fifty thousand, eighty thousand dollar debt, and now you're paying that off rather than uh, getting a home. Yeah. Rather than starting a family, rather than uh, you know being an entrepreneur and and beginning a business. Yeah, exactly. Um, I think the, the the really scary thing that's coming down the pipeline is autom uh, you know automation and uh, oh, mechanization. Yeah. Yes. I, I, you know, totally agree. You're, you're going to start to see industries get completely wiped out. I think it'll start with the service industry, really, with uh, counter working people. Yep. You see stuff like automated grocery stores run by Amazon, kiosks replacing workers at McDonald's. And I think for about five or so years, people will be like, well, it's not a big deal. It's just those are just uh, jobs we don't really care about. Mm. They'll find work elsewhere. But when you get automated driving, when you start getting you know, taxi cabs, when you start getting uh, long haul truckers, when you start getting UPS and FedEx and the mail, 
using automated driving in you know combination with a drone to deliver it to your doorstep, you're going to see a lot of work disappear. Yeah, and it's, the, these political parties had really better. I think, uh, to be honest, a lot of people had really better start to look at that 20 year window ahead of us, because we're talking millions and millions and millions of people who had a profession for a very long time now having nothing. Yes, exactly. And that's 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 a scary thought because when you get millions and millions and millions of people already in debt because they, you know, just got out of college yeah. or already in debt because of, uh, you know, a bad economy and they just lost their profession and they have nothing else they can do, that's when people start getting angry. And when people start getting angry, things change very, very quickly. Yes, it does. You, you mentioned automation. I'll tell you something. I'm from Chile. And uh, about a year or so ago, I was up in a mine in the north of Chile. Uh, I went to see it. You know, it was like a touristy thing. It was pretty cool, actually. Anyway, you know these huge mining trucks? I mean, you know, to get into the cab to drive the thing, you know, you have to climb these stairs. And it's like, it, mm -hmm. it's as big as a four or five-story building, okay? It's a huge monster thing, <laughs> They're right? huge. Yeah, yeah. And it's really incredible when you stand next to one. When you're standing next to the, the, the wheel of it, okay, and, and the tire of it, right, and, and your head reaches... It's lower than the axle of the wheel, okay? And you're like, holy shit. That means that this we this whole thing is, you know, 12 <laughs> feet in diameter. You know, holy cow, right? Do you know that they're all automated? They are all computer-driven. There isn't a person driving these enormous trucks. And I'm talking about 30 of these trucks in one of these big mines, right? They're driving around, you know, controlled by a computer. And, you know, they have zero accidents. Zero. You know, they, because they have this thing down to a science, and it's just like they, they move from here well, and to there. I love that. Uh, hmm. I, I love the counter argument too. I get when I bring this up to people uh, because they'll say, "Well, the technology's not there yet. It Satellites is. are too unreliable. How would you how would you handle it? Are you kidding me? Companies, if they can save money, will innovate. Yes. If satellites are an issue, they will find a ground based solution. If it's going to save them a nickel in the long run, they are totally going to do it. Why wouldn't they? They want the most profit possible. Exactly. And so my point about the truck, and the reason I'm mentioning it. And do you know that truckers are one of the largest, if not the largest, employers of people in the United States? Of, of you know, what's going to happen with all those, uh, you know, two million truck drivers are out of a job? Where are they going to go? You know, because right. if they're doing it in these, in these enormous mines, right? How long do you think it's going to take before they're doing it on trucks on the Interstate Five? You know what I mean? And it's it's inevitable. And and my my concern is that we as a society are not thinking through these issues enough because these are issues that are going to affect all of the western democracies and we're going to have all of these unemployed people and like you said where where are they going to go what are they going to do you know and you know the, uh, the rich people are talking about you know zuckerberg and people like that are talking about a basic income right what you're going to have like whole swaths of the populace on the dole and just sitting and watching tv and getting fat like uh, like like in wally -E. do you remember the movie wally -E? Where everybody's just right. fat as hell, you know, and, and, and floating along and they're doing nothing except drinking soda. Is that is that our destiny as a society? I mean, come on. Well, how, how, how does that not terrify people? Zuckerberg personally terrifies me. Mm. I don't like the idea of a, a man who owns that kind of a platform who has information access like he does to metrics and data of people's personal lives using that. One for his presidential campaign because he's going to have incredible messaging. I, 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 I don't think he's very personable. I don't think people like him very much. No, he's an autistic uh, but, asshole. But yeah, go ahead. Right, but but he he's got the power of information. Data is power. Data is money. Yeah. And he's boy, does he have it when it comes to uh, how am I going to run my campaign? But when you, I mean, we're talking about a really bizarre situation. Yeah, do we want to create a generation that's going to grow up and basically be debt ridden from college? have no possible uh, occupation, and have to rely on government entitlements handed out from the guy that runs their social media website. Yeah, exactly. I, right? <laughs> that's you know, basically what you're saying. It's, it's fucking yeah. out of... It's, it's crazy, you know? And nobody's saying anything. Everybody's like, uh, oh, you know, free market, you know, live and let live. It's, if it's not hurting anybody, it's okay. I mean, fuck that noise. I mean, I'm, I'm sorry. You know, I get really hot under the collar when this libertarian shit says that, you know, the markets will decide. See, from my point of view, the market is a tool. It is a tool for a society to allocate resources in any given industry or market, right? It is not an end in and of itself. 
It is a tool to help a society, to help our society, be a better, more just society. Howsoever you define better and howsoever you define more just, right? But it's not an end in itself, okay? It's, it's like sex. Sex is great, but it is a means to an end. You know, have a kid. It's not, you know, you're not fucking all day. You know, you're, you're not attaching a, 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 you know, mechanical vagina to your dick and walking around all day with it. No, it's, it's, a, it's for a certain period of your life, but there is more to your life than just that. And there is a purpose to, to it. I, I, I hope that you understand the, the, the metaphor, the analogy that I'm trying to make here. You know, it's, well, it no, sounds I, insane I, 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 now, that, now that I hear it. You know what I mean? Yes, um, uh, I as swear. As far as like a free market goes, I, my opinion on that is any system which you create, regardless of what that system is, will be abused by a person if they can. Of course. And I'm all for, for you know a company trying to make the most amount of money they can. A free market, that's all great. But let's be honest: if there were no regulations at all, if I was running a business, I'd cut corners all the time. Why wouldn't I? Uh, of course. If there wasn't some kind of regulation or oversight, you're going to get uh, you know messed up chemicals in your shit. I'm going to sell you stuff that's dangerous. I don't give a fuck because I'm making more money. Yeah. Yeah. All right. And, and that so you need some kind of oversight. There has to be some kind of oversight, at least some regulation. Well, I always think to of make it... sure that companies don't go crazy. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. Uh, like for instance, a, a, a specific example. Have you seen that Coca-Cola now? It used to have. I don't know in the states actually. I haven't been in the states in a while, but in Europe at least. Uh, you have Coca-Cola, and it's Coca-Cola Classic and Coca-Cola you know, sugar-free, right? But the thing is, see, you can no longer really distinguish the bottles until unless you're really looking for it. Before, at least in Europe, it used to be really shiny and clear that this was the, the sugar-free and this is the uh, Classic, right? But now you can't tell the difference because the chemical that they use to sweeten, to art the artificial sweetener that they use for the, um, for the zero-calorie Coke, right, uh, it's cheaper than sugar. So that's why they're using it. That's why they're pushing it, right? But here's the kicker. It turns out that, and this was, a, this was in last year, uh, some medical investigation, that they realized that that chemical, that uh, sweetener, artificial sweetener, uh, yeah, sure, it's zero calorie, but it blocks some enzyme or something or other from acting in your colon, and you actually get fatter from drinking the sugar-free soda than drinking the, the, the regular soda with sugar, right? So it's actually detrimental to your health to drink the sugar-free one. And and you know so let me let me let me guess Coke after hearing this information thought instead of addressing that issue let's go start a weight loss company so we get double the profit we'll make them fatter <laughs> with our diet Coke without the sugar and then we'll sell them the weight loss kit that'll get rid of it well I don't know but I would if you told me that Weight Watchers uh, major shareholder was Coke I would not be surprised. <laughs> But but like <laughs> double down, yeah. Yeah, but uh, I I don't know about that part. But what I do know is that the regulators aren't doing anything because they're saying, oh well, the sugar substitute is is FDA approved, so it's okay. But it, it's making everybody fat. I mean, come on, you know this obesity over the last twenty years. I haven't lived steadily in the United States since two thousand one, right? But you know, I re visit periodically. And holy shit, I mean, doesn't everybody see it? It's like um, somebody came with a pneumatic uh, pump and just plugged it into every man, woman, and child in the country and, you know, put in, a, a, a you know, about at least 10 more PSI per person. You know, I mean, holy shit, everybody's like a little Michelin man. What the hell is going on over there? Well, yeah, and the crazy thing, too, is, I mean, everybody's become so sedentary. They don't want to go and do things anymore. Going outside is not entertaining. Let's stay home and use our uh, a device instead. Um, and, the sh I mean, hell, that even plays back into the work. You get all these jobs automated, you know, all this manual labor, and those jobs are gone now. I mean, everybody's going to get fat now. Yeah. You know, there's not going to be a skinny person left in the country because they're all going to be sitting at home waiting for Zuckerberg to uh, DM them their <laughs> entitlements. Yeah, yeah. Let me ask you something, uh, Jim, like seriously. Okay, like how, mm -hmm. uh, let, let's assume for the sake of the following that this automation shit is going to happen and a lot of people are going to be unemployed, right? Now, how would we go about absorbing that um, unemployment? And, and this bullshit that, you know, the, the market will take care of itself, that's nonsense. Because uh, we outsource the manufacturing base insofar as like steel and metallurgy and mining and so forth and so on out of the United States to third world countries, Vietnam, China, India, and so on. 
and all those metal workers in the United States that are out of the job and, and they're, you know, pushing my jobs if they're lucky. They're greeters at the Walmart. I mean, their fate has been horrible. I mean, the, the fate of the blue collar worker in the industrialized economies, the former industrialized economies of the West is, is catastrophic. So the issue becomes what happens with this new round of automation? Are we supposed to prohibit that? Or what do you think would be a way to absorb all that unemployment? I mean, this is a genuine question. Yeah, um, I don't think that it's going to be prohibited. Uh, I, it, listen, anything that's more efficient, cost effective, and gives a bigger profit margin, a company will fight for, and they will eventually win on. Yeah. I think there's going to be a lot of pushback, and I think a lot of people are going to be mad, but it's going to happen. That's the reality. I mean, we can try to fight against it, but what are we fighting against? We're fighting against progress, right? Yeah. Um, it, it's just it's just the way of the world. As far as what happens to all these unemployed people, I, you know, I see one of two things, you know, a, a brighter path and a darker path. Uh, you look at history and you see any country which exists, which goes from having a somewhat acceptable unemployment rate and debt rate to suddenly a massive debt rate and a huge amount of unemployment. And you know what happens. Yeah, revolution. Think, I mean, exactly. I mean, there's, that's the end result. Mm -hmm. The positive bright path that I see is we open up new industries. We have to come up with something that's completely unique and completely different than what we're doing now that isn't manufacturing-based or service industry-based or technology-based. What that is, I don't know. Maybe it's space exploration. Maybe we need to start just dumping money into that and training people to do all sorts of jobs related to rocketry and space hub stuff. I mean, I know that sounds really futuristic and far-fetched, but we're kind of on the cusp of it. I mean, personally, I think that space is going to be a big industry, and I think the nation that takes advantage of it first will be the one setting the, the tone for history for the next century. Um, so, you know, you've got people like, um, oh my God, I'm, I'm blanking on his name, SpaceX. What's, what's his uh, name? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, Elon Musk. <laughs> you've got Elon Musk, and you've got NASA right now, too, even Trump talking about it. Uh, there's a lot of chatter going on about, you know, maybe maybe we should go to Mars. Maybe we should go to Mars. Maybe let's go back to the moon. Maybe we should make a space hub. Maybe we should do this, that, and the other. Um, I know there are companies that are talking about buying the spent, um, uh, oh, my God, fuel rockets, mm -hmm. you know, the ones yeah, that yeah, fall yeah, back yeah, down, yeah, yeah. And, and using them to make, like, space hotels. Like, uh, they're already there. Why not go up, refurb them, reattach them, make a little atmosphere, and start flying people up? Mm -hmm. um, I, I God, I hope that's the, the salvation at the end, you know, uh, that, that might be coming, that, that we can create a new industry uh, just for the purpose of creating a new industry and hope that we can build something off of it. I mean, there is value to be made. You have tourism, obviously, with something like that. You, people obviously are excited by exploration, uh, mining potentially in the future if you can do it really well. Uh, but I think we're realistically at the point where the idea of having a strong manufacturing base no, it's gone. Uh, in a country that, that's, that's gone. And it really is terrible. Yeah. It really, honest to God, is because it, it was such a keystone. It was such an important part of not just the national identity in an economy, but just for an individual's life. You know what I mean? Yeah. To have a job that you could have for a lifetime, a skill, a trade that was yours. Yeah. And that is going to be ripped away from so many people. So is it going to be that dark path or is it going to be that bright path? And it really is kind of up in the air right now as to which way it's going to go, but I'm a pessimistic person, and I see people putting off the inevitable until the very last minute because people like the path of least resistance. So I think that, you know, 20 years from now, we're going to see people in the streets. I agree with you. I tend to be also very pessimistic. So maybe it's not such a good idea that we're talking about it because by the end of this conversation, we might say, oh, yes, tomorrow the dark ages start. You know, I mean, like, <laughs> but uh, in all seriousness, um, there's something else that we haven't discussed. We talked about it a little bit briefly insofar as automation is concerned. It is reasonable to assume that in the foreseeable future, next 20 years, 30 years, perhaps 40, but on the very outside, we will see some sort of artificial intelligence. I mean, like full sentience. It's reasonable to believe this if we just go backwards, as it were. This is the year uh, 2017. 40 years ago, in 1977, uh, uh, the technology we have would be inconceivable. Uh, the technology that all of us have, that we can access just going on spending a couple hundred bucks at the, at the Apple store, you know, or $400 or whatever the, the latest iPod, uh, iPhone is, you know, we have to access to a technology that is inconceivable, that wasn't even theoretically possible in 1977. So it is reasonable to conjecture that within the next 40 years, if not less, 
some sort of artificial intelligence will be fully conscious. Howsoever you define consciousness, uh, what's going to happen then? What's going to happen when you're going to have machines replicating themselves and perfecting themselves? Uh, you know, what's going to happen to people, as it were? I mean, I, I know it sounds crazy on the one hand. No, it, it, it doesn't actually. I mean, that's, uh, oh God, what is it called? And I think the singularity. Game, uh, yeah, the sing game. singularity. Or, or, Oh no! But I was I was going to talk about the machines making themselves. I, I think a game actually used the same name. I think it's Grey Goo, which was the nightmare scenario where you have like nanites mm -hmm. that can self-replicate and are intelligent, and then just eat up everything, and there's no way to stop them. Yeah. and it just covers an entire world. Sure. Um, my hope, genuinely, as far as artificial intelligence goes, is that we get dumb AI first. We get semi-smart machines, mm -hmm. uh, so we can kind of cope with and understand how we're going to handle. Because that's going to be just a world of shit for everything, right? You're going to have uh, ethical and moral debates about if it's sentient, if it's intelligent, do we have the right to use it for work? You know, can Google make an AI that's intelligent and then force it to help you find porn on the internet? You know what <laughs> yeah. I mean? Or is it, or is it, or is it holding it hot? Yeah. Or is it abuse? Um, is it machine abuse? Well, and the scariest thing to me too is chances are. Uh, you would hope a university would be the first to develop it, but chances are a corporation will. Oh, absolutely. And if that if that corporation develops that AI and mistreats that AI, and that AI is smart enough to use the you know the technology around it and get loose, it's going to be pissed off, and it's going to be looking for a little revenge. You're talking Skynet scenario. Um, not necessarily. I, I think that's one thing that sci-fi authors have always overestimated, especially like the Matrix, Skynet, that kind of stuff is you can't say, well, we're going to have artificial intelligence, they're going to be sentient beings, and then act like they're always going to act on the same accord and have the same goal. I'm just saying that, you know, maybe this particular individual AI doesn't like the way that, I don't know, Coca-Cola developed it, <laughs> and is really angry about the sugar-free stuff that it's adding to its drinks. So maybe it gets loose on the internet and sinks, it to the, you know, sinks some stocks or shuts down a power grid, throwing a tantrum. I mean, crap, who knows how AI develops? Maybe, it, maybe it'll grow like a child. Could you imagine how terrifying that would be, a teenage uh, mentality, artificial intelligence with access to really powerful shit? It would I, be I, horrifying. I've got two toddlers, okay? A two-year-old and a four-year-old, okay? If, if an AI had their mentality, I'd be shitting bricks, okay? Because he, <laughs> right. <laughs> right? <laughs> because have you ever seen a two-year-old throw a tantrum? Jesus Christ, you know? I mean, I, I don't even want to think about that. So, so, well, this is... Well, the, the, uh, the Animatrix actually addressed this. They had a short in there um, talking about kind of before the Matrix, mm -hmm. what led to everything going to shit. Yeah. Um, and it's spooky. It does kind of parallel what's going on. What you had was rapid development of technology and automation. Artificial intelli or intelligence gets, you know, uh, developed. There's the back and forth fight. And then basically what happens is the AI kind of goes off and makes their own little version of like Israel. Mm-hmm. But the problem is they're machines. So they're faster than us. They're smarter than us. They can develop quicker than us. And basically they outcompete us economically. That's what starts the war. Oh, really? So they basically, yeah, they, they make cars cheaper than us. They make products cheaper than us. And they can pump them out. They don't have to take, you know, they don't yeah. sleep like we do. They don't have the biological needs that we do. We can't compete. And that get, makes the human governments angry because their economies are going to shit because of it. And that's where everything goes. That's where everything falls apart. That really was one of the main pieces of what started, at least from my understanding, from that short in that movie. Really? Oh, that, that's interesting. That, that's that's really fascinating, actually. Uh, because yeah, I, I used to have that. Uh, I have it somewhere, but I remember watching it, but I didn't pay that much attention to it, or I don't recall it that well. Uh, yeah, because it was part of like uh, some DVD extras or something like that. Yeah. Yeah, they're like they're like nine shorts, but if you if you go back and watch, you'll see it. They're, they show clips of it where they're making like they show the advertisements for like zero zero nine, the brand new car, you know, and they're just just pumping them out massively. Their, their economy explodes because nobody, no human, can compete with that. Yeah, yeah. Well, my thinking at, at this to, at this point in time, this is how I see things shaking out in in the short term, as it were. I think that more unemployment because of more automation. Uh, the AI, you know, we can talk about it all we want, but in the end, we, we don't have the AI yet. Once we have the AI, that's a different story. However, a parenthesis to this. You've seen, I'm sure, the um, videos of Boston Dynamics and their robots that they've created for the military, right? 
<laughs> you mean the killing machine that sounds like a beehive <laughs> when it comes running at yeah, you? Yeah, that, that scared one. Shit out of me. That scared <laughs> the <laughs> shit out of me. Yeah. Happy thought to leave you with or, or to just stick in your head, you know. Imagine AI with that shit. You know, holy shit. Like imagine right. like a whole herd of those fuckers, right? I'm talking like 10,000 of those bad boys, right? And all of them armed with machine guns running at some army. I don't think a human army ever could resist such a, such a machine army. I mean, I don't think it would be a contest if that were ever to happen. And, and again, you know, on the one hand, you say, that, you say this kind of stuff and it sounds insane and I sound like an idiot. But on the other hand, it's all there. All these pieces are lying around. We're just waiting for somebody to come along or something to come along and start scooping up these pieces and putting them together into something, you know, functioning. You know, I mean, because right because those robots exist. You know, I mean, like holy cow. I, you know, what the first time I saw the Boston Dynamics robots, I I couldn't believe it. I, I looked at it and I thought to myself, that is a future soldier. That's what a future soldier is going to look like. You know, I, I, you obviously must have been as impressed as I was with them. Oh, yeah. No, I, I've been paying attention to their development. I mean, they, they've come leaps and bounds uh, from where they started for, uh, you know, uh, sm smoothness of movement, turning radius, speed, battery life, uh, maneuverability, getting over different kinds of terrain. Like, it's, it really has come quite a ways. Um, yeah, those are going to be weaponized. Uh, you know, I think the next big war we see is going to feature a lot of drones and a lot of ground-based yep. kind of attack vehicles like that. Yeah, I, I really do. I think it's going to be crazy shit. And you're right. How do you how do you fight against that? Um, even if it's not AI controlled, if an army controls the ability to automate its weaponry, create thousands of these things, and just flood a battlefield with them, what what do you do? No, you can't. You know, a machine a machine gets broken. You build a new machine. A person dies. You've got to wait 18 years to raise them and train them before you can put them back out. Exactly. Exactly. So so the turnaround time is you know. 18 years plus military training versus, you know, a year to rebuild the robot, or if, if not less. Right. I mean, I have no idea how long it takes to build these robots, you know. Say it's like a car, you know. I mean, when you get to that level of, 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 uh, uh, of build in, in terms of numbers, how long does it take to build a car? I mean, if you get right down to it, Ford can pump out a new car in 48 hours, if not less. I mean, I actually have no idea, but Jesus Christ, this is all kind of scary shit. Jesus, Jim, I mean... I, <laughs> You're giving me fucking nightmares, man. I, I thought it was going to be fun and stuff and talk about internet and shit. And now I'm like, um, I'm going to be dreaming of killer robots who are going to come and get me and cut off my pecker in the middle of the night. Thank you. I really appreciate it. <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm happy to help. Yeah. <laughs> oh, uh, hang on a second. Let me take a, a, a quick break. Uh, coffee. Did you go? Uh, yeah, oh. I'm here. Okay. Well, then you're obviously much smarter. I'm assuming you have your coffee and your drugs right there in arm's reach. More Sudafed? Everything's sitting right there. Yep. Uh, <laughs> yeah, lucky bastard. I ran out of Sudafed, man. I tried to gobble some up, but there's no more green goblin for me. Damn. Hmm. <laughs> no, but um. Anyway, let, let's okay. Let's change pace and uh, you know anything you want to talk about. We can like because I'm enjoying myself. I hope you are too. Yeah, no, I, I like uh, conversations like this. Um, I, I, you know, technology-wise, mm -hmm. uh, I, I think before we see AI and stuff like that, it, maybe on a more positive note, let's say, I think um, augmented reality is probably the next big thing. I know there's a big push for VR, but, you know, you're disconnected from the surroundings. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, you've got to put this headset on. You don't know where the hell you are. Yeah. I think augmented reality, where you're going to have, like, Google Glass, things like that, Microsoft is working on their own, uh, like HoloLens technology, I think that's going to be a boon. Yeah, you know, I, I, think I, it's going to I, be I think so too. A big thing. I think that uh, Google Glass will be viewed retrospectively as like the Apple Newton, sort of like the the right idea, but not perfectly executed. The right time. Yeah, not the right. right time or whatever. But yeah, Google Glass as the Apple Newton in the sense that you know people are going to walk around with some sort of you know glasses that augment reality. Um, I think that they have to figure out a way to control it in a more uh, I want to say tactile way, some uh, something that that there, there's more feedback to the person because just moving your eye to to get some content, people don't feel that there's a great satisfaction in clicking something. You know, I have um, I don't know if you can see me. I have this uh, little toy that I have. It's a it's a click toy. I don't know if you you see it. 
Uh, yep. And, you know, it's, it's uh, incredibly soothing, you know, because you feel the click, right? And, and, and you feel that little noise and that little, that tactile rush. And I think that a lot of us, <laughs> I know it sounds stupid, but we need feedback. And I think that the augmented reality, they have to figure out a way to give us feedback so that we feel that little oomph of satisfaction that we get. Uh, you know, when, when we click on a button or whatever. Um, well, I, I'm, I'm thinking like bigger picture, like what I imagine augmented reality looking like in 10, 20 years. Yeah. Um, I, I think there's going to be a big sub industry for decoration, to be honest, which I think is going to be incredible. For decoration? Uh, you're going to have wait, wait, basically wait. people show up in a city. Uh, yeah, decoration. Okay, imagine you're wearing your glasses. Now, augmented reality isn't just, you know, overlaying information like text, mm -hmm. but visuals. Yeah. So imagine you arrive at an airport. Uh, it, it, you know, you pick a city, mm -hmm. and you want a certain aesthetic for that city. Well, you hit the selection, and now everything around you is that aesthetic. You want oh, a cyberpunk reality in Toronto? You've got it. That's interesting. You want steampunk in Atlanta? Uh, you've got it. You've got in these designers that will go in and say, I'll make your airport. I'll design this digital environment that can be overlaid on augmented reality, and everybody who can come through can have their own personalized version. That is interesting. So, so you'd basically have like an inside-out big box in the surrounding. It, it wouldn't matter what the world around you looks. You just like flip on a, a, a new overlay, if you will, to whatever city, whatever yeah, that, airport, that's, whatever. That's what I think is going to be the next kind of big. I think that's that's where the really money or the real money maker is. I think people are going to do it in their homes and their businesses, uh, public parks and events. I mean, imagine on the Fourth of July, right? Why well, you know, or a fireworks or a festival or a carnival where you can implement a augmented reality with it and the kind of enhancement you can give to the already festive atmosphere. Like, that's going to be a big thing. <coughs> that's really interesting. I never thought of that. That is really interesting. I'd actually never read of anything even remotely like that, but that is such an interesting concept. Because I was thinking, you know, more, more like basic information, like just informational. You know, you're walking down the street and, you know, you, you, you see an augmented reality, uh, an arrow pointing, you know, you know, street A that way and street B the other way or something like that. Uh, but that kind of... Uh, well, yeah, and that's the, that's the beauty of it. That's what separates it from VR because you still have the real-world objects. You're not going to run into a car right, or a right, person right. because you can still see them. Right, right. But you can overlay anything you want on top of it. Right. I mean, you could make, you could make your own little anime reality. Mm. <laughs> you know, all those people online like talking about wanting uh, 2D waifus to finally have them. <laughs> yeah. everybody, looks, everybody looks anime may now for them yeah i mean uh and by the way uh you you heard about the uh, talking about well i don't even know what waifu is actually exactly but i know it's some anime thing but i just saw something that disturbed the shit out of me some japanese guy got married to an anime character in in a vr environment yeah that would be that that, that would be uh the concept of a waifu is somebody who grows uh, overly attached to a cartoon character okay. is the easiest way to think of <laughs> okay. it. Okay. He married uh, her. So they they like something yeah, they like something from some media, uh anime or a video game and that's their waifu. They like that character. So yeah, they they decide to get married to them. Yeah. Yeah, because uh, you know I I have to admit Jim that you know your content see with internet insanity and 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 all the rest of it and tumblrisms, right? You expose some insanity that I find riveting i find hilarious and yet at the same time i find terrifying i mean the fact that people will allow themselves to go so far down a rabbit hole of of their own imagination and obsession it's 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 like i said it's riveting it's hilarious and it's terrifying all at the same time and that's why i, I love your, your your thing i mean well I, I i blame the internet for that to be honest i i think what happened was pre-internet you had a, a couple of people that had some loopy ideas mm -hmm. But there was no real community to support that. And so all the other people around them were saying, you know, you're kind of being abnormal. Mm -hmm. And they're like, holy shit, maybe I am. Right. Maybe maybe I need to sort myself out. Maybe I'm a little bit too weird. Right. <laughs> but then the internet comes along, and that abnormal person looks up what they're into, and holy shit, there are a thousand people that are into it. So suddenly, fuck mom and dad, I'll do what I want, because other people are just like me, and it just explodes and becomes insane. Yes, exactly. It's it's self re it's uh, self reinforcing fa fantasy or... Uh, lunacy, you know, and I, I, I just look at the, these people who get so far down the rabbit hole, uh, and like some of the fetishes, Jesus Christ, I mean, like one time about like I guess about two years ago, I got into the the notion of exploring these different weird fetishes because I just wanted to see how crazy they were, and and they are more insane than I thought. I mean, it, it's it's it's. <laughs> 
the, the one that I found just unbelievable was the uh, the whole cuckold thing. You did one on findom, yeah. But there was one I saw yeah. on on cuckolding couples, and and it is insane. It is insanity, and they they just dive right off the deep end, and and I I I can't ex I can't. No, I, I'm I'm not being at all articulate. It's just it is just overwhelming. Okay, it is morally overwhelming this shit because it's like this is not right. This is not right, and yet nobody really says anything. I mean, like I I see the well, comments. We, on, we've grown up in a society. It's, uh, go ahead. Oh, sorry. Yeah, we've grown up in a society, especially in the last uh, I'd say twenty years in the West, where everything is permissible. Yes. Where you can't be told anything that you do is wrong, where everybody gets a participation trophy, everybody's special and unique, and you can't judge them for any. You can't laugh at people anymore. You can't say, holy shit, that's fucking weird. What are you doing anymore? Because that's, that's mean. That's bullying. And I think that's led to some problems, and we're seeing that play itself out right now. Yeah, I know. Because uh, it seems to me clear is that the West has lost its moral self-confidence. It can no longer judge something as being good and bad. It, it doesn't have the, the moral wherewithal, the moral self-confidence, you see? I mean, like, uh, I mean, in my own case, I remember when, when I, was, I was a boy, I felt no problem whatsoever saying that's good and that's bad, even though it wasn't illegal, if you will. But uh, the law is merely an expression of what the society has deemed to be right and wrong. Uh, okay, and there are some societies, for example, where marrying your cousin is perfectly fine, and other societies, the Western societies, for instance, where it is not, and therefore it was illegal. It was, you know, the the whole notion of of um, cousin marriages was illegal in the West, or, or or incest, or whatever. But now nobody, everybody goes by this idiotic statement that oh well, if you're not hurting anybody, then it's okay. But yeah, sure, you're not hurting anybody except yourself, perhaps. But you are like corroding the basis of society because you see we all live in a society we all depend on one another and uh, a society is simply the amalgamation and and aggregate ideas of all the people around us all the people that we come across in our daily lives they, they may be close to us they may be passing strangers but all of them are a member of society which is the the other that we interact with now if this other that we interact with is infirm, is sick, is 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 you know is is decaying, that affects us. So just because you know uh, it, it's not illegal and it's not hurting anybody, that that doesn't mean it's necessarily good. It could be a, a terrible and pernicious thing. It, do you see what I'm saying? Yeah, it reminds me of. Um, <clears throat> sorry, coughs coming Don't back worry, a little man. bit. Uh, it reminds me of a, a video I saw on YouTube. God, I think it was called. Babylon before Hitler, right. where it talked about the Weimar Republic right. and kind of the the more morality that was there. And they talked about how you could walk down one street and find prostitutes that were pregnant if you wanted to have sex with a pregnant Jesus woman. Jesus Christ. Or go down another street and have sex with men or another street and have sex with children. And they just talked about how there was this kind of a, a moral decay that was kind of happening, right? right? Um, and, and nobody was really saying, holy shit, what, what the fuck is going on right now? Yeah. Um, I, I think I think you see that a lot. I, it, not not to bring up Germany is just one example, but I, I think you see what happens is a society. It, it's like a weird cycle, right? Um, you have a society where things are hard, and that that hardness creates uh, you know work ethic and morality to try to overcome the hard times and to become prosperous. And then things become prosperous, and people become permissive and lazy. Yeah. And that, that ethic and morality that got them to where they were able to become lazy and enjoy the fruits of the labor now is cast aside. Yeah. And you start to see decay happen. Yeah. And so it's a cycle that keeps repeating itself. And, you know, how does it get addressed? And it goes back to what I was saying earlier with, you know, you, you, get, a, you get a kind of a society that doesn't have a really strong moral compass or isn't willing to say, hey, you know, this line but no further. And then you add on top of it debt and then you add on top of it unemployment. Those are recipes for uprisings. Yeah, and you know that that happens all over the world. That happens throughout history. You you can read a history book and see this play itself out over and over and over again. And I just yeah, and that's why I'm pessimistic because I think that there is a a rude awakening coming uh, in 20 or so years uh, for people uh, when they when they finally sit there for a minute and think what have what have I allowed to happen to my society? What what happened to us? Yeah. 
Yeah, because th this is my thinking about the, the, the coming elections. You know, the Democrats are going to lose big in 2018 uh, because actually they're in real trouble because all of their seats... I, I don't know if you follow Six Hex and Hammer 666. Yeah, I've seen some of his videos. He, he puts out uh, uh, pretty consistent content, like four or five videos a day. I've seen uh, a couple of his. Yeah, yeah. He, he is a very shrewd guy. Very shrewd guy. I don't. I, I went through a little period where I like watching everything that he put out. You know, and now I've tapered off because he just puts up too much content, as it were. But uh, he, he's very interesting, and he's very shrewd political observer. And he was the one who pointed out that all of the Senate races uh, in 2018, well. Uh, the Republicans, most of the Republicans are pretty much safe, whereas most of the Democrats who are up for re-election, not only are they more, but all of them are much more vulnerable. Same thing going on with uh, Congress. Well, all of the congressional seats are up for election in 2018, obviously, but uh, the more Democrats are vulnerable than Republicans. So the Democrats are not pushing any kind of new agenda, as it were, insofar as they're, they're, they, they haven't been able to get over the 2016 loss. And they're doing the you know my Russia crap, which is just bullshit. I mean, everybody knows it's just nonsense. You know, uh, that they're just trying to explain away the fact that they blew the election. They're going to blow the 2000 election. They're going to lose in the Senate, especially. They're going to lose big. And I think that they are not going to have enough time to reorganize for the 2020 election. So they're going to lose the 2020 election to Trump, right? And Trump is going to basically have his way, even though I think, I personally think that he's a clown. I, I think that, you know, he doesn't know what he's doing from second to second. Uh, but, you know, he's shrewd enough to be able to, you know, he's a shrewd customer. There, you know, you're, he's not an idiot. You don't win an election and defeat all of these other guys in the primaries by being an idiot. The guy's smart. Uh, so he's going to win in 2020. And I think that in 2024, that's when I think that for that election, the Democrats are going to go like some sort of, you know, authoritarian guy. I mean, I, I can't really imagine what it's going to be, but I, I think that that election is going to be the key, the key election, as it were. Some kind of totalitarian, some, you know, like Zuckerberg, you know, Zuckerberg Borg, as it were, kind of like push, All right. yeah, pushing like the SJW into not just the mainstream, into the position of leadership. I think that potentially the 2024 election is when some sort of leftist, hyper-controlled, you know, uh, a totalitarian regime could come to power in the United States. I don't, I don't know if you see my reasoning behind it. I, I don't know if I'm explaining well, my reasoning yeah, well yeah. enough, but you, you see what I'm driving at? Well, I think it's something that's been set up, even outside of political parties, I'll be honest with you. I think that it's something that we've kind of been heading towards for about the last 20 years. I mean, you had uh, things like the National Defense Authorization Act, the Patriot Act, yeah, where these kind of powers were given, really crazy powers were given to the yeah. government. And, and it, it spans different administrations, Republican and Democrat, and they keep just adding to yeah. it as time goes on. Everybody seems fine with it. So you're going to have, yeah, you're going to have a situation that's going to happen where, you know, maybe not, uh, you know, I, Trump will take it because he's the incumbent, let's say. Maybe the election after that, so the 2024, um, where somebody's going to come into power, and God help us if it's a Zuckerberg, who controls all this technology and social media, and has crazy fucking powers under him because it's just been snowballing itself as time has gone on. Um, yeah, I, I could see authoritarianism uh, taking off uh, in the United States. Uh, whether that's left or right, I don't know what it would look like, but... People have to be aware that they're giving way too much power to certain branches of the government. I mean, I, it seems it, it floors me that they're not uh, tuned into that. No, that's the thing. Uh, they 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 accept it like sheep. You know that nobody's like uh, nobody realizes what's going on. And you're absolutely right. The Defense Authorization Act and the Patriot Act have given the the executive unprecedented power. It's it's incredible, and nobody is saying anything about it you know the, the indefinite detentions within the borders of the united states um yeah you know the ice can basically do whatever it wants to you once you get to an airport or uh, or you know or cross the border somehow they have uh, authorization what is it uh the, the ice can do whatever they want to you and uh, you don't uh, they don't have to follow any of the bill of rights or any constitutional uh law if it's within i think um 150 miles of the borders of the United States. Now that roughly covers 75% of the population. You know, I, I forget if it's 100 miles from the border or 150 or 200. I, I honestly have forgotten, but it's 
it's that amount of miles from the border that basically covers most of the population. And do keep in mind, you know, Chicago, you know, the, is part of that because technically Chicago is on the border, you know, Lake Michigan and all that. So, uh, well, yeah, and, and we're we're talking about uh, giving the government basically the ability to memory hold people. Yeah, like, hey, but we don't like what you said. You just disappeared, and who the you know, if your neighbor says something, they disappeared. And if they don't think that that's a, a reality that could happen, uh, they're out of their minds. Yeah, Jesus. <laughs> You know, we're scaring each other silly, and this is a not, 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 you know, this is you know this, this is like two junkies, you know, like you know, saying, "Oh no, we'll just do it the one time," and then we wind up, you know, blowing a whole kilo of heroin between the two of us. You know, holy cow! You know, I'm 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 gonna be like you know shitting bricks all up tonight. Oh well, uh, wouldn't be the first. Well, time. I mean, look, look look at the uh, look at the NSA and the CIA uh, tech that got, uh, tech that got leaked. Yeah. Right. Oh yeah! Uh, Holy shit! <coughs> they, they lost it. Right. You know, some contractors just walked out with it. Good God! You know? I mean, with all the spying right, software, that, that, yeah. that's insane. Yeah, but what the, the scary thing was, what they had access to, they had all these zero day exploits to get into your technology. Right. And even before that happened, you had people like Applebaum talking about how it's not just software; it's in your hardware. Yeah. That you know, USB cables, power cables, they can they, they have technology to put in that to monitor you. They have devices that can basically you know pick up what's being displayed on your monitor from outside the van. Like it's spooky, spooky surveillance style stuff. It exists, it's real. And then on top of that, you have leaks where they're showing you how they get into the software and basically nothing's safe. And all these companies seem to be complicit with it. They just they went along with it. The prison program uh, was seemed voluntary. That was the craziest thing to me. Microsoft, Apple, all these companies basically were like, "Yeah, sure, we'll go along with you, NSA. Let's um, let's spy on everybody." Mm. And the craziest thing uh, was the timing of you know the the information about what the Prism program was leaked was right around the time that Microsoft was releasing the Xbox One. Mm-hmm. And what did Microsoft want the original vision of the Xbox One to be? An always on thermal camel with a live mic that was always connected in your living room. <laughs> So, and Microsoft was a part of the Prism program. Jesus, Jesus, right? That you—that's fucking insane. Yeah. That is fucking insane. <laughs> and from what I heard too, from what I heard too, there was a financial incentive. From from what I understand, the NSA, some government agency, reimbursed uh, companies that were willing to play ball. So not only were they selling this as a commercial product, they would have been making a profit from. They're getting money from the government, and everybody's getting spied on from their fucking gaming console, for Christ's sake. Jesus fucking Christ. Jesus fucking... Oh, God. Uh, more nightmares, you know? <laughs> there you go, yeah. <laughs> we're, we're fucked. We, we are actually just the playthings of corporations and governments. You know? and, 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 and that's a stat well, state of affairs it, if you think about it. Well, the stage is set. Let's put it that way. The stage is set uh, for if some if a bad person really wants to do bad things, they've got everything's in place for them to do. Yeah. It. Yes. You know what I mean? Like uh, all all the all the uh, things they could ever need to really do uh, terrible things and to really screw up the country, it's in place. Yes. So God help us if we elect uh, somebody who gets into power and decides, I'm going to use it all. I'm going to use all these powers. I'm going to I'm just going to go overboard because I, my vision of what this country should be is the way it has to be. Yeah. Oh God! Oh God! Oh man! Oh, you know, God! I, I, that's that. I don't have any other intelligence response than to say, "Oh God," because what are you supposed to say to to something like that? Where you recognize that it's not only that all of the con- constitutional uh, uh, constraints of the executive have essentially been removed over the last twenty years. Uh, right. Not only that, nobody has the mentality to resist. I mean, that's the 1984 problem that we're having right now. It's that nobody has the language to resist. You have Antifa who are just basically toddlers having a tantrum. Uh, uh, You have the alt-right who are basically just, uh, you know, frankly, they're racists who, uh, you know, are obsessed with this, you know, ethnic state kind of stuff, which I I cannot personally stomach. Uh, Because I I suppose I'm a civic nationalist in the sense of, you know, having... uh, yeah, I had this conversation uh, uh, last night, kind of talking a little bit about uh, race realism. You know, this 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 notion they put forward. Um, I'm 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 the kind of guy that believes in meritocracy. Yeah. I, I don't want to live in a country or a uh, a world that's a caste system. No. I think it's yeah. bullshit. I, I I hate the notion that if you're born 
you're automatically judged and you could I don't want to live in Gattaca. No, you know no, what I mean? I, like if you if you have the ability, if you're smart enough, you should get the job, you should get into college, you should get the reward for the hard work you put in and I don't give a shit what your skin color yeah, is. Yeah, exactly. I don't want aristocracies. You earned it. Yes, exactly. I don't want aristocracies. I want yeah. a democracy. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, outcome independent, but but baseline equal, uh, uh, as it were, if that makes any sense. But yeah, everybody gets a fair shot at the starting yeah, point. Yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah. I I I don't see how we're going to be moving forward because uh, realistically, what I see in the United States, at least politically, we're we're going to be stumbling along forward with Trump and and Russia and all this crap, but not really doing anything. We're not going to have any kind of solution, real solution, to the Obamacare problem or the health care issue. Because that has to be, you know, root and branch kind of solution. And it has to be, you know, some sort of, uh, some system has to replace this entire system, which only benefits insurance companies. And by the way, the, the big winner of the whole Obamacare and all this mess is Warren Buffett. Everybody treats him like, he's like, like everybody's like uh, Santa Claus. He is a capitalist who is making money hand over fist over this whole mess, and nobody's like talking about that. They they think he's a great guy, you know, just because you know the the Wizard of Omaha, or whatever they call him. You know, he's a capitalist ripping off the whole country, and nobody says anything. But anyway, that's a little hobby horse I have. The point is, well, they like to they like to yell about like a Soros or a, you know an individual like that, or they'll talk about oh, who are the brothers that own Fox uh, or not 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 Fox uh, the Koch right. brothers. Like I, I hear a lot of people, you know, uh, talk about Soros and his schemes, and the Koch brothers and their scheme. But you're right, a lot of people never really talk about Warren Buffett. No, today. like he's a nice guy. He's Santa Claus. Oh, he's so rich, and and by virtue of him having a lot of money, people think that he is a virtuous, decent person. He's not. He's a son of a bitch. I've met rich people. Yeah, most people who got rich on their own, they were sons of bitches. You know, and. I have no problem with that, but you know, don't pretend that he was a nice guy. He didn't get to be the rich man that he is by being a nice guy. He can fake being a nice guy, but it's faking it, and you have to keep that in mind. But well, you have to have that mindset. You have to have that yeah. go get paid mindset to really be able to prosper. And he's got yeah, it. Yeah, good on him. I I don't begrudge him that. What I do uh, uh, object to is elevating the guy into some sort of virtuous being just because he's good at making money. I think that that's wrong. Oh, no, he's not a saint. Yeah, no, he's nowhere near a saint. No, fuck no. None of these guys are, okay? And they fuck people over, and God knows, you know, nasty stuff. So, anyway. Uh, and I got sidetracked from the point I wanted to make, which is, no, oh, fuck that. You know, the, the, the bottom line, I think that we're fucked. <laughs> I think that that's, there's no, nothing as, as intelligent, intelligent to say about that. And I think that there is no real political solution on the horizon. I think that that's the thing that bothers me the most. I think that that not bothers me, that makes me very, very anxious. I'm anxious not for myself, because I can take care of myself. I'm anxious because of my children. I have small children, and I want them to grow up in a, in a free society. And I want the democracies of the West to flourish, not because I'm, I'm romantic about it, but because I am, I'm 49 years old. I had children when I was older. I will be dead by the time, I'm, you know, by the time my kids are my age. I mean, by the time my kids are my age, I will definitely be dead. And I want my kids, when they are my age, when they have children of their own, to be living in a flourishing society. But the fact of the matter is, I look around the world and I see Western Europe is basically committing suicide. There's no other way to yeah. uh, to look at it. They are committing suicide insofar as allowing all these migrants in. They are committing suicide by creating the European Union, which is essentially totalitarian in nature. It, the European uh, Commission, it, it, there's no oversight. They can do whatever they please, you know. And and it is. Yeah. Can you explain? Can you explain that to me? Um, how is it that you know? I, I from what I understand, when the EU was sold, it was basically a oh, it'll be mutually beneficial for trade and commerce and uh, travel. Sure. But how is it they're able to create laws that supersede you know national laws? sovereignty? It seems. Yeah, like. they do. They do. Yeah, they it, do supersede sovereignty. What? What? Why? How are they allowed to do oh, that? Oh, little by little. See. See, you know, see, Jim, um, when I decide that I'm going to make you my prisoner, I, I don't go and, and put handcuffs on you. I, I put a gentle hand on, on your arm and then another one and then another one. And then, you know, I'll just replace one hand and just put a little, you know, little piece of rope. And that rope, eventually, I'll change it into, you know, uh, a shackle. And then little by little, you'll be, you know, imprisoned. And that's essentially what happened, because you have to keep in mind, the original idea, the Schumann plan, 
uh, named after the uh, foreign minister of uh, France after the Second World War, was to create an economic union between France and Germany that would be so tight that France and Germany would not go to war with each other. You have, do have to keep in mind, France and Germany went to war three times in the 70 years prior to 1945. <laughs> the Franco-Prussian War, World War I, and World War II. All right. So three times, and three generations of uh, uh, Europeans uh, were decimated by those wars. All right. Especially the last one, which was total war, and the, the whole continent was decimated. And Schumann, quite rightly, figured that you know there had to be some sort of economic cooperation, economic union between the two countries, France and Germany, so that they would never go to war. It would be too expensive to go to war. It was a reasonable plan, and and you know, retro, I mean. At the time, it was not only reasonable, but I think laudable. Now, that economic union created first the common market. The common market gently and very slowly evolved into the European Union. And there were a whole bunch of steps in the, uh, the economic part. Uh, the original uh, Treaty of Rome, I think it was back in 53, it, it was all, uh, uh, it started with this treaty on coal, I believe. I, I actually, I used to know the history really well, but it's slipped, it slipped my mind. It's been 20 years since I looked at that stuff. But um, I think it was the, the, uh, the, a treaty on the, the uh, coal, but it doesn't matter. It was the European the common market, and um, slowly there was basically a, a, uh, a, a, a fixed rate between the different countries, and that evolved into the euro, which was implemented in, you know, in banking, was implemented in the mid 90s, but it was implemented to the populace in 99, and it was a slow process, okay? Now, the key problem that was never solved, all right, was the issue of bonds, of debt. You see, all countries could issue their own debt in euros, right? This is sovereign debt, like treasury bonds, right? Now, the problem with, with this is that, see, Germany, Holland, you know, they're, they're Dutch, they're German, you know, they're fucking anal retentive, right? They're, they pay their bills, right? And so the, the German bonds and Dutch bonds were, you know, traded at a lower yield, right? At a very low yield because they were responsible governments. And what happened was that, see, Spain and Italy and Greece, for instance, they traded, they sold their bonds at the same rate that the Germans and the Dutch were. But the problem is that those bonds were much more, the, much riskier. Because, you know, they're fucking Italian, they're fucking Greeks, they're fucking Spaniards, okay? They don't pay on time, you know? It's like, yeah, oh, take it easy, you know, bene, bene, you know? I mean, like, you know, take it easy kind of approach, right? And so they got over and did. Now, you also have to keep in mind that the Germans were complicit, and the Dutch, to a lesser extent, were complicit in this whole trade. Because, see, you ever heard of the concept of vendor financing? Where, where basically, you know, you're my customer. And you don't have the money to buy my product, so I, you know, give you some financing so that you can buy my product. And so I sell you my product, which is good for me, and I also have this debt that you have to pay me, which is also good for me, right? I'm making money off of you twice. Got it. It's it's it, it sounds like a Hershey town. Um, it, it sounds like one of those where the corporation sets up the town and owns the stores and uh, owns the yeah, houses, yeah. and you work for yeah. them. They pay you, and immediately you get. You give them their money right. back, and you're still all the yeah, money. exactly, you're constantly in debt. Exactly. So that's what Germany essentially did to the uh, Mediterranean countries: Spain, Germany, uh, Spain, Greece, Italy. They they lent them the money so that they could buy German products. So you know, and also the thing is, the Germans did this massive labor reform that crippled the German worker and made the German worker basically a slave to the state. And th that's something that people don't quite realize. Uh, they did this labor reform that no other country did, and it made German industry a lot more efficient. One could argue that it basically created a slave labor class, but that's for another conversation. Um, and it really is. It's a really nasty law, okay? Um, you know, German workers have no rights. I mean, shit, like, you know, compared to fucking Chilean workers, you know, in Latin America, right? It's, you know, German workers are... It's that, it's that yeah, bad, Yeah, it is. Huh? Okay. Um, anyway... The point is that the the Mediterranean countries went into debt with Germany, and Germany is being a complete dick in so far as solving the debt problem of these countries. You see, and so they're pushing. They pushed and successfully pushed austerity, and they basically blackmailed Greece 
and uh, they blackmail Spain, and they are getting close to blackmailing Italy and France, because France is sort of like in the same boat. Um, because France accepted a lot of immigrants, they, they can't really afford them, and a whole host of other stuff. Uh, the European Union is falling apart. The European Union, everybody is realizing, is the Fourth Reich. Okay? The... the um... So wait, was this some nefarious plot where Germany thought, if we make them take immigrants, they can't afford to feed and uh, clothe and employ them, so they'll need money. No, no. So we'll give them the money to do that, and then they owe us, they owe us and we it's, It sounds as if, no, no, no. No, the Germans were just greedy, because it, it, Germans are greedy. They're greedy people, okay? They, they like their money. They, they like it very much. Not as much as the Swiss, but, uh, but they love their money. And uh, no, 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 I, I don't think that. I think that... I think, honestly, that the Germans allowed all the migrants because they wanted the cheap workers. And also, something else, the Germans, you have no idea how fucked up they are in the head insofar as guilt. They hate themselves. I mean, the whole Holocaust thing and the Nazis and all that stuff, it is inconceivable to somebody who is not German. But I've seen enough Germans. I lived in Germany briefly. Um, they are sick in the head with guilt. In, in a way that is incomprehensible to us, okay? And by the way, it's gonna be a nightmare to edit this thing because my camera has gone, my two cameras that I'm on have gone like off and on like three, four times and I had to change them while you were away. It's gonna be a fucking nightmare to edit this thing. But anyway, it's too much fun, so. It's... Well, actually, yeah, I wanted to say one thing about the, the camera thing. I, I really, really, really like how you do that. Thanks, um, appreciate it. And I think it's actually fucking brilliant. And I'm, su I'm surprised more people don't do it because I think it gives you the leverage. You know, uh, one of the problems I have with a lot of YouTube videos when they, when they are on mm -hmm. camera is they do rough cuts, mm -hmm. right? Where you can see that they, they flubbed the line, so it just cuts and they're shifted a little sure. bit. But with having multiple camera angles, you'll never no. see that. You, if you flub a line or if you need to do something different, you just switch to a different camera and it looks like it's a fluid transition. There's no interruption. Exactly. That is so, that is so fucking brilliant. Oh, man. thank you. I, that's, that's really kind of you to say. And I'm actually kind of surprised that other people aren't doing it. It's so easy, you know? And also, especially because the proliferation of cameras. It's easy to load up. I was actually counting up the cameras that I have from cell phones, old cell phones, you know, and computers and stuff. I have access to 10 cameras that I could load up and the editing software is such that you can do multicam, even 10 different angles and no problem, you know. And it's really interesting. It's visually interesting and it keeps things apace. I mean, you've seen Stix Hex and Hammer, right? He has a single camera and he's just yep. facing it. It's visually boring. You know, it's great if you just like turn it on and hear it in the background while you're doing other stuff, you know, cleaning up your, your place or whatever, or cooking or something like that. But, you know, watching it as, as, a, as a visual experience, and that's what YouTube is. It is a visual medium. You are uh, uh, delivering a visual product. So why not make it more visually interesting? And that's why I've also been playing around with the whole notion of uh, color filters and doing different lighting effects and color effects with the filters on, on the editing software. And it's so easy and it's so interesting. I, that's the thing. It's interesting, visually interesting, you know? Well, I, yeah, you're, 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 uh, you're ahead of the curve on that one. And, and I do think that, um, I, you know, not to suck your dick anymore here, but I do like your content. I do think your channel's gonna blow up. And I, I think as you get bigger, people are gonna start emulating what you're doing because they're gonna realize that the multi-camera approach, it, it just makes so much goddamn sense yeah. when it comes to if I'm going to be on camera, I, I wouldn't be surprised if in the next year people really start doing that a lot. No, I, I'm, I, you know, the more the merrier because it's it's just interesting, you know. Um, and also the the other thing is that you know why not? What exactly is holding you back? Sometimes the experiments don't work out. Sometimes they they sort of like look, you know, not not as cool as I thought it was. But so what? You know, it, it's just a little. Uh, it's just a little video, and, and if the experiment is, is a bust, well, maybe the next time it'll be better. The first time I started doing this, what happened was I actually started, like, I filmed the same episode twice, but I, I gave different delivery, and I was, like, thinking, well, there must be a way for me to integrate all this footage and somehow, and then so I wound up recording a third time and using the multicam function of the editing software. And it's, uh, Final Cut Pro, 
which is it's a more sophisticated uh, editing program. But I, I am guessing, although I would not know exactly. I mean, for sure. But I'm guessing like the, the, the a cheaper editing software would have the same thing. Hey, no, wait! iMovie, which is free in the i in the uh, Apple uh, software kit in the Apple um, computer in the Macintosh computer, and it comes free with the when you buy a computer. It has multicam. Now that I think about it, so it, it's it's a non-issue. Well, it, it 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 floors me that people don't do it, and when I really think of how long people have been doing it, like Philip DeFranco, uh, Onision, um, hell, even people like the Young Turks. I think they had most. They use two cameras. Yeah. You know what I mean? Uh, it, 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 it's crazy to me. And yeah, you're right. It, it, it should be affordable now and doable now that you'd expect more people to be doing it. But yeah, once I saw that approach, I was like, that is, that is the future. If people are going to be doing longer form videos or any kind of videos where they're on cam uh, on YouTube in the next couple of years, that that's probably how it's going to yeah. be done. Yeah. It, because it's easy and you're right. You can, you can get away with flubbing a line by cutting right, right between shots and it looks smooth. I mean, nobody notices it. And a lot of times, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you, you know, I've, I've recorded a video and I thought, man, this is a fucking disaster. And I saved it in the editing because of that, because I was able to cut and, and, it, just, uh, and it just really flowed, uh, flowed smoothly. So thank you so much. That's really kind of you to say. Let me ask you something. You, you, yeah, yeah, you no, mentioned... I remember when I started getting on the internet in like 94, there were like some random chat rooms, 93, 94. Um, there were some random chat rooms and, you know, I remember I trolled somebody. I didn't, of course, it wasn't tro called being you know, trolling. I just, somebody irritated me about some shit. And I just like fucked them over a little bit in some message board or something. I forget what it was, really. I don't even remember the topic. But he said, that, oh, I'm going to, I'm going to accuse, I'm going to, I'm going to tell on you to the uh, systems administrator or something like that, right? And I was like really worried. I was worried. I was worried that, oh, man, you know, maybe they'll... You know, you know, I was in college at the time. I was thinking maybe they're going to call, you know, come to my, um, you know, call up a dean and I'll get in trouble and or call up the, the, the computing department or something. You know, I was, I was genuinely worried. And, and, you know, now I find, of course, laughable the notion that I'd be worried that anybody would call anybody or care about any of this shit, you know, because it really is the Wild West. As to whether it will continue, it it, it really is. Yeah. Well, I mean, I and I kind of miss, I guess, the older yeah. internet. Uh, you know, kind of early '90s, especially, um, because there was still a bit of a tech barrier, right? If you wanted to go online and get involved in things, you had to know a little bit, and even before that, you had to mm -hmm. know a lot. And now it, it's become so easy. I think that's part of the reason the Wild West is disappearing. Ease of access has brought regulation and corporation, and so you can't really have as much fun as you used to because everybody wants it to be sanitized and clean and they want it to be like Disney World. Now. Well, it's a, the problem is I don't think it's access actually. I think the, the issue is there's money. There's money to be made. And so once there's money to be made, people become more cautious. Uh, because Well, yeah, I think well, it, it's, it's chicken and the egg here. I mean, I, I think the ease of access brought the yeah, people yeah. and the people then brought the ability to make absolutely. profit. So yeah, I mean, we're, we're basically saying yeah, the same we're thing. Saying yeah. Exactly the same thing. You're, you're absolutely right. But uh, yeah, yeah, because I got into the the internet um, half-assed because uh, the college I went to in the early '90s uh, required us to have a computer, and it it had email, uh, an email system called uh, Blitzmail, and it, it was an incredibly convenient system. It was just so so easy to use, right? And and I didn't even realize that it was unique, you know. Uh, uh, and so what happened was that you know the the internet I never took it seriously, as it were. Uh, because I had this access to it, and I thought it was kind of like silly and stuff like that. So I did other things and forgot all about it until you know the late '90s and the whole tech boom thing and the whole internet craze and you know companies' uh, stock prices going up 10% when they announced that they had a website up. You know, it was crazy shit like that. Um, but I never, I never took it seriously until like the aughts. You know, I, I always thought that the whole thing was sort of ridiculous. And in a very real sense, I still can't take it seriously because, you know, it's online. It's not real. It's not affecting reality, you know. Although the terrible right. thing is that people's reputations can be ruined by it so easily, so incredibly easily. One stupid tweet and your career is over. And I, that I, th I find disconcerting, but there's nothing to be done about it, I suppose. It's, it's the resurrection of the Scarlet yeah. Letter. 
right? Once you're branded, you're branded. There's nothing mm. you can do. Mm. Or else you have to, you know, do some other thing that will obliterate that on your Google search profile or whatever, you know, something bigger, you know, I mean, if you're, you're it, it's basically, you know, if you're ca caught stealing money, it'll be the number one thing on your Google. So you, you're left with only, you know, killing your neighbor and that'll replace it. You know, you can only go bigger <laughs> and worse to, to obliterate the old thing. You know what I mean? Uh, uh, well, I, I suppose that that's the secret of the Kardashians, you know, I mean, you know, basically bigger and worse, you know, but God, you, you know, you brought up the email thing, and that kind of, uh, not to go sure. off topic here, it's just a kind of a, a callback to something earlier when we're talking about uh, just spooky government surveillance and, you know, all the all the shit going on in prison. Um, have you ever heard of LavaBit? Mm, no. Go ahead, tell me. Uh, so LavaBit was a, uh, it was an open source encrypted uh, web, webmail service, uh -huh. right? Uh, and, and so basically what happened was the NSA came knocking and said, give us all your oh, stuff. Oh, yeah, I remember that. Uh, yeah, 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 but go ahead. You know, for for listeners. But but he he was he he was the only one, he was the only one that I know of that fell on his sword. Yeah. He was the only one no. that said "fuck you" and shut it yeah. down. Yeah. Didn't he like give them an encryption code that was in such such a small a letter that they had to do it by hand and they couldn't read it or something like that? Yeah. Yeah. It, the the story behind that it, it always fascinated me and. Yeah, you know, thinking back to it, uh, you know, like if 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 somebody came to Yahoo or Google and said, "Give me your stuff," they're not gonna they're not gonna shut anything no. down. But they, they, this yeah. guy did Just fell on his sword and said, "Nope, I'm not I'm not gonna play ball." And he really couldn't even say, "I'm not playing ball." He couldn't even really say why he was doing yeah. it uh, because he wasn't allowed to legally. So it was just this weird thing that happened, and then people started kind of piecing together, "Holy shit, they yeah. came for him." Yeah, yeah, I remember, and it, because they demanded it and they sent a warrant. And, and for the encryption key, and it was some, some massive document. So he sent it in some font so small that it couldn't be scanned. I, I, it was something like that. I can't recall. But, <laughs> but that was the upshot of it, that he sent it in such a small print that you know, they, they couldn't scan it or they, they couldn't easily access it in such a long digit thing that they had to do it by hand. And of course, there were going to be so many errors that it would be you know, uh, you know, functionally uh, useless. Uh, it was something like that. Yeah. Yeah, I, I used to know the story by heart because I was impressed by it. But, I mean, I, this was back in, like, God, was it 2012, 2013? I mean, this yeah, was a while ago. Yeah, yeah. But, yeah, the Internet, Jesus, uh, you know, time on the Internet is like, you know, the reverse dog years. You know, it's like, you know, a, you know, a week <laughs> in the Internet is like a year in real time. You know, it, it's it's really bizarre. It it moves quick. Yeah, yeah and like, for instance, this past week, I haven't been posting anything. Uh, because I was traveling in Ukraine, because my uh, my kids and wife live out there. And by the way, I'm I'm like, can we do something real quick? Can we do an outro and uh, and then we'll just and I'll I'll pack up the recording and then we can uh, tidy up our conversation. Sure, okay. not a problem. So uh, we've been talking over an hour here. So I'm going to give our, our audience a rest. Uh, Mr. Mecca uh, Medicur, uh Jim. Oh, there you go. Sorry about that. <laughs> Jim, it, it's been a delight. And uh, I really appreciate this conversation. And I hope we can do it again. Yeah, I really enjoyed myself. Uh, I'd love to come okay, back. Okay, great. So uh, to all of you guys uh, listening in, thank you so much for being here. And I'll see you next time. Hello. Uh, I don't know if you all hear me. I hope you can. I'm here with the um, lovely Aiden Paladin with uh, Mr. Medicare and Mauritian Struggle. And we're going to be having a um, live stream chat. This is the first time I've ever hosted one. So um, uh, Aiden, gentlemen, please be gentle with me. Uh, you know, don't, don't put me too much on the spot. Don't make me do anything computer related that is too complicated for my poor little brain. And uh, yeah, let's get started. Uh, let's all Intellectually lube up. up. <laughs> Intellectually leave up. Aiden, can you please introduce yourself? Hey guys. Um, well, we've talked before. You've been on my channel. Uh, I'm Aiden Paladin. Uh, that's also the name of my channel. And Altana Volt. Hey guys.
Hello? 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 Did I cut out? Uh, I, I don't know what happened. I think we cut out momentarily. Yeah. That was weird. I think we did, we did cut out. No, we're, we're still live. We're still live, by the looks of it. Okay, we're still live. Oh, okay, so, uh, Aiden, uh, go ahead, finish up what you were saying. Oh, I, I, I just said that's, yeah, that's my channel. I'm, okay. I'm into social science and politics, I guess. Um, all ton of old. What's up? <laughs> uh, Marishan? Uh, hello, I'm Marishan Struggle. Uh, I just run like, a little channel here on YouTube where I basically place all my weaponized autism for your entertainment. And it's very small, but it's growing quite quickly. Just generally, whatever I want to talk about, I talk about. And that's pretty much it. And Jim? Uh, I'm Brightside Bob, and I talk about DSP. It's nice <laughs> here. It's great. <laughs> <laughs> well, right side Bob wanted to talk about uh, Equifax, so I think we should get started with that particular Fantastic. kerfuffle that's going on. Uh, yeah, so I, I don't know how familiar everybody is with Equifax or what happened. I mean, most people know that it was hacked. Um, they're not giving out a lot of details that happened between May and July. Uh, 144 million people have been affected, everything from social security numbers to addresses to full names. Uh, apparently has been taken, or at least had access to. They don't know how much was taken. Uh, but the information that's come out over the last couple of days in relation to it is really scary and fascinating. Uh, the first thing was Equifax put up a website uh, right away so you could check to see if um, you were affected or not. But uh, an Ars, Technical, or Ars Technica article talked about it, saying that the website they were using was a basic WordPress blog, basically. It wasn't secure, and they wanted you to basically enter... <clears throat> Sorry, uh, to basically enter the majority of your social security number to be able to get information. So their response to a hack was putting up an unsecure page for you to check if you were hacked, which is just mind boggling. But it's not surprising when you find out that uh, the uh, chief information security officer for the company, Susan Malden, I believe, uh, is a music major who apparently, <laughs> I, I have no idea how you hire a music major to be your person in charge of information security, but they, they went with it. Well, she's a woman. That means she deserved the job. You sexist oh, of course. pig. Yeah, of course. <laughs> and it's, it's ironic that this happens a month after James Damore was let go by Google for talking about, you know, uh, the benefits of hiring based on merit rather than sex to fill a quota. And here we are with one of the potentially largest uh, financially sensitive data hacks that's ever happened. And the, the person in charge of the security for the company was a diversity hire with no expertise in the field. She got a job at, I think, Hewlett Packard, and there was no real explanation how she went from being a music major to working at Hewlett Packard, or Packard as a information security officer, and then getting later on hired by Equifax to be their chief, you know, in charge of it. It's, it's mind boggling. Uh, it's not mind boggling when you understand exactly why James Damore was fired. Wait, wait. Just to, hmm? to clarify, uh, this woman, a music major, I mean, she had a BA, not even an engineer, you know, what the hell is she doing in information technology? Yeah. I mean, how the hell did that happen? I, I have no idea. I have no idea how she went from one company to another like that. I don't, I don't know how she went from being, you know, fresh out of college with her BA or master's in music to getting into information security at companies like HP and then uh, later on at one of the three largest um, uh, credit union reporting agencies like Equifax. It's, it's staggering to me. I mean, I'll tell you it. how. I'll, I'll tell you how, because they don't ask questions. They see, you can put anything you want on your resume, and honestly, they won't ask. I was, I don't know why it made me think of this, but um, Jim, since you do a lot of, uh, what would I call it, investigation of really fucked up online communities, you are surely aware of Homestuck, I'm positive. Yeah. Do you know that they hired they hired uh, um, somebody for that? And I believe it was a woman who had absolutely no experience to make their game, who had no experience, which is like a, an artist, to be their lead programmer. It was the same thing. She's like, I just want to do this. And I said that I had experience in it. It doesn't matter if I actually did or not. You're a woman. So there you go. I, it's the exact same thing. Like, um, uh, but yeah, basically, it's the pussy pass. If you just say, I want to do this thing. If you don't hire them, well, then you're sexist. And you know what? They can actually take you to court for that shit. And I know enough about human resources having um, a minor in it, not a lot, uh, and some experience. You can't ask them too many questions about their resume because if you do, it, it gets into illegality. Well, so see, this is why I've always, I've always looked at, uh, you know, like Blockbuster went under, right? Uh, I, I've talked to people who always talked about using Blockbuster on their resume and saying they worked at corporate. 
because there's no way to check it because the company's defunct. It doesn't exist. <laughs> so, yeah, I worked at Blockbuster. I was a VP of communications. How are they ever going to track that down? Exactly. So maybe, maybe she did something like that, but uh, the amount of people that are going to be affected by this is the, the damage this is going to do if that gets into the wrong hands uh, will have an impact on the economy for decades. It's not the first time this has happened. A couple years ago, was it five, six years ago? Uh, basically, like anyone who was associated with government employees had all of their social security numbers um, hacked by the Chinese, I believe. Uh, the, I only know that, I don't know the details of that. I only know it happened because my dad works for the US government and they were like, yeah, your information is public now, essentially, everything. Uh, Fantastic, yeah. yeah. And that happened to <laughs> everyone who was a government employee. And by the way, because I'm his daughter, it meant my social security and all my information also, and his wife and all that kind of stuff. Ooh. And it's all public now. Jesus. Well, now nothing's happened, I, as far as I know. I, I heard that the, the people who hacked this information from Equifax are asking two and a half million dollars which for a company that, uh, Jim, you mentioned that they had uh, three and a half billion in revenue. Well, two and a half yeah. billion is chump change. You know, it, it's, you know, it's weekend, you know, it's sofa money. You know, that, so that, that amount of money makes me think that this was probably an unprofessional attack, that this was, maybe they were using the, because we had so much kit that got released, like the CIA, the NSA had a lot of their yeah. hacking stuff get released. So maybe yeah. it's some kit or some fly-by-night operation that found a backdoor through some associated website and got the information. But if you have 144 million social security numbers, addresses, full names, employment history, all that information, you, why would you even go to Equifax? You could go and sell that on the black market, go on tour, sell it to whoever you want to sell it to. Exactly. And make so much yeah, money. Yeah, about insane. selling a piece of meal. Yeah. Well, yeah. well, I'm thinking like in, in the practical sense of actually how to make money with all that information. If I had like, you know, a, a hard drive with all that information, how would I, you know, want to get money securely quickly? And not have to hassle it. I mean, it's like when you get a kilo of cocaine, you don't want to be selling it, you know, half a gram at a time, right? Uh, I mean, well, they're going to have information. They'll have access to information that'll basically what they could do is cherry pick. I'm going to mm -hmm. take people with really high credit scores who have no credit, mm -hmm. you know, lines open. So if somebody who's got like an 800 uh, FICO score yeah. and right. no credit cards, and then I'm going to sell that identity to somebody, and they're going to go open yeah. a shit ton of, uh, you know, credit lines in their name, order sure. online, and never get caught. Ha <laughs> ha! Yeah. I have shit mm. credit. Can't fuck with me, bitches. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. The only people that are going to be safe are people who have terrible credit or neats who don't don't do anything, and their information's not out there. <laughs> um, both. Great. <laughs> uh, yeah, like that, it's exactly the thing that's gonna it's going to absolutely fuck the you know the, yeah the people who who are. Most valuable. Well, the, the thing is, how do they keep it quiet? I mean, th this was between May and June, was it? How do they keep it quiet now over the summer? Oh, you want to you want to hear the best part? I left oh, out the best. Yes. Part. Oh, the best part. Okay. Uh, yeah, between May and July is when the hack happened. But after the hack was known to the Equifax executives, they sold their stock yes. before they went public. Oh yeah, it. I heard that. Yes. That must be against the law. Yes. It, it is. It's insider trading. There's no way they're going to get away with that. It's too blatant. Oh, no. No, no, no. Actually, it's criminal. Uh, I think and they, they, they can get into a lot of trouble. Them. They know exactly how no, fucked I, it is. They were just so desperate to try and get out. It's like, well, we're we're already going to be fucked in the ass. Let's try to, let's no, just no, try no, one they, desperate they, attempt. They, they, fuck me. <laughs> that that yeah, kind because of, their their uh, stock valuation uh, dropped uh, twenty a share uh, right after the news came out. I mean, it went from like one forty two to one twenty one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, they they took a hit and and no and and that kind of insider trading is so blatant that the uh, SEC would have to prosecute and make an example of them. Uh, no way they can let that one slide o over something this big, this scandalous. No way they they can let it slide. I'm saying that, but at the same time, in 2008 and 2009 and 2010, after all the crap that came out following the global financial crisis, you know, the robo signing and all the rest of it, and in the end, they didn't prosecute anybody. So me saying that they are going to prosecute and they should prosecute doesn't mean that they'll actually do it because you know. Very true. Well, I, yeah, I want to see how uh, the UK and Canada respond because it wasn't just American financial information that was taken. Canadian citizens and British citizens were affected too. Uh, Canadians and Brits who had social security numbers or, or tax No, no, their, their financial numbers? information, if they were somehow uh, associated with a business or a company that used Equifax in any way, their financial information could have been a part of this. Oh, oh I see. I see. So if you work for a small okay. company that's US based and you're in the UK and you give your financial information, whatever that happens to be, that information is now mm -hmm. open to be taken. Jesus Christ.
Yeah, I haven't even looked into to see because again, uh, I think yeah, you said it, it's a coin flip as to whether or not you were affected. Yeah, it's I haven't 50/50. looked into it because, oh, like I said, I don't, I have shit credit, so I don't think I'm gonna be targeted. By I it. think you'll, yeah, and, you'll be okay. I think everybody. And my, my social security was already stolen mm. by by China, China. So like, you know, whatever. I I think I'm like I'm already fucked either way. And it doesn't matter, but you know, and I, I think it matters. That's the same thing for everybody. There's nothing you could do about it, and yeah, you're just you're probably a fifty-fifty chance of being fucked. <laughs> How depressing! No, I think that, yeah, when the, half a country gets screwed <laughs> for a diversity hire, like what the fuck? Right, it's remarkable, isn't it? It's it's absolutely fucking remarkable. It's, it's just. Like, Nobody's going to mention about the diversity hire. I actually had no idea about the the head of uh, you know information security being a, a diverse, diversity hire. I don't think that that information is being pushed very hard. I mean, it goes against the narrative, as it were. Right. Well, I mean, they'll probably have a dodge out of it and say it was a related website. But uh, you know, the interviews that she gave uh, previously, talking about what it's like to be in that position and the responsibilities they have, uh, somebody asked her the question. How comfortable are our, you know, chief exec or chief information security officers? Do you sleep at night? And she's like, oh, 90% of us do because we're so secure in how we're handling things. We don't lose any sleep over <laughs> And that's from one year ago with her talking about that. So oh, that that's just unfucking real. But um, at least what, it's just her. disastrous. <laughs> oh dear. Oh, well, look, across the economy, we're seeing a lot of these diversity hires that are basically of incompetent people who just, you know, tick off boxes right on the diversity shopping list, right? When do you think, uh, when do you guys, all of you, I mean, this is an open question, when do you all think that people are going to, uh, the private enterprise is going to realize, shit, we're, we're getting fucked by incompetent people. We can't afford this anymore. Because we look at across various industries where the, the whole push for diversity and all the rest of it is hurting the bottom line and hurting companies. I mean, Equifax here, and, you know, and, and they always follow diversity in comics, and he goes on and on about the comic book industry of how it's being destroyed by this, by this whole diversity stuff. Yeah. End, or do you think it won't end? I think it's coming to a head. You know, uh, speaking of that very much, what was it? It was for Mass Effect Andromeda, and that they removed all this. They scrubbed it like they're going to scrub this woman being the. This is a much bigger deal, obviously, uh, and not really mm -hmm. comparable. But with Mass Effect Andromeda, which was a big video game that people were excited for, if you know anything about it, the character animations were absolutely abysmal. And for a while, there was this woman who had herself listed. Now it was her herself listed, I believe, on LinkedIn as the lead character. Animator or lead okay, character sorry, sorry, sorry. I'm, I'm, on, mm -hmm. uh, I'm sort of like a, a non, non geek geek. So yeah. wh what are you talking about? The, so, Mass Effect and Drama was a really big game that came out last year, or was it early this year? Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. And there was a woman who had herself listed as lead character animator, I believe, on her LinkedIn. The, the character animations in the game were, uh, were hilarious, okay? They were really funny looking, they were so bad. And after you know it came out like this is so terrible people found her linkedin they scrubbed that information from that too she was obviously a diversity high and they said no she's not the lead and she was also she had no experience she came in out from nowhere so mm -hmm. yeah they scrubbed that information too and i imagine you know it's a very obviously different thing but in the same effect and as you're talking about diversity in comics and what he talks about it's true people are starting to notice it though and they can't hide this forever people are starting to actually notice that this diversity hire shit doesn't work that what james damore was talking about was legitimate you you cannot beat women into wanting to be in these roles and being good at them if they don't have any interest in it women who are actually um you know, interested in, in technology and STEM, they will go into it on their own accord. You can't beat it into women and then give them the jobs with no merit. That will not produce good results. Yeah, but you're, you're thinking that it's coming to a head. Uh, I think it is. Because I think, I think normies are waking up a little bit to being like, <laughs> well, Jesus Christ, half the, half the population of the country and people even in Canada and the UK are going to get dicked over this. Over a well, fucking diversity hire. You, yeah, you think, yeah it's... You, you think the same? Um, I, I think it's a problem. I mean, it, the thing that really surprises me the most about the music major thing is they, they could have put a woman in that position who actually had experience in the industry, but they didn't. This is somebody that came from another corporation who somehow got her foot in the door there. Nobody did a decent background check. Nobody did a resume check. Nobody quizzed her about her ability. 
Uh, the ultimate because, irony for Equifax, yeah. Right, because they were probably worried that if they did, um, it would you know appear badly for them. They'd look sexist, I guess. Mm -hmm. So, it, it, you know, even as far as like a diversity hire goes, it was a terrible choice. It's a fucking music major working in information security. <laughs> what the fuck was Equifax thinking? Uh, um, but yeah, yeah. I, I agree. I think it is starting to come to a head. Um, I think people are, are starting to question... Do we want people in positions because they're good at the job, or do we want them because we want to fill a quota? And what kind of results do we get when we quota fill versus when it's based on merit? I would say look at the response to James Demore's memo so much. The did you see? I don't remember who produced it. I it wasn't BuzzFeed, but it looked like a BuzzFeed video. I think it was an actual news outlet of all these women that were reading the memo and they were like on the verge of tears while just reading it. And then, of course, you know, yeah. they, they had to take the day off after they read it uh, at Google because they needed to prove how women aren't hysterical or aren't prone to hysteria. <laughs> so, because uh, we were so not hysterical that we have to take the day off. That is hilarious. And th they're, they're such a, a mockery of themselves. You have to be so indoctrinated into the, this cult of ideology to not see that. I think people are getting it because it, it's funny. It's it's frank. I mean, if it wasn't so fucked up and sad, it would be hilarious. I mean, it's still funny a little bit. <laughs> right. Mm. <laughs> yeah. I, okay. I, I don't I don't know where to take this conversation so far as as this is concerned because it's just it it it's it's stupefyingly horrifying. This this thing uh, that sounded an awkward phrase, but the, the whole Equifax of like as I said before the 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 stream started. You know, this is basically the, the, the deep state Facebook account. You know, it's with everybody's information about everything. And God knows, it could be a couple of, you know, 20-something losers who stumble upon that, that um, all that, that, that uh, hacking gear that the NSA lets slip through the door with uh, former employees. And by the way, nobody's talking about that. It was sort of like a blip on the horizon. And then the fact that all these tools are out there you know, running free, as it were, and nobody's saying anything about that, and nobody's wondering if the, you know, the two are connected. I mean, is anybody mentioning that, or, or, or what? Yeah, it, it's weird. It seems like certain information when it comes to light uh, is just glossed over or not talked about, uh, either because it's unpopular or because they don't want the result of the conversation to change people's viewpoints. And so it's like a, a lie by, uh, you know, it, it's omitting things. You know what I mean? Mm. Leaving it out yeah. of the conversation intentionally because you don't want people to have a reaction that you can't control to it. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> oh, God. No, I, I mean, this whole thing is just sad. Really, I mean, yeah, it's funny, but sad. I Because there's also, what recourse does anyone have here? There's, we're all already screwed. There's nothing anybody can do. It's out there. It's out there. There's nothing anyone can do about this. Which makes it a weird thing to talk about because the, well, the, the, normally, like with a lot of political issues or something, you can be like, "Well, what could we do to fix it?" Oh, here, fuck, you know, there's nothing. Yeah, well, there's, I, there's, oh, go, sorry, ahead. go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, no, oh I, I was just gonna say, yeah, there, there's nothing people can do about this. I mean, the only hope that anybody in this country has, the half of the country that would have got screwed over by this, um is that the government somehow is able to find out who did it and prevent them from moving that information. But they have no idea who it is. That's not happening. That's not right? Happening. I, I, you know, it, it could be a kid that thought it was funny. It could be a foreign government. It could be a, a state actor. They have no idea who did it. Right, and I'm guessing I mean, that the fact that this happened three months ago and they still haven't found who the culprits, the people who actually have this information, probably means that they're never going to find out who has this information. Yeah. The astounding thing good. is, I wonder if you turn on CNN right now, what are they talking about? Are they talking about this or are they talking about Trump and Russia? <laughs> probably Russia. talking about Trump and three scoops of ice cream or some shit. Right. <laughs> 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 yeah. yeah, Trump stole, uh, uh, like breaking news, Trump stole fucking kid off a of, uh, fucking, well, like, shit off a baby or some shit, you know? Their, their current way that they're doing this, they've moved that Trump-Russia narrative so far that's like, well, a couple years ago, Trump was trying to build a hotel in Russia and that proves collusion. It wasn't built and the deal didn't go through, but... No, no, no. Collusion. No, no, no. That's proof of hacking. Therefore, this is going to be completely... You know, my, my, my honest opinion about Trump is I don't think he's going to last a year. I think that he's really? gonna, just going to throw in the towel at some point because I think that he's just you know he's just going to say well, why why deal with this shit and just quit. 
No, see, I, I don't see that happening. I, I think he's got a stubborn streak. I think he, yeah. even if you oh, wanted to throw the stubborn. towel in, yeah, he will keep going yeah. at it just to spite them. Yeah, but the thing is, see, the one, the thing that he wants the most is precisely the respect of these people who despise him and are throwing shit his way every day. I mean, I, I mean, and I also, I think that the guy never expected to win. I think, I think that that, he, that, could, he, that could be very well true. But I, I, I think. think yeah. you know, that's I think he, he takes after his father. I mean, there was an interview he did on 60 Minutes before he put his hat in the ring for this, mm -hmm. uh, where they're talking about his dad and the influence he had. Uh, and mm -hmm. his father was like, you know, never be defensive, always be on the attack, don't take shit from people, crush people that get in your fucking way. Um, you know, if you're standing at the end, you're a winner. Right. And I think, that, I think that's the mentality he has. And even if he doesn't get the respect, I think he sees it as, Fuck Washington and fuck politicians. They hate me here, so I'm going to stay here just to piss them off. I, I know that the problem is that I think he does want their respect. That's why he keeps doing this. And that, that is a major pitfall for him. Yeah. He, he wants the media to respect him, even though he keeps shit talking them. But it's like he, he doesn't understand, I think, on some level that if they're never, it doesn't matter. You are never, ever, ever. These people are so despondent. That they are, and I mean, many people on the left, not just the mainstream media, but certainly them, they are never going to respect you. They're never going to approve of your presidency. They're going to fight till the bitter end to try and get you removed. So just fuck off with it. Stop trying to appease them. It will never work. I think yeah, he's. I, I completely agree. Mm. I think he's, but it's, it's a hard, it's hard for him because yet I think he does want the respect very much. So it's hard for him. Yeah. Yeah, I mean the guy's. And he reacts mentally. negatively by firing everybody in this fucking, uh, you know, in the White House who had any positive. Influence. Yeah, because that's the other thing. I mean, uh, from an organizational standpoint, his White House is a complete mess. He keeps firing everybody, you know, and and so how can you have any kind of, uh, you know, administrative stability in order to pursue the policy goals that you have? And mm -hmm. also the other thing that this guy he won, yeah, sure, you know, but and everybody says that he's especially six hex and hammers claims that he's playing four D chess, but the thing is he. He's not actually, you know, getting any policies that he wants. You know, they're not coming out of, of the Congress as as bills, as legislature that can be signed and implemented. You know, well, you can't, you can't blame Trump on the repeal and replace not happening. That's fucking John McCain's fault. Fuck McCain. Oh. Well, that's that's what I think he's doing. That's actually, that's actually smart. I yeah. I think what he's doing. I think the approach he's taking is to try to implement law changes and put it basically back into the House and the Senate. Like, I'm not going to let DACA go through. You guys fix it. And when mm -hmm. they fail to do it, it makes them look bad. I don't want Obamacare. You guys fix it. And when they fail to do it, it makes them look bad. I think well, he's, he's playing a game where he's putting it on them. He takes the heat initially, but in the end, they look bad because they can't come together and create a common consensus consensus on how to go forward. Yeah. Uh, the thing is that it's not... Most people, I would say, do yeah. not have the political acumen to understand that because I see everyone saying, that, like, oh, Trump couldn't get his couldn't get Obamacare replaced. That must mean it's Trump's fault. Like, they they have so <laughs> little understanding of how politics no, but, uh, 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 it, politics. It, 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 it's it, it, it's it, either intentional or... It's either intentional, intentionally being intellectually dishonest or just being stupid. I don't know which it is sometimes. No, no, about, about Trump, about Trump and, and the way he's moving forward, it seems to me that uh, what you're saying, yeah, it could be interpreted as a deliberate, deliberate, deliberate ploy, excuse me, but it, from my sense, it could be that he's simply just, you know, playing whack-a-mole and just hitting it, whatever pops up, and it's just turned out that way, but not in a deliberate sense. I don't feel that the guy is driving his administration. He sort of seems to be being buffeted by the winds as they come yes. and, and just reacting as opposed to being proactive. Exactly. Um, I, I think... I think the thing with um the the thing with Trump uh, watching his actions over the last year, I suspect that he's one of these people who didn't really like. I mean, he obviously had his campaign promises and he knew what was popular, but I think internally he didn't necessarily have the like the desire to take power in order to do something with it. I I suspect he is somebody who wishes for power for power's sake, so that's maybe why he's not being as effectual as we perhaps expected. I don't know if it's that kind of implies. I mean, I know we know he's he is an egotist. I, I think that's honest. I and I yeah, I very happily voted for the man, but also because I supported him so hard, I'm critical of him as well. Because who who has more to lose than me in that case, uh, or or than anyone who voted for him? Uh, yeah, I, I I think that it's 
look, he's surrounded by neocons. He's, he's used to running a business where he can fire people who don't live up to his expectations. That doesn't work in politics in the same way. You need to keep some people around you, I think, who are going to have a more... Po and, and I'll tell you this about Trump. He is a, a family businessman, as Jim mentioned as well, like the um, effect of his father. This is why he tr uh, trusts, you know, uh, his family. He trusts his family first. That doesn't mean they're good influence, but he trusts them first because he thinks that they're in his court, that they're, in, you know, rooting for him. Mm -hmm. Not smart, but based on his experience, I understand why he does that. Because, I mean, everything about his... Um, his uh, campaign even was like who supported him first and foremost was his family who supported him and his business his family. Well, perhaps but uh, i wanted to turn a little bit back to uh, to something uh, jim i want to ask you something i'm totally turning the conversation off to this, another topic but it's something that's fascinated me you recently had the rubber dub dub uh uh episode on, on your channel okay and i i've i've never been as quite as laughing so hard or as horrified as i was by that conversation i just want to ask you I think that this is a question a lot of people want to ask. I know that Aiden and I have talked about you in this regard. Is how do you find this shit? I mean, it's 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 how do you find it? Please explain. Sometimes people will send a link. Sometimes they'll stumble across it on a you know an image board or forum. Uh, with you know like in Ross particularly, uh, I came across his live stream right as he was talking about uh, looking up videos of naked kids in bathtubs. Uh, and then trying to deny it, and then within 10 seconds, somebody responded to him saying, well, you said you had a problem, and you were getting help with it. So, you know, that really piqued my interest, and I go on there, and it just devolves into a shit show from there. You know, this guy's got, he tried to throw everybody else under the bus to make himself look better, but it made him look worse. Because, you know, he went from a guy looking up these kind of videos to now suddenly associating with people that were self-identified as pedophiles and hebophiles, according to him. Um, you know, it, it, talking about how he did this every, you know, every week, a couple times a week for years and saying that, you know, I'm looking up naked kids because I think they're cute and funny like cats and dogs and I want to be a dad. That That's so bizarre and it just didn't ring true. Uh, and uh, him talking about stuff like I had a therapist, but I had to let my therapist go because they were going to call the police uh, because I was talking to a friend who was going to come over. Like, it, it's just, I, I don't know how to peg him. I, I don't know what his, his m issue is. I would suspect that he's probably schizophrenic uh, based on some of the stuff I've heard. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe a sociopath. Yeah. I don't know. But, he, you know, yeah. he... he wait, wait, how old is this guy? Uh, he's 20. 19 or 20. Jesus Christ, All the people man. involved in this are adults. They're not, none of them are teenagers. None of them are kids. Him, uh, his friend Ruby, her boyfriend, uh, his other friends, they're, they're all adults. Um, and... It, it's just bizarre, but you know, like looking through the videos where he's talking about his grandmother's yelling at him because he lives with her. You know, you need to take a shower. You need to get clean. He hasn't yeah. done it in three to four weeks. Um, oh. You know, it's it's stuff like that that makes you go, "Holy shit!" You know, what the fuck is the story with this guy? Um, it, but he 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 alternates between playing the victim and acting like uh, he's being bullied. And then screaming his head off about murdering people and doxing them and destroying their lives. So it's like this weird spectrum he exists on. But yeah, it, it's just, you know, I, you know, I don't know how to react to that. You know, you come across somebody talking about this shit and you're like, okay, let me ask a few questions. And then they lose their mind about it. How'd you come uh, across it, that channel in the first place? I, I believe somebody linked it to me. Uh, people were talking about this guy for a couple of days. And I had some time to kill, so I, I probably clicked yeah. the link. And then right as I popped on, he's talking about this shit. Um, you know, I, I, I've dealt with it one subject similar to this before, which was Nick Mate, who was a guy mm. that um, tried to prove to a judge that he didn't molest his stepsister by filming himself masturbating with uh, shit. Yes. That was horrifying. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. Dude. Oh, God. Yeah, that was his legal defense. He filmed himself jacking off to shit and wanted to send it to the judge as proof that he wasn't a pedophile. I don't know how that works, but in his mind, it did. You know, I think his oh, autism God. is a choice. I think he was, he was only into shit and not into kids. Or something. Was oh, his yeah, it must have been <laughs> that. Must have been his rationale. You know, like no, but, shit turns me on, not children. Look that guy. <laughs> up. He, you know, he, look. Here's what I want you to do. In your mind, you guys who don't know who McBait is, imagine what you think this guy looks like, and then go look at a picture of him and see how it matches well, up. <laughs> okay. Well, whatever it is. The the thing though that that sort of like that scares the shit out of me to tell you the truth. 
uh, is, and because I, it scares me because I'm the father of two small children, uh, that pedophilia is becoming normalized. That freaks me out. You know, there, famously, there was an article, a couple of articles on Salon, you know, one title, you know, I'm the pedophile, you're the monster, and it was just, good they God, and it seems as if the society It's been is, removed. Yeah, they scrubbed it. After yeah. Milo. They removed uh, everything. Yeah, yeah, I wonder why. After, yeah, they couldn't, <laughs> yeah, because they, they couldn't, you know, run that with a straight face after, after tarring Milo as a pedophile. Whereas, if you actually, okay, this is, I'd, I'd ask you guys. I listened to what Milo said, and what Milo seemed to me, please correct me if I'm wrong, he seemed to be saying that when, when he was a uh, teenage teenager realizing that he was a homosexual, he basically engaged in homosexual activity with older men, but he acted, he, he, uh, from his point of view, it was with complete consent on his part, and he did not feel that he had been abused. And yeah, George Takei said the same Whether it thing. is, you know... Uh, You're a little bit robot but George Takei said the same thing, so, and George Takei is a hero of the left, so nobody gave a shit when he said the same fucking thing. George Takei makes me cringe. Uh, the other thing is that yeah. uh, the thing that they were mad at Milo about, and you could be mad at him if you want, is that he said that he was involved in these Hollywood parties where there were young boys who were being molested, essentially. I mean, it's absolutely statutory rape. But everyone in Hollywood has now come out and said, this is a thing that happens, but you, you know, you, Brad Pitt has done it. Yeah. And said, like, this shit happens in Hollywood. But for some, but because Milo was a conservative, and you know, think about him, whatever you like, uh, I yeah. have issues with him as well. It was because he was a conservative. It's we can hang him on this, and but means we also have to remove yeah, our, and also our pedophile that, article. Uh, all, all of these articles came out at the same time. It was sort of like a repeat, repeat of the GamerGate thing, right? That, that mm -hmm. all all the press came up with stories, and those stories take time to write, and they were all lined up, and they all went out at the same time from all these different media. It was a hit job, and it was a, a semi-coordinated hit job. As to the inside information as to how that coordination happened, I would, we would not have any information about that. But going back a little bit to the, to the business of our society is normalizing it, and I find it incredibly troubling. And especially with this push to have um, transsexuality of children, it's sort of like, you know, if, if a child, a, 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 you know, an underage minor who doesn't know anything, right? They believe in Santa Claus, for crying out loud. If they decide that they're uh, uh, of the opposite of their biological sex, then you have to treat them. And I, it seems insane to me. And I'm wondering, and when is this is going to stop? Oh, the police is coming for me. Uh-oh. Yeah, Google doesn't like the content of your stream. They've decided to silence you. <laughs> by the cop. Yeah, the London Metropolitan Police, yeah. I mean, the Google Metropolitan Police, yeah. But uh, seriously, how is this going to end? Because people keep saying it's a moral panic. But this it's not a moral panic. To it, it's going to end with the sexualization of children. I, I don't think, it, I mean, it, it seems pretty obvious, doesn't it? They've already if done. you create the scenario where you say that children are able to identify what they want to be as far as gender goes, I feel like I'm a girl because of this. I feel like I'm a boy because of this. Um, you're, you're setting a stage. You're, you're opening that conversation. You know, my default position is kids are idiots. You know, one day they want to be a fireman, yeah. the next day they want to be a spaceman. They don't know what the fuck they want to be. We don't let kids drive cars, yeah. we don't let kids vote, we don't let kids smoke or drink, we don't let kids shoot guns, we don't let them sign up for the military, we don't have them get jobs, we don't let them pay taxes, because we all understand from a societal level that children are fucking stupid <laughs> and that they haven't developed enough to be able to make reasonable decisions. And so when you're, you know, when you're faced with a culture that is starting to push not just, you know, gender identity, but child sexualization, you're, you're opening the door for the argument to be made. Uh, you know, I, I, ironically enough, brought this up on a stream that I was on with Milo and with Sargon uh, like two years ago, where I said, when you start seeing them mm -hmm. push terms like pedosexuality, rather than just calling yeah. them pedophiles or child molesters, that's when you know it's gone full tilt. Yeah. And I think they're trying to edge it towards that. Um, you know, as far as like the Milo thing goes, I think a lot of people were really bothered, not so much with him talking about having sex with a priest, but yeah, the, the Hollywood parties. I mean, this is going on right when Pizzagate, you know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, with all that shit's yeah. being talked about and Pedal Woods being talked about. And Milo just casually mentions that, oh, I was at parties where kids were in Hollywood and getting, you know, fucked by older men. And everybody's like, why aren't you talking about that? Um, so yeah, I can understand yeah, that, the frustration was, and anger mm -hmm. with that. 
Yeah, but that well, was two years ago that he, he mentioned that. I mean, yeah, he, he hadn't hit it big yet. I mean, he was on his way, but he hadn't hit it big when he would, it was on the Joe Rogan well, show. You, right? You're forgetting, you're forgetting um, when he was going to give a presentation about Pizzagate. He said he received a phone call from somebody in Washington telling him, not yet. Don't talk about it. So he canceled that. So oh, there, really? there's, yeah, there's weird shit in regards to this. And I, I don't know, but I find it funny that the Reagan battalion, who I really do believe is behind the opposition report on Milo that did all this. I find it funny. They would have spent a quarter of a million dollars to get information, which is publicly fucking available. These are two YouTube streams that have been on YouTube for two years. You're right. Joe Rogan and the, um, uh, the amazing atheist podcast. So right. the fact yeah. they're paying that kind of money to get that information where they could just fucking Google it is staggering to me. I'll do opposition report. You know, Reagan Battalion, if you're listening, I will do your opposition <laughs> reports for you for a quarter of a million dollars and send you all the fucking oh, YouTube links yes. you want. Yeah, yes. no shit. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I'm looking for a job. Actually, I'll do that. actually you would, if I needed oppo research, you'd be the guy to call. Yes, definitely. <laughs> but uh, I, I, going back to the, the sexualization of children, Jim, you're thinking that this is that this is baked in and we're not going to be taking a step back. Is that basically your bottom line, that, that children are going to be sexualized and, and pedophilia or something not called pedophilia, pedosexuality, whatever they want to call it? Well, that's going to be... look, at, look at how society has evolved over the last 50 years. Um, you know, when we talk about gay rights or transsexual rights, uh, people would bring up the argument of, well, you can't say that it's going to keep getting more and more extreme because it's a slippery slope fallacy, which is a legitimate thing. Mm -hmm. But just because a fallacy exists describing a scenario doesn't mean that scenario can't fucking happen. You yeah, know, exactly. The same condemnation that we used against homosexuals in the 50s and transsexuals in the 80s and 90s mm -hmm. uh, disappeared as society became more tolerant. And I'm not saying that's a good or a bad thing, but I'm saying the arguments used against those two groups are the same arguments that are being used against pedophiles. Right. You know, it's, it's disgusting, it's immoral, it's anti-religious, yeah, exactly. all these reasons why you shouldn't do it. Yeah, uh, and, and and I think that, you know, where do we go from here? I mean, there are really only three things left, aren't there? I mean, you've got bestiality, you've got incest, and you've got pedophilia. So well, no, incest, incest, no, 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 incest is in the rearview mirror. Ever since Catherine Harrison's book, The Kiss, back in 97, the incest is pretty much normalized. People don't talk about it, but if it's, everybody says, oh, well, if it's consenting adults, I don't see the problem. Do you hear anybody arguing against incest? Because of the whole issue, they're going to be called a bigot. It's you're going to yeah, be called exactly. a bigot, and they're going yeah. to tell you that. Um, well, the data really well, show because this yeah. is true, though. This is the truth. This is the truth. That honestly, even yeah. if you interbreed with a direct relative, the chances uh -huh. of your kids being all kinds of weird mutants is not extremely high. It happens more from generations of that, and given the genetic diversity that we have right now it would probably take like at least two generations of complete interbreeding. Now you still have a higher risk for weird genetic problems when you intermarry with a relative. Sure. So that's mm -hmm. the kind of data they'll cite. They'll say, oh, so sure, it's fine. It's not weird at all. And, and you know what, actually there's, there's um, I'm trying to remember the absolute, the uh, accurate term, which is that <laughs> because of, there's a sort of homophily of people that, who are similar to us that we are attracted to. Um, we are always birds of a feather of humans who are attracted to people who, generally speaking, look and act similar to us. For example, brothers and sisters who are raised in different homes, if they meet each other as adults, and not just brothers and sisters, mothers and, and sons, for example, who meet each other after years, tend to be attracted to each other because of the homophily. Mm. It's actually something that is very weird, but it's because we're attracted to people similar to us. Uh, gross. Well, no, yeah, again, yeah, it's, no, it's, I, it's I, gross. I we have like an inherent yeah. thing about us is like this is not right, and we know why it's not right because somewhere in our in our genetic uh, background we know like yeah, if you do that shit you're gonna have fucked up mutants. <laughs> no, actually, actually, I actually there there's um a study I, I forget where it is, but it, it seems that the the trigger to prevent that among siblings is when they're growing up when they see one another defecating. Uh, I have no idea. Not why for Nick Bates. Uh, <laughs> <what? laughs> oh. <laughs> 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 Tell that to the judge, Nick. But uh, anyway, um, yeah, I, I read that that was that was the trigger. But look, right now we're living in the deregulated sexual marketplace. And what does that mean? It means basically that you can have sex with whomsoever you want, so long as basically three conditions are met. Number one, you're sexually attracted to them. Number two, 
both of you are on the same side of the age of consent. That is, if you're both under 18, that's fine. If you're both above the 18, age 18 or 21 or whatever the age of consent is wherever you live, that's fine, uh, socially and legally, really. And the third condition is that the other person that you want to have sex with actually wants to have sex with you, that there is consent on, on, that, on their part, right? Uh, and it, it seems that they're chipping away at the, at the second limitation. They're already chipping away at the first limitation that you have to actually be attracted to it. I mean, Dennis Riley is basically saying that, you know, if, if, you don't, um, if you're not sexually attracted to uh, transphobic, uh, transgender people, then you're transphobic and you're evil bigot and you should die, Nazi. Nazi scum, mm -hmm. you know, and, and it seems as if you know your sexual desire is becoming a political issue, and uh, on the other hand, uh, insofar as the second condition of both being on the same side of the age of consent, we see it chipping away with this pedosexuality. I heard and I tweeted, and I forgot the name of a couple of new terms for uh, for um, it's like sort of like cloverleaf or something like that. Fortune? New terms for pedophile? Yeah. Oh, oh, oh. Um, yeah, they, they tried to rebrand it. Yeah, they're, they're, they're trying to rebrand it. Yeah. I don't remember. I, I, I think I know what you're. I think I know what you're talking about. I think the new term is liberal. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. They said that one. I'd forgotten. It slipped my mind. Yeah, but. It just freaks me out, and I'm trying to figure out if this is you, Jim. You're of the opinion that this is, you know, it's on its way. It's baked in. Aiden, what do you think? Or are we gonna are we going there and then gonna be coming back, sort of like okay. a yo-yo thing? Uh, my take on that would be one second, pumpkin truck. Um, I think that this is going to be much as we're coming to a head with this SW. The diversity higher things. This is going to be, yeah, map, that's it. Minor attracted person, someone in the trap said. Minor attracted person is the new term. Um, I think this is going to be the hill they're either going to die on. I, I think it's a, the hill they're gonna have to die on if they wanna really go this far and include um, P in the LGBTQIAA plus thing. If they wanna start including that in, in their acronym, uh, it's going to alienate a ton of people because anyone who understands anything about uh, pedagogy or about child psychology understands that uh, pedophilia is horrifying to children, that children cannot consent, that children do not understand sexuality, and that it, it fucks them up forever. Yeah. Yes, it does. But I think, I think we have, um, I think with this, I think that uh, Metica here is right because there is historical precedent for the sort of these sorts of things, these sort of severe things happening to children. Like in Carthage, there was a lot of child sacrifice. So I don't see, especially considering what's happened over the past 50 years, in spite of a lot of evidence, I, I can see this happening. It might take a lot longer than what has happened with trans people over the last, say, two, three decades. But I, I wouldn't rule out that P actually becoming socially uh, accepted. Well, I, I think it's a, um, you know, I, I do think it's baked in, but I think it's a self-solving problem. I think morality is going to chip away and the arguments are going to be made in the favor of it. But I think that uh, physical survivability is going to play a role in it. And what I mean by that is we're kind of on the cusp right now of a post-antibiotic world. And sexual liberation, which was preached to people from the 60s onward, about having as many partners as you wanted, about having the experiences that you wanted, being free and liberated as an adult kind of flew in the face of modern uh, morality and, you know, uh, societal norms. So people basically just fucked each other and they didn't really care. But I, I think that as we start to see, you know, STDs and diseases emerge that can't be treated anymore. I mean, we've got cases of gonorrhea that can't be treated. There's nothing that works on them. When that shifts from something like gonorrhea to something like syphilis, where it goes to your brain, it drives you crazy and you die, people are going to start freaking the fuck out. So I think we might see a return to very, very hardcore, conservative, traditional values, not because we hold that morality in esteem, but because we have no choice. And I think that's going to be what is the pushback against kind of the breakdown in our society, if you want to look at it like that. So I, I, mean, I know that's like a weird, no, a weird conclusion, but I, I think that's where it's headed. Because we have no antibiotics. They're not going to really be able to engineer bacteriophages quickly enough. 
what are you going to do? Drink mercury? Inject yourself with, you know, like silver? Um, yeah. You, you're pushed into a position where you can't just go out and fuck to your heart's content. And I think that as people stop doing that, sex is going to become less of a I'm liberated and progressive thing and more of a scary thing. And I think it's going to shift it back the other way. Mm. Well, I, I talked about this a little bit when I talked about what the actual K factor is in terms of evolutionary social psychology. I don't want to get too much into that. I will be talking with Tilder, I think, next week about it. But um, we saw this with the introduction of oral contraceptives uh, for women, which was that, yeah, you didn't have to really worry about shit anymore. And as we saw advances in medicine, you could just engage in all of these uh, risk-taking behaviors as a woman. You didn't have to worry about fucking anything, did you? However, that catches up. It catches up socially, and now it's catching up uh, physiologically and biologically. And you don't get away with cheating biology forever, I think. <laughs> mm. No, certainly not. Right. I was thinking. I was actually thinking that what would catch up with us is the uh, uh, Muslim invasion of the Western democracies. That that would happen before what you, Jim, are outlining insofar as uh, diseases and what have you that their hardcore moralism would take over just as they take over they are taking over our our yeah i mean i'm i'm very everything ends and my thinking is at this point that the western democracies will end by way of of being overrun by the by the muslim population that we have imported and are allowing to uh, overtake us i mean that's my thinking at this point and their morality, their strict morality, and and their 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 uh, keeping women uh, uh, very um, very under the thumb of the of the, of the Muslim patriarchy because they really are patriarchal, right? I, I think that that is is going to be the end of our of our civilization and a return to a morality. It's going to be an Islamic morality, but at least you know you you're they're not going to be having sex with children, okay. Well, <laughs> if we're talking about. Uh, you know, yeah, exactly. you might want to reconsider your point on that one. <laughs> yeah, I know. I'm sorry. Also, although Islam is is a patriarchal society, a patriarchal system, we need to be aware that Islam is worse. I would say probably, or at least as bad towards fucking men as it is towards women. Men are the lowest fucking. They're lower than dirt in Islamic society because they're considered completely expendable. I, I don't like that idea. I mean, I, I understand it, why people like myself are like, who wonder why these feminists don't ever bring up problems in the Muslim world. Well, they don't bring up men's issues at all, but men's issues in the Muslim world are completely fucked. And yes, they do fuck children. Um, yeah, I mean, Aisha, yeah, who was absolutely. Muhammad's favorite wife, was seven no, when I... he married her. But, but hang on. He didn't <laughs> fuck her till she was 11, I believe, or 12. Oh, a gentleman. Yeah. I know. Oh, shit. <laughs> Yeah. Go, Muhammad. Yeah. Oh, yes, our true gentleman. Cheers. <laughs> a tips turban. Yeah, I, I don't know if it will fall to a caliphate. I, I, you know, I think that there's a history for republics turning into empires. Maybe what we'll see is some kind of a, a, a radical nationalism taking root in the West. Whether that's like an American empire or some kind of European empire, I don't know. But maybe people will pull back from the idea of a worldwide caliphate and say that's not the direction we want to go. But it, you know, regardless of if, if it's Western or Eastern or Middle Eastern, I really do think that uh, we're going to be forced into a more conservative mindset just because we're going to have to react to things that are happening as far as disease goes and just progressive attitudes go uh, and being able to kind of manage it and mitigate the damage that has on the economy and other things. Mm. Yeah, because it makes sense to think that we're living in a window, uh, uh, the window of antibiotics, as it were, because uh, the antibiotics are unprecedented, and it has created a population boom, because all these people who are alive uh, because of antibiotics, but there is inevitably going to be a point where um, viruses and diseases will be resistant to any antibiotic we create. Uh, also, the pharmaceutical companies are not investing much money in R&D insofar as antibiotics Aiden, you'd be one to ask about this. Am I correct or incorrect? About the, the okay. <clears throat> so, from what I understand about now, I, I'm not the person to ask about medical stuff. I'm mm -hmm. a social psychologist, which is kind of like a joke. Uh, okay. But <laughs> uh, from my understanding, though, the companies that 
companies pay for this, big par big pharma. What they want are they want drugs that are going to make them the biggest bang for their buck. The, the right. drugs that they put on the fast track are drugs that are going to make them the most money. You right. know, because they're going to be sell them to more people. So, for example, everyone hates Martin Shkreli, right? Because, oh my right. god, he bought that aid medica AIDS medication and then drove up the price. <gasps> well, there were like 100 people using it. I, that's an, an exaggeration. But there weren't a lot of people using that particular medication. And actually, him buying it and driving up the price made it possible for them to do more research into perfecting that medication so it was cheaper and easier to access. I know that that makes people upset, but they don't like to look into the details of that. And I, and I don't know, Martin Shkreli is a very um, mustache twirly sort of guy in terms of how he's perceived publicly. But, uh, for example, uh, there's this guy, um, uh, Yoshi Obayashi, who's a comedian, but also one of the things that he does is he, he involves himself in medical studies. And it's absolutely mm -hmm. true that they just want to, they want to put forward, you know, what's going to sell. That's, and they will fast track no, you no, and no, I it if you're actually qualified or if you have the disease, they just want to put that. Wait, uh, how do you say his name again? Uh, his last name, Martin what? Shkreli? Shkreli? See, I, I, I thought it was like I thought it was like a cross between Shrek and Shekel. I kept calling him. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think I put the Shekel in there a little bit. I think it's Shkreli. Is it? Sh I have no clue. I I only read things. I don't. So I have no fucking idea. Oh no, I I don't know. I've never really I've never really listened to anybody pronounce it, so I wasn't sure. Shkreli? Yeah. Neither am I. To tell you the truth. Yeah. Well. I, a few years ago, I was uh, like peripherally involved a little bit in 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 a uh, pharma thing. And what I understand is that what they're interested in is they are not interested in any kind of cure for any disease. They're interested no. in creating drugs for chronic conditions. Yes. Uh, because for this reason, it's a chronic condition, they take them forever. Uh, you know, you solve a disease and, you know, no more sales. And they want sales. That's the thing that they most want. Um, consistent sales over time. Right? It doesn't matter what the price of it is. It doesn't matter, you know, if it's expensive or cheap drug. They just want to be feeding it forever. And they don't want any disease to be cured. Okay, because a cure is a killer of the drug, right? Um, and so I know that that is one of the reasons that they have not really invested much money in antibiotics, at least the companies that I was sort of like semi-familiar with, which were all in Latin America. But they were the representative of um, pharmaceutical uh, companies around the world, you know, and, and the big ones in the United States and, and in uh, Western Europe. And so it, it seems that... It, if some superbug develops, you know, who here had to read that stupid book, um, uh, Earth Abides, I think it was called? Where it was some, some novel about like the end of the world. It was sort of like The Stand. Well, some superbug pop pops up, you know. It could happen in our lifetimes, although sure. I think all kinds of shit might could be. happen in our lifetimes. Yeah. That I would mean, cause all the kinds of shit. <laughs> if Donald Trump is president, so yeah, oh, all no. kinds of shit has happened. Oh, by the way, um, who, show of hands, who believes that uh, Donald Trump is responsible for Harvey and Irma? Oh, do you want me to break out my notes? <laughs> yeah, sure, yeah. why not? Yeah, yeah he right. was. He was also responsible for the earthquake. Also, um... Oh, in Mexico, yeah, because yeah. they don't want to put the wall. The weather is yeah. racist. Putting down the yeah, the weather is racist. Yeah. Where would I start? Yeah, eclipses are racist. Now, oh, no, I know. No. The, the, thing that, the thing that blew my mind was okay, that... Okay, let's I be real about the believe, Eclipse thing. Honestly, I, I could not honestly believe that there were people on the left saying that the people in Texas and Florida had it coming over Trump. Oh, yeah. I, I can't believe it. I mean, that is just insane thinking. You know? uh, and nobody, I've got a great one. At least the, I've yeah, got a great tweet uh, that I saved. What? It was the same fucking asshole who uh, was saying, I don't, I think Ian Miles Strong retweeted it, where it was this guy being like, I hope all those, those Trump supporters from Texas die. And then 10 days later, I was like, oh, somebody please help me and my family in Florida. Fuck <laughs> you. <laughs> Come as the bitch. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that, that's just, yeah. <laughs> Life changes pretty fast, yeah. Life comes at you fast. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, oh that, that's just, oh, well, anyway. Uh, break out your notes, Aiden. I know that you're dying there with your notes, so no, break them dying. out. I've got tons of notes on everything. I take notes for everything. Um, oh. A couple of things. Well, if we want to talk about, first of all, the idea of global warming, I think that the, the whole idea that there's a 97% consensus is already uh, dubious at best. It also relies on the fact that, I don't know how much I want to get into this. I got, I got two pages of notes on global warming. 
go and the for idea, it. Whatever, oh. you know, how much I want to go on. But your chat, they're going to call me a hole. Oh, well, make them mad if I keep doing it. I'll go for it. <laughs> All right, these are my exact notes. Okay. Uh, basically, is that we are exiting a small ice age that ended in 1870. Correct. So when you see that, that the temperatures have gone up since 1870, that's completely correct. The temperature absolutely has risen since 1870. I don't have the exact number. It's um, risen 1.5 degrees Fahrenheit over the last 100 years since the end of the last mini ice age. So 1.5 degrees Fahrenheit, the EPA estimates it may go up between 0.5 and 8.6, which is a big estimate, but the EPA has no fucking clue. And in fact, we know because consistently government estimates and models that are used to determine the increases in climate every single year have been wrong and overestimation. Every single year since 2000 that I have data on it, they have overestimated how much the climate would go up. So that 8.6 yeah. number, eh, not sure about that one. Uh, also what you guys, what everyone I think doesn't always know is that like everyone thinks this is the hottest the earth has ever been. That's complete bullshit. Uh, yeah. We actually have very good reason to believe that not only we don't know, for example, how hot the earth was in, thousands of years, thousands and thousands and millions of years past. But all global climate scientists absolutely deny and reject the period between 950 and 1250, which is called the medieval warm period, wherein there was unprecedented yeah. growth both in population, in farming technology, and in, a, well, it's the fucking beginning of the Renaissance, Renaissance, whatever. Oh, you... Yeah, there was the, uh, there was actually vineyards up in Yorkshire back then. Yeah. It was when grapes were introduced yeah. to the United Kingdom, is the this exact period, because they were not excellent there beforehand. Um, yeah. Shit. Uh, so that whole, like, um, you know, Al Gore's, like, hockey stick graph of going up, it intentionally, and everyone who says that is a, an idiot who is completely ignoring the medieval warming period. And in fact, when people have gone back and looked at the data that were involved in the collection of that, they found they, quote, lost the medieval warming period data. And the way that they collected that is they used a three they 390 percent oversampled or at least overused research on that assessed the tree ring data. The problem is that trees grow more both when there is more carbon dioxide in the atmosphere and when it's warmer. Right? Yeah. Yeah, because that, that was one of my objections to the whole global warming issue. Okay, so the Earth is warming up, so isn't that a good thing? I mean, it, it's going to be a more fecund uh, ecology for all living organisms, so what's the big deal? We don't even, okay, carbon dioxide is not inherently bad. It's good for trees. It's what, it's part yeah. of the process of photosynthesis. The whole idea yeah. of the 97% consensus among scientists is absurd. The original study that conducted this was um, between the 1993 and 2003 agreement uh, on, uh, it was a, or excuse me, it was a meta-analysis of studies conducted between 1993 and 2003. Uh, however, that consensus made no all of those across all of that supposed 97% consensus, not a single study made any kind of conclusion about whether or not the increased CO2 and the increased warming was good or bad for the environment. Uh, Cook also in 2012 did a similar meta-analysis of 12,000 uh, papers in his meta uh, at which only 33% said anything. This is a environmental studies papers. Only 33% said anything about man-made climate change but they still, of all of those, made no claim about any harm to the environment associated with it. He still claimed 97%. Okay. However, so, however... So, hang on, hang on. Sorry, sorry to end up. I, I, I'm guessing... <laughs> you asked this... me to go ham on my notes, man. <laughs> yeah, okay. Yeah, okay. But, no, the, the thing that I'm interested in this in this topic is is not so much of the issue of... Uh, because it seems that it's pretty clear that it, it seems to be a load of bullshit. Okay? It's, it's not so clear-cut. So the a issue becomes, for me... And even if it worked their cut, it would actually long term could be beneficial for the for the planet. But for me, the question becomes, who is pushing this so hard? The climate, uh, global climate, um, global warming, and why are they pushing it? What benefit? I mean, qui bono, right? That that's the ultimate Globalists, question. Who benefits? Man, they they're yeah, they're but, aiming for the okay, state. Part, yeah, but the globalists. Yeah, for what purpose? They want to use this as the thin edge, thin end of the wedge in order to capture more reg regulatory power over the entire world? Is that the idea? Well, two, two parties they... benefit. Uh, uh, this is way outside my area of expertise, but if you're asking me who would benefit uh, from yeah. pushing that, if it were a narrative, if it was just fictitious, yeah. who would benefit? Uh, yeah. One would be through carbon uh, credits, right, money. Uh, the other would be right. stifling development of a rising world powers. 
you know, America looks at China and says China is developing too fast, it's becoming too powerful. How can we stymie them? Well, we put forward the idea that global warming is an issue to hold back their industry by not letting them do what we did to get to where we are right now. That would be the two things I see at you know carbon credits and trying to stifle developing nations. Um, well, the carbon credit market blew up, and that's over, right? And and essentially over. Um, and and insofar as stifling China, yeah, they can talk all they want, but the Chinese don't give a shit because I mean, <laughs> look at Beijing, right? I mean, it's like a, like a super over there, right? Well, look at the it's, Kyoto Accords. I, mean, I, I, I see your point, but but I'm I'm unclear as to how effective the the that would be. You know? Well, nobody's saying it's effective, but I mean, if that's the only two, I guess, beneficial outcomes for it that I could see was to to stifle development of competitors, and to try to tax and raise money uh, from domestic businesses. Uh, you yeah. know, whether or not it worked out well for them, I, I couldn't say. And again, I know nothing about this subject, so I'm just going to shut the fuck up. But that that's my two cents on that part. Yeah. I, I actually I mean, don't, I don't know, know either. I, I, either. I'm, I'm a complete ignoramus in, in this, but I'm really fascinated because it's just too much hysteria over this crap. And it's, it's, somebody has to be making a buck off of this. I think, well, yeah, because they've got, you know, interest in, in, in foreign governments where, because, yeah, they make money off of that. They make money off of, of taxing. I mean, this is why, look, okay, so you hate coal, you hate natural gas, you hate oil. Why do you also want to get rid of nuclear energy? Hmm? There's not a lot of CO2 emissions there. Uh, you know why? It's because it, it costs a lot of money to produce other alternative resources. It's relatively, it's, well, relatively uh, cost efficient to set up a nuclear power plant. Sure is, and, isn't it? <laughs> compared, yeah, exactly, compared to making a huge fucking wind farm. And who's going to make a lot of money off these alternative energy sources? I mean, it's one thing mm -hmm. like uh, Billy uh, Billy Bob Joe fuck or whatever his name is, for, who is a fucking hipster putting his uh, solar panels on his roof, right? But if you're like getting governments paying for thousands of these wind, like thousands of miles of wind farms and solar farms and stuff, that is a lot of money coming in, isn't it? Oh, it sure is. Look, they've ruined they've ruined my state. They put these shitty fucking wind farms, which are I'm I like to call them avian cuisinarts. <laughs> <laughs> they really they just kill the fucking birds, man. Yeah. Uh, yeah it's disappointing. And they don't they don't produce a lot of energy, just like solar energy does not. Um yeah, I mean, it's obvious that there is a financial, and, and I don't completely understand. I mean, you can say you can put a bunch of quote of uh, parentheses around who's behind this, but uh, yeah, I. It's obvious there's financial interests because otherwise this wouldn't make any goddamn sense. I will go really quickly. I'll go through the rest of my notes. If cool. That's okay. Um, on on the weather and uh, just to to explain some of this, uh, a couple more things about. Bullshit. We went over the 97% consensus is bullshit. Uh, that was also, yeah, Legates, uh, which is from the university, he was the University of Delaware's Climatic Research Department's director, analyzed the same meta-analysis that I just mentioned earlier about the 12K meta between 1991 and 2011, and found that actually only 1% of scientists in the uh, 12,000 papers assessed, made a definitive claim that climate was directly a man-made result. Uh, so, for example, we hear that Greenland, uh, the ice shelf has fallen off, as such as in Antarctica. That's not true. Greenland, they're the Viking burial grounds in Greenland are still under permafrost. I keep talking up the show that I fucking love called Fortitude, which is awesome. Because uh, we hear about polar bears. Oh, the polar bears are all dying, right? The polar population has remained between 20 and 25,000 since 2000. Uh, and it's actually gone up since the 1960s. In fact, if you live in Svalbard, which of uh, Norway, you have the people in Svalbard have to carry rifles around with them because there's so many fucking polar bears. Like, that's a part of living really? in Svalbard, Norway. Yeah. Yeah. Didn't a, kid, didn't a kid get killed recently by one of them? Probably. Because they're all over the fucking place. <laughs> um... This, this, although the sea level has risen over four, about 400 feet over the last 20,000 years since the last major ice age, since our mini ice age, which ended in 1870, as I stated, it's only risen eight inches. And in fact, it stopped rising in about 1997. And they, they have no explanation, or excuse me, 1990, they have no explanation for why the water has stopped rising and the climate has stopped massively rising. It's been like just little tiny bits. But this is the thing I wanted to get to about the idea of the hurricanes being racist or what the fuck ever. Um, is that here, here's the important shit. We have had the 
same number and intensity of hurricanes that have occurred between 1940 and 1970, as did occur between 1970 and 2004. That's source Patrick Michaels. The global frequency of category four to five hurricanes has had a small and insignificant decrease and the percentage, meaning like percentage of four to five category versus one to three or one to three category hurricanes has had a very small and insignificant upward trend. What this means is that there's been no fucking change in the amount of hurricanes, but this is, it gets better. Cyclone energy has been on a downward trend consistently based on the number of hurricanes and cyclones, the strength and the duration of cyclones worldwide. I believe by the time of me stating this, it was, well, until the current one, Irma, it was like 145 months without landfall of a hurricane since William in 2005. And of course, landfall is defined when the eye of a hurricane hits the land. So it doesn't matter. Nothing else matters other than if the eye actually hits land. Mm -hmm. that, that, that has been since 2005, the longest period of time without landfall of a hurricane since uh, the NOAA Institute, which is the Natural Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, has been registering and keeping track of hurricanes since 1851. I rest my case. <laughs> my eyebrows are nearing my receding hairline. What can I say? <laughs> I'll, I'll go not so tough after being raped. <laughs> Well, look about the about the whole global warming thing and all that. I mean, I don't know. I, I think it, it seems like a lot of bullshit. I'm just curious as to you know who's benefiting. That that's all I care about because it, it just seems prima facie like it's a bunch of bullshit. Seem prima facie. When was this uh, inconvenient truth film? When did it come out? Like 15 years ago now. At this point, you know, I mean, a while ago, right? And uh, I, I don't. I think I think it's all bullshit. But changing the topic completely in a completely different direction. Um, yeah, I just wanted to get my want to talk video. about YouTube drama. <laughs> uh, Tell us about this YouTube drama. He said, well, you "Oh know, yes." What, what, what do you want to talk about? About about Vox Day? What, what was going on there? I have no idea what you wanted to talk about. Yeah, so I, I was recently getting caught up with this uh, because people were talking about it. Uh, there, it, it's like a convoluted story of multiple things happening at once. Mm -hmm. um, uh, so Andrew Anglin. Uh, on Gab, it posted something about uh, Heather Harris, right? Uh, uh, that's sorry, uh, sorry. Could, that could, you, could you just give a little background to, to uh, Anglin? Uh, yeah, Daily Stormer uh, has been getting his shit kicked in from all the registers and uh, you know service providers because they don't want to host his content. Right. Uh, and so he was posting about what happened in Charlottesville. He made some kind of post. This, I may be telling this wrong, but this is my understanding of it, about her on Gab. Gab got a takedown notice about it. Uh, this started some kind of a confrontation or, uh, I guess, back and forth between him and Vox Day, uh, where he had basically thrown out and other people had thrown out that Vox Day was a pedophile. Now, Vox demanded uh, that Gab give uh, him their IP addresses so he could sue them for defamation. What mm -hmm. makes it so interesting is Vox Day, in responding to people on his own blog, had said, if you don't like somebody, if somebody says something and labels you a certain way, just call him a pedophile. Fuck it. <laughs> so, I, 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 yeah, well, I find it hypocritical. Well, why yeah, is Vox Day upset? Yeah. Why does he want to sue Andrew Anglin if he's telling people to do the very fucking thing that Andrew Anglin did to him? Yeah. And, yeah, you know, it, he went on to a live stream. They, they had a debate, right? And at the very end, Anglin asked him, you would burn down Gab uh, over this? And uh, Vox Day had said, I would burn down everything for you attacking. <laughs> Jesus. Well... Yeah, I mean the the hypocrisy of it obvious, you know, and it, quite possibly if 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 uh, Anglin's up to up to speed on what Vox Day is putting out there, it's it's possible that Anglin got the idea from Vox Day himself, you know. When, I, I would love to hear that argued in court. I, I was taking his advice and doing what he asked me to do. It wasn't. <laughs> yeah. I didn't want to call him a pedophile. Vox Day told me to call him a pedophile because he said I was racist. <laughs> No, it, it just—it just seems like schoolyard bullshit. What I find troubling about the whole um, Daily Stormer thing is that um, Google stole the 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 um, I, I don't know what it's called the 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 computing thing that allows him to have a website. He just needs to get his own private servers. I I'm kind of like Anglin. How stupid are you? Just get your but own private th servers. Yeah, but I mean, the thing is, to to go ahead, Marishan. Yeah, I mean, he is a 32-year-old man without a driver's license, so it does raise <laughs> questions, doesn't it? 
I, I just think if you're gonna, I mean, I'll say this honestly. I think uh, the Daily Show was hilarious. It, I it was, you know, it it is, I guess, a quote hate website. But it was very funny, but uh, if you have thick skin, I, they're not very nice to women. But look, like I don't mind being made fun of. I, doesn't bother me. So I'm glad um, you're of that opinion because the chat is lighting you up. Oh, I love it. <laughs> <laughs> you get no, it, okay. Uh, uh, you know, long-term follower viewers. I don't mind being called a hole. <laughs> it doesn't fucking bother. I think it's funny, but uh, no, uh, that shit doesn't bother me. Uh, he needs to get his own fucking servers because people aren't going to. No one's gonna support him now. Not in this climate. Just get your own fucking server. It's not that hard. Come on. No, but I, I, I agreed. He should have gotten his own server and then done it himself. I mean, it's not that complicated. And I well, they're they're it. taking the domain. I mean, he's getting yeah. he's yeah. getting fucked at uh, yeah, the, a level he can't he can't fight against. If nobody yeah, like it, GoDaddy won't deal with him, Google won't deal with him. Um, yeah, all the Google, other providers won't. Google took his domain, didn't they? That is the biggest. That's yeah. the only issue I actually have is that Google took his domain. That yeah. they essentially put it in jail. They stole yeah. It. So so what's what's uh, what's to stop them to doing it to, to anybody else? I mean, shit. Why don't they do it to the Republican Party for that matter? Uh, well, there's nothing to stop I mean, them, is there? There isn't. You know that that's the point. I mean, one of the things that bothers me, um, I, I keep hearing this shit about moral panic. Right? It's all moral panic. You know, hey, my all next this shit's gonna blow over. Blah blah blah. But my thinking is oh. that see, over the years, look. Uh, when I was in college in the early 90s, there was this SJ shit going on, right? SJW shit, rather, going on. And here we are, close to closing in on three decades after that, okay? Now, all those people are, are, are in corporate positions, and they believe this shit. They, they think that this is how it is, especially over the last uh, um, three decades, four decades, where the society in the Western democracies has become so stratified. Because you have the, the, the top 1% and that... 20% service class at the top of the socioeconomic ladder. The, the service class of the, of the 1%, you know, the lawyers, the doctors, the personal trainers and interior decorators and all that, those fucking people, all those people in the media, right? Those people are di completely divorced from the reality of the 80% of the population. Now, the, those people were indoctrinated with all this SJW moralistic crap, and they are now in positions of power. Okay, and they are exercising that power, and they are like, for instance, taking the domain of, of the Daily Storm, where everybody's like, "Oh, they're neo Nazis," you know. But you're you're breaking the law. You are stealing something that doesn't belong to you. Uh, uh, how can you justify it? Justify it just on a moral basis? And m my thinking is, we are not in a moral panic. This is the new normal. This is the new state of affairs, uh, and it, it's it's a, a kind of a, um, a kind of insanity that has me extremely fearful because because this insanity you know okay the daily storm we don't like them and then it's uh, uh and and stormfront and then it's you know vox day and then it's this guy and then eventually the window of what is allowed becomes so narrow that that everything becomes uh forbidden i'm not i'm not articulating properly what i want to say but i hope that you guys are understanding what i'm saying no, yeah no i'm understanding mm -hmm. Are you agreeing or, or think I'm full of shit? Uh, you, <laughs> my, my take on it as far as what the new normal is, I mean, I, I've, I've covered this myself talking about where I think things are going. Um, mm -hmm. it, it's not, it goes beyond like the Daily Storm, right? I, I think people are fine with what's happening to England because they think yeah. it's just, oh, he's this evil Nazi, who cares? Yeah, who cares? But Google's already overreaching. I mean, they already were threatening a website that had a news story written by James Alsop from a year ago. And they told the website, right, if, you don't yeah. take that, uh, if you don't take that news story down, we're removing all AdSense from your website. So, yeah. uh, you know, it, it goes back to what I talked about in uh, one of the videos after Demore's memo came out, where, you know, the, the new mm -hmm. tactic is to uh, deplatform you, demonetize you, and deperson you, basically unperson you. Uh, we're going to remove your ability to make money, yeah. so it demotivates you from wanting to continue. We're going to deplatform you and remove you from, you know, uh, websites and services that would help spread your message, and we're going to deperson you by basically shitting on who you are and not giving you any chance at uh, responding to it. So, also because you went to Charlottesville, uh, Google, yeah. I don't know for whatever reason, somebody at Google didn't like that and decided to pick this particular website and say, if you don't remove that article and get rid of this guy, uh, you're fucked. 
And, it, yeah. you know, if people think it's going to stop with Anglin and people like Alsep, they're, they're out of their fucking mind. It's going to, you know, it's going to well, be, they, they, how much can we push it? You know, uh, death by a thousand cuts, a little by little, right? You yeah. don't turn into some kind of fucking Orwellian nightmare by just going on TV tomorrow and saying, I'm the fucking Antichrist and I want to <laughs> shit up your lives. You do it little by little. You know, yeah. you make people get used to it. You make them get accustomed to getting fucked mm -hmm. in the ass. So yeah, when they're the getting frog. Yeah. <laughs> right, exactly. Uh, well, the, the thing that they did to Jordan Peterson, Jordan Peterson is, the, uh, I mean, all respect to the guy, he's never said anything that, that can be remotely considered a... Uh, 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 obscene or, or even pushing the envelope. I mean, everything he's saying is, is fairly mainstream. I mean, fairly... Uh, um, he, he is very articulate in what he says, but nothing that he is saying is like outlandish or outrageous like the Daily Stormer. And he got D, D, I mean, unpersoned. He was just, you know, thrown out of the window. And on top of that, they denied his appeal. They only reinstated him because he was such a big deal. You know, and if they're doing it to him, who, uh, shit, I, I, you know, when I get upset about stuff, I become completely inarticulate and I sound like a fucking idiot. Oh. And so that's basically what's happening to me right now. I mean, you're, really you're, you're fine. Your, your point's coming across. I, I think most people are in agreement with that. I mean, I don't think that um, it, my, my concern with this and where it's going is I like humor regardless of where it's coming from. I like funny shit. And humor always, you know, courts edginess. I mean, that's just yeah. the reality of it. Has to. And as, as we get rid of serious speech, where people are saying, you know, 1488 gas the Jews, um, <laughs> it, it's going to go from that to fucking the equivalent of a knock-knock joke. It's, oh, you know, we got rid of the serious speech, but now we got to get rid of the playful speech. We can't let you make that joke. It's a little too edgy. It's a little too hurtful. You can't say that word in that context. And that that's my fear of where it's going to go. I agree 100 percent and i think part of the thing first of all humor is a um what we call in communication expectation violation or expectancy violation humor has to be like i didn't expect that that's why it's funny not all but most Hashtag not all. um in, in part though also if you are worried about racism or any other shit like that if you make it into a joke it loses any power it could have right if you are joking about like gassing the Jews in 1488, that stops being a powerful phrase. Well, just look at Netanyahu's son. He's posting merchant memes on his Facebook right. account and pissing exactly. off the liberals in Israel. Uh, he's Netanyahu's fucking kid is saying that George Soros is the fucking devil of the world and giving well, Jews is. a bad name. And you know, they're all upset because how could you post that image? Are you a Nazi? They're they're calling a, a fucking Jew a Nazi. It's crazy. I saw on Gaff the other day, on NeoGaff, people calling Ethan Klein a Nazi for his white face video. The fuck? Like what? they I mean, they've called David they've called Dave Rubin a Nazi, they've called Milo Yiannopoulos a Nazi, they've called Jesus, who have they not what Jew have they not called a Nazi at this point? It's like well, any the, Jew who the, the thing is also by calling everybody out. a Nazi, you know, and a white supremacist or whatever, you know, yeah, it, it drives people to say, you know, if they, I'm already a Nazi, you know, fuck it. I'm going to throw in my, my, I'm going to join the Nazis. I'm going to be a Nazi because I already am, you know, so fuck it. You know, what do I have, what do I have to lose? I mean, it, it seems that by, by squeezing out the middle, the, the nuanced middle, you're just squeezing everybody towards the extreme and, and. Uh, by the way, I was I was surprised that uh, the mainstream media finally is is like saying that Antifa are a bunch of terrorists, and you know, I I'm not in the U.S., so I'm not really following U.S. Uh, mainstream media. But are they eventually realizing that Antifa are not to be fucked with, and that they should be like stamped out? No, that I think was a reaction to you know really blatant public footage of Antifa beating people in the streets. There was really no way for them to get around it, and that was like a day after they wrote these you know articles praising them as being the you know, fucking second coming of the civil rights movement. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Finding uh, peace through violence. Yeah, I love that one, CNN. Yeah, so it's, <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> so it's back to normal with us. That. They had to change that headline. They got so much Well, fucking A, they had to change it. It was insane. I it mean, was. who in his right mind wrote that copy? I'd like to know, you know? I mean, Jesus, but... Uh, well. um, yeah, no, they, they're, I, I mean, I just made the video, it's actually funny, I just made a video about this, I, <laughs> and then the next one I'm going to do is on moral panics, the second half of it, but, um, no, 
the the mainstream left cannot condemn Antifa, even though they're doing it now. But I'm telling you, the little bit they're being like, oh, well, that was kind of bad. The thing that they did when they beat an old man or they uh, were attacking a guy in a wheelchair, that wasn't really great. They're going to turn back on that. And the reason why is because Antifa is politically aligned with the mainstream left. They agree and they believe in the same things. They have the yeah. same goals. They're just their militant arm. And when you turn the mirror to them and you call them alt-left and you say Antifa is the same as you, even if that's a shitty term, it makes them recognize on some level that they agree with Antifa more than they would like to admit. And that's why you can't you can't insult Antifa. They will they will not attack Antifa. They will not talk honestly about them. So, you know, it's it's very it's it's basic Tosh Vuln Turner nineteen seventy four social identity theory, Allport nineteen fifty four nineteen fifty four, um uh, fucking uh, Cohen nineteen seventy three. Jesus, it's everything. Well yeah, I, I think what we're kind of witnessing right now is the mainstream media and maybe left and liberals are are I think taking the wrong approach to what they see as a problem. They want to silence the means of radicalization, but in turn, that's radicalizing people. You know, mm. if you, it's a lure of the unattainable. If you tell somebody they can't have something, they want it. Even if it's not something they would truly actually enjoy. If you remove these kinds of people and remove what they're able to say, I, I know I'm kind of jumping back to what we were previously talking about, but when you take that yeah, away so. from them, they want access to it because now it has a mystique yeah. to it. So when you're, you're going around and you're shutting down these websites and these people, and saying, uh, you know, they're too dangerous. What they say is too dangerous. We can't let you hear it. Now suddenly, I'm interested. Maybe I wouldn't have been before. You know, like you have all these. Yeah, you have all these people on the left. Uh, I, I think a good parallel would be in Europe, like in Germany. You can't question the Holocaust. I mean, there was a lady who was just recently sentenced again to, is it ten years in prison? Because yeah, she's she, 88. She denied, she denied the Holocaust. Yeah. If you really want to have a conversation and convince people that the Holocaust is completely legitimate, all the numbers are completely legitimate. The worst thing you can do is silence people that disagree with that. Yes. Let them talk. Fucking have an argument about it. But if you try to take away the means of people being able to argue the point, you're going to make people think something is going on. You're going to make them want to look at the other sources that you're so scared that they're going to look at. And I think the, yeah, uh, I think the left and the, the mainstream media is going to learn this lesson uh, the hard way going forward with their internet censorship, uh, with their narrative building. And I, I, I don't know what it's going to look like, but I think we're going to see a lot more extreme viewpoints in the next decade compared to what we have right now. And as far as Antifa, uh, a bunch of skinny jean wearing fucking gelato drinking pussies that attack trash cans. And I think they got embarrassed because they got their shit kicked in at Berkeley and other places. <laughs> and so they felt yeah. they had to step it up and get violent because they were being made fun of by fucking everyone at that point. Oh, yeah, just just a bunch of losers. But the thing is also, you say that it's because of, you know the, the, the attraction of the forbidden. But I think it also has to do with, you know, if, if you are forbidden from saying certain things, uh, even saying them, even entertaining them, then you start to believe that that might be actually the, the case, that it actually might be true. Uh, uh, um, and, you, and you start, and it, if you are not allowed to say that, then you find yourself in the position of saying, well, that's what I sort of believe in, but now I can't say it. So, oh, and that kind of... Uh, um, strain on, on people drives them towards holding on to those beliefs that might, in a climate that was not so uh, repressive, people would realize, oh, you know, this is a silly belief. Wh whatsoever the belief may be, whatever, whatsoever the radical extremist belief might be, on either the left or the right. Huh. I mean, we all know of right-wing guys who are believing all kinds of crazy shit. Uh, yeah. Because if you mention it, Everybody is like, oh, you can't say that, and everybody follow, falls on them like a ton of bricks, and so they wind up, you know, well, why can't I say this? And they tend to start to believe it, even if under normal circumstances they wouldn't believe it. And the same seems to be happening with Antifa. As, as, so, Could I explain the psychology a little bit? Go. This is what's called psychological reactance. Mm -hmm. um, it, I see people call it the strides end effect. That's, not, right. that's part of it, but the actual theory is called psychological reactance. It's very simple. It, you can go back to children. Uh, you tell children fucking don't push the button. What do they want to do more than anything is push the button. It's psychological reactance is a perceived or realistic um, removal of a freedom that is possessed by the individual. 
So whenever we perceive a freedom is removed, we want to reinstate or enforce our own freedoms, you know, in any way that we can. So part of that is, well, uh, it's going to make people more interested in these things that you're telling them, no, no, you can't look into that. You can't talk about that. You can't think about that. It's going to make you more interested in it because of how psychological reactance works. This is a very basic tenant and principle of human psychology. Moreover, when you make information damnable like that, it creates a stigmatization. And what happens in stigma is that stigmatized groups tend to uh, uh, come together in private. They do not discuss this shit in public. What happens is a lack of communication. As a result, is a la lack of communication between groups. And we're seeing it on both sides. And when there's lack of communication between all groups, it means intergroup conflict. That is exactly the psychology of what we're seeing. So, so yeah, basically, I can see that playing out like that, yeah. Yeah. So, so basically, exactly what they're doing of trying to repress, quote unquote, fake news and all the rest of it and all this... This, uh, the, this Sovietization of social media and, and the Google platform that's basically creating this extremism. That's what you're basically saying. Yes. Uh, the, the more you try to hide and repress, the more people will be interested in it. And, right. and if they're wondering, yeah. they're like, why are all these Gen Z people interested in right-wing politics? Well, you've, I hate to fucking quote Paul Joseph Watson, but you've made it the counterculture and the counterculture is always interesting sure. to young people in particular. I hate to quote him on that, but he's actually psychologically right on that. Why do you hate to quote Paul? Because um, he's Paul the fucking Watson. meme. <laughs> I like him. I love him, actually, but <laughs> he's a meme. <laughs> no, I, think, I think he's hilarious, but I thought that he had left YouTube, but he's not left YouTube. Oh, I, he I, I came don't... back after a week and did like a little fucking uh, guess who's back, guess who's back thing. And I was like, mm. no, no, you don't get to say yeah. I'm leaving YouTube forever and then come back after a week. And he's such a whiny. Like, oh. he's, like, he's, he's so whiny. It's like a lot of the mainstream, right? Like you look at that Dinesh D'Souza, like I, I swear, guys, Democrats yeah. are the real fascists, I swear. Like, no, 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 he's so wrong. I read his entire book and you, you I, I liked it. No, Which no, book? I, oh, it's good. The Big Lie. The Big Lie. I, I liked the historical parts until he got to the end where he started to be way hitting home on the idea like, oh, the left are all fascists. No, no. They may use brown shirt, black shirt tactics. And by that, I mean Antifa does. Which is that like, whenever I say things like that in videos, I then have to... Uh, put like a subtitle of I'm not saying they are fascists. I'm saying they are using the same tactics as the brown shirts because people can't understand the, the difference between that. It's his last chapter is complete nonsense. And he just, he says like, we need to remove fascism. No one's allowed to have fascist ideas. That's, you know, you're allowed to have that opinion. I just don't agree. And I think if you consider yourself to be a free speech absolutist or absolutist, you can't have that opinion or you're not a free speech absolutist. Uh, yeah. Okay. Well, listen, we've been going on for about 90 minutes, so I'm going to call it a day insofar as this. And, and uh. I just, yeah. Is there anything you, any of you guys wanted to say or sum up or anything before we uh, oh. say our goodbyes? Yeah. Real quick. Uh, Jim, mm -hmm. when you were on the dick show, <laughs> what's that? You were on the dick show. Like, Three weeks before uh, yeah. I was. Yeah, uh, yeah. I Dick that, asked yeah. you a question. Dick asked you a question about how many bananas you could reasonably show up your asshole. <laughs> oh, <laughs> okay. No, was, okay, okay we're, we're not pausing right Hang away. On. We're going to hear the answer to this question, please. No, no, no. He answered it. But the, the thing is, Dick asked me. He was like, I don't know anything about Jim. And he's like, you know his channel. Fucking trucks. He's like, you know his channel. What should I ask him? And I said, I'll tell you exactly what I said. I said, I don't know, man. He's old school internet. You could ask him any question, like how many bananas could he reasonably shove up his asshole and probably have a decent conversation. So what did he ask you? How many bananas you could reasonably shove up your asshole? That was not my fault. <laughs> Uh, no, Ma Masterson was pretty. Uh, Masterson was pretty fun. I, I had He's a good great. time on his uh, on his podcast. Uh, I, yeah, it was a good time. That, that was the question that was asked, quote by me, though I did not actually phrase it that way. <laughs> well, it's a question everybody wants to know after TJ, uh, you know, wowed us with his banana I mean, fetish. Oh, really, it is. It is a good oh, question. 
<laughs> hey, can I can I ask you uh, for a psychological viewpoint on what would possess a man to strip completely naked and pour hot oil on his balls and then send that video out to people? <laughs> <laughs> How real do we want to get? Um, <laughs> autism of the highest order. <laughs> yeah, extreme autism. <laughs> You know, I'm just curious well, about that, you know, because would... it's pretty fucking extreme, isn't it? That's boiling oil he's <laughs> pouring on his uh, junk. I mean, I'm not exactly sure, but I would imagine it's a lot, because I'm not, see, I, I'm not an analytical psychologist. I'm not a clinical psychologist. I'm a social psychologist, which is bullshit, retarded science. But I would imagine that's around the same reason that someone would leave their camera on while they're masturbating, while getting ready to play video games. You think he pulled a DSP, do you? <laughs> no, he did not. That was intentional. <laughs> I just, uh, my, my favorite clip, and I think if you look on YouTube, you might still be able to find it because they found a way to cut it to make it hidden. Uh, it's a, because TJ was on CNN, and they, they take the interview with the CNN anchor, and as they ask him a question, it switches over to TJ pouring oil on his nuts and shutting it in. <laughs> Oh my fucking god! It's a, that thing has two components. You know, one is the pouring, burning oil on your balls, and the second is posting it. I mean, how does this happen? How does it, you know those? It's a two-step of insanity, as far as I'm concerned. Well, uh, but the real attention. trick, as far as I think, is that he's he's somehow survived. I, I would die of embarrassment. I would not survive the embarrassment of that. that uh, I have to just, give it to him on that. Yeah, he 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 has come he, to terms yeah. with it, and uh, he he does not he seem to shy away from talking about it. He embraced it, which is the only way you can deal with that kind of thing. If you, for whatever reason, do something that embarrassing and cringy and terrible, you have to accept it. No, yeah, he, he completely embraced the cactus. I mean, fucking embraced the cactus. He, he went ahead and just married the, the cactus and just, you know, set him up in a nice uh, ranch house, you know, out in the suburbs, you know. I think I mean, we, yeah. I, I think that's ahead. all you can do. No, it's the only thing you can do. You have to be like, yeah. No, I, 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 he's a better man than I am. I, I would not survive psychologically that. But it's a, the thing is, see, posting, you know, anything on the internet is forever. You know, posting that shit, why on earth would anybody do that? I've never understood that. I've, I've well, never my, understood My understanding idea. is he, he was trying to send it to a girl he knew, and she thought it would be funny oh, to yeah. share it with the world. <laughs> yeah, because that's how it is. I my women. I, I send them, you know, video of me pouring burning oil on my balls. And, you know, it works every time. <laughs> I'm sure that message is yeah. knocking on my door. Yeah, that really I, I, gets some wet, doesn't it? Pouring fucking oil on your balls. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> I, I'm sure the message that. attached that he sent to her was, you see how much I, you know, I love you. I can put up with your shit. I can even scorch my own balls. So that must mean I'm a loyal boyfriend. <laughs> Good boy. Oh, God, did she send back a video of her getting rounded by Jamal or something? Like, that just sounds <laughs> so fucking not appropriate. I, I'm sure she sent back a smiley face winking or some shit uh, yeah. right before she spread it on the internet. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe it was one of those, like, little smiley poos that, you know, oh, God. Oh, the uh, smiley face shit, yeah. yeah. Sir Patrick Stewart. Uh, Jim, uh, pull me a hole before we leave, because I think that would make your chat happy. Okay, well, then shut the fuck up, Hole. Nobody wants to listen <laughs> to climate data. You're boring the chat. What the fuck are you doing? Thank you. Thank you, Daddy. I appreciate there it. There you go. Yeah, I'm glad you like it. <laughs> oh. Oh, God. Okay, well, you know, on that note, let, let's, let's <laughs> call it a... Now the chat's coming nuts. <laughs> oh, okay um yeah so listen guys i i'm gonna call it a, a a stream as it were and thank you so much for having done this stream with me this is the first time i'd hosted one and i was actually i have to admit i was pretty surprised i'm pretty nervous about doing it so thanks so much for being on yeah, yeah. and um yeah, and hopefully we'll do it again. And uh, yeah, we'll, we'll, you know, less climate data and, and more, you know, hot oil on the balls kind of <laughs> kind of stories. <laughs> okay, so uh, this is Coach Redpill. I'm signing off for Merchant Struggles, uh, Mr. Medicor and uh, Aiden Paladin. And uh, thank you so much for listening. Talk to you soon. I, I fuck. It is IRL.
Ebalm's world. That's exactly what that it's okay to be white shit Milo's doing and stuff. Yeah, that's IRL <laughs> Ebalm's world. Taking some 4chan meme and selling it. That's exactly the truth. I, I thought it was fucking genius how he did it so fast. I mean, just like he latched onto it's that. It's not genius, it's laziness. Well, no, it's a certain commercial and, and uh, a marketing savvy that is undeniable Milo, uh, Milo's thing. Well, yeah, but greed, um, everybody is a little bit greedy, you know, and, and everybody recognizes when it's their moment to uh, make hay. You know, look, Milo doesn't have a lot more mileage left in him, you know. Uh, I, I'm surprised I, he's even. I'm surprised he's even... I, I thought he got a $10 million infusion to start his own media company, didn't he? That I hadn't heard that. When did that happen? Recently. From, from what I understand, he got ten million to start his own thing. You're kidding me. Mm. I, I could have, oh, I could have oh, sworn. No, I, I heard but, that. You know, because venture yeah, capitalists yeah. are so retarded. Like they're throwing all well, sorts his, of money. His, in, money like... his, his money daddy, his sugar daddy, uh, uh, disowned him. It's his fault. It, it was this big billionaire who, who told You're talking him about the Mercers, yeah. Uh, but right, no, from what I understand, he still got the ten million. He still got the ten million from the Mercers or from somebody else? Oh, somebody's saying in chat it was twelve million. Okay, 12, but Jesus. from Mercers or somebody else? Uh, I, I could have sworn it was from the Mercers, and I, I thought Bannon was helping him establish, or helping him establish himself, but I, I don't know. It, I know he exists like on Facebook. He's got a huge following on Facebook, like 2 million people. His YouTube channel's yeah. got like half a million people. Uh, he, he's just not, I guess, as vocally known because Twitter was kind of his main avenue to getting towards people, but mm. from what I understand, like, yeah, he's starting up his own venture, so I, I don't know where that <clears> is. <throat> Why would you give twelve million dollars to such a fucking degenerate? That's what I want to know. No, <laughs> I wouldn't give him that well, much. I don't know. If he, I don't think he would know what to do with it in terms of organization, and and he'd need like a point man who'd actually know how to set up a business. You don't give that kind of money to a twerp like him. He's, I mean, he's, he's just a he's just a witty homosexual guy who dresses funky. You know that, that's it. You know he's he doesn't have any kind of business savvy in in an actual business setting up a business kind of sense. Exactly. All he's good at is. Is being witty and having a bit of banter and getting rammed That's by black it, men. Though. That's it, yeah. though. That goes back to what we started just saying. He's entertaining. Mm -hmm. He's funny. He makes people laugh with his, I mean, as such a fucking uh, flaming faggot. No, Shit, that's what right? that's Being... what that's what matters on the internet. If you're entertaining, people will consume whatever you have, to, you know, uh, as part of your appeal. I just shake my head sometimes at some of the stuff people spend their money on. That's all. That's all I'm saying. Chat, by the way, is just. Uh, Stop buying personality no. tests. What the fuck are you doing? <laughs> but it is so funny. This has been accelerating. Because you mentioned the Guy Fox shit with the Chanology stuff. I was really against that at the time. To the point where I went out in counter protest. Not like a serious one, but I was I thought that it's like we're we're 4chan. We're gonna go out in public and protest Scientology. And I thought, this is the dumbest shit I have ever heard of. You're taking the internet seriously. What the fuck are you doing? So I showed up with a bunch of signs that said shit like um, 4chan.org, tell all your friend. And uh, just stupid fucking shit with like memes written wrong just to piss them off because it, it did. <laughs> they got irate. They were absolutely, they were pissed the fuck off. Um, they're like, no, you're not supposed to tell anyone about our secret clubhouse. And it's just gotten worse from there. So now, yeah, it's just the commoditization of, of fucking memes and, and internet humor and culture, whatever you want to call it. Well, your chat like keeps that bringing shit. up um, uh, another question. So maybe I'll, I'll just pull all of you. Uh, they want to know if you stand... They want to know if you stand with Laura Loomer's tire. <laughs> <laughs> Rip in peace. In solidarity. R.I.P. in, in peace. Solidarity. Poor tire. Yeah. Too beautiful yeah. for this world. Too pure. Too, too, yeah. Yeah, the lefties did it. The lefties flash her tires. I stand by Laura Loomer, you know, and I believe her when she says that the lefties did it. Fuck yeah. Another casualty in the war of ideas. <laughs> what, do, what, do you think of the, uh, what do you think of the rape allegation against her? Oh, yeah, totally. I totally buy that. <laughs> I can see it. I, I totally buy that. And if we're tying it back into the JQ, isn't it weird that <laughs> of the sex, you know... <laughs> There is something very peculiar. It all comes back to the JQ. <laughs> very peculiar about the, uh, uh, um, how can we put this in a, in a, in a, in a PC kind of way? In the, 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 um, the, the, the privilege of the certain people who are all been labeled harassers and sexual assaulters, they all share a common denominator. I, I invite you to uh, consider that. And that's all I have to say about that. Andy, I, I was listening oh, Billy, in the audience. Billy, Billy, what's going uh, on? You, I, I, did I misunderstand? Or were you getting shit because you didn't do a thumbnail properly? 
Yeah, it took me twelve hours. I'm sorry, Billy. I'll I'll, I'll, I'll delete but, my time. I mean, time. who who fucking cares? It's a thumbnail. Here's the Jeff Holiday cares, Billy. Here's the but thing, I mean, Billy. why? What what does it matter? It's a fucking thumbnail. But Billy, think... he cared so much that fucking six days later, when the, the thumbnail was already updated, he was still fucking passing around. Well, look, he look, he, he didn't. Why, why are people creating timetables for fucking thumbnail development? What what, what uh, is going seen, on? Have YouTube you seen their channel? Do you, have you seen their channels, Billy? No, no, I, I I don't know. I just I I've been seeing a lot of pushback against the blood sports thing. That, that's partially why I wanted to come on and talk. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. A, a lot of pushback. People saying, "Oh, it's drama." Uh, but I mean, here's the thing: all this shit people engage in on social media. You know how many fucking Twitter fights you see between people, or Facebook fights, or fucking just any kind of platform you can imagine. The only yeah. difference is you're putting it in video format and giving the audience a chance to interact. Hmm. I, you, it, it's fucking Jerry Springer. It's Richard Bay on the internet. People love that shit. Yeah, last I, night, I, I've uh, said this so repeatedly. Great, eh? The uh, last night, yeah. Uh, yeah, the last night, and look, I don't even tell Tonka, I don't tell you to watch any of my streams, I don't care, but last night, watch that, I you would enjoy it. It's like, it's the best stream that we've had in a long time, it's not a Yeah, no, I, I, I watched the shit out of it, thank you, by the way, for asking Lauren that question, I just wanted to know if she <laughs> wanted to go on a, a walk through the wheat fields with the doctor. <laughs> wheat. I also yeah. like that she was the only fucking one in that entire call that got that. Yeah, she immediately yeah. picked up on what that was, and nobody else had any clue as to what oh, the fuck that was about. I, I, I say, I say about fuck that. Andy. I say fuck Andy. Just watch uh, Cronus's clips of uh, the best. No, of no, the whole stream uh, yesterday was literally <laughs> a, a man and two women tr trying to murder each other. It was fantastic. Mm. But uh, yeah, I, I, again, I, I don't get this. Um, People just don't like it because it's a new thing that's starting to kind of take hold and people enjoy it and everybody's set in the way of their content creation and they don't want to shift uh, production to something new. And it's really what it comes down to. Or they're not capable of doing well, it. Well, here's the thing, uh, Jim, is is that they... Uh, they cause I remember hearing this yesterday on, on Kumite after I had left when I was in the car, but but they, like, were, uh, a failure in Tonka, were talking about how... People want to keep it the way it was, meaning like the response videos or this or that. But the thing is, it was is, easier that way for them. But but here's the thing: Tonka and failure, they could still do that. It's not like my streams are preventing anyone from making whatever they want, right? Why can't it like both of it exist on the same you know platform? YouTube that has billions of fucking videos uploaded a day. Like, like, it's not like me. There, there's nothing prohibiting you from doing it. Like, it, it's just again, it's it's people that don't want to fucking adjust, or they're pissed off that it's doing well because they didn't think it was going to do well, and it, it's sour grapes, man. They it watch their they watch their numbers go down and your numbers go up. Yeah, yeah I mean, look at your your last you month, Andy. You had fucking crazy metrics. I mean, you had a lot of subs, a lot of views. You made. I, I'm going to assume I don't really fucking tell your super chats. I don't have an hour to listen to you read or to uh, listen to you read <laughs> yeah, through uh, them. Yeah, but I'm going to assume you make a good amount of money doing it. I mean, I know Tom mm -hmm. is. It looks like he makes a good amount of money doing it too. Um, yeah, and, and yeah. so it's it's something people are fucking interested in. And you know, I, I've noticed that Kraut and other people are bitching, saying that uh, this is going to make Google remove super chat. <laughs> fucking Streamlabs exists, so who cares? Yeah. Okay, Super Chat's gone. Okay, big deal. Fucking Streamlabs is there if you still want to get fucking donations from chat. Also, let me show you something here. I'm going to do a quick uh, a screen share here. Nice. Uh, let's see. Uh, may you uh, point out any of the videos that I've done in the past week or two weeks that have, are demonetized? Yeah, I'm not seeing any. I, I yeah. see the little yeah. green symbol. I th that means it's monetized, yeah? Yeah, so so Jared Heaven Taylor. Heaven forbid example, conversations happen. Well, well, look with Jared Taylor, you would assume okay, that's deep being demonetized immediately. I I hit the you know review button, and within I'd say half an hour, monetized. And YouTube knows what I'm doing; like they know who I am. Well, yeah, because the difference is you're hosting a. It's like a fucking daily talk show kind of shit. Again, it really is like the '90s fucking talk shows or morning zoo shit. You're not coming out with a political ideology. It's not, you know, Adam Raceworski wants you to become a neo-Nazi. It's I'm having a fucking conversation and we get to listen to people yell at each other and that's fucking entertaining. And I don't think YouTube really gives a shit.
Yeah, yeah. I mean, if there was, for example, when you listen to something like The Daily Show with, uh, you know, Mike Enoch, his, 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 his thing is they're giving their ideology and they're very intense and YouTube wouldn't allow that on their platform. Uh, I mean, but, they might, but they, they wouldn't. It would be age restricted, probably immediately. It'd be age restricted or demonetized because they've talked about like Holocaust denial and all this crazy shit, right? Uh, which I don't agree with, but they could talk about whatever they want, in my opinion. However, um, on my show, for example, we try and avoid certain topics that I know is illegal in Canada or something like that. But yeah, I don't. I don't think. I think YouTube. We try to avoid things that are legal. Aren't you the dude that prank called the fucking SPLC? <laughs> I didn't prank call them. I was asking them a question. A I, am I am I banned from Israel? I'm just yeah. really oh, oh, I, the motherland. You, you convinced us. Did you not hear the first hour of Kumite where that Taco's was fun as fuck? Me? That was the best episode. I, how was that was not? Nothing. How was that not completely obvious to you that I was fucking? Why would you be banned from Israel? SPLC is not even Israeli. See, now you're killing kayfabe from great radio, Jim. Hang on. Just, yeah, I, oh, I'm gonna fucking murder it dead. You're, <laughs> Call you're, me Jim Cornette. I don't give a shit. I'm gonna hit you with a racket. <laughs> God damn. Andy, do you think that uh, a lot of these people are just pissed off because you just aren't yelling at the alt right all the time like they want you to? Uh, I don't. Honestly, man, the amount of theories that you can, I think it's like, a, like, a, like variables. There's a lot of, a, a lot of reasons. Uh, I think one of the main ones may be jealousy. Um, but again, well, if, if you, Andy, on. if you, if you really want to light a fire under their ass, did you see the new feature uh, that YouTube instituted with live streams? No, it's that. You and uh, now I've told you guys. I, I think if you had like three or four shows together, you could like create a thing where people could tune in for one after the other after the other. Mm -hmm. uh, YouTube now has a thing where you can run a channel and have multiple live streams going simultaneously on the same channel, and hit a button now that will let you switch cameras between each of those streams. Huh? So you could have you could have uh, Andy Worski, Tonka Suff, Failure, and others all streaming at the same fucking time on the same fucking channel. And all somebody has to do is just hit one button and they can switch between each stream. So if you set up like a designated block of time, so like, you know, seven to nine is Tonka and then, or seven to nine is failure. And then, you know, uh, uh, 10 to two is uh, Tonka. And then you got somebody else and then uh, Worski in the evenings. You could literally create your own user created uh, YouTube version of fucking radio on oh, one channel on. and have all the money come into, you know, and, and split it. Well, that's insane. I mean, the, uh, the only hard thing is, is who's making what and how would you, you split would it? Well, I, I think it divides by. it up, but I think you each get your own unique stream key. So it's not like you'd be jumping on each other's uh, streams. Oh, okay. So you're doing it from your own channel technically, but it's almost like you're creating a hub for all the cha channels to be connected. Yeah, it's a one channel host all of the content. So, you know, like how uh, to get into a Google Hangout, I need the stream link to get into it. Yeah. And, and, you know, Tonka, like when you start one up or Andy, when you start one up, you get mm -hmm. the key that lets you specifically stream to that. So it would be one channel where you would get unique keys for each of the streams and you give out one to each individual. So they, they'd only be able to interact with their particular stream. They wouldn't be able to take yours over. That's you know what I, I'm wild. seeing, and and I'm sure you're noticing this too. I'm sure everyone's noticing this, uh, and I notice it like when I started these streams and me being monetized, and then my subs going back to the positive, and you know all this shit happening. I feel as if YouTube is is legitimately pushing live streams as the main content because their entire thing is they want people to stay on the website for as long as possible. I don't think Ooh. that was the plan. No, I, I don't think that was the plan, but they're just like, holy shit. And think about it. But, they're making, what, 30% off Super Chats. Therefore, yeah. they don't need ad, uh, have to waste advertising dollars on our shows, and yet we're still making them more money than shows that have the same amount. Yes, yeah, I, I don't do the Super Chat thing. So what is what is the cut that YouTube takes they off of that? They get 30%. 30. A little bit oh, more. So, so they're, make, they're more. making some good money then. Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. And 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 also like like let's say somebody's controversial, right? Won't matter because it's the people that fund it. So it's not like oh the advertisers are going to pull out. If you pull out, that means you're not doing super chats. That's well, how you're hurting the people. Well, think about like this. Um, for example, okay, my last show what well, yesterday is at that thirty six real time forty thousand views, right? The 40,000 views, 
it's still monetized. So I get that chunk of money, whatever that is, that low amount, whatever the CPM is. But the amount in super chats that I have is the equivalent of that video having about 500,000 to 750,000 views. So YouTube is like, holy fuck. And he doesn't even, even have to hit half a million views. But he's making us that same. They don't have to do shit. Money. They don't have to steer oh. advertisers there. They don't have to do a fucking thing, and they are still making bank off of what you do. Mm hmm. Which is, you know, and here's the thing: at first, I was like, you know, the people are like, open up Streamlabs and stuff, and I, I do have Streamlabs, and we'll implement it soon. I don't mind YouTube making a little chunk of money. They host everything for free. They make my life so fucking easy. They. Uh, monetize everything they're putting me on on recommended feeds it's almost like all right youtube take your little like and i'm living very well you know i'm not like you know money deprived so um and i think everyone wins you know so do you do the sponsor button yet andy no because you need gaming youtube gaming for that right i don't know yeah, yeah you do you have to have a gaming channel yeah. how did i get it I, is you it because I game up in the gaming category. I, I, when you create the channel, they ask you to put yourself in a category, and I'm guessing you probably just. I've always been really entertained. Attention. Yeah, all right. Maybe you got switched over. I'm not sure. I used to play games on here a lot. Yeah, that's why it says people. "Watch on YouTube Gaming" right above the chat. Yeah, I don't. And have right that. next to the sponsor button. That's fucking weird. I'll take it. Well, you, you got sponsors. Yeah, there you go. I'll take it. But no, uh, Blood Sports is entertaining. I like my Springer. Fuck these people that don't like it. They can go make serious, uh, fucking deep intellectual, uh, deep thinking shit. Well, on I did their own. see crowds comment. I did see crowds comment on it where it was like, it's crowds, the yeah. new cringe or something. And it's like, dude, you you're the nipple clamp guy, right? No, see, you know, I've noticed this, this tactic before. Do you remember when uh, people started using the term snowflake? And uh, saying shit like that, how it took you know the left or people that the comment was being used against maybe four or five months to start using it. Mm -hmm. Like it was really weird watching some blue-haired Tumblr feminist try to tell somebody else they were a snowflake. Uh, you're the real snowflake. That kind of shit. Yeah, that's that. That's what's going on with this. Mm -hmm. uh, because they've been mm -hmm. called cringy and gay. They're trying to use yeah. that same terminology and flip it back, like they can use that insult and it works for them. It doesn't. It it's, was a this there was time. a Jeff Holiday troll yesterday that uh, posted on a piece of artwork that our our artist did. He does like little comic strips for us, but it's like really well done art. And he he commented on on that with a tweet that tagged uh, Jeff and a bunch of other people. Look, look at how cringy this is, and oh. it, it wasn't. It, it it had no references to Jeff or anything. It was a little inside joke about Jeff. Just showed stuff. up and said. How jealous he yeah. was that it never happened Wait, for on him. Twitter? Sorry, on Twitter or yeah, he said it publicly. Yeah, it I felt bad for Jeff, so bad I retweeted it. Yeah, he he, <sighs> he said, "I'm jealous. I wish somebody would have made a comic book of me." <laughs> like uh, Billy, we we we're getting a comic book made of the Kumite. Are God, you gonna? There, there you go. Are you gonna sue anybody if Billy or Medicare happens to appear in it doing anything? I don't give a shit. I I let people fucking re-upload my videos. They're they're like a thousand mirrors, and people monetize them. I've never given a shit. All right, you or, heard well, that well, optics again. Uh, you can Ash Corp song. I was like, what the? Oh, fuck? that's so fucking. By the way, wow. this is how good of a guys we are. Uh, the the comic book artists. We let them keep all the fucking profits. We just want to see that comic book be made. Obviously, I I don't care. You can keep all of it. It's his work, right? We're yeah. just characters. We're characters in this. Uh, in this YouTube platform. By, by, by the way, by the way, if if blood sports gets banned, we're, we're gonna just rename this the ch bad chipper impersonation now. <laughs> yeah. Oh, we'll call it uh, not blood sports. <laughs> like that one, Billy. You know. You know. Can I ask you a question though? It, it is something that's bothered me for a while mm -hmm. uh, that I've seen you three engage in, and it's something I wanted to ask you for a while. Mm -hmm. Um. Why don't you white niggers respect me? <laughs> <laughs> All right, I deserve some fucking respect, and I don't know if I want to talk to you white niggers if you're not going to respect me. I'm just, I'm going to put that out there. I, I honestly, you know, when uh, people in my chat, I was streaming when you tweeted that out. I, I was like, ah, oh, fucking Jim, a medicare fucking, you know, took something out of context. You know the way you always edit me out of context to be funny. And then, I, like, I listened to it while I'm on the show. I just muted everyone. I like, like, I listened to it, and I was like, what the fuck is this? Why is he calling everyone a bunch of niggers? 
<laughs> well, what what say you about all that shit, uh, Jim? What, what what do you think about Sargon's? Quote, well, I don't quote, care that he down. said nigger or faggot. I mean, fuck, I wish more people did. I miss the old language of the internet when people would just say shit whenever they fucking felt like it. But no, I mean, just him uh, losing his shit on the chat, kind of the way. The, the thing that the thing that caught my attention was the I'm a human being, I'm a person, and mm -hmm. you need to respect me. And um, that's the chat's my thing. Me, it just it came off like, dude, you sound. You sound like the people you used to make fun of. You sound like fucking Anita. They unpersoned him. <sighs> I don't. But but here's the thing: is yeah, you know, you can, you said the Anita thing, and that makes full sense because I remember talking to him at VidCon. He was like, "Why aren't SJWs debating us?" And then they're like, "Your fans keep attacking us." That was their excuse. Is because our our fans or viewers, or whatever, keep going after them with foul language. And now it's become he's now the one. Like I don't want to debate them anymore because they're being mean to me. I'm like, wait, yeah, you guys are becoming the new SJWs. Well, Andy, I mean, I heard you say earlier that you think the debate with uh, him and Spencer is off, yeah. I guess. But yeah. uh, isn't he supposed to be debating Anglin on Baked Alaska's channel on the 10th? Is that is that canceled, too? Because that'll give you a better indicator of if that shit's not going to go through or not. Um, I don't know. I, I'll text Baked. I'll ask him. I'll see if, I, if that's still happening. I, I don't know. I, I feel like last night he just had sort of like a mental breakdown. I want to like I'm, I'm going to Skype him and be like, yo, dude, you have to just chill like Half the fucking the audience fucking um, on my channel hates me, you know. Like you're, you're, gonna, you're gonna have people in chat talk shit. I I don't understand how you don't know that. It's that's been that way since fucking chat's been around. It is. Yeah, the and way it's, it is. again, it's not all the alt right. Like he goes, oh, it's only the alt right. No, there's probably some people who don't. I, like, no, that's the thing too. That. Like him and V, I think both are missing out on the fact that there there are a lot of groups out there that are laughing at some of this shit that are that are not they're apolitical. There's no politics behind it. Mm -hmm. Like you can't tell me the cowboard on 8chan or Kiwi Farms or ED or any of that shit is laughing at them for a political reason. They're they're laughing because there's some goofy shit going on and they think it's funny. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, cuz cuz here's the thing is like obviously people in in this chat and my chat that are trying to rally rile me up and i do get riled up pretty easily easily and people find it funny when i start to freak on the chat because like that's just who i am but i don't ever go like i am done with this i need respect i don't care if people respect me honestly i know i know i'm a goofball you know what i mean i oh, know that's it's just such a weird thing for sargon to do knowing his stance on most things but Maybe it's that he's he's insulated himself so much, you know, going to Gab. He's not on Twitter anymore, so he doesn't deal with people there. Uh, I, I don't know, guys. Cancerous Bush is being pretty mean to me in the chat. And, uh, you know, I think maybe you guys are supporting this white nigger. Uh, and I need <laughs> some... <laughs> uh, let me go on a 10-minute diatribe about how upset I am. Yeah. Uh, the, the, uh, the funny thing is, and I was thinking about this, was... Isn't he supposed to be like the leader of the liberalists or whatever it's called? Like, well, yeah, but why would you have a leader who's not going to debate people and get upset? I mean, back listen, quickly? if if you want to be honest about it, it's obvious he's bothered by it. There's there's no denying that. I mean, he put a fucking video up where some guy made a comment on one of his videos or some shit, uh, saying I don't even know what he fucking said. But Sargon was like, the guy said, I was a, a sub of yours, and, uh, you know, I, I'm not, I, you know, I have doubts about what you're doing or some shit like that. He used to make and Sargon made a response video you. where he went through the guy's subscriptions, and he's like, this guy isn't a sub of mine, he's just another lying alt-writer. Until other people went to his channel and clicked the subscription tab, which shows you more than just the first four. And sure enough, there was the thinkery and Sargon of Akkad and all this other shit. So, I mean, like... He's. I don't know what the fuck is going on. Maybe it's just that it's not coming from Tumblr or SJWs, and he doesn't know how to respond to it. But it feels yeah, like he lost his ability to banter. I don't. I don't know. Well, I'm. I'm sub to to everyone, like from SJWs to the alt right, just to see what everyone's saying and keep my, you know, my finger on the pulse of of what's happening. I think I it's mean, just it, because it's easier to be like, uh, it's not real criticism. It's all coming from the alt right. Uh, that was the thing that I saw from, um, I want to say, pretty much everybody in Kilroy when the Kilroy thing started falling apart. It was all the alt-right coming after them. 
And then Andy opened his fucking mouth. <laughs> and then talk, it was... Talk, and I'm sorry. Was there's, the, a, there's another white nigger in your chat. King Carl's talking mean about me. I don't know if I can oh, handle this. Oh, oh King Carl. God. There are just too many of them. There's That's two people now. I think this is a oh. plot by the Blood Sports Arena uh, to come after me, so I'm going to have to say we're all terrible people. <laughs> yeah, Andy, you, we're all terrible. Did you see that... Uh... <laughs> Did you, the rumor is that uh, Base Mama owes three hundred thousand on on Kilroy now. No way. How no. do you do that? Wait, wait. How is this a rumor? It, God, I saw the leaked. Um, I saw she was in debt twenty five thousand. How do you fuck up a team? convention worse than DashCon was fucked up without the doors even opening? Do you think she's sweating? Yes. <laughs> Oh, and now I'm getting death threats. Somebody said they're going to lynch me. My oh. life is in danger. <laughs> <laughs> My life is in danger. I'm just an innocent race mixer. And this now is... these blood sports cabal, the blood sports cabal, good choice. Uh, they're coming to get me. I don't uh, know what to do. A lot of people say that it is a very dangerous chat, perhaps the most dangerous chat in all of YouTube. I don't know if I want to get lynched. That sounds like it'd be something uncomfortable. It's, it's a dangerous time over here. By the way, how are you, how are you feeling, Billy? You still got a little Yeah, fuck. I mean, I, I put up a... So I, I'm i not dying of cancer AIDS, which apparently is what cancer people AIDS. think I've got some magical case, case of. I was, I was concerned. concerned. I, no, I, like, it was like a long message. That was like, like it was, it was two music. paragraphs that I wrote to Patreons on a Patreon-only post because I figured they should know. But yeah, no, I'm just... I, I'm sick. I'm seeing a doctor later this week to get some more uh, elaborate tests, in-depth tests. I don't know how you want to put it. Would you give me a better idea of where I'm sitting? So, I mean... If I if I'm sicker than I imagine I am, or if it's worse than I think it is, then yeah, I'm probably gonna stop doing videos and just the the fucking Patreon's tied sick. to what it. What do we mean by sick? Do you, like like disease? Well, it's it's not cancer AIDS if that's what you're. Oh, okay, okay, okay. I'm not I'm not gonna drop dead in the gutter, but uh, yeah, it's just I set up the Patreon where the deal was. Yeah, I'll make videos, and if you like those videos, feel free you know feel free to financially support it. So, you know, if I'm getting to the point where I can't really make the videos in a timely manner, like weekly, Do you know then I'm probably going to take the Patreon down because there's no point in having it up. I mean, there are people trying to be nice and they're like, oh, no, keep it up. Keep it up if you don't do videos. But that's not what the fucking point of it was. So if I stop doing the videos, yeah, I'm just going to pull it down. I'll leave the channel up so people can watch videos that are already up there and shit. But And they'll still be around, like, to say what's up in, in chats and stuff, right? Oh, Andy's got an emotional connection. Do you I have do. an emotional connection to me, Andy? I, I do. I want to blow Billy. <laughs> no. You want to watch somebody else blow Billy? Not you, Medicare. Billy. No. Oh. Well, the this avatar. is Billy. Dipshit. This is what awesome. You you're avatar. fucking confused now, aren't you? <laughs> you're a schizo now. I'm sick. <laughs> I'm sick. Oh, God. But, uh, yeah, no, I'm, I'm not dying. Jesus Christ. You, you, I can't, you can't I, say like, anything on the internet, Jim. You I was trying be. to be responsible. I was like, oh, you know, I'll put this up. There, it's been a little while. It's been like a week and a half since I put a video up. The patrons probably should no, be but informed. Dude, but so dude, I, when I you say it, it no, no, when you say it in a way where I'm going to get the results in next week, I might not be able to well, make yeah, because, videos. Uh, listen, <laughs> I, I always find it gay when people talk about, like, their personal life to, uh, you know, their personal life on the internet just seems stupid to me. Yeah. So, yeah, I, I don't talk about myself that much. I don't talk about uh, really anything personal aside from shit that'll play into a joke or be a part of a topic. It, it just always struck me as dumb. So I, I don't go into a great deal of detail. I, I did put up the minimal amount of detail to explain the situation, which I guess gave people the idea that I am uh, fucking at death's door. with like That's uh, what I, it I sounds like. Shit. It did, People were right? saying like, "Oh, it's, it's Crohn's disease or irritable bowel syndrome," and he's got cancer and AIDS. And do you have prostate cancer? Is that it? Yeah, just all sorts of fucking crazy shit. But a, no, no, a I sickle cell I, anemia. I, anemia. I won't lie. I sat around thinking you were fucked. <laughs> I, I thought, thought you were. Thinking it was, I, I thought yeah, you I, were I dying. Guess when you put the middle, uh, I guess when you put the minimal amount of information up, people assume the worst. I don't, I don't know. That's how the internet yeah. works, man. You're like, well, but you're like. I'm 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 sick and might not be able to make videos. I'll let you know by the end of the week. You're like, oh, it's, he's waiting. Well, for yeah, because the videos are like uh, they've always been more of like a side thing to me. So I mean, like if I, if I get sick to the point where it's just not something I want to do, I'm just not going to do it. So I, mm. it's important to me, at least, to inform the people that are paying money to see videos. Hey, this do, might be ending. Can I ask you something? Do you, Do you yeah. have any side projects that nobody knows about? 
Well, how what do you mean? All right, now you can't ask what, what, me about what do you mean by side pro? Do you mean in my own life, or are you talking on the internet? He wants you to fucking do an Andy Worski secret thing. <laughs> Dude, do you oh, I won't tell anyone. Oh, <laughs> you're gonna keep the secret? Well, I mean, it's if you pinky swear on a fucking live stream with people yeah. watching, I'm sure that never will get out. No, no, don't Ever. worry. No, no, no. Everyone here is chill. No one's really revealed my secrets before. It's good. No, you know, I, I'm a real simple guy. You know, I make videos on the internet. Uh, George Soros pays me to destroy the white race. Just real simple <laughs> shit. Nice. George has always been a great guy. So, really, those checks no, come in regularly. No ASMR slime channels. Oh, fucking Christ. Hey, have you heard my mic quality? Could you imagine me trying to do <laughs> ASMR with the fucking mechanical <laughs> buzzing in the background? People would go insane. Uh, did, did you enjoy a Mr. Epsion's ASMR channel? Is that no, you know, what, why am I gonna why am I gonna watch Mr. Repsion? Uh, you know, I don't need dirty underwear or socks, so there's really no reason for me to swing by his fucking channel. I'm not into little kids. Oh bro. So, like oh, the bro, sexual bro. thing's not there. Bro, you did you didn't see his tendies review? Oh, no, I didn't see his oh, tendies. <laughs> he reviewed those Wendy's tendies, man. It was the real deal. It was like 12 minutes long. He, 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 yes, he watching Mr. Repsion eating fucking Wendy's tendies for 12 minutes. This yeah, is what yeah. failure does. I'm going to screen share this real quick. Look look at the top row of, of his videos. This guy has half a million subscribers. I get yeah, I mean, he, he went over the, the peak. I mean, that that's common with people that build up a big sub base and then years go on and then the viewership starts to decline. I mean, that's really common. Like, yeah, but he has a, like a normal job and stuff. He's not like a YouTuber anymore, I don't think. Yeah, so he probably doesn't care. But yeah, I, exactly. I don't think he's ever going to see like a resurrection of his numbers. I mean, I've seen that with hundreds and thousands of channels. I think he was forced to get a job because he saw the way that things were going. But I, I, no, the, see, but the, the, the thing is, the rule book to YouTube, YouTube uh, the uh, uh, the uh, the YouTube rule book, or like how you play this to make it work, changes within every you know four or five months. So people who don't evolve to the new algorithm or how things are are running or the new rules, did to, to, to get left behind in the dirt. So if you he he did he didn't want to evolve or didn't know how to, so he panicked and got his his job. Right, that's how I think. That's what I think happened. <laughs> well, I can think of, yeah, I, I, quite literally hundreds of fucking channels that were big, even four or five years ago, where they're they're getting view counts that are in the you know thousands if they're lucky. It just it it happens to every channel uh, eventually. It's it's rare that it's the one will stick ball. around long enough to keep an audience retained. You have to keep evolving. You have to keep switching. Like I've changed my uh, genre or type of videos, whatever you want to say, probably about seven times. Well, you have to evolve years. and stay loyal at you the same time. You, you have to keep the people and gain new ones. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. it's gonna be sad when when one day we're gonna be here in Medicare say, "Oh, you gotta just gotta check out this uh, new stream." Is is the is the new Kumite? That that old Kumite is it's no longer good. The different you actually <laughs> see people stabbing each other. So I, I am a very selfish individual. Like I like blood sports because it entertains me. Like that's <laughs> that's the fucking appeal of it to me. It's not like I think it's some great art form. It is it's just I want to be I, I want to oh, be no, fucking dude. entertained. Oh, yesterday, for example, it, uh, I'm not saying it was high intellectual fucking rigor there, but everyone DM'd me directly after the show and said, yo, I had a lot of fun. Even people who were getting their ass whipped were like, that was fucking fun. Please invite me back. People enjoyed the just uh, fucking, yo, fucking around yelling at each other. It was great. And Roosh V was just, he doesn't give a fuck, eh? Why would I listen to you? You're a woman. Why would your opinion matter? I'm like, whoa, Jesus. Yeah, I enjoyed the back and forth <laughs> between uh, him, Venti, and uh, is it Ni uh, Nika? Is that her name? Anika, yeah, Anika. Yeah. And 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 here's the thing is, is like you said before, this is, was like, what, two months ago you were talking about this. YouTube ain't the halls of debate. This isn't like university, fucking Harvard, in like, oh, we're going to have a professional debate. No, pe people want to have the debate slash... No, for real. Rock. How many how many times can you listen to some motherfucker who is barely out of college try to tell you the secrets of the world because they have Google over? Yeah. Right, that's always fun, isn't it? Uh, it's it's so fucking tired. <laughs> just stop it.
for fuck's sake, stop. So, uh, a- any updates? Because I've been a little out of the loop. Uh, Andy, are you ever going to have your your second match with, was it Unknown Archivist? Who was it that you were fucking arguing with and then it got oh, cut short? Archive. Archive, there we go. Nah, I still don't he, know what the score is there. He's, uh, I, I upset him when I call him a bitch on Kumite. He's like, I'm not going to give you attention. In fact, I was on a, I can't remember whose stream it was a few days ago. Fuck. There was some guy's stream I jumped on for a second. Uh, whatever. There was some beef with, with me and I went on and we, we hashed it out. Anyway, while I'm on this stream, I can't remember who it was. Someone in the chat, if you've seen me on that stream, please let me know. Unknown Archive like comes in. Right, and t- like probably not knowing that I was there, and then he's like, "I'm like, I was about to say something," and then he j- just left. I'm like, "Ah, oh, fuck!" <laughs> like he- I must have scared him. He probably didn't know I was in there, and then he saw me, and he's like, "Oh shit, cunt stream." That's it. Remember we were uh, oh, uh playing uh Friday the the thirteenth, and Tonka's chat went over and said that we were talking shit. So I went over there to calm his nerves c- because he was c- almost crying about it. And then UA jumps what in, okay. and then he like fucking like like books it when he sees me. I'm like, yeah, fuck the ten stream. Now, is there is there going to be a rematch anytime soon between uh, Coach Red Pill and V? I hope so, but Coach Red Pill doesn't want to do it. Well, I, I saw Coach in the uh, Coach chat earlier, in, and I'm sure, I'm v. sure V will pop up. Well, not V has uh, he has left Coach alone. It seems. Coach really jumping on V. V says nay. Uh, one interesting thing you may see, you you may have been out of the loop, but Ranting Monkey was up Andy's ass yesterday, and Andy has called him out to have a chit-chat with him. I think that one would be interesting. Was well, that look, the one about the thumbnails? No, well, no, look. So I I kept Sophane and, and Jeff Holiday alone for a month as they continuously every few days bitch about me, right? I was trying to ignore it, and then finally I was like, you know what, whatever, and then I read the, out those tweets, and I just – Tweeted out just making fun of of Jeff, saying that uh, you know he's in the second uh, a second stage of grief because his channel is dying, and he's in the uh, the anger phase. And then I I, I bashed Sophane by saying I'm going to continuously take shots at Andy because I haven't done anything interesting in months. And then ranting monkey starts taking shots at me, saying why why are you responding? Why do you care? Uh, when did you become so thin skinned? I'm like, dude, it's been a month they as- they- of them assaulting me. And then I fucking make a little joke and now I'm thin-skinned. Ranting has been up my ass. Ed Indro, you know Ed, Ed Indro? Oh, uh, no, the, uh, Indro. He has a dog avatar. Like the I, I don't really keep track of Twitter people, so no, I don't know. If I think, every, I, all I these random I animal them. avatars, how do you not keep up with them, Billy? Come yeah. on. Well, well, him, he's, he was taking swings at me every day. So then I'm like, okay, you know what? Like, I gave him, an, like, I've, I've, I, I keep asking him, like, privately, like, dude, like, do you have a problem? Do you want to come on my show? And Andrew's like, no, no, I'm just joking around every day. Okay, I, I, I don't mean assaulting. Sorry, I meant insulting. My bad, guys. <laughs> I've been insulting. Uh, anyway, and Andrew is going over and over and over. So finally, I just like, I just unfollow him. I'm like, okay, like everything he says is just constantly taking shots at me. And then he's just like. Hey man, is there a good time? You are you able to stream on the weekend? I'm like, you can't insult me for a, a month and a half constantly, and me just go fine. I I tried my best. Who, who was that guy that uh, bitched at you that you never had anybody from the left on, and then you invited him on, and he's like, I can't do it for another month. Everyone. Oh, no, do you remember that? Do you remember that guy? Uh, yeah, M- M- Michael Rollins was it? Yeah, Michael Rollins. Right? Isn't that a singer? Are you? No, no, no. Michael Rollins is actually a YouTuber. I know it sounds like a singer, but he's, he's an actual YouTuber who's an SJW as well. He's like, why isn't Andy inviting me on? And then we're like, oh, invite him on. He's like, I could do it in February. Oh, it is February. He must be available. I, I guess so. But um, ah. well, th- those sound like fighting words, Andy. So are you getting uh, is ranting monkey online right now? Are you going to pull him in? Well, well, no, look, I don't hate ranting monkey. I'm just like. Like, like, I'm like thin skinned. They've been bashing me for a fucking insulting, not assaulting, insulting. Sounds like for... he's calling you a bitch, Andy. You gonna take that? I think we should bring him in here. Yeah, you know what? Might have to go by 
and make myself a coffee. Do, do you want to do the invite uh, yeah. failure? You may make a call to him. I think a, a little peer pressure from Billy No. Oh, Henry Rollins. That's who I was thinking. Henry of. Okay. Rollins. I'm fucking Henry retarded. Rollins right. Yeah, Henry Rollins is a singer. I would uh, crack the fuck up if Henry Rollins showed up <laughs> to go against <laughs> Chance. Yeah. All right, I'm gonna just uh, make myself a coffee. I'll be back in uh, five. All right, guys. All right, go go get fucking <laughs> hopped up on ice cream sandwich. There, there goes coffee. Andy running away from a challenge again. Shameful. I'm still here. <laughs> Shameful, Shameful. running away to make coffee. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I see what we're doing here. Love you, guys. Saying, Billy, I don't know. Have you, uh, have you been able to uh, see uh, some of the things that have gone on on Twitter? Like, when, when is your cutoff date for when you saw things on Twitter, Billy? Uh, I, I don't know. I think like the fucking second or the third or wherever the fuck it was. Uh, I'd have to go take a look. Uh, it, it's, it's been a good couple of days. Then, been a good couple of days. Uh, have you seen that Christy Winters challenged Bering to a Kumite? Yeah, February 2nd would have been uh, my cutoff date, so I missed uh, like a week. Okay. Uh, Christy Winters, I, I don't really know who the fuck that is. Who is Christy Winters? I, failure would know this a bit better than me. I'm not super familiar with it. but uh, Bering and her have had a history, and uh, she ha she's in the group of uh, the SJWs on YouTube that barely get any views, but are... The most relevant SJWs. So what's the uh, what's the beef between them? She doxed him. She, yeah, a bit ago. Oh, I, I suppose that would make Bering a bit upset. I could, I guess that's understandable. Did he, did he want to challenge her? Did she want to challenge him? She is challenging him. Oh, she made Dude, a really? tweet that he shouldn't be on the Kumite. Yeah, she said he he should not be allowed on the Kumite. <laughs> Why? I don't know. I don't know, Jim. It's so weird. I didn't think she would watch it. Doesn't seem like her cup of tea. Well, is, it would Bering be up for it? I, God, I wonder if you could set those two up. That would be a fucking fun thing to watch. I'm sure no. he would. I'm sure he would. Uh, he has a nickname for her. Oh, what's uh, the nickname? Like oh, it's a little a little character he created called the Fisty Splinters. Fisty Splinters, okay. And uh, it's caused great. Yeah, there, there's lots of problems between these two, but yeah, it's today's the 10K special. So if she, if those two would like to jump in, they're they're both more than welcome. Ranting should jump in against uh, Andy. That's more than welcome. Uh, Billy's back from the Bering. dead from his cancer AIDS he never had. So I mean, I'm from sure Billy would like to see old. something. I'm, yeah, I'm I, I'd love to watch I mean, people yell at each other. I was I was knitting you into AIDS black and everything. Were you really? <laughs> you warm in those cold last months of my life? Well, that was sweet of you. I was thinking about uh, hanging my YouTube championship belt on your grave. <laughs> oh, is that what you were going to do? <laughs> that's, where, that's where it was going to go. Just hang it on oh, Billy's grave. Thank you. It's nice to be remembered with a championship <laughs> belt. Then people that come by are going to be like, was he a wrestler? Fuck, I didn't know that. <laughs> He was everything. He was a little black boy and undoomed in a baseball cap. <laughs> he specifically wanted that belt there. It was one thing he loved the most. Was Nobody it? knew it, but apparently it's true. How terrible of an idea do you think that is? To give me a, a championship belt when I die? No, to turn the uh, 100K plaque into a championship belt. How much does that make you want to just turn this show off right now that I'm going to do that? Why not? I, you know, if you're gonna do something fun with it, I, uh, I know they give it. They give you a plaque. What at 100k, and then a million, and then 10 million. Is that the breakdown now on YouTube? God damn! I didn't know they would give you another 10 million, but yeah. Yeah, I think that's like the yeah. The it's looking silver, glass. gold, and platinum. It's yeah, silver, yeah, gold, platinum, but it's all plastic and fucking tin foil. I don't think we'll ever go to fucking gold, but I want to get that silver before uh, a certain few other people get silver. Yeah, I said if I ever got a uh, a silver play button, I was going to send it to uh, just some random homeless shelter. <laughs> uh, Billy, <laughs> they get in the mail and like, what the fuck is this? Billy, did you disapprove of us uh, making fun of the mundane Matt unboxing of his play button? I don't give a shit. I, I make fun of whatever you like. Well, why don't you I, send I, your I, play I, button to mundane Matt so we can get another one of those yeah. videos? <laughs> it, oh, I, I don't think Billy saw that video. No, I, I saw the Monday Matt crying video. That that got spread around a bit. Quite a bit. That thing that now has more views than his actual views <laughs> on, on the video. 
Oh yeah. I, at I first, I thought he was just joking around, but then he seemed to really get choked up, like maybe three fourths of the way through it. Uh, like it was, it was a real reaction to getting that play button. Some real emotion behind that. The emotion. I don't know why. It's a shitty plaque from an internet video site, but okay. No, it, it, it matters. It matters. He really loves me. <laughs> That's what imagine? it came off like. Could you imagine if Twitter did that? Like, if you hit a hundred thousand followers, they'd send you like a fucking silver tweet button. A little How dumb silver that bird. A, a Facebook a like, a thumbs up when you had a hundred thousand followers. On uh, Facebook. Well, most people do that with the blue check mark. When they get the blue check mark, they bake themselves a cake and and fucking blow really? themselves. And, yeah. You better be lying. People celebrate that blue check mark, man. Billy, that why don't is. You have uh, because I'm not gonna. Don't you have to like fucking give them your name and your address and your phone number and all this other shit and bank account and social security number to get the fucking check mark? You're asking the wrong guy. Failure is it, failure. Is that the case? Uh, you gotta ask Ian about that. He has a blue check mark. All I wanna know is it gives you a little bit more power. Like nobody can just like instantly... gives you a little more power. I I know all these. It, it's the carrot and the stick shit. Oh, you don't want us to shadow ban you? Well, why don't you tell us where you live, champ? And then we'll let you <laughs> yeah. post a little more. No, 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 no. It does. It does give you a little bit more power. People can't instantly, like, mass flag you. And uh, when you flag somebody, it has a little bit more weight because you're, you're you know. But now they know who you are and where you're at and what you do. It's yeah, so when you call them all a bunch of white niggers, they know who's <laughs> doing it down. But, yeah. by the way. By the way, that blue check mark getting taken away from fucking Destiny just shows you like, okay, you really fucked up if they took took your account away. If you, if you have I, I thought he, wait, I thought he was banned. They just took his check mark away. Is he back on Twitter? No, no, no. The, no the he was a blue check mark him. account though. Yeah, the the fact that they they don't suspend blue check marks that easy. Well, yeah, it's the lot. punishment thing. Like, oh, we took your blue check mark away. Now you need to be nicer, or else, kind of no, bullshit. They, they suspended him totally. Whatever happened with that? That yeah, that's another feud. Is that is that died out now? What's uh? I didn't Andy put a challenge up for a one v one in League of Legends? Did he ever respond? I don't know if he did, right. but I know that uh, I know that he said that he's done with this side of the internet. I think he finally tapped out, Jim. He's gonna he's gonna stick uh with Twitch, is he? I think that I think that's what he mm -hmm. that's what he's saying. I don't know I how truthful that is. I still think that would fuck with him so much if Andy just like grinded for a month and learned how to play the game and fucking beat his ass. Well, no, the joke though is it's a 1v1 in League of Legends. That's why it's funny. I, I'm just amazed yeah. that Andy went with it. <laughs> Andy will go with The lovable goof is so naive. It's, it's <laughs> just 1v1 me in League of Legends. Andy, what are you doing? <laughs> Destiny plays player. that every fucking day. What are you doing? <laughs> Have a secret plan, guys. Don't tell anybody. Well, I still think if he grinded away for a month and just did that every fucking day, he, he might be able to give him a challenge. He could if he was a little Asian kid. If he had those reflexes, played StarCraft every day, all day, since he was fucking three, maybe. Something like, like don't, don't fuck with Andy. He has a Switch. He has a Switch. <laughs> Bing, bing, low. Yeah. Bing, 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 bing. Uh, did uh, anybody send an invite out to Ranting Monkey? Is he is he going to pop on? Ranting yeah, Monkey no. and Christy. Yeah, no response. And I'll throw no. him a DM. Oh, what a shock! No response. Ranting this Monkey. is all right. This is what's common with this group: is lots to say on Twitter, not much to say when it's like, okay, we'll come and uh, say what you have to say about it. Well, yeah, I just want to be entertained. I want to hear people yelling at each other. If we can get that going, I fucking love that. Oh, I'm I'm not mad at that at all. It's just, it's so strange how this is, this is the trend with this group. It's like lots and lots to complain about, but not much. Yesterday to... surprised me. I wasn't expecting much of yesterday with the fucking guy that would just go up to the police and security guards getting yelled at. People got fucking mad. Oh, you, you know, actually speaking of the, um, because you guys brought up the Sargon thing. Did you see the, uh, the, uh, I believe it was from the Daily Show. I'm not sure. The clip that they put up uh, uh, regarding the liberalist oh. clip. Oh, that was fucking uh, the uh, the reading from that guy. Yeah, you know what I'm talking about with oh, the spooky music. So fucking funny, man! I was dying yesterday. You should play that. There's a lot of that too. shit out there. Yeah, Tonka, have you seen that? You should play that. I, I haven't, really but I know that funny. Viacom doesn't play. Oh Viacom. no, no this there this isn't a, a Viacom thing. 
Uh, what is it? I, th- I thought you said that the Daily Show put it up. What is it? No, no, Daily Show, the Mike Enoch Show. Oh, Daily Show. Okay, that's Showa. okay. That's Showa. okay. Yeah, not gotcha. Show. Show. There you I was go. Like, what Let's the see if I can fuck find is it. the Daily Show going in on Sargon? <laughs> <laughs> well, that would have been even weirder, but yeah, yeah. Trevor Noah just decided to shoot uh, shoot a few across. For the real? Mountain. What the fuck is that about? But yeah, oh, no, I, I put it in. I'll put it in the. Uh, uh, yeah, I'll put it in the side chat for you. Failure. Just play it over your. Uh, voice meter there you go so we don't have to i believe that's it i believe that's it yeah it's really funny it's uh yeah chronos has the clip up on his channel yeah he, he was always doing, uh... does doesn't he yeah because i was i was looking for uh like i said i was trying to catch up and i know he clips a lot of andy streams mm-hmm. so i went on there looking to see kind of what i missed uh and figure if he had other interesting shit up there and it's one of them so i was like okay it's good i'll take it no chronos does god's work does is failure alive? Failure. Right, yeah, I'm just sleeps. popping up the voice meter. Oh, oh there he is. But he <laughs> sleeps with the trouts now. Yeah. <laughs> he sleeps with the trouts. <laughs> All right. Here we go. There is an international movement of intellectuals and activists that is sweeping the internet. It is a phenomenon that has taken over the academic discourse of our best institutions. This phenomenon is, of course, the liberalist society. This digital modern-day Algonquin roundtable of skeptics is the long-anticipated and highly touted brainchild of the modern era's most celebrated cultural icon, Sargon of Akkad. This revolutionary movement all began just a few weeks ago. Everyone is aware of the recent debate hosted by outspoken Holocaust denier and SPLC prank caller Andy Ray Swarsky, in which white nationalist Richard Spencer faced the erudite Sargon of Akkad, de facto leader of the skeptic community, originally a loose association of like-minded individuals who had given up on the idea of ever getting laid. (laughs) <laughs> Though many outside of this affiliation believe that Sargon is just one more failed debate away from night manager of a Manchester Waffle House, his supporters <laughs> remain confident in his performance. According to his acolytes, Sargon, with a wit as subtle as a gay pride parade, deftly BTFO'd Spencer by using his patented anti-SJW debating technique of annoyingly over-enunciating Richard's name. Sounding like the haughty principal in a British schoolgirl spanking video, Sargon espoused such penetrating arguments as, Richard, are white people even allowed to have tans in the ethnostate, Richard? You don't even know, do you, Richard? And, Richard, have you ever even read Locke's second treatise on civil government, Richard? And, of course, his irrefutable argument, Richard... My dad could beat up your dad, Richard, because he's black, Richard. (laughs) Mentally, as nimble as Gene Kelly on a rainy day and about as relevant as that reference, Sargon wove a coherent argument against the proponents of whiteness, citing famous 17th and 18th century luminaries. Sargon laid out an unassailable series of postulates in logical progression to counter Spencer, such as his ingenious horseshoe theory, which equivocates the alt-right with SJWs. According to Spencer, however, the thing about horseshoes is that it is usually full of horse shit. (laughs) Despite his unanimously recognized victory amongst the skeptic community, Sargon did reflect, as above-average intellects are wont to do, on some of the points Spencer introduced into the debate. After much consideration, he felt that the only way to champion his brand of pure individualism was to unilaterally create a litany of vague principles in order to collectively counter these socialist racists. Much like Gautama, who meditated under a tree for 49 straight days before developing the principles of Buddhism, Sargon spent 49 minutes perusing an FEE magazine from 1984 to develop the revolutionary principles of the liberalist society. Sargon, publishing his list quicker than Paul Nealon in a kosher deli, soon had the internet's a buzz. 
The first and foremost of his principles is the dissemination of interracial male butt love porn, otherwise known as the Librafist principle. Participation in and appreciation of such an art form is the natural inclination of the truly independent mind. Other liberalist principles published on the website include the presumption of innocence until proven guilty and the freedom to practice the religion of your choice and, of course, the complete and utter ban of the Faustian spirit. Sargon also decided to tackle the idea of race realism and man's ethnocentric nature. Delving into his own deeply tanned genealogy, Sargon made an in-depth study of the perfect ethnostate that reflected both his own ancestry and his particular brand of individualism. In his latest video, in which he rebrands himself as Sargon of Wakanda, he is now <laughs> seriously considering changing the name liberalist with the more accurate and ethnocentric Liberianist. <laughs> Despite his long-standing claims of liking chitlins and large-ass white women, some have had the temerity to question Sargon's assertion that he was third from left in the famous dancing scene from 12 Years a Slave. To satisfy his detractors, he agreed to submit a DNA sample for genetic screening. His 23andMe results were quite interesting. 41% showed Northwest European origin, 14% Southern European, 8% Ashkenazi Jew, and the remaining 37% HIV positive. To conclude, <laughs> the alt-right must come to the stark realization that Sargon's liberalist society represents its greatest existential threat since Boomer posting. All we have to counteract this cultural force is a return to our roots, a return to what has given us strength in the past and a vision of what the future can hold. That is, of course, esoteric Jahanism and the oven men who still keep the faith. I have another very interesting... Oh. Right into right into JF. Right into JF. I just I, I the, my favorite bit in that is the HIV or HIV positive one from the twenty three yeah. and Me results. I fucking love that. Okay, the twenty three and Me thing with Sargon. I keep getting mixed stories of that. What's the deal with that? Like he said, uh, I don't know if he actually did like... a twenty three and Me. I just thought oh. the fucking punchline to that was funny. There, I, I know it's that a real we're talking thing. about him him claiming to have a, a black grandfather and that his father was like half black, but. Uh, I, I don't know if what, what's going on with that claim. Andy, do you have any idea? Do you know things, Andy? Andy has muted himself. Uh, he's in hiding right now because he heard Ranting Monkey might be coming. <laughs> yep, it's the fear. He's got monkey. Andy, don't say a thing if you are a giant bitch-ass pussy. <laughs> Andy, don't respond if you are pissing in your panties right now. Just fear in the monkey. Hey. Hey, Andy, don't respond if your mouth is full of peckers or something. No, nah, Andy, if you got dicks in there, don't say a thing. <laughs> Not a Just bee. mumble a little for us. <laughs> Nothing? Mm. Is he smoking a joint right now? What is he doing? I bet he fucking is. Guys, guys. Oh, I, yeah. I, no. oh there we are. <laughs> Hang on, yeah, did, I, did you take all the peckers out of your mouth or something? Wait, did you not read my uh, my... my a chat just said, I'll be back in a second. I uh, I boiled up some water for an instant coffee, and then I realized I don't have any, so I, I have to brew some. I'm brewing coffee. So when you say you boiled up water for instant coffee, do you mean that the bong water overheated by accident? <laughs> no, no. I, I I legit ran out of my instant coffee, so I'm uh, I'm uh, brewing up some coffee. It should be done in the, in the second year. Sounds like a terrible plan. <laughs> I, I DM'd ranting, but there's no blue check mark yet. Well, there's not gonna be because he's he's dodging. You think, he's, no, you think he's dodging or everybody or dodges? This is what they do. They just want to make response videos a week later or some shit. Let me see, ranting mm -hmm. monkey. I want to see maybe. Uh, let me see if he tweeted recently, because he might be at work. You know, of course. Blood sports are bad because they make it to where our fucking videos are late as fuck by the time they come out. I, I'm a little disappointed. I'm expecting all these rematches, you know, Unknown Archive or Ranting Monkey, or I'm expecting Zeph and Liz to show up, or maybe V and Coach to go at each other. Anybody. It's the oh. 10,000 sub yeah. special. Somebody show yeah. up and have you a go. Hear? You didn't hear? Liz is back. 
She made a video saying she's back now. Oh, oh well, bring her on the Kumite. Let's let's hear that go. Well, she yeah. says she's also Going moving on. Everybody's moving on. What the fuck? She says she's moving on, but she also said she created me. Oh, yeah, that's part of the video. She created Tonka. I created you, Tonka, and I gave you friends. Maybe you need to, you know, for your 10,000 special, uh, Tonka, maybe you need to pull the audience and ask them uh, who wants to come on and yell at people. Have we, a little viewer interaction for that We tried that a little yesterday. You know what? I'll... It's my ten thousand sub special. You're you're here, and you know you've risen like Jesus on the third day. But why don't you pull them? Why don't you pick out somebody who's out there with a fight, and maybe they'll actually fucking pull it off for you. You have the peer pressure power, Billy No Bully. Uh, well, chat. Is there anybody that wants to come on and uh, scream at Andy for smoking bongs right now when he should be talking? There's always anybody, people anybody who wants say to do that. To. You oh, can't. oh, well, that's interesting. The side chat. A failure. You want to try? It? Can you set that one up? Let me see this. Oh, sad, hurtful. Wait, wait, wait. Fuck it. Yeah. Uh, no. Okay. If that, yeah. it no. You make it clear. If that's you make it. You get them and let it go down. All right. All right. I'll, I'll, I'll get. Wait, you you dig that one, Billy? That's a that's an interesting matchup. I don't know what I I watched that one. Sure. That's interesting. Let me let me work on that one then. Uh, now you got to bring in the veteran first. You got to bring in. The... Uh, you got somebody in chat. I I don't know if they're saying they want to come on. Alternative facts said I do. Which alternative facts? Is it fake alternative facts? I I don't know. Is there a way to check? Uh, open up for their channel thing. If it's fake alternative facts, then for fuck's sake, no parody people. Parody people are so cringe. I'll have something. to wait for him to uh, comment again to see if it pops up. Boy, your 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 uh, ten thousand special is just not working out really well right now, is it? Not at the moment no. because that is a parody. Don't. Uh... Don't start putting on the special just yet, all right? Well, now, Andy's fucking coffee's not going right. No, just no, it's good. It's good. We've resurrected is... Medicare, so I'm okay with my special. I'm good with it. I would prefer to get somebody in the fucking cage, though. Can we get someone in the cage, please? Come on! I'm working on it. I'm working I, on it. I find it harder now to get... Um... Actually, you know what might be easier? Uh, Taka, uh, your, your Twitter's not like some... Um... <laughs> well kept secret is it if i put your twitter handle out there and ask them to tweet at you if they want to come on well, it might be easier to failure is better to do it uh throw failures out there uh, okay well yeah throw his uh tell them what the what they should be tweeting at yeah, he's the one in charge of everything <laughs> check the side chat <laughs> see uh, what i just <laughs> let's see let's see if it, it, what's going down so, all right Oh, uh -huh. I, I don't know if Spoonie One is here right now, so I'm not sure what this is going to lead to, but it, well, let's do it. Oh, God. <laughs> Won, but not forgotten. Toad versus, versus Coach Red Pill. It's all right, Chad. If you want to come on. <laughs> God damn it, Jet, Andy. Uh, no, I wouldn't even chat. No, wow. Chad, no wow. Really? No, Everyone, Everyone in the chat, I'm reading the chat, you guys. Fucking everyone's thinking yeah, but... versus Coach Red Pill. We're God, trying... you like that? I'm you... working on it, Andy. I'm working on it. Oh, okay. Holy shit. Just... I'm reading the fucking chat. The, fuck, the like literally everyone says. You like that kid on Chris? You, you know, you're the little kid that can't wait for Christmas, so <laughs> you open up the fucking presents like a week ahead of time and then reseal them. And then try to be subtle, like you're still surprised. Like, oh wow, I didn't Whoa. see this coming. <laughs> Coach Rodpill, who would have imagined he's here? Oh my god. Oh, I am oh a piece of shit, aren't I? Yes, you are, Andy. You're the fucking you worst. Your, your fucking secret plans. Jesus Christ. Fucking, you fucking white nigger. Oh, God help Canada if it ever has a civil war and you're in the fucking intelligence community for him. Uh, hey, hey oh, guys. Uh, here's uh, I was DM'd, by the way. Talking about. What's that? Uh, I was DM'd by someone saying, hey, Andy, uh, Monkey might be asleep or busy with his family. He usually is. Oh, well, yeah, Powering out. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead and sleep through a fucking battle. That's right, ranting. 
Coward. Yeah, boy, throwing throwing out some shade there, Andy. God damn. Oh. <laughs> Andy comes from fucking scalps and shit. Uh, not my show. Taco, what do you think on the side chat? All right, let me let me peep this. See what's happening. Uh, well, if we can't get the other bout, then yeah. But I mean, if we've got the other bout locked and ready to go, we've got it. Failure. Uh, what, what is your Twitter handle again? Uh, failure hates you. Okay, uh, chat. If you want to come on and uh, do some blood sports, tweet at failure hates you, and uh, he will he will he will pick the interesting ones. Do not disappoint mm -hmm. resurrected Billy. He he didn't survive the cancer age for this. Uh, we got one person saying invite me on. Uh, I was the caller that uh, I was the caller on Andy's that destroyed CRP. Oh, that's oh, this guy. He went he went at fucking Coach Red Bill pretty bad. It's pretty. Funny. Oh, was that the opening? Was that the first caller? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was and, funny. And that actually, was funny. Chad. Actually, he has beef with you, Jim. Oh, well, bring him on. Oh. oh. Oh really? Jim gonna have a go at some point. Somebody's finally gonna show. It. Jim's like two and zero for people who just never even came out to the ring. The fun times ahead. Oh shit! I have a problem with Jim. Are you medically cleared, Jim? I mean, I I I, 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 I put me in, Coach. I'll give him my best <laughs> shot. Oh fuck! All right, dude. This is real. At the 10K celebration, we're going to actually get someone in the fucking cage with Jim. Fun, fun times. <laughs> I'm ready for this shit. What the? Hey guys, can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. Yeah, turn you off, might want to turn, turn your off uh, audio off though. Yeah, you got a little bit of <laughs> echo going on. All right, what do we refer to you as? Because it's giving us a name there, and I don't want to. I don't want to fuck anything up. Let me just uh, figure out how this works. How do I mute myself here? Is this, there's a button here, right? Yeah, the, at the very top, uh, when you're hovering over like the Google Hangout window, you see right next to the little camera icon on the far left. Middle okay, tab. okay. And let me know if I fuck up, if I'm breathing on my mic or anything like that. No, you, you really want to fix fine. it. No, no, if you really want to fix it, it's the button on the very far right that looks like uh, the, the red one. Mm, the red one. Oh, no, 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 no. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay, okay, Billy. Here's the thing, man. Here's the thing. You, you gotta Andy, be real yes. with your friends because you already pulled this shit out four times. You know, the the thing is, you feel pulled, bad. Pulled what? Out, pulled because, what out? No, the thing is, you want to make the the videos that make you laugh, and then when you feel like you're pleasing the audience, you start feeling bad, and then you want to do the whole thing again. Where oh, it was never about this for me, my artistic integrity, and now you're pretending to be sick. <laughs> I I don't think I've ever used the phrase artistic integrity. It sounds a little bit faggy to me, Gaston. Yeah, but what you said before is like, uh, well, let me think about the last time you did this. Was in Gamergate, wasn't it? Well, when you said, "Oh, now this when movement I, is when I burned a channel down? Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, nobody's gonna recognize me, and then you come back and you get all your fans back, and you pretend that nothing happens. Well, Gaston, though, if you remember when I when I did that with uh, Gamergate, I left up a Vokaru saying, you know, fuck this shit, I'm done. It's not like it was a, a mysterious disappearance. I, I fucking outright said, yeah, I'm done. Goodbye. I even posted on Twitter yeah. saying, yeah, I'm done. Goodbye. Yeah, but the, no, the conversation I had with Sargon, he had a point. He had a point uh, when he said uh, that it's hard. I mean, you said that it's hard for you to make videos that you don't want to make. And now you're starting yeah. to feel that pressure because you're getting Patreon money. So now well, you don't no, feel I've been, like... I've been still making the videos that I want to make. I mean, I covered Randy Stairs and his uh, transsexual <laughs> ghost girls thing. I've covered diaper furs shoving bike pumps up their ass. I covered a whole sorts of fucking crazy nutty fuckers. I mean, that's the I'm kind just, of shit that I've, just, I've always liked. No, I'm just calling, in, calling out, man, your problem because you know this is real. You haven't made, made a video in more than a week because you don't know if it's a video you want to make or if you're just putting out there for the well, show. Well, no, I have videos I want to make. I wanted to cover the couch cuck shooter, the uh, Ed Sissop that fucked up his killing spree. I wanted to cover Overwatch and their faggotry with uh, going after their player base and monitoring their social media then, and doing shit like that. 
then fucking do it. There are like 10,000 of... Gaston, I, I, I put up that I don't... I'm like sick, so I'm working through that. If I'm too sick to do it, I'm just not going to do it. You don't sound sick to me, man. Well, I'm glad that you have a doctorate in internet diagnosing. Thank you for, for fucking examining me. Aside from the yellow fever? Uh, well, the yellow fever is a severe sick. case. It's fucking terminal. I love that slanted pussy. All right, man. I think I have to, I have to take the L to Billy. I just can't cannot get on this guy's skin. Oh well. Hey, we've got a second. Uh, we've got a second person in here. If you'd like to resume. You know, I feel bad for Coach. I don't want to pick on him anymore. Last time. Okay. I was going to go for a better prey, you know, but uh, I think I'm still down on the food chain from you, Billy. Unfortunately. I, I like banter. That's fine. No, I mean, if I really wanted to just quit, uh, Gaston, I, I, I would. It's uh, it's just I've got shit popping up, and I don't know which way it's going to break. And because people are paying me to do videos, I felt obligated to tell them, hey, shit may be coming on down the line, and if I've got to do this, I'm going to pull this down. Trying to trying to be responsible. Try not to pull a spoonie where I just leave a Patreon up and don't produce anything for eight months. All right. Can I just throw something different? Like three years. I think of... <laughs> yeah. I just want to get everybody's reaction on this. I think the funniest thing about yesterday's work screen was how the all the alt right faggots who say you know they are pro tradition are all white knighting for these chicks. I think that was ridiculous. I will say that I thought uh, Andy was it Sinatra that jumped in there. He seemed he seemed to be white knighted a little bit uh, pretty pretty hardcore when he popped into that fucking stream, man. He he he, he loves him some of the ladies that were in that stream. He he must be a Venti fan because yeah he he popped on there with uh, a little bit of in or er, indignation going on. Sinatra is all about that a girl. That 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 is his gimmick. That's why he is Sinatra, I think. Hey, hey sorry, yeah, I'm gonna run to the shop real quick. But I just heard what you were saying. Uh, yeah, that's why I kicked Sinatra within like three oh, you minutes. Kicked like, him. Yeah, well, I was like, he's like, he's like, Rouge, what the fuck are you doing? I'm like, was that why you wanted the link uh and he's like yeah well, he's just like he wasn't really making a point love sinatra but i couldn't just have him in there yeah he was white knighting pretty hard love you sinatra he, he got a little heated yeah he got a little heated he seemed to yeah i want to pop in there but i, I thought the I, I liked the argument i thought it was a funny stream listening to everybody yell at each other it was good show. oh it was great yeah the blood was was fucking I, I like me and jf when everyone just left we just fucking laughed for five minutes because it was just like holy fuck that was beautiful what is more ridiculous to me is that the fucking obama robot chick you know because if you take a step back, and it's not like I think the Rush is great or anything, but if you take a step back, all we're doing is we're clapping for a chick that just makes robot. How pathetic is this, really? Why? Wow, which which like one was her? the oh, which one was the Obama chick? But, I think uh, he made a robot that shoot uh, potatoes at Obama or something. <laughs> what? <laughs> we didn't hear that. No, I didn't what? fucking hear about a potato robot. It's Annika, it's Annika. Please, God. Is there video of this? Uh, I don't know, man. Uh, I would have to. I'd have to ask her. I'll I'll DM her and I'll ask her. I'm just gonna run to the no, shop I, I, real quick, all right, guys? Okay. All right. Her, her whole I'll, point I'll back in was ten like, minutes. I'm, I I'm a girl and I make robots, and these guys are supposed to be alt right. Are supposed to be for traditional venues. They're saying Roshvi is a fucking senegar. Come on. Hey, I just I just like uh, observing people yell at each other. I mean that that really is just it, it warms the the, uh, <laughs> the cows of my heart. I, I enjoy that. It's entertainment. So, uh, it's conflict. It is. It is fucking entertainment. On the most basic human level, conflict is the it's it's the simplest form of entertainment. Two people. I like with an the I like the period to spiral. I don't think it's a bad thing. Like people say, I think it's a distilling process. Well, I wouldn't even call it a purity spiral. I mean, I don't think a lot of these people are even really associated with each other politically, to be honest with you. I mean, I think they kind of come from all different camps. I think it's more just fucking Jerry Springer level shit. It's really basic fucking stuff, which is why it's entertaining. It worked for Morton Downey. It worked to them. It worked to them. It well, it worked for Downey until he drew a backward swastika on his forehead. Yeah, that. Yeah. Yeah. Until that. I think, is Jerry Springer still going? 
No, I think he's done. He's, he's so done? fucking rich at this point. Why would he continue doing anything? He's old as fuck, too. Yeah, he's probably fucking 20 year olds and, you know, fanning himself with $100 bills. Remember, remember the Ringmaster? That was a fucking good movie. Now, uh, Coach, Coach, you there? Yeah. Uh, now, when are we getting your rematch with V? No, but why? Why would I bother? Because I fucking, I, I just, I like watching yeah, it. Yeah, you, you, it, because it's entertaining for you, but it's... Well, I, th I think you're starting to get your footing, though. I mean, at the no, first couple of uh, Bloodsports, Arenas, Kumite no, stuff, I, you were a little uneasy, a little unsure, but I think you're getting into the swing of it now. Well, I, I, I would, I can't say anything intelligent to that. That's very nice of you to say, but I don't think, I think that you're totally wrong and just fucking with me to get me to egg me on to, uh, to get it, it more of it. No, 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 no it's, it's a baptism of fire. You've you've got to you got to you got to get burnt a little bit until you get used to it, and then once you got the hang of it, you're good to go. Well, what, I, I think when you're did hang you start? When when did you start before like streams were happening? What's that? When did I what? When did you start uh, doing it? Oh, I've been arguing with fucking idiots on the internet for like a decade now. But why would you bother? I mean, isn't it boring? Oh fuck no! I mean, you're telling me you don't enjoy telling somebody they're a fucking retard on Twitter or coming up with a funny fucking jab at somebody when you're on a stream? Well, okay, fair enough. Yeah, because uh, yesterday there was this guy, uh, just a fucking moron, just like filming people, filming people at a, at a courthouse and filming the cops and just being a nuisance. And it was just so incredibly retarded. And it was, yes, it was interesting and fun for a while. But people wanted me to get Jim on for that. Uh, that guy wanted to go against you, Jim. I'm not kidding. Uh, he was, was it a sovereign people. citizen? He's one of those lads who like yeah, to film I, the cops and, you know, no, they have their no. rights and... Yeah, he's a silent citizen. He when when people come up to him, he doesn't say anything. Oh my god, I would have loved for... to have been on for that shit. Yeah, no, that would have been fun. Does he have a land boat? Look, Does if... he travel rather than drive? Is that what we're dealing with here? If he what? is in what? the crowd and would like to have a go at Jim, that would make my life. Because like for me, I mean, it's just God. Ah, oh, fuck the sovereign citizenship. But for you, like apparently everybody's like, oh, he did the series on it. Jim would go in. This would be great. Well, yeah, if he's yeah alive, I'd love to hear somebody tell me their birth certificate is a fucking uh, bond held in security at the Social Security Administration, <laughs> meaning they're <laughs> worth a million dollars. I'd love to fucking hear that. Oh, God. Oh, it was brutal. It, it was a brutal day. I think. Yeah, uh, and then some cop showed up and started arguing with the kid. And the, the kid was sounded just... like Bill Clinton, yes. Yeah, yes, exactly. He certainly did. And well, yeah, just... there's, there's no love loss between those two groups. I know cops fucking hate him. Um, I got a lot of messages from cops when I did those videos saying uh, that, you know, they're always freaked out when they got to deal with them. And there's like special training now for how to deal with the sovereign citizen. They have a special training procedure for police officers now on how to deal with that shit when they encounter it. To be fair, a lot of people disagreed with the person that came on. Well, they like, they may know. have, but like, here's the, this is the funny shit about this is like yesterday when he was on, I bet he didn't think that the very next day they'd be like, okay, well, here's Jim. <laughs> yeah, no, if, if, he, if he's reachable today, yeah, I'd, I'd be okay. Talking. I know he ain't got no goddamn job, so get him in here. Uh, he, he, he says give him a few minutes and he'll be here. Oh, oh shit. Okay, chat, start start spamming really happy emojis because this shit's going down. Under the Articles of Confederation, we are going to have some blood sports. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> Oh, God damn it. All right. Yeah, I just, I'm, yeah, I'm ready. I'm ready. Here we go. <laughs> Here we go. So, Billy, do you prefer waffles or pancakes? I am a waffle guy. You are? Kami. I'm will a waffle guy. Even, will you even but, fuck But they with get all hard sometimes, though. though. Don't don't you don't you prefer the fluffy goodness of the pancake? Nah, fuck the fl fluffy pancake. I want a crispy pancake, man. You know, I I think with pancakes they're they're a little too I don't know they're they're just a little too sweet for me to be honest with you. I, I prefer I prefer. You don't, have, you don't have to fucking pour diabetes on it. You could you could just have a plain pancake. But they come so sweet as as opposed to fucking waffles that you know. <laughs> I, I kind of get him on that, because I don't really like sweet shit either. But I like pancakes more than I like waffles, I think. Let's see. Waffles, strong, durable, right? A pancake, strong, fluffy, durable. wheat, flappy. <laughs> you know, what What do you think is the soy boy between these two? I'm going to say pancakes. 
Motherfucker, get this the fucking The waffle is the Brock Lesnar of morning pastry. People are saying crepes. Get the fucking crepes out of my fucking face. Crepes leave you fucking disappointed. There's never enough of the filling. Never enough of the fucking crepe. Fuck that shit. Do, do crepes give you the crepes? Yeah. Crepe Especially crepes. when they're filled with Nutella. Are, are, are you done with Nutella? Is, is Nutella in, in, in everything at this point? Is it the... They might be. Hold on. I just thought of this. We may not have a chance to get any more of these, but before we get this crazy dude in, failure. Can you? Could? Could? Could you grab some of the signs that were taken away from the crowd? Because there may be about a thousand at this point. Yeah, yeah. There, there might be a fucking obscene amount of signs that uh, are in the backlog. This is as close of a thing uh, as to a break as we're going to get. All right. Uh, Pop TV says to him, "This probably looks like uh, it takes less work than what he does. That may piss him off." Uh, talking about Sargon, I think. Trash man for two bucks says Sargon, bitch. Fragile ego, great impression, Andy. Uh, Janice Phillips for five bucks says Tonka. I think that's why Sargon started doing live shows. His first uh, one sold out fast. YouTube is changing, and he's trying. We'll see if he succeeds. Uh, Kenny OMG says uh, for 10 bucks uh, the only thing I dislike about the alt-right is the ball licking and the dick sucking. It's pretty gay. My limit is when people start uh, fantasizing about giving Richard Spencer a rim job. Fucking hell. Super Bear is 81. Andy, no doubt <laughs> the the attacks come from jealousy. WHM says uh, who cares about the death rattle of Jeff Holiday? Raven Ruin says, like I say, it's a uh, ankle biter season. Uh, do not concern yourself uh, with these jealous uh, losers. You can't monetize Twitter whining. Corbin Thomas says, how dare Andy address things on his terms? Uh, Crucial Bunny says, uh, hey, Jeff and crew, uh, make better content, sluts. Uh, exceptional detective. I bet you Jeff is a part of uh, the cannibal, uh, <laughs> cannibal community. Uh, Black D Dragon says, let's tell Andy he owes me and Azu a hangout. Uh, Kenny OMG, Andy, why are you always talking beyond people's back? Burger Lord says, so when Soy Gone called the chat white niggers, does that mean he knows what white is? Toxic Mouth for 20 bucks says, congrats on 10K. I've only started listening to you guys a few months ago. Love the show. My question is, why are there so many bitch-made men in this community? It's the one thing uh, that still bugs me. It must be the soy. Um, Kenny OMG says, uh, V is my god, and Billy is his prophet. <laughs> How do you feel about that, Billy? The prophet of V, Billy. Uh, No. No, that's <laughs> Dude, Billy didn't even have shit for that. He's just like, ah, no. <laughs> Water Javis says, "Let's get let's get to the real issue here. Is Jim okay? And where do I donate this pile of money to cure his cancer AIDS?" I would assume the Lord Patreon. For bucks says, <laughs> yeah, and uh, yeah, you can you can donate that money to uh, Monday Matt. <laughs> Feel free. He's gonna need it. He had an emotional breakdown uh, when he got his plaque. We don't know if he's okay, so it'd probably yeah. probably do him good. Yeah, Andrewski's uh, stream freedom of speech in its pure form, <laughs> purest form. Uh, Septics preached my halls of debate, but only bring on low-hanging fruit, says uh, Burger Lord. Um, American Gadfly for five bucks says it, it kind of it kind of is though. Between Andy Show and the Kumite and others, I don't have time for boring ass response videos. Uh, Andrew Wilson. Says Medgar is far sighted in recognizing uh, Atanka and Andy's new innovative uh, blood sports format. Uh, as the Spencer Sargon chat proved, it, it, it can move political discussion development forwards. Keep this format going. Uh, Lama Dirk says uh, Andy brings a harpoon to the whaling wall. <laughs> Black D Dragon says Andy the Fag Warsky. Uh, Cody Turner says, I pay Andy lots of money to insult him. Welcome to the internet. Uh, by the way, you'll get your stream one day, Cody. One one day you'll get your stream. Andrew Wilson says, Andrew, white nigger Worski. <laughs> Toad McKinley says, press one of Jeff Fuel can't melt steel beams. Uh, Wolf says, Jim is a glow-in-the-dark CIA nigger. <laughs> Fuckwad says, poor Jim is three days away from being a bubble boy. Uh, crackpot, fear the <laughs> finger. <laughs> fear the finger. <laughs> Ultra grade says, Andy, did you did you get my message I sent you? 
again, ultra great for two bucks. Andy, did you get my message I sent you? Trash man for two bucks says, press one if Sargon takes the internet too seriously. Water Drabble says for five bucks. Tonka, as you would say, the Kumite and the Kumite chat is razor blades and lemon juice. If you stage dive into this crowd, we're taking our pound of flesh. Uh, New Age Culture says, hi, Billy. Would you <laughs> like a balloon? I got a lot more in my sewer. Come on, I won't bite <laughs> your arm off. Ha 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 ha. Marty Spard just says, uh, Jimmy is going to stop. Oh, Jim is going to stop making uh, videos because he has allergies. Uh, Lemon Sister went <laughs> down smooth, uh, says CEO, fear, uh, CEO fears V. Uh, American Gadfly, I do. Fucking ranting monkey. Uh, Destruction Jenkins. Toad versus CRP deathmatch. Uh, is that going to happen anytime soon? I don't know. Well, let's, let's see. Trashman says for two bucks, Matt worked in Hollywood. Look at his IMDb. Dragon Strike uh, Thunder Force says, uh, tell Billy he's a, fa- a faggot nigger. Hey, Billy, you're a faggot nigger. Message received. Thank you very much. <laughs> uh, Dog Bath says, every drop of blood spilled in the Kumite helps Jim get into a Somali Valhalla. Uh, don't listen to AI simulation. Jim is as dead as six million Navajo samurai. Worst that I might ever says, hold on. I had to take a conference call. I thought Medica was either dead or suffering from AIDS flare up. Uh, what the fuck is going on here? Uh, Trash Man says, Andy, tell Jim how Liz's meat flap and garlicky butter special pizza tastes. Don't Yummy. the maggots make it taste better? Mmm. Mmm. Delicious. Worst that might ever says, get get profit for old time's sake. Fuck the profit. Uh, Corbin Thomas is a new sponsor. Welcome, welcome Corbin. Uh, you Appreciate too can you, have, uh, you know, the special emojis, the, the failure head emoji, the vamp head emoji, even even the Tonka emoji. Maybe, maybe one day we'll get a Medica emoji in there. But you, you, you get um, them. Uh, no, we need the scared Medica face or the happy Billy <laughs> face, one of the two. That'll be the next emoji. Good call. Or angry yeah. Andy with the toboggan on. That'll be the next emoji. Yeah. I, I got five more signs, and then we're done. Worst that might ever says, gas to boomer. Crackbot says, Billy, shove a bike pump up his ass. Uh, Pop TV says, Jim Belgian waffle or normal? Uh, I actually like Belgian waffles. And Tankfish. There you go. Story. Getting to know But Jim. Billy, Billy, as, as the anti-bully, why are you bullying a poor delusional sovereign citizen? I don't bully anybody. It's all love and friendship and hugs and shit on the internet. <laughs> Cody Trenner with one more says, don't get my hopes up and then take them away, failure. I can't handle the emotional turmoil that it will cause. The, you can't be fucking with people's, you know, their emotions like that, failure. That's just fucked up. That's just dirty. Uh, gonna jump over real quick from insane, hippie, hippie, insane. Here's $10 for the Kumite belt when you... Get to your button, Tonka saw. Appreciate you, bud. And Fug donated too to say Destiny's minions have been raiding Discord servers and recording voice chats. Mm. Let uh, I have I have a sign, a backstage sign, which a I don't know. Backstage sign. But uh, but Chrono says, uh, Medicare, wet bread or beef curtains? Say that one again. Wet bread or beef curtains? I choose suicide. Suicide, simple coup. I can be your second. Uh, we we got a response oh, from the ranting the monkey. He says, "Ranting monkey says no, but thanks." Not oh, there. You go. Andy's challenge has been denied. Another day, I guess. <laughs> right. Not that it matters because Andy is not here. However, mm-hmm. somebody no. else's challenge was most definitely answered. Billy, no bully. No, oh, we got we got the challenger. All right, it's the boot here. Yep, the boot is back. I'm not here to unperson people. Oh, I think Billy's gonna unperson the shit out of you. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I am behind the times. So what are we arguing about? What uh, what what's on the plate for today? Um, how should I put it? I, I deal with civil rights stuff. I go around and I film government buildings, police officers, law enforcement, security personnel, all all that stuff. But uh, of course, everybody likes to assume I'm a sovereign citizen. No, I am not. I, I don't. Well, you, do the... you guys just cock tease me. You told me you told me he was a fucking sovereign citizen. Let him talk. Uh, okay. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, okay. 
Probably the most famous videos I am known for on my channel, and yes, it's a very small and bullshit channel, um, is for giving people the silent treatment, where I'll sit there and film, and I'll have people come up to me and try to ask me questions, and I just completely ignore them. I don't respond to them at all. Whoa, 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 whoa. wait a second, wait a second. You, well, have like, like, you, you have like 10K subs. Are you calling Tonka's channel a small bullshit channel? Well, no, uh, he, the, he's different. He's got that. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on a second. Hold on a second. I think I think I heard those words come out of your mouth. Out of your mouth. Did you say that Tonk is a fucking small bullshit channel? Or did you just come inside his house and fucking spit on the carpet? Is that what you did? No, no. Oh, he gets. I put out a live stream. I get maybe uh, fifty to a hundred views. He puts out a live stream. He gets over a thousand. He's a bigger channel than me. He is a bigger channel than me. I will admit that right I, here. And I now. still think you came in here and spit on the carpet. My brothers, spit on this man. <laughs> uh, are we going Uganda Knuckles in here? <laughs> uh, let, let, it, let, him, let him talk about his position real quick. Just, just Well, yeah, let, let's hear your position. So you film people and don't talk to them. Okay, and? Uh, that's pretty much about it. I mean, I just exercise civil rights and deal with that aspect. That's, that's not all of it. Uh, see, I mean, you guys, CRP you guys got me was all here. Hyped up CRP was here yesterday, and he he was able to pull a little bit more out of it. It's just oh boy, <laughs> he's being drenched. Uh, well, coach, coach, do you want to tell me what I'm missing here? Well, I think that Dave himself could answer better than anybody. Uh, Dave, oh, wait, Dave, you need a towel. You need we a were towel. talking. <laughs> you look mighty wet. We were t talking yesterday about. Um, I was asking him, and he was describing how he would stand outside of court rooms and other uh, 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 public venues and just film. And usually, like, the police would go up to him and ask him to remove himself or step off the property or what have you. And there'd be, like, uh, well, Dave, why don't you tell us? I mean, what would happen? Uh, okay. You'd stand there outside of a courtroom, and you're filming, and what happens next? Um, big difference. It's a big difference, a courthouse, not the courtroom. Um, but okay. nonetheless, yes, I'm standing in a public area of a courthouse um, filming, a uh, courtyard area. And uh, the uh, more recent uh, video that has gotten big uh, on my channel was me getting forcefully removed off uh, the court ho uh, courthouse property grounds um, by U.S. Marshal. Uh, that was a little heated thing between me and the U.S. Marshal there. U.S. Marshal's definitely in the, long, uh, uh, in the wrong for uh, how the laws and uh, policies are all written right now uh, for that specific issue and, and has been with the DHS, um, Department of Homeland Security. What about the thing where you're like screaming for him to give him your badge number? Uh, you know, I feel like I'm missing the punch of this. Is there a video we can watch of this? Can you fill me go, in with go that? To the, go to the video where he's like, give me your badge number and shit like this. Fucking... Oh, oh, you want the cringy part. Okay. Well, yeah, that's what? the fucking yes. Okay, yeah, yeah, I, I, yeah, I yelled at them to give me the fucking their badge number and all that stuff for the other people that were around there that obviously worked, but they ignored me and walked off. While the only uh, the one that actually, well, uh, the, one of the two that put their hands on me that pushed me off, only gave him me his uh, name and badge number. So the guy that removed you gave, gave you his badge and name. Yeah, well, only one of the uh, two. There was one other person. Uh, but I had, uh, what was it, there was three courthouse personnel. I'm pretty sure all three were marshals. And then um, there was some uh, uh, city police that were uh, present that were called to the scene. Well, I mean, this it, it strikes me as, I, I don't know, dumb, but I, 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 I need to see the video, softer. I guess. I feel like I'm, I'm missing something that you all have been exposed to that I have this not is, been exposed This is to. a much softer approach than we had yesterday. I have a feeling that, that he may have oh. refined his way of... His way of coming well, into this. Do you, do you want me to go? You want me to? Uh, we can do the video. Failure can do the video. Yeah, let's get, give him the thing. Cause uh, how should I put? It? I, I'm pretty tired still. I was after yesterday's thing. I had to go run errands and uh, bike ride most of that. So I'm pretty well. And, and yes, from that. we want blood sports. And yes, we're talking about the cringy <laughs> shit. You know that's what okay. we're talking about. Well, I, I, well, I'm just explaining it. I mean, I'm waiting for more pushback. That's the thing. I mean, I, I got to get ramped up here. Well, yeah, I'm not I mean, hearing anything that's striking me as like I get it. Okay, he's outside filming shit at a courthouse. I, I, I mean, yeah, it would probably be annoying, and he's gonna run into cops and shit. But if he's not a sovereign citizen, talking about his land boat and the Articles of Confederation, 
it's two different things. So I need to see the video to get a better idea of what we're dealing with. Failure, can you screen share that? He he was shouting. It was the thing about rights and give me your badge number and like you were doing all that shit. That was what I was like. Oh God, dude, come well, on. Well, that was that was me and um uh Josh there that was going back and forth um and then uh, Ichabob because. Ichabob hopped on me uh, with a citation from the Fifth Amendment. I mean, not Fifth Amendment, from the um, Fifth Circuit Court uh, ruling that I, uh, as one of the citations I put there, uh, that put out there. And then uh, Josh there was stating that if I'm standing there two feet behind him, and film uh, and filming behind the cop, uh, if he was still a cop at that, uh, he would um, tell me to back off. If I didn't back off, he would uh, say it's a lawful order. And if I still didn't, he would arrest me right then and there. And I point out that. That doesn't work necessarily that way. Oh, it looks like Failure's got this up. Failure, you want to unmute yeah, okay. yourself and put it up on screen share so we can see what everybody's talking about so I can get clued into what's going on. Yesterday, he was, he wanted you specifically. We just, we couldn't, we couldn't get you. Okay, so this is, this is the courthouse thing you're talking about? Yeah, this is the, the one that, uh, the most recent big blow up that I have. Okay, let's, let's take a look. Filming? No? Okay, uh, I'm gonna tell you one more time, please, uh, to exit the federal grounds with the camera there. I think you're pretty ignorant on the law. Okay. Um, anything else? DHS Momo, 2010. Go look it up. Come back to me when you have. Okay. Are you leaving? Sir, are you leaving? I said 2010 Sir, DHS I'm, I'm, Memo. I'm gonna take this Which, from you nicely. No. I'm going to take it from you. You cannot be on federal ground. Yeah, yeah. Well, okay, name the, yeah, yeah. Sp uh, name the specific I'm law. I'm not naming anything. Name I'm not the naming specific anything. law. I'm not I'm not gonna and I need it. your badge I'm number. not going to. I'll give you my badge number. I need I'm it not, now. I'm not going to get I need I'm, it now. It's not coming right now. I need just, it now. Just relax. I need it now. No. I need it now. My money and I want it now. <laughs> well, we're, gonna, we're just going to walk you off the ground. We don't want to take your stuff. You are. I'm going to give you. This is a legal action. I'm going to give you. This is an illegal action. No, it's not. I'm going to yes, give you my badge is. number. Is this there is anything a, I can do? That this will is stop an illegal you? action. Is there anything I can do? This that is will stop an illegal you? action. Okay. DHS memo 2010. Go look it up. Okay. Go read it again. Okay. Now. I'm, I'm listening to you, brother. Do you understand what I'm saying, though? Do you understand okay. what I'm saying? We're, we want you to walk off the grounds. There's other courses of action if you feel that your rights are violated. When we get off the grounds, I will give you my badge number for sure. Go look it up. I'm not looking anything up right now. Is there anything I can do without force that we can talk about to get this camera off federal grounds? This is an illegal uh, move. Get your hands off it's my camera. It's an illegal move. You got the steel chair. Get your hands last, off my last, camera now. First, I'm going to take your camera. You guys are okay? appreciative. I'm going to take your camera in not a physical way. Okay? Once I take your camera, please don't do anything that's physical. I see that you're shaking. There you go. There you go. There you go. Badge number. I, officer, I'm badge number. Off the ground. Badge off number. Badge number. Don't stand. It is completely legal. Double. Listen, sir. Look, you're in a weird. Go, in, how about this? Go check your CFR and photography right now. You're in a weird spot. No, I hey, am I not. Don't, I don't like you being in this spot. I would I hate for you to fall. Hey, okay. uh, how about this? Go check your CFR okay. and photography Walk right over now. This way. Walk hey, over hands this. off. Okay, now. Hands off. Don't do it. Okay. Hands off. Walk this way right now. Right. Hands off. Walk this what way. you're doing is completely Please illegal. Walk this way. Walk. Hey, if you. Put any I'm more not, pressure on no the pressure. hands off! No pressure. No pressure. <laughs> okay. We're gonna walk all the way down, all the way out. Make sure Who is your supervisor? Ground. Talk about it when we get off federal grounds here. Just give us a minute. This cop is polite. He also was completely in the wrong. Walk right over here. Nope. Hands off. Okay. I'm on public sidewalk. Okay. So there you go. Name badge number no, now. Listen, listen Who is your supervisor? What I'm saying. No. Listen Name what badge I'm number. Listen to what I'm saying. Okay. We're gonna go back on here. 
if you come back on this property with this camera right now, we're going to place you under arrest. Under what law? That's the last thing I say. Under what know. law? 4926 is my badge number. Kenny is my last name. Carol, C-A-R-R-O-L-L, -L, is my supervisor. Please don't come back on the property with that camera. This is your last warning. Thank you very much. Badge number. Badge number. Badge number! <laughs> Jesus. He's shouting at him. He's Wait, still there's, there's still... There's it's not still, like a spur. Tyrant alert. Minutes. There's still that was that was the most video. that was so anticlimactic. Okay, so he told you he'd arrest you if you left the fed or if you came back on federal grounds. Did you go back on? Mm -hmm. uh, I'm planning on going back, but right now there's a current uh, investigation going on into uh, this specific incident, so I haven't uh, decided to mess with that or interfere with that investigate. Well, cause any more. Well, no, I mean at the time, if you knew, if you believed you were in the right, if you you know believed the oh. DHS memo or whatever, why didn't you just go right back on? Um. How should I put it? Uh, I wasn't. Uh, how uh, I would if I didn't have something going on the next day, uh, where being arrested would interfere with it. Yeah, I had uh, prior plans for the following day, and I was like, "Crap! I want to go back and go ahead and get the uh, push the arrest." But I had something <laughs> what were important. Your plans? To do. <laughs> so, wait a wait, second. Wait, 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 what were your plans? What was your plans for the next day? Another protest or something? No, no. It's uh, family matters. It was a family get together kind of thing so I, let me understand so, it. Let, me, let me understand it your, your 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 principles you know take a second place to your inconvenience is that how it works i thought you were a principled guy no i've been arrested for this kind of stuff it's just you pick your fights when you when you're able to do it i'm not going to yeah, sit there have dinner when you don't have a dinner date tomorrow. It, it, it's a it was a bigger event than what i'm just saying i'm just giving a basic understanding so this way you guys have something to say hey yeah, I well, no, no, I'm just, I'm just trying to understand. Yeah. So what was the point of going on there in the first place? So you go on the federal, the grounds, wherever you were, the courthouse or whatever, yeah. uh, and you're filming stuff. What was your statement? What was the statement of doing that? It was just me documenting to see how, uh, how they would handle my civil rights in the first place. So once you how... see that they're going to violate your civil rights, you don't pursue it to give a concrete definition and have them arrest you so you have a case and can say, hey, look. No, there DHS is a case. Memo. As I said, there is a case. It's being investigated right now. There's and you went to court over this kind of stuff before, you said? Yes. Uh, back in, what was it, 2014, uh, me and the uh, Department of Homeland Security went at it uh, uh, for Anchorage, Alaska. And now what, this, happened with, what happened with that one? Um, uh, they actually uh, tried, uh, they pushed uh, charges against me and then dropped them. They literally okay, was did like... You, did you per, like pursue a civil litigation against them if they violated your rights? What did you do with it? No, I did a follow-up investigation. They never caused any further problems. Um, I walked in. I filmed multiple times within the the federal courthouse, within the federal courthouses, um, up in Alaska, and haven't had any problems since. Well, I guess I just don't get like if you want to go do this and you know, um, show off your your civil rights or whatever rights you're you're exercising here. Why you wouldn't take it to to the fullest? Like when you have them at the point where you're saying you're what you're doing is wrong, it's illegal, and you could just set one more foot back on the ground. You're already there doing your demonstration. Well, I, I I've already how should I put? It? I've already gotten the document as much documentation as I needed for that point. If I really want to give it a hell mary, yes, I could. Uh, uh, I could have done that step back on there, but I had other plans uh, established, and for me, I I got what I needed. For an investigation to go forward, but then they uh, dropped. I documented it. It. But then they dropped the investigation. No, not with this one. The investigation's still ongoing. But by the way, I'm sorry. Just just for context, when was this recorded? When did this event happen? September 11th of last year. David, what's the best possible result you can achieve with this investigation, in your estimation? Um, that there will be a reissuing of the um, Department of Homeland Security memo except specifically dealing with the U.S. Marshals and, um, it, well, and having hopefully that reiterated and better stated to uh, courthouse personnel, security personnel, so this way they understand it. Because this is not the first time. There's been other people with federal courthouses that have had uh, similar run-ins. Oh, okay, uh, so you what, keep bringing what, up yeah. this uh, memo. What's the memo? 
Uh, it's the 2010 Department of Homeland Security memo. If you give me a second, um, I can actually link it to you guys real fast here. And uh, it it's a stems from a uh, a case back in 2009, 2000. Uh, While there. you find those, uh, let me read some uh, signs real yeah. quick. Uh, Sono uh, WSKE says, uh, Jim, how do you how do you feel about the blue waffles? <laughs> yeah, no thanks. Fuck no, mm -hmm. no thanks. Uh, Pop TV says, as a former security guard, this man is a cunt. <sighs> Um, Kenny, o Kenny OMG says, I just read the memo and he's actually right. And worst that I might ever says, this cop is a fucking saint. Yeah, totally. Kenny Remarkable o restraint. I mean, he oh, really okay. did. I'm, I'm reading your memo, right? And under Title 41, Section 102, it says uh, that you're allowed to do this unless otherwise directed by regulations, rules, orders, or directives. Uh, that's specifically uh, dealing with the inside, um, and this also stems from a uh, what is it? Um, uh, it the uh, was it uh, the New York ACLU was involved in this, uh, getting this memo issued in the first place. Okay. Yeah, but uh, and the thing is, is there is restrictions on recording inside the courthouse, but not outside. And uh, that specific uh, legal case that uh, that memo came from. This is almost the exact same situation. I'm standing in the courthouse there, uh, in the the uh, public courtyard area, uh, which the prior person was arrested twice on uh, for that. And why the heck are all the archive ones I have not popping up properly? Okay. Yeah. yeah I, I mean, I uh, listen. I, yeah. I don't have anything against you for wanting to prove a point yeah. uh, legally, but it just <laughs> like. I don't think you're proving the point unless you get arrested. Like, if you're going to go there and do this, you need to get arrested to prove your point. You have to make it go through the system, yeah, you have not to just make an investigation. Well, well, the thing is, is the uh, um, there's an investigation on that part, and there's there's a potential for a civil case. And depending on how the investigation goes, um, a civil case might be pushed further. Yeah, but so, you you already stated that you had a a similar run in or a prior run in uh, where charges were dropped and you said Alaska or something like that, but you didn't pursue, pursue civil litigation. Yeah, why because, would you do it now? Because uh, I'm pretty sure in this case that yesterday there's you said it was for the views. Thing. But huh? Didn't you say yesterday that it was for the views and to have entertaining YouTube videos? No, I didn't say that. Well, that's uh, what no, I that was a question. That that, that, that was well, no. I, yo, you guys go. assumed that I said if I was doing this for the views, there's a lot different more ways I can do this to be more aggressive and all that stuff. Yeah, but uh, for me, I I do it more on the education stuff. Um, due to the fact that I cover a lot of the case law and I provide uh, support also with other uh, activists that have been hemmed up by law enforcement and stuff like that for just filming. Okay. Well, I, I, I got to say, I'm bored with this. I thought you were a sovereign citizen. They built you up to be something that. You yeah, I, I know. I, I he built there, himself built up, up that way yesterday. I I did not build myself up there. I sat there. And I said, "There's a line in law that and where it's at." And then me and Josh were arguing specifically where where that line All was right, at. Hold on, real quick, chat. If you think that he was coming in a whole lot hard, more hardcore yesterday, throw me a one in the chat. Throw Jim a one in the chat. If this dude was coming in 100% harder yesterday. It's going to be delayed. It takes like a minute for them to catch up. So we'll yeah. see. I, I, I think I, it's. I feel I feel a lot of a, a reserved <laughs> version of yesterday. Listen, David, let me just give you my personal experience on this. I think you're a spoiled child. I was at Lebanon once visiting, and I was at a taxi taking pictures. I took a picture of the famous hotel, which uh, name I cannot remember now. And then the army chased my taxi down, brought me out, and said, look, Lebanon is a beautiful country. There are many, much scenery here for you to take pictures of. But please, do not take pictures of uh, where you have uh, guards standing by, because Israel may shoot a fucking missile any, any time. And they took my phone and deleted it and check my contacts to see if I was uh, messaging anybody. 
and they were very That's polite. Not... They said, you know, no, have a nice day. And you're you're just acting like a spoiled brat because if you're gonna get uh, okay, stop there, stop there. The I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I want, I'm gonna, well, let, me the thing. let me finish. Let me finish. That's Lebanon. That's Lebanon. This is the United positive. States. If you if we you are getting stuff like positive, let me fucking finish, David. You fucking brat. If you are getting something positive for the American citizens, then yes, your work could be valid, but your work is both pointless and too boring. Did we lose him? I, it, no, he's here. I, uh, no, no, well, he, he like he, it sounded like his sentence got cut off there. Uh, yeah. But no, the thing is, this is the United States, not Lebanon. We have a legal right to film anything we want inside, well, from a public area or a place we're legally allowed to be at. I think yeah, but you don't have the right to be a nuisance. Uh, no, no, the, he does have the right, to CRP, to be a nuisance. I think his main objection is that you're. It, it would be that you're boring and pointless. Was his main yeah. objection? Yes. Uh, okay, so I'm boring and pointless. I never said I was exciting. I never said everything I did was great. I I read legal paperwork online of on live streams that maybe get about fifty people to watch or something like that. I am not that big famous kind of guy. I'm not. Some dude that pulls in a thousand people on a live stream or uh, four hundred thousand or whatever. I just do with simple stuff, boring stuff. Very few. I mean, very few times. It's a very exciting. I sit there and read case law. I listen to lawyers talk about legal issues. Yeah, but so, lawyers why? do that sometimes because there's a benefit to advancing the law and to the public or to the government to, to you know, uh, have seen things determined. If it's this way or that way, you're achieving nothing. nothing yes, we, I, I do achieve something. I, uh, if I find something, I can report on it. And if possible, and in some cases, it can turn into a case law like the Turner v. Driver, which I cited yesterday. Turner v. Driver was done doing the almost the exact same thing I was doing. That stemmed from a guy that was filming a police station. And I haven't had a chance to go back over because I think Ichabob I was actually misquoting the, the citation part, and I still got to go back and read that sentence through. Yeah, but everybody knows time. if you, if you go there with a sign or with a note and you deliver to the cop, this is the case law, this is my what I'm doing, this is the project, he wouldn't do anything. He might not even push you outside. The, so you don't do that on purpose just, just to act like a fucking spoiled child. The thing is, is I'm testing to make sure they understand people's rights. I'm not sitting there and trying to educate them. I want to know if You're they're going to be able to handle it without the, uh, the knowledge beforehand. Because what if some random idiot that doesn't know much about it gets hemmed up for doing something similar? I'm just going to take a picture because this looks cool, or I have my friends here. And then some security guy or some cop or law enforcement personnel gets a freaking stick up his damn ass You're and says, I, am I a liar? No, I'm You're a liar. liar. I have. There's You're videos of this kind of shit out that happens out there. You know why you are a liar? Because if your interest was knowing if the policeman was educated or not, you would educate him. You purposely don't educate him. Just to it's show not your my job ass. to educate them. I'm testing this. Then the why are you doing this? That. It sounds like Scarface is like so pissed. <laughs> As is. As is, I'm testing what their knowledge is and to see if they're up to par. If they're not up to par, then it's on their department and the training schools that train them that get them trained back up to where they need to be at. I'm just being the guy. I'm just the 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 instructor. Well, the instructor that administrates the surprise quiz at the end of the day to see if everybody was studying their homework. So you're not a sovereign citizen. You're a citizen instructor. <laughs> something like that. Or, or something like that. I, I'm the guy that's issuing the tests. That's what I'm doing. He, he's testing everything. So, you, so you're like the citizen proctor? Yeah, I, I guess so. I, I feel like there's a little bit of history here. Maybe I missed out on more <laughs> fire talk <laughs> yesterday. <laughs> Josh, you did. You did Josh, because like, you, you, like when Josh you, was on, he yes, has like guys, a complete... Guys, guys, what, 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 do you, what do you call himself a proctologist then? <laughs> <laughs> it's. I feel like we're getting we're getting a um a much softer boot than we got yesterday, and I, the chat yeah. agreed. It is yeah, a much I, softer I, I, position I, yeah, than just, yesterday. I I I just I'm I'm trying to get uh, get into the role, but I just how should I put? I feel like I'm doing more explaining than having to. Uh, uh, somebody in the chat wanted defend. me to ask you. Um, did you say that being a cop wasn't dangerous? It, yeah, it's, it's yeah. not as dangerous as people make it out to be.
It's actually one of the safest uh, professions out there when it comes to work uh, on the Does job. Does anyone injuries. remember his quote yesterday? Because that was a pretty, uh, pretty fucking. You you were definitive on that shit, and it pissed off Joshy quick. Oh yeah, uh, Officer Clinton was not happy. Yeah. Uh, okay. <laughs> how how is it not a dangerous job? What do you what do you mean by safest? Okay, if you look at the um, the professions in the United States that uh, have the highest workforce, um, uh, um, like death tolls and stuff like that, it doesn't even make it into those. Yes, they are in a position where they're at a higher risk for potential injury, but more often than not, because they're allowed to defend themselves and stuff like that, they have the ability to rest and call in numbers to uh, help back them up. They suffer a lot less in that uh, degree. You're more likely to get harmed or killed doing like commercial fishing or logging or something like that. Would you say working at McDonald's is more dangerous? Um, no, I would say being a convenience store clerk would be uh, more dangerous. Actually. More dangerous than being a cop. Yeah. Uh, what were in the top uh, rankings for jobs that were on that list that cops didn't make? Uh, well, I, I already stated too, uh, logging, um, a commercial fishing, construction work was actually in there too. Uh, actually, I'm gonna pull it up right now. So the professions where big heavy shit falls on you. Pretty much, or, or something. Something can easily, uh, well, the environment's out to kill you or something like that. Okay. Uh, so would you say, actually, would you say being, being a cop is easy? Easy? No, it's not easy. That's why they get paid a decent amount of money. So much softer than yesterday. I feel like I got nothing to work with here, guys. This is I don't, so I... marshmallow compared to what he was doing yesterday. <laughs> oh my god! I don't, failure. You uh, were here, CRP. You were here. <laughs> Tell me if this is not just fucking. No, it's that we need uh, we Officer Clinton because Officer Clinton riled him up. Just the just the mere fact of him riled him up. Because I mean, like, look, I, you know, Dave. I, I mean. I think what you're doing is completely pointless, right? Uh, and I, I think that how you handled yourself there was it was like a spoiled child, really. I mean, you kept saying, you know, you know, what's your I, badge I number? Admit, what's yes, your, it, was, yeah, it, it was, was definitely on the cringe. Yeah, hang on, hang on, hang on. Yeah, but but yeah. the thing is, see, it, you, what you're doing is socially useless. It's just a waste of everybody's time. Uh, and and the thing that was interesting to me, at any rate, was that yesterday, you started to have like a meltdown when Josh started uh, arguing with you. And Not there was something was about the military stalking him too. Yeah, I mean, it, it seems like Wait, no, you have an issue with let's, authority. Let's get, uh, you, you glossed over something there that's interesting. Well, who's getting stalked by the military? <sighs> oh, uh, that uh, uh, the J Bear video. I actually had um, OSI. Oh yeah, no, no. <laughs> they, they followed me. Uh, they followed me for about a quarter mile. Until I ducked into the woods and they refused to follow, and I was like, "Oh, that's a little bit disappointing." Why were they following you? Because I was filming the uh, the military base. So you're filming a military base, <laughs> and then they decide to investigate you. You can't tell me that didn't. I mean, that that can't be shocking. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it wasn't shocking. I was actually sort of chuckling at the fact they were following me. They well, followed me well, of course, the they're going to follow you, you idiot. Of course, they're going to follow you. They want to know what they're what you're doing. I mean, well, which military yeah, base was this? Uh, was joint this? air, uh, joint uh, air force, uh, um, joint base, uh, Elmendorf, um, J Bear, uh, Fort Richardson. Uh, what was it? The military police, or was it that uh, that uh, fucking uh, milk dud looking dude? It, it, uh, do you mean the one with the plaid shirt? Yeah. Uh, no, the 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 security so guard. Awesome. Oh no, no, uh, that was FAA. If if you're referring to the video yesterday, that was FAA. No. Uh, and the uh, J Bear one happened like a year prior, and with that one, I had OSI, which is sort of like the equivalent of the FBI, but within the military. Uh, well, within the Air Force, that uh, two of their guys followed me uh, so after you're, I got you're done. So you're filming an air base, <laughs> and they see this guy standing out there, dead silent, filming their fucking airplanes. <laughs> So they have two guys checking out. Hey, make sure this guy's not wearing a turban with a bomb up his ass. <laughs> and they follow you for a quarter mile, and they're like, "Well, he ran into the woods, so I guess we don't have to worry about that." Hey, hey, I, well, they sat, they stood there for a little bit there. Then, well, I would yeah, too they, if I got some on, guy yeah. stalking around hold my on, hold on. Wait, wait, and then second. dips so out. Wait, 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 wait. So you're testing their security by recording not... stuff, and then if they 
they question you or anything, they're they're not doing their jobs by not letting no, you. No, well, I stated this yesterday. If they come out and ask questions, that's not a violation. Uh, that is actually within their right and actually proper security procedure to have someone go out and acquire information from them if they see something suspicious, kind of thing. Where, it, but what I'm testing for specifically is any potential rights violation where they sit there and say, you can't film this, turn your camera away, turn your camera off, you have to delete that. That's when they, uh, they step over the line. Did they tell you that? Uh, they, uh, the guy in the plaid shirt for that uh, J-Bear video, yes, he sat there. He's like, get your, uh, get your camera off of me. Get your camera off the gate. Quit filming the, the military the base. The J-Bear video, that's the military base one? Yeah, that's the military base one. That's actually the most, uh, that's the biggest uh, video on my channel right now. Okay, so he told you to fuck off. Oh, well, he, he's uh, cursed at me once there. He's like, get it, uh, get your uh, fucking camera off uh, off of me. And that's after he stepped in front of the camera. Stop okay, so did, did you stop recording at that point? And then they followed oh, you? Oh, hell no. I, I kept the camera rolling. I don't turn that sucker off. That stays rolling until I'm done. So what was the conclusion of the video? I'm just trying to get a, a, a idea of how you got chased in the woods. Uh, uh, I got done. I spent. I got the footage that I needed, and uh, after the MPs walked up and sat there and said uh, three or four times that I had stepped on the property, that I would be arrested on the Air Force uh, military property. And uh, after that, they parted ways. I parted, and then I turned off my main camera and uh, walked off. And then I looked behind me, and sure enough, I had two guys, the OSI guys, following me. I'm just like, oh, this will be fun. I'm gonna take them on a little walk. Now let's uh, see how far they're going to follow me. Yeah, I'm, I'm just reading the chat, and a lot of them are raising the question of what, what is the point of this? I know you said citizen inspector, but you are eventually going to get shot in your fucking head if you keep <laughs> filming military bases. You know that, right? If they shoot me for uh, filming a military base, uh, that's going to that's gonna cause all kinds of hell. Nobody's going to know. You're going to be dead. Nobody's going to have your yeah. finish. I know people are going to know because I, I got um, there's methods of document while well, having a live documentation or having backup either um, with people that uh, what I do is we'll either have a live stream going or we'll have. Um, Didn't you say you were in the military? Like, you know, this. yeah, I'm former military. Oh, right. I've forgotten that. You're right. So, so I, I mean, you would know how they would feel about that. I don't know. I, just, I, I know how they feel because I've done similar. I've done those guarding positions. I've guarded gates. I've sat there and pulled security. I've well, sat wouldn't you there realize and... how how incredibly annoying it is for somebody like you, if you were like manning post and you know protecting whatever, and some moron like you is filming and just you know causing a nuisance? Don't you it realize how annoying it, it would be? You know what? To be honest, all the security details, I, I would find it entertaining. I would be sitting there chuckling and uh, joking with the, with the other guard. We'd sit there no. be making jokes about it. We'd take what a note, obviously. The... What, what started you on this road? Um, a, uh, another military veteran getting uh, shot in the head with a tear gas canister over in, uh, was it Oakland? Uh, it was over in uh, California uh, several years back. That was sort of like the kicker, and then eventually I sort of... Uh, it just uh, fell into the role of film because I was originally just filming politics. And then I was like, well, you know what? I'm also start filming police because this other guy that was filming um, police and doing some other stuff, uh, he was just talking way too much. I'm like, God, he talks way too much. I need to show him how it's done where you don't talk. And so I just started like, well, I might as well get some practice. And then uh, eventually I started uh, alert. I came up with the silent treatment where I just, don't talk to uh, the security or law enforcement. Let them ask their questions, and I just don't respond to them, and then uh, they'll usually go bugger off or whatever. Quick comment from yeah. somebody who says the former uh, Navy. I don't know if they mm -hmm. want that doc, so I'll just leave the name out of it. They say that if they would have seen you pointing something at them from several hundred yards away, they would have shot your ass. Yeah. And they you would definitely be in big trouble then. If you don't amp it up, you're just going to be boring. Well, and, and the thing is, is I don't, I'm not aiming to be entertaining. I'm just going out there and testing and documenting it. I mean, there's people that are involved in this same, the same stuff. All they do is go around and submit uh, public records requests 
and get all that stuff. And their footage is just as dry and as boring as most of mine. Okay, okay. the chat is spamming. What is your MOS? What is my MOS? Communications. Okay. By the way, what do you do for a living? I mean, how do you pay the bills? I pay the bills? Uh, I'm a disabled vet, so part of that is covered. So, And then I do odd jobs and... Uh, whatever stuff that comes in from donations to stuff that I from when I do video gaming or some other things. Okay, people uh, in chat are saying the... that's not an MOS. What? People in your chat are saying that's not an MOS. Hold on, I dip mm. the chat. Let me check. Let me check. Oh dear. Okay. Uh, let on. me. Chat's losing. Hold on. Mind. Now they're spamming fa uh, fake LARPer stolen valor. Oh dear. Give me a second. I got my. DD 214 over here. I'll, right, I can't on, remember hold specifically. On. Wait, okay. An MO. Somebody get. What the fuck is an MO? Hey, what? everybody, stop the car yeah. for a second. I don't. I'm not military man. Yeah, speak, What's speak, an MOS? Speak, speak, yeah, what, what is an MOS? Billy, do you know what an MOS is? Look, I only played Call I, of Duty I, one time. I don't know uh, what the fucking MOS is. A is. job code for. Uh, uh, what was it? Uh, it's a job code that you get for your jobs while you're in the military. Where the hell did I put my DD for? Oh, it might be in here. But uh, oh, oh, here oh it is. God. Oh, I'll, I'll, God. Give me a second, guys. I, it's been a long it? time. Take your time. Been. Take your time. <laughs> this, uh, can, this is going I'll nowhere quick. MOS number it should be on here. Oh, fuck. Okay, what's, 20... a, what's an MOS? The, like, what does they're, they're that stand for? They're saying your service number is your service number. The job it, it's... Yeah, it's 25 uniform. That's what it was. 25 uniform. Okay. I know some stuff uniform. about the military right. from my grandfather and other family members, but I don't know all this shit. So why were you disabled? Blew out my joint. Uh, blew out my knee when I was in the Army. Did, uh, while I was halfway through my tour, I, uh, my knee gave out, and I could no longer continue service. Mm -hmm. That's what happens when you're walking three, uh, three to five miles a day. With gear on and stuff like that, mm. and then you go and you go into the military with bad knees already. Uh, let's see. Thomas Mayer Jr. is asking twenty-five. U, what level? Uh, 10, 20, 30. Okay. Is there why are why would you mistake? MOS is a number, right? Like apparent. Everybody's it, saying it's a number. Why would you mistake that for communications? Because I work on communications equipment. And my job. No, I mean, literally... why would you mistake the term MOS for communications? Like you even repeated the question back before you said it. Yeah. No, as no, as I said, it it literally I work in I work in communications as in I'm dealing with communications equipment. It's radios, computers, computer networking. It is, uh, computer networking, and then also I get called in time to time to uh, actually make sure. That the cryptos, uh, the encryption, all that stuff is working for the important stuff. Uh, Tennessee Marine is saying you're lying ass motherfucking punk bitch. Uh, Any well, other like things they the, could like? They can go ahead and accuse me if they if they really want some validation. If they, mm -hmm. I can, what I can do later on, failure is I can uh, uh, scan up a uh, censored version. This way, my uh, certain important details are not uh, shown. And I can so this way you can see my DD two fourteen. And Jack keeps I'll, saying the stream needs yeah. the marine. Do you have somebody in your uh, audience who's a marine that wants there to come on? There are several up? marines. I'm touching. Yeah. I'm gonna touch base with like three or four of them real quick. See see who all can make it. Because this is a conversation out of my league. So if you got somebody, I don't know what the fuck an MOS is. So yeah, I need I need someone familiar with it. I'm I'm tapping. Uh, a few. Let's see. Uh, it says we should get. Uh, Officer Clinton. No, no, Officer Clinton would know. Hold on, hold on. Uh, Officer, Officer Clinton was on Clinton. yesterday. Let's see if we can. I yeah, let's spread the love. Let's spread the love. Let's see if we can yeah. get somebody new in here. Uh, I, 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 Sinatra, uh, hold on, hold on one second. Sinatra gave me the definition of uh, MOS uh, 25U. Obviously, in a combat situation, the jobs within the USAAC, ASC uh, are especially crucial in order to detect enemy signals and jam enemy radio transmissions 
But in any scenario where large numbers of troops are moving, the signal support system specialists are important to keeping everyone in contact. The job involves performing signal support functions and technical assistance for computer systems, providing technical assistance for local area networks, and doing maintenance on equipment, terminal devices, power generators, and vehicles. So would you say that describes what you did or, or is... Uh, yeah, that's different? exactly pretty much what we covered. I did all that under the sun pretty much. It's uh, We're a jack of all trades within the thing. We're not specialized in anything, but we work on everything. Oof. <laughs> Using very broad brush terms there. And that's that's what's weird is in it... Uh... Yeah, I'll, I'll give it. I'll give it a minute. Let's see. Let's see who we can. I'm talking to a few people. See if anybody makes it, because this is some shit. And like, I uh, ain't so bear is ex-military, but I don't I, know I would, I, him. I, but he's British. Bur the the Brits don't fucking count. And they got a whole he different deal. <laughs> from US. You're right. It, totally yeah, the, the the way the laws work over in the UK are different than how they work over here in the US. You're losing your audience, Tonka. They're they're getting bored. You need to bring in something here. <laughs> How many fucking military people do I keep on tap? Is, need uh, to have like a a Rolodex. Full I do. Of I need a yeah. I really do. I need a Rolodex full of uh, correspondence for everything. Hey, well, you you already this got is, uh, you already really got me weird. added in there. So like uh, every time uh, Billy's shown up here lately we start off with one thing and we end up somewhere else like we'll start off with a wacky wizard and we end <laughs> up on a pedophile here. and they're uh, gone uh, ah. they, they might have had some problems on their settings oh, I was maybe. fighting out with my voice meter earlier maybe. the only reason you get retards like this in the US is the over judicialization of petty problems because if that arose organically in a real problem in society, it would have a fucking point. But you've got all, all of these fucking Jew lawyers trying to, to get rich, so they pick on little issues that citizens and the government have between the, themselves, and then you get retards lo like you trying to make something out of it. Go do something else, man, or amp it up. <laughs> oh, you want me to amp it up? Well, I could point you to a few people that are already amping it up. I'm getting ready to go to school for law, so... Who is Wind Who Tunnel is approved here? Uh, <laughs> Theo, you there? Hello? Yo. Who is Theo? Hello? Oh, this I is uh, this is this is Theo Cuxtable. I run a uh, I run a small academic YouTube channel, and I'm uh, I'm here to make Coach Red Pill's ass look like somebody punched a cherry pie. <laughs> Why? <laughs> <laughs> Why? <laughs> well, because you uh you canceled you canceled two live streams on me, man. Two weeks in a row. I don't know who you are. This is uh this is a uh, oh sorry this is a uh, listen I'm I'm freaking out because I'm I'm in front of the big dogs. I'm gonna put my friend on. What? What? Uh 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 uh, uh hell, hell, hello is it, is 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 this Coach Red Pill? Who is this? I'm almost afraid to ask. Uh, this is uh, this this is V Monroe, and uh, I, I'm here to I'm here to finally end the mystery and tell you what uh, what Sargon's uh, Sargon's uh, cum tastes like. Uh, okay, please tell <laughs> us. We are all very interested. It's a it's a it's a sweet sweet cinnamon crunch, and uh, if you would all like to uh, join the liberals movement, I would uh, I would like to uh, in invite you right now to say the pledge with me. Uh, I am enlightened by my own intelligence. Oh, oh, sorry, sorry, I'm, uh, I'm reading the wrong paragraph. Uh, uh, um. They're stealing material in, from Marduk, man. In, 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 <laughs> in, this, in, this, in this moment, I am euphoric, not because of the blessing of any phony god, but because of Sargon's uh, fat, fat, juicy cock in my mouth. Oof, I think the crickets killed themselves. Holy shit. Yeah. <laughs> the, cr the crickets off themselves. Even, even the audience is just like, get rid of them. Throw them out. Uh, this, is a, this is Toad McKinley, and I had to create a fake account to get on here, and I'm using uh, using some headphones. So. And now that uh, he's unmasked, the crowd cheers. Yeah, I've, I've hijacked this uh, at, at my job, and so I'm guessing yeah. that... that uh, Great. Now we have discount Metacor on. You you remember you remember when you deleted your channel? Maybe maybe yeah. it should have stayed that way. 
Yeah. Oh. This is. Oh. This is this you is gonna take that lying down, Toad? Uh, no, this is uh, this is Discount Jim, and everybody loves me. Uh, happy I could assist. Yeah, it's, it's weird to see you two in the same place at the same time. It's fucking me up. But yeah, actually, act, actually, Jim writes all my scripts for me. Uh, I I just I, I mail them out. I mail them out. Snail he mail. Pays, he pays me in sweet sweet Jew gold. I've got I've got a whole fucking uh, vault full of it from Nick Denton. Long time ago. Yeah. Sent yeah, me a whole has, shit ton of it. He he actually uh, he actually recommended that I uh, that I do these YouTube channels because he's my boss at work at the uh, Kharkov and Camel factory. Kharkov and Camel. Yes. So when did this turn into the fucking Wednesday night at the Yuck Hut? <laughs> are you coming on to fight Coach Redfield? What are we getting at here? Yeah. Uh, no, Coach Coach Redfield really did cancel on me uh, on me twice for a live stream, and I'm really uh, it, well at the time I was trying to promote my channel, but I just hit uh, 14. Uh, 1488 subscribers, so I'm not actually uh, accepting anymore. That's the line of subs. Fuck yeah! Andy's back. Andy, oh we've already got a chipper in here. Hold on. So, <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, there was a snowstorm out. Mr. CRP Mr. dipped Mr. on you twice? Hold on, Mr. Medica more like Mr. Mediocre, am I right? Oh, Fuck yeah. Chipper. There you oh, go. Fuck. <laughs> so Wait, coach, uh, this... coach why, why'd you dodge the streams with uh, Toad here? No, I wanted to. I mean, it was uh, unforeseen. I, I actually forgot why why they got canceled, but not because of Toda. I think that he's great. You know, he's great when he's not taking them them bad drugs. Just say no, Toad. Just did, say did no. He, did he just leave? I think he dipped out on a stream <laughs> with you now. Oh fuck! All right, why well, aren't we trying to find a marine or something? That's rough. <laughs> Holy God, can we get a moment of silence for the fucking Hindenburg there? That crash and burning. The humanity. Oh, God, that was fucking tragic. Okay, so anyway, back to the stolen valor thing. Did we find military people? Because there's like 1,500 people yeah, here. There's, there's, a few, there's a few knocking on the door. Okay, so. No, there's, a, there's a few knocking on the door. All you right. want me to pick one of them? Hold on. Jesus, I walk in and it's just, just rough. What happened? Fucking Billy oh, showed up rough, and well, people just had David, to be crazy. Uh, yeah, the years after the Cosby show have not been good for Theo. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> Cringing. Are there anybody besides those two? Yeah, there's a, there's a couple. Good. Beautiful. New blood. <laughs> well, I, mean, well, I gotta one... give you credit, Tonka. I didn't think anything would top Andy's uh, roast night stream as being fucking awful, but your 10,000k special is really getting up there. <laughs> well, no, it's, it, it's fucking jumping uh, up there. Uh, Boots is like, no, no, here. I don't want to bring it today, but by the way, well, kind of stolen think people are actually trying to refund their super chats right about now, which is a first <laughs> <right>. for me. <laughs> Tonka, you, Tonka, you want me to pick one? Yes, get a fucking military person in here. We've yeah, been on this stolen on. Valor thing for I, I 20 minutes. I, I'm buying a boredom here. Come on, guys. I, I, c come at me. Why are you being weird? Should... You did the weird thing with the stolen Valor a minute ago. What are you doing? I'm not stealing any fucking Valor. And as I said, I can prove it. I will have someone validate it for uh, for you guys if need be. But it's... Uh, it's okay. Also, it's I'll ask more... him a question. I, I was okay. listening to in the car and while I was shoveling snow. Um, why, why do you just film... A government building. It's got so much further than that, Andy. No, okay, I, I heard that, and then he was asking for the um, for the badge number and all that stuff. Like, why do you do, do that, may I ask? It's a, it's a test of civil rights to see how uh, law enforcement and security personnel will respond and if they're going to respect a person's civil rights that might possibly be passing by and filming or take a snapshot or something like that. And do, you it's job, just, do you have a job, I just do odd work. I'm a disabled guy, so. All right, David, 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 you there? Yeah, I'm here. What's going on, man? Okay, so um, I was in the Marine Corps from 05 to 09. I'm going to ask you a couple of questions that might help uh, quash these stolen valor um, attempts right, for, here. First, first, uh, real quick, I'm, I'm, I'm going to just say, and before people start saying that you're stolen valor as well, so we're going to, we're, I'm, I'm just calling now. We're going to have to call in a third person to, to see if you're, you're still that's oh, that's, fucking hell. that's fine. Um, okay, David. Yeah. Um, okay. Um, so first, you, what years were you in? 
2007 to 2011. And were you honorably discharged? Yes. Disabled. Discharged. Medical discharge. Medical discharge. And you said you didn't and you didn't know your MOS whenever you were at. I, I, d- I didn't remember. It, I've been out of the service for almost 10 years, and so I had to pull out the paperwork to re- uh, the, uh, remember the uh, specific. What type uh, of radios uh, did you work on? Uh, Harris radios. Harris, okay, okay. Um, like if you what, want like to. Like a Brick 18, what? Oh, God, it's been a long time. Uh I, I don't remember the nomenclatures on the thing, but uh, okay. Um, yeah. I presume you knew your job. Yeah. I'm, okay. So I'm going to right, so ask you a few jobs related into the communication field. How do you say Q phonetically? The letter Q phonetically. The letter. Uh, so go back. As I said, it's, <laughs> I've been out for ten years, so uh, there's a lot of shit I've forgotten. Uh, no. From, no. Oof. Oof. November. Yeah, as I said, I, I've. Okay. Quebec, I think it was. Okay. Quebec, I think it was pretty sure it was what, Quebec. What about what about P? Papa. All right. So what about Y? Yankee. Okay. All right. So you got a few basic communications questions down. Do you know what? Uh, so you don't know what type of radio you used. What type? Of, where Where did you deploy? Uh, Taji, Iraq. Taji, Iraq? About five, about five kilometers north of Baghdad, if I remember correctly. Okay, and you went on patrols much? Uh, no, I was a foppet. I As in, I stayed on the base. Yeah, you saw, but you pulled security? Not uh, while deployed. Only uh, back home. Back home what? Like on guard duty? Yeah. Like you would stay up in your uniform and you would just... Like what? Were you working with MPs? What were you doing? Aviation unit. We had uh, to take uh, our units had to take turns uh, doing guard shift for the, uh, the gates. What was it three months? And then, uh, the, if you wanted to know how long the training was, it's about uh, five months. I, I guess I'm just curious why you were disabled and you were discharged and you stayed in the full four years. No, I I was signed up for five years. Oh, you were signed up for five years. Okay, all right, yeah. that makes sense. Yeah, I was actually signed up on a five year contract. Well, um, okay, well, uh, I'm not going to lie. Those are just the, the first couple of questions. You kind of fucked up. You sound like you were really shitty at your job, and you sound like you didn't really do anything. Um, but you sounds like you were in the military. Um, I just seriously doubt your – I mean, especially if you're coming on here saying that, you, you know, your, your general lack of respect towards authority. I have serious doubts that you did anything of note in the military other than some pogas shit where you just, like – I don't know. Fuck, fucked off on a base, fucking fucking with a radio that you don't even know the name of for four years. I, you know, as far as I can tell. So well, that, the thing that's is, all I, is I, I end up dealing more with computer network communications and stuff like that because I already had the certifications to be able to do that stuff. Okay, and so, so you, so you, you asked me more about the like the okay. computer side of things. What was I the would thing be, you said I, you did overseas yesterday? Uh, communications, uh, radios. That's what I did with over, overseas. When I'm deployed. So you worked on radios, but you don't know what radios. Well, no, radios and computers and stuff. I, I just say radios I'm, because I, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know computers. I I worked with radios quite a bit because you have to know radios if you go out on patrols. But yeah, that, I, 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 I was I was in the military. Yeah, I, same I worked, in, I worked in the Salvation Army. Can I just say what? <laughs> I mean. I really hope you guys don't go to war with Russia because you're all sound. <laughs> yes. We would fucking wreck Russia. Wouldn't even be close. I got like a hundred medals. Oh, I see. Listen, man, your line of questioning was weak sauce. I could open up a PDF with the phonetic uh, alphabet. Come on, man. You, well, you, gotta ask, you, gotta ask, you gotta ask basic general questions about their job. I'm not gonna sit here. I, I wasn't a comm guy. I was an 0861, which is a scout Same observer. Here. Right. Hold, on. Yes, hold on, for real. I, yesterday he said. Yesterday he said that he did security details. That, overseas. as I said, no, I didn't say overseas. I I said I pulled security details. Yeah, it, it, what some does people, that mean? Some on people base? may have misconstrued it as I did pull, pull security when I was overseas, but no, I did security back at home, back uh, when uh, at the the place I was uh, stationed at, and. I did. I watched security cameras and I pulled gate guard. Those are the two aspects that I pulled. And so I know how it is to be sitting there 
and not doing much except for wait, uh, looking at the cars, looking at the badges, and stuff like that. Have you guys thought that your tax dollars go to pay for his disability? Just thought I'd throw that out there. Well, here, here's the thing. I, I, I did my service. I got injured on the job. Am I entitled to that, uh, that uh, paycheck because I got injured for the work that I uh, did? Let me ask you something. Uh, a serious question. Uh, you said that you were like on base and fixing computers and radios. Like, how, how are you injured? As I said, I was working about three to five miles a day overseas. No, no. How you? How were you injured? But uh, I blew out my knee. Oh, how? Walking, a lot. I my body just wore out a lot faster than a uh, normal person's did. I went in with bad knees in the first place, but they what gave me a referral for that. What type of unit were you in? Aviation. I was on an airfield. And you were okay. I'm not gonna pretend to know. All I know is the air guys that I know that we're not doing is, that kind of shit. Is there anything that we could we we could have him asked to where we could know definitively what's up? Because people are gonna give me shit if I leave there's, this hanging in I mean, the air. There's a, pretty much there's everything. Another, there's another person I want. So she says she's in the military right now. I don't know. Does she have questions? Does she have some? We need yeah, something. She... Yeah, I mean the the questions that I was asking was strictly no, related I, to the job. I like, think I you think know. you did well. You gave it basic cursory questions, and you don't want to ask anything long, and be wrong. I can understand. How long have that. you been a? How long have you been with Vet Ice? Uh, I've been. I was in from 05 to 09. Okay. Okay. So pretty recent. Well, he, he got out before me, so. Right. Well, still, I would know the yeah. type of radios and stuff you were working If someone's with. mad at him and wants to question him, get him in here. Yeah, all right. I'll uh, I'll clear some space for you guys. You guys take, take right, it cool. easy. Keep up the good I work, guys. I appreciate you, Askuzi. Yeah, take it easy, man. Peace. Uh, I, I'm really enjoying these people. are like, oh, he's lying. He's lying. That's not good enough. Uh, hey, just pretty entertaining. Hello. Hey. I am actually currently in the military, and I kind of think I know what you're supposed to be talking about. So, do you have a DD-214? Do you know what that yeah, is? Yeah, I'm sitting here and staring at it right now. Okay, do you know what a retrans site is? Retransmission site? Yeah. I mean, where they go out there and set up the antennas, have two radios that uh, it, uh, pull in the signal, and then retransmit it out uh, for whatever direction that needs to go at? Okay. What other radios yeah, I was were you using? Uh, Besides Harris, there's, the, there's more than one former radio. I'll try to remember. There was the satellite ones, which used the KU band. And if you put your hand on the antenna, you end up microwaving it if you're not careful. Um, as I said, it's I didn't really touch too much on the... Uh, on the radio side, I did train with that stuff, and I was at least up to par when I was uh when I was in the military, but I've forgotten a lot of that information. The most of the stuff that I ended up retaining was the stuff I worked on majority side, which was computer networking dealing with Zipper and Nippernet. Okay, then this one should be pretty easy. Where did you go for your AIT? Fort Gordon. Okay, guys, I don't think he's. Yeah, I'm pretty sure he was he, in the military. Oh, yeah, I don't, I don't yeah, think I mean, he's stolen I... valor because most um anybody that works with uh communications like I do. They go through Fort Gordon. If you have a DD-214, there are different types of radios, and most people, if they're lying, would not know what a retrans site is. So it's like the other guy said that he's probably just shitty at what he did. That was just a really weird slip-up with the uh, MOS, and he says communication instead of giving a number. And, like, he even repeated the question well, I didn't... back. That was weird. Well, well no, I, I, well, I couldn't remember off the top of my head. As I said, I haven't really looked at this stuff uh, Honestly, in though, years. Uh, here's one thing that, that like, had me kind of shaky on you is the fact that you didn't know what Q was. Like, I'm a civilian, and I know that just because I've worked security. Yeah, oh, as I said, it's been uh, I I don't deal with phonetics uh, anymore. It's been a long, long time since I've been dealing with this, and I'm studying a bunch of other stuff, so I'm naturally going to forget a lot of things. Were you National Guard reservists or active? Full army, active. I, it's kind of weird that you forgot what your MOS I, was. I, I know phonetics. That's whiskey tango foxtrot. <laughs> <Yeah>, Zulu. <laughs> 
yeah, you can give me shit for it. I, I mean, I I fully wear. Yeah, I forgot it. But as I said, I forget a lot of things. Guys, he he forgot one thing, like or two things. It's okay. Well, he did answer all the questions that I had, and I went and those are the. I mean, if you want, I can easily. In. I can easily give you uh, an idea inside of Fort Gordon like there. Out of 90, so it's not a bad percentage. Do you remember how long you were at Fort Gordon? Because that usually will tell you how what MOS you had. It was about it was about five months there. I was like, I think uh, in the the communicate well in the the radio communication side of things for training wise, uh, I think my MOS was uh, the was second longest. Twenty five U or twenty five Bravo. Twenty five U. And right. someone was. He's clear. <laughs> he got he got, he checks out for you. Yeah, he does because I, I hate the one of my pet peeves is uh, stolen val valor stuff, and I will call anybody out on it. I imagine. I got seven Valas. And someone asked which fob in the chat. I, as I said, Taji was the uh, the fob that I was at for deployment. There is a Taji. It was closer to Baghdad. Me too. I hate, I hate stolen Vala. I served under Taji slaughter. <laughs> oh, goodness gracious. Yeah. Well, hey, uh, good job, chat. You, you said that this was boring as shit to begin with, and now you've derailed us on a 20-minute stolen Valor thing where the guy didn't steal any Valor, so... Thanks, chat. <laughs> oh, good job, crowd. Oh, Jim just roasted the chat. <laughs> a, bi a big audience full of good boys out there, eh, Jim? Uh, yeah, Taka, this is right up there with that roast stream. I gotta be honest with you. <laughs> it's... Really? Okay, thank God. I don't feel as bad now for that. Oh, you don't feel as lonely over there on the road? No, you, well, you, the fucking you're, chat you're decided he worse. stole a Valor. Yeah, I, I, I get a chuckle at that. I was like, yeah, go ahead. Come on, bring, keep bringing them on. I mean, if you really want it, I mean, I'm willing to uh, provide some paperwork to show that I, I am military. I think they just hate you. Oh, I, they, let them hate me. I, I enjoy, There's times when I enjoy being the bad guy. You got to have someone to hate. Come on. Hey, Andy, how many medals do you guy? have? Why I got fucking you? 444. I got 1488 medals. Fuck you. Yeah. <laughs> I, 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 film mil I filmed military bases. That's the main reason why they hate me. Oh, quite a few people. So. Now that's done fucked up, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> in the United States, not overseas. But oh, the thing so is, in the United yeah. States, you're going to get your happy little ass shot if you keep doing that. Oh, here's wait. Here's my question. Why did you want to go at Jim so fucking bad yesterday? If we I, I finally get no, it today, I didn't say I wanted to go at him. I would yes, love to have did. a conversation with him. I, I was wondering if he was going to be able to have anything at me. I, I'm 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 sort of sad because he's usually able to roast anything, but I guess I didn't provide anything enough for him to grab on and go with. I was promised a sovereign citizen, which you are not a sovereign citizen. Yesterday, so I'm, he I'm a little annoyed. Like that Yesterday. I was told I'd have somebody talking about the Articles of, or Articles of Confederation, yeah. Yeah, and well, I don't well, have that. Do you want me to get you one? I might be able to find Billy. you one real quick. Uh, well, I mean, not, not this short notice, uh, but I could find you one. Well, I was on the, I was hearing this in the car or, or while I was shoveling snow, and then I hear uh, you asking if he was a sovereign citizen, and then Failure and Tonka were like, yeah. But yesterday, this guy said a million times that he wasn't one. Tonka, Failure, oh. comment? Oh, I said he acts like one. Just let him talk. Oh, he acts like one. I... <laughs> hey, hey, Foxy, do, do they have uh, pizza huts on, on the fort? Mm, some do, some don't. The ones I was at had a, a Burger King and a Popeye's, and that's why I'll never eat at a Burger King ever again. Well, yesterday he was shouting about his rights. Yesterday he was talking about, oh, police don't have a dangerous job at all. Blah, blah, blah. all now, I, I would be stuff. remiss if I didn't bring this up because chat sure as hell is bringing it up. Uh, the military lady, what's your name? Foxy. Foxy, are you a furry? No, I just cannot be doxxed because I'm still in the military. So you're using the furry avatar as undercover? Yeah, pretty know? much. Undercover okay. furry. I had a she friend draw just... this, yeah. so I use it because my friend drew it for me. Oh, there you go, chat. All right, Tonga, I'm gonna drink some fucking bleach. You need to, yeah. you need to pull something out of the bag here, champ. Yeah, I, I, I guess it's got to pull something out. Thank, thank you for coming by, th by there, though. Look, look, the, the chat has disappointed us today. They, they said. Oh, you throwing it on the chat? 
Uh, yeah, they said CRP and Toad were going to have an epic battle. What happened with that one? Toad left. And then, uh, mm. oh, what's his face? Uh, ranting Monkey uh, messaged that he's in the middle of editing a video, so he won't ranting show up. Ranting Monkey like, ran I'm away. Like, hop in, I'm like, hop in for five in minutes. He's like, death. no, my fans come Andy, first. Andy, let me say something. I want to come on your show and uh, defend the values of uh, Islam treating women like they do. <laughs> what? Fine. Okay. That sounds like a fun fucking. Hi, right, dude. I'm gonna trash the fuck out Why of you. Why don't you dude. do it now? Give us a give us a speech now. Give us a little preview. All right. All right. Well, before you get into the juicy bets here, I I'm, I'm gonna jump. It's been uh, it's been something. It's existed. <laughs> Happy ten thousand subs there, Taka. Thanks, Billy. Glad you're oh, glad you're back. Do more shows like this, or you'll never reach twenty. <laughs> yeah, apparently, yeah. Butte Mountain says, "If it even twitches, beat the skeptic horse again." Truez says, "Why are skeptics defending pedos?" Sargon. Strix Various says, "It's interesting that Jim responds response to Tonka's to Tonka are all close to things that Tonka has said to other people." Disparate Desperado says, "Tonka showed the kind of person he was when he demanded failure and Worski do what he wanted them to do." And then threw a fit and burned. Hello, hello? is this oh, is yes. this men's warehouse? I yes. need to get <laughs> fitted for a suit. You're gonna like the way you're gonna you're like the way you look. I, I guarantee know. it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so excited. Sunday is gonna be so much fucking fun. Yeah, this is like oh, gym yeah. week. Holy fuck! Oh, I love shit like this. It's gonna be enjoyable. How? What is Sargon thinking exactly? Does I don't know. know. This All is the... exactly what you want. Like I don't. All the little capos have come out to play. I'm having a great time. I got. Uh, Tonka spedding out on me on uh, Twitter. Apparently, he's not coming on. Is that, uh, is that well, the final he, decision? He he told me he wasn't. We're here. You know, I started the hangout just in case. And Oh, um, that's that's sad. Yeah, no, he's trying to uh, to say I doxed him on the... Uh, yes. I don't even know what uh, what the, the stream was called. The Spurgout stream. The seven-hour <laughs> stream of yelling. Yes. Where everybody basically went into a coma by the fucking end of it. Uh, no, I laid out the ground rules pretty much for everybody. Uh, the one explicit rule was just don't dox each other. Make your videos, get your screen caps, put all the shit together. Uh, yeah, no, and I you think sent the, me those ground rules. The, the only, like, one of the only ones that had, like, a name and a face and everything all attached was Zooms. And uh, he, he was the one that spoke up about it and was like, do you want me to end the stream? Because I told everybody, if shit starts flying and you want it ended, just say something. The stream dies right there. And uh, Zoom said, no, I don't care. Go ahead. Play it. That was the uh, the... Uh, pedal one. You know what I'm talking about. You know the yes, the, yeah. the audio clip from that. It's like up on another source. Now, but uh, I I don't know how he's laying that at my feet. But all I know is for like the last that people have been sending me clips off and on of him like taking like these passive aggressive snipes at me. I don't know if he's just like a bitter ex girlfriend or something or what's going on. Like you know, uh, complaining about Billy Hunters. Oh my God, Billy Hunters. And uh, trying to lay it like the blood of Palooza thing at my feet and say that was, oh, well, Jim hyped it up. That's why it sucked. No, Jim didn't host that fucking stream. That wasn't on Jim's channel. Jim didn't make money off of that. Jim didn't make merchandise for that. Jim didn't promote that. That was a Tonka saw stream. If that turned out bad, that's because you don't know how to run a stream. Maybe take some fucking responsibility for your programming. I mean, I'm, I'm watching the Ralph retort. Seems like you guys can handle it. I mean, you've got your shit set up, right? It's running smoothly, isn't it? Doing pretty good, yeah. But yeah, I guess he doesn't want to come on and talk. I'm, my feelings are hurt. But real, real, gets that noggin jog and activates those almonds. Acorns are falling from the sky. I got the Don doing a stream on Sunday. Shit rat and Kraut and all the little uh, YouTube academics are running around. And now here comes Tonka saw to complain. And boy, he's been getting buddy-buddy with Kraut and them, hasn't he? And then he does his stream. Well, Jim, Jim did, got everything wrong. And, oh, he must be ignorant. And he doesn't understand anything. Well, you don't have proof that Kraut doxed anybody. Uh, why don't you go look at the tweets uh, Tonka was shooting out about Monday Matt flagging him when he had no proof about that. So, you know, choke on the hypocrisy, asshole. Yeah, and look, I would have loved to have hosted the debate. I mean, I, I, I think it should have happened, but um, he didn't want to. He offered you a spot on the Kumite, I guess, was, was his response. He, he doesn't he doesn't run on gym time, I think is what he said. And, Are you gym time? Uh, this is not my stream, no. is it? This is a Ralph no. stream, run on Ralph time. So I don't know where that's coming from. Well, I just thought it was now, perfect I know, since you I guys were going at it. Like, yeah, I know. you got to be political, Mr. Neutral. <laughs> I understand the current situation you find yourself in, so I won't harp on this too much. <laughs> you know, he, he said his piece on the evil doxer. I guess because uh, 
I, I what is it wasn't up Zoom's ass 100 percent of the time for his 30 minute fucking video, even though people are sending me screen caps and videos from 100 different fucking sources. Sorry. Sorry, I got to do better next time, I guess. Oh, yes, wait, there's not going to be a next time because I'm going to just continue running streams that have fucking <laughs> viewers. Sorry, what, Tonka. <laughs> what he said was, I guess there's, you know, I was there. I, I kind of subconsciously blocked most of that stream out of my memory because it was, uh, it was, it was le legit. No, not even exactly. Well, you you and Worski had no reason really to even be there, but I wanted, I didn't know what the fuck's going to be talked about. So I wanted everybody to have an opportunity to show up. Because if somebody has something accused or if there's some bullshit that goes out, I wanted them to have a chance to say, no, that's not right. And here's why it's not right. And I mean, like the first two hours of that was uh, the Backyards Blood Sports guys and then like Joakim. And then it went into Tonka and Zoom. And then after that, it was like Diogenes and him yelling a little bit. And then it kind of just tapered up. But it was like seven hours. Yeah, It was a marathon. Uh, but I guess what he's saying is, and I vaguely remember this, there's something, uh, there's some video, I guess maybe it was part of Zoom's video where there's like a, a screenshot of, of his face or whatever, or some, some video when he was a wrestler or something. Spicy. If you remember the fucking Zoom video, yes. like there were about like 10 times in that video where he had to edit audio and go over and edit shit and say, Jim made me remove this because there's no doxing. Jim wants this removed because he's a pussy. So, you know, I, like, it's clear that I told people, just keep the shit out of your videos, make your points, whatever, fucking redact what you need to redact. Like, uh, uh, like uh, what else am I going to do? I will also point this out. Before that stream, Joakim uh, did a webcam share with me to show me who he is and to, like, to show that that wasn't him, that people were accusing him of being. And Tonka sent me pictures saying that, uh, oh, yeah, this is really my family and stuff and, uh, you know, all of this stuff. I've never leaked any of that. None of that's ever come from me. So you want to paint me as this evil doxer. Well, I sure have a lot of docs that I never fucking did anything with, but I sure saw like 80 other fucking people take the shit that they were spreading around and their personal DMs and put it out for public consumption. Yeah, I will say I don't think it's fair to like put that on you, really. I mean, you were just the host of the stream if there was a video with his face in it, which I do seem to recall, to be fair. Um, I mean, you you were the host. You told everybody what to do. It's not like you made the video and put it out. You know what I mean? You're, you're kind of the third party host. I mean, I guess you could. That that's fine. I I I I love it. I want them to take the <laughs> hardest shots at me. I want these fucking faggots, this group of retards, to take the hardest fucking shots they can at me, because I live for this shit. Now, and when I'm looking at a group of people assembled on the other side of me, and it's a bunch of fucking crazy hormone taking trannies and dick chopped <laughs> academics and failed politicians and shit like that, then I know I'm doing something right. I live for this. I fucking live for this. Nothing makes me happier. So swing away, champ. Now, what do you think uh, Sargon has in store for the weekend? I don't know. We'll find out when I stream snipe him. <laughs> Ralph, yes. you want to know how easy it is to read Sargon? Would you like to know what I did to him and uh, how I know this is an ego thing for him? I would, yeah. Do you remember when V was on your stream? The very last thing I said to V before we went, he's like, well, maybe, mate, he'll, he'll talk to you or go on stream. And I told V, oh, I don't want to, I'm not going to go on Sargon stream. I don't go on to streams with people who can't pull the numbers I can. And then he said, well, he'll go on your stream. And I said, no, nobody would know who he is. Because I know that would piss his <laughs> ego off. So the very next day when I did my EU stream, I pulled 13,500 people. In the middle right? of the day. Right when my stream ended, Sargon streamed on his main channel of 800, 900,000 subs. Couldn't even crack 10,000. I know for a fact he did that because I heard his ego. I know for a fact you can hear the depression in his voice as the stream numbers are going down before he ends his fucking stream on his main channel. So I'm going to stream snipe the shit out of you, Sargoy. Oh, I'm going to enjoy this. I hope you have a great shit show prepared. I now fucking he... called it. I knew you were going to do that. I was like talking in the Discord earlier, and it was like when we saw fucking he put a, his videos up for two days beforehand. Like that's fucking weird as shit. Anyway, he's trying oh, it's to hype exciting. it up. It's exciting. It's it's and, fucking yeah. Oh, we got it's like the pre pre show pre pre show shit. You know? What yeah. I mean? <laughs> and I was like, you know what Jim should do? He should just stream snipe him and get like triple his viewers instantly, quadruple probably. Oh, is that a quadruple joke? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I don't know. It's just he keeps. I I, I don't know. He's Ralph. not mad. I mean, he's not mad, man. Well, Ralph. I mean, okay. Uh, uh, real talk, okay, buddy. This is hard for me. All right, this is very emotionally upsetting. But the things that Sargon linked in his description 
James Tristan is my real name. Sargon of Akkad, a member of the political party of UKIP, is retaliating against me for my political viewpoints and criticizing what their party was doing at the EU parliament. I don't know why UKIP is targeting me for having a different political opinion from them or why their representative is trying to exact revenge by putting my family in danger. Oh, God! <laughs> we'll be all right, Jim. We'll get through this. It's it, The name is James Tristan. Pray for me. <laughs> you I feel sorry for that receptionist girl. Boy, her day is going to be ruined. So many phone calls. <laughs> the phone calls never end. Hey, hey Jim, fire up those emails. <laughs> Why am I being politically retaliated against? I'm just a liberal. Why are the conservatives coming after me? Threatening your family. Is it because I believe in gay marriage? Is that why you Kip hates me? Nigel Farage, why are you why are you attacking me with the full weight of your political party? Just a humble YouTube YouTube man in there. Trying to put their throat on your neck. <sighs> okay. Well me. yeah, you know. Live and learn. <laughs> Live and learn. We gotta move past it, I guess. <sighs> So, do we know what what is the exact time that Sargon said he's going? Let me look. I know it's Sunday. I think it's Sunday. Right? I don't know. Look for when Applebee's closes and this shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, September sixteenth. Yeah, that's Sunday at five thirty p.m. Eastern. So that's you know four thirty Central. Oh, oh, you prepare yourself. It's going to be fun. Because uh, what I like to do is when people put stupid shit out about me, I don't say anything because I wait for a moment like this. And I know he wants to go over some Haverman stuff. And I can definitively, definitively, with evidence prove that what he's going to bring up is going to be verifiably false. So this is going to be funny as fuck. You've activated my trap old. card, you waiter. What are you doing? All this stuff is old, too. <laughs> like, it's not like this is new material. I mean, maybe, you know, I saw David uh, Shitrat, you know, what did he say? He Enjoy your internet war or something? He seems, He really thinks he's a big shot now, doesn't he? No, no. They, they, uh, to be fair to shit rat, uh, he's just fucking about. Uh, I, he's not legitimate. He's not. He's not outright saying this okay. is a war. We're going to banter. But um, no, no. It's it, so it, boring. It very... and my, just just how I can how I speak is just disgusting. L Lauren, Lauren, <laughs> Lauren. Um... Lauren. <laughs> Lauren. <laughs> But uh, no, no, I, I, this will be fun. I, I really am like, I'm very actually excited for this. But Harmful Opinions was right. He tweeted out earlier. I thought Sargon said he was above drama streams. You can fuck with Sargon so hard. All you have to do is make fun of his suit. And this asshole will set up a stream two days ahead of time because he's angry. This is our, this is our future career politician. Can't take banter on the internet. Gets so ass mad when you make fun of his shitty untailored suit. Oh, he's going to flop in politics. What is he going to do when a uh, opponent decides to call him out on bad policies? Is he going to do a stream on a key with a Kiwi's Farm thread about them? Like, <laughs> is that how he's going to handle it? Maybe MLK was wrong. Maybe, maybe there, champ. Uh, v was right on that. Like, he can't. He just can't contain himself. He's so bad at it. I have no he idea how to survive daddy. fucking politics. Anybody says anything, he's going to lose his shit. Well, I don't know if I, I mean, I, I'm not really sure what the intention, I, I think, it, uh, I, you know, I'll give him benefit of the doubt and say that maybe he's got a modicum of intelligence and this is just pre-show hype. But if he thought this was intimidating, God, was he wrong? Holy shit, I'm going to stream snipe the fuck out of him. And my my chat's going to laugh at his chat. The Sweetie Squad's going to be all up in that shit. They're already in there now. Like, I want to check it out. The, the chat's <laughs> oh, yeah, open are. now and they're in there, like, literally right now. They're in there shit posting this chat. Uh, uh, it's uh but it, it is funny though i mean v yesterday oh sargon's not watching sargon's busy no he totally was watching that's why he streamed after my stream the very next day jim can't do better numbers than me watch i'll go on my main nine hundred thousand account apparently you can't champ huh nice one percent of audience retention there sargon you know what i thought that was curious you know he has first off he has the thinkery channel where he's doing this stream he also has a dedicated live streaming channel but yet he did that one on his main channel to try to, I guess, just, to try to pump it, it, up the numbers. It's, just, you know? it's so sad. So sad. I don't know what he's doing. The absolute state of him. Just just sad. Very, very sad. 
And here's what the Harmful Opinion says. He says, How many days did Sargon take to go from being above drama to creating a drama stream with two days of hype Tom can't handle attacks on his ego? Fairly accurate. Uh, and also, he, he attacked... Well, I won't say attack, but he made a video about me and V. I remember V came on the show and she's like, you can't, you'll tell, I think he told you that. It's like, you'll know when he's mad when, when he makes a video on his main channel about you. Yeah. Yep, yep. <laughs> and then he literally did that to me like two weeks later. I was like, okay, well, I, I guess he's angry now. Uh, this is music. These, these fucking skeptics, God, they're just so pathetic. The whole lot of them, the whole lot of them. I'm going to make that Sunday stream a regular occurrence. These fucking retards need to be laughed off the internet. And why not start with the Don himself? So I, I'm I'm super hyped for Sunday. I, I it's it, it's like a sporting's event. You know what I mean? Like it's it's exciting. I haven't been excited for something on the internet in a while. So I'm hyped. I'm looking forward to it. I think it's going to be good stuff. And a lot of other people have commented that uh, this this uh, attack, you know, and it does seem to be coming from from all corners. Uh, whether you want to include Tonka and whether or not. Um, it, it's happened after the shit on skeptics announcement that you're going to start doing that every week. And it seems like, Oh wow. Now they're, the knives are really coming out uh, all of a sudden. Oh yeah. 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 I, I mean, it's such a, this goes back to that candid shit. And this is why, you know, I mentioned yesterday with V that I thought Sargon was dirty in that. And he wasn't involved in the marketing of it, but I have no doubt in my mind that he was aware of what was going on. Uh, he was tweeting about it during the day before the stream with uh, harmful and then pretended he had no idea about any of it when he was on stream with them. And it, it's just so fucking apparent and transparent. It's so fucking bullshit. Well, he's really these, touchy. These, these, this Canada. group, what they did to harmful opinions was shit. I didn't like it then. I stayed out of it. I probably shouldn't have. So I'm going to write that wrong. And I'm just going to go down the list. Harmful is a good dude, and they did fuck him over. They pretty much tried to run him off the internet. To, you know, all of his channels got fucking banned, and his Twitter kept getting banned. Um, you see, you know, he went through some hard times personally after that. It's just like, yeah. Um, and as far as the candid thing goes, Sargon, you know, as far as we know, publicly didn't take any money from them, but he's very touchy anytime anybody talks about that. Well, what like is he, it that Teal Deer and Harmful said? They have groups that they all coordinate and talk yes. with one another. What is it that Godwinson said? Oh, I got pulled into a Discord. This is before Godwinson disappeared. I got pulled into a Discord by one of the skeptics and was made an offer. Uh, so, I mean, it's like person after person bringing up the same fucking point. There, it's all glad-handing, incestuous, fucking buddy marketing bullshit by a group of kids that thought they were going to run a corner of the YouTube. But, you know, at the end of the day, it's fucking YouTube. We make gay videos for each other, and we stream about stupid shit. It's not that important. So when you're trying to put that much dedication into it, you should be made fun of. Uh, I see Keemstar tweeted at Tonka. He said, how about tonight? Um, Tonka's... I, I don't think he's coming. Okay, there please. was also... Yeah, Sorry. Go ahead, go ahead. There was go also ahead. a stream that Sargon did with uh, Harmful, and he pretty much told him he was crazy and all this isn't true. And that, all that, that that's shit. the stream yeah. I'm talking about. Yeah. yeah. During that day before he did that stream, he was getting tweeted at and talking about the shit yeah. that was going on with Harmful. So he, he also, knew what was going on. Yeah, he tried to dismiss it as calling it Harmful's autistic, and this is all autism and everything like that. He said that a bunch of times. Oh, he's autistic. It's a conspiracy theory. That Alex Jones line they like to bring up that some guy I used in his marketing bullshit. It's just an app. It's just an app, bro. Oh, we fucked ourselves with the apocalypse, but we're such rationalists. We're such boy liberalist thinkers. Hey, let's let's help facilitate an AI that's going to fuck us out of ad revenue and put us in the poorhouse. We're brilliant. We're the smart ones. <sighs> Genius, you know. Apparently, we haven't read enough military history. Maybe that, maybe that's our problem. Ah, uh, you know, yeah. It, it's always nice to have a, a group of retards to make fun of on the internet, and you know, furries and diaper furs, and other kin, and all the weird little niche communities. It, that can get old. So I feel like gift has been given to me, and I, I'm not gonna, you know, refuse that. I'm gonna open it up gladly. This is my Christmas. Welcome to Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> came early this year um it's just i don't know it's just it's just complete idiocy to think that this is anything but a gift not only to you i mean but look look at our show i think this is a new record for viewership on our own program here so uh, i what, what can i do but say thank you sargon i mean I appreciate somebody, it. <laughs> somebody should make you yeah somebody should make you a belt that says uh five tonkas because that's the amount of viewers that you have right now <laughs> I know you can't, you can't let my jokes, can you? But it's okay. It's okay. I'll laugh for us both. 
Um, oh, one more thing. Uh, what did you think about the uh, Nintendo Direct today? Uh, Luigi's Mansion looked good. Uh, Animal Crossing, people are going to be excited about. They're going to do the ports of Final Fantasy. Everybody's getting is going to the Switch, so I guess that'll be good. Uh, new character in Smash. It, it was okay. It wasn't awful. You know what I mean? It, it was a middle of the road direct. It's like a five or six rated, I think. Uh, people wanted Prime 4 footage. They didn't get it. No, they didn't get that, but Luigi's Mansion, I think, maybe made up for it. Big, wahoo, yippee! <laughs> Waha, yippee! By the way, let me try something real quick before before we see you off, because uh, I don't know if that's your mic or my hangout. Um, uh, it could be mine. I got a bit of a storm going on where I am, so I might be roboting on you. Okay, that's all right. All right, final thoughts. I know, I mean, we could talk about this forever. Unless, unless you want to hang around and take some calls, it's up to you, but... Well, I don't know, Mr. Roboto. I think my dragon your stream down here. But i just like to say I shut up. You know what I mean? I, I know there's been someone that likes to go around saying it's bitch made not to take people up on their challenges. I'm here. Just saying. I, all I see are tumbling by. Looking, I'm looking, looking for a wrestler, but I'm not seeing anybody around. Just, just mark it down. Jim was here. Jim showed up. Jim was ready. Nobody else. Did. Okay, we're good. That's fine. I'm cool. All right. Uh, thank you. So the Sunday stream will be going on when Sargon starts the stream. Uh, be sure to show up, enjoy, unmoderated chat. You should post all you want. We're going to be watching and laughing in real time. Uh, I, you know, I'm going to make some special Applebee suits gifts. It's going to be good time. <laughs> Thank you, sir. I, I will be there. Wait. Appreciate it. Thank you for coming on. Yeah, yeah, take it easy. A few moments later. It was the first time I heard that Sargon was trying to be a, a politician? What, what's going on there? <laughs> Yeah, he, Wait, wants to, uh, he, oh, wants oh. To, he wants a seat in the EU. That's what he's that's what he's going for. He wants a <laughs> he wants a seat at the big boy table with his Applebee's outfit. So that should work out well. Wow. Okay. <laughs> hey Joe. But uh, but hey, you don't watch my videos religiously? What the fuck, man? V, do you even watch your own fucking videos? <laughs> I mean, is that a fair question? <laughs> no. You see how many videos that are poorly edited I put out. Then people are, are calling me out, and it's like, by the way, there's no sound that three minutes and 50 seconds. Like, oh, fuck, okay, I'll put it down. So, no, I, I don't watch my own videos. So, no, I, I heard Keem wanted, uh, I guess, the deepest lore on this shit. Um, I, I'll try to sum it up as quick as I can. Uh, like, I'd say like six or seven months back, there, there's a, these people that put out an animated show called Murdoch Murdoch. Okay. And they had a clip of Sargon in it. Um, and it's him basically getting a big head <laughs> and getting full of himself, trying to be a politician, uh, surprisingly. And um, there's this clip where he, he turns into like the Akira baby monster at the end, and mm -hmm. he starts screaming, Sargon needs more dopamine. And I thought that was <laughs> I thought that was funny as fuck. So I retweeted that. And it, it like kicked off this sequence of events where his friend wanted me to come on stream and he, he asked somebody else to ask me to come on, and I don't know what it's about, so I go on the stream, and there's Sargon in the chat just flipping his shit at me. So I tell him to get on, and Sargon lays it out, and he's like, oh, oh Jim, you should have been a leader in Gamergate. You were a coward, and uh, you need to do this and this, and just all this really pompous bullshit. Uh, and so that that's kind of, I guess, what accelerated it. Um, I don't know what his plans are for Sunday, but I, I, you know, I heard what you said. You like drama. I live for this shit, too. I find it fucking <laughs> amusing as fuck. The more of them, the better. You know what I mean? If I've got 20 people taking shots at me, that's a good day. So I'm looking forward to Sunday. It's going to be fun as fuck. I'm going to stream snipe the shit out of his ass. I know it bothered him uh, when V was on here last time. I, I, I threw out a comment to see if I could get a reaction where I said, uh, you know, I wouldn't stream with Sargon because he can't pull the viewer numbers I can. Right. Um, and the very next day I did a stream, pulled 13 and a half thousand. Sargon immediately on his main channel instead of his live stream channel does a stream can't even hit nine and you can like hear the the sadness in his voice as he ends the stream after like yeah, an hour i heard you say that jim one thing that i really really like is i like that arrogant like i pull more viewers than you because like you know people never say that shit there's very few people that will fucking brag like i pull more i get more subs than you but really if everyone was going to be really honest we're all trying to get as many views as possible we're all trying to get as many subs as possible and like when someone is just raw and real and they're like i pull this i fucking love that because that's who i am <laughs> oh I, I i'm i'm looking forward to sunday because not only am i going to get to laugh at sargon i'm going to make so much fucking money doing it and that's going to make it even better so I'm going to have a college fund for my future children based off of this one fucking stream. <laughs> 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 <laughs>
Let, let, let's uh, let's take some bets. How, how much do you think we'll make? I'll, I'll tell you my sum. How much I think you'll make? Uh, hopefully enough to buy at least three suits from Men's Warehouse because I want to be a big boy like Sargon. <laughs> yeah, so, I'll say now I think you'll make over five grand. So Sargon is he? Does he stream every Sunday, or is this like a planned stream to talk about you? Oh, this is a planned stream. Like this is this is him, uh, especially oh, yeah. ahead of time, setting it up to have it come out. So. Uh, I, I don't know. I, I love this. Like, this is, I'm genuinely fucking excited for this. I'm, I'm looking forward to this happening, and I'm going to be loving every laugh. So how I understand it is, like, basically, you know, he had that funny suit. I've seen the memes. I thought it was funny. Um, you know, he got upset with that. And then you dock somebody in one of your YouTube videos, and, they, and now they're mad at you and calling you out. Is that, is that what happened? Yeah, that was uh, that's Takasa. So uh, there was this big uh, the IBS, the Internet Blood Sports thing, uh, and a bunch of the different people in it uh, all had gripes with one another. So I put out a message to everybody, like Ralph, uh, Andy Worski, and the others, and I said, "You guys can all come on stream, and you can yell at each other. Uh, I'm not going to interfere. I'm not going to moderate. Just fucking have at it." And I said, "Just have your videos and your screen caps and shit prepared ahead of time." And, you know, my one rule was just don't, you know, don't try to dox each other. Just redact that shit if you can. You know what I mean? Okay, yeah. Um, and he, Tonka's pissed at me because apparently in Zoom's 30-minute video, there's a clip of him wrestling. But if you watch Zoom's video, there are like 20 or 30 fucking segments in it where he re-edits it uh, to take out names and shit. And he, he's calling me out for it. He's like, Jim made me pull this out. Jim is a faggot. You know, that kind of stuff. Because I was pretty clear with everybody, and I made it right. pretty open at the beginning. I said, if if something comes up and you think it's unfair, say something. I'll fucking kill the stream right there, and we're done. Well, I'm kind of but shocked. Zoom tried and... to fuck with you. Didn't... Uh, Zoom tried to fuck with Jim as well. Like he leaked DMs from Jim. He um, uh, he said that uh, Jim was a tool, only only needed so he can get on uh, on the IBAS and talk with Tonka. So it, it's not like you and Zoom are tight, right? Well, and to, to be fair, too, it wasn't just Zoom. I mean, like, uh, the Backyard Blood Sports guys had grievances with, like, Joakim and Tonka. And, like, they're, they're different groups that are all arguing with each other. And the way it was brought up to me was, hey, this never gets addressed. Nobody ever lets us fucking have a go at it. So I was like, well, that'll make, you know, what, whatever, fuck it. I'll put the stream on. I'll let everybody scream at each other. It turned into a seven-hour clusterfuck because you need, you need some kind of format instead of that. But, um, yeah, no, this was, he's trying to make it sound like uh, I said, hey, Zoom, dox him. Which I, I didn't, I, you know, I, I'm getting shit at the last minute. People are sending me right. clips. I, there's only so much I can do. I mean, one of the guys had a clip that was brought up near the very end of the stream where it had his full name, his address, his fucking face and everything like that. And, you know, somebody called that out and it's like, okay, well, I'm killing the stream. But the guy whose information got put up was like, fuck it, just play it, whatever. See, this is, I don't think Sargon's a stupid person at all. I think this is the way you describe it. It doesn't seem like there's much of a case to go after you. I, I don't know what's going to get brought up. Um, you know, uh, my early internet days, I was big into trolling and shit. I hung out with people that did a lot of trolling. So maybe Likewise. he's going <laughs> so to try to play into that. You know, the guy that used to run the forum that I hung out on, uh, Haberman, got a really bad case of trolls remorse. And he became kind of like super, super apologetic over it. So he, he's written like fucking novels talking about his guilt over this and the shit that he did. So I mean, maybe he's going to try to hit me with that. Um, you know, there were accusations that I doxed Haberman. I, I can actually verifiably prove that's not true at all. I, I can give evidence for it. So I hope Sargon's stupid enough to bring that up. I just, there's a lot of, see with me is I like when misinformation's out there because then you get a moment like this that's so beautiful that you get to in real time make them look fucking stupid. So right. I, again, it, it's going to be great. This, is, this Sunday is going to be fucking fantastic. I'm definitely tuning in. <laughs> right. I'm so watching. Are you going to watch Jim's stream or Sargon's? Uh, I'll pr I, I always, if it's like two things that are going on at once, I always pull up both. Oh, it'll be fun. It's going to be a good time. I, I think everybody's going to have I, a, I think a nice time. I'm not picking sides, but I think you almost have to pick up Jim's stream because Jim is going to be doing the live reaction to you know, Sargon's yeah, stream. No content. So the only it's way to get both, weird. the only way to get both is really to watch Jim's stream. But you know what, the, the thing I love the most about this, uh, Keem, is the fact that he's for like the last month has been trying to put out this era, you know, like the, this aura, that um, he's so beyond this. He's so above yes. drama. He's so uh, into big boy politics. This is beneath him. He's going to save Europe and the West and, uh, and everybody else. And he doesn't have time for the YouTube shit. 
and just making fun of his dumb fucking suit for a day and a half has made him dedicate a stream to me. That's that's crazy. I just don't think like you know him with the with the frog stuff and and I, I don't know. It just it seems like Sargon has always been kind of a memer. I'm surprised that he got offended. Oh, yeah, I you know, know I, I, yeah. I, I'm in the inner circle. Like I'm... he's in the inner circle. He By the way, V, v can I ask you a question, V? Because Chad's asking yeah. us, what is wrong with your microphone? Well, what, what's up with my microphone? I mean, you sound like it's stuck up your ass or something. Like what? What? You sound um, like it's I didn't underneath do the pillow. To it. Like it's the same since I came on up till now. Is, is there something wrong with it? It doesn't sound uh, that great. Oh, you sound, you sound maybe, a little bit better. You sound a little bit better. Now oh, maybe. actually, V, after you fix your microphone, can I ask you a question? I'm curious. Sure. Since Sargon said I lead around the Lost Boys on Pleasure Island, is he now one of the Lost <laughs> Boys? Because I'm dragging his ass around YouTube for my amusement at this point. <laughs> Jesus. Oh, fuck. I'll, I'll, I'll send him that bad. That, that is good. I'll wait a week and a half for his response when he thinks of something <laughs> clever. <laughs> <laughs> What do you think of V saying that he'd be watching your stream, not Sargon's? That was that was pretty amazing. I, I you know, honestly, I'm kind of like Keem. Uh, when when people are doing something like this, I've got everything pulled up at once yeah. because you don't want to miss something. And both chats are going to be entertaining, but I've got to have bias here. Of course, I'm going to watch mine. Mine's going to be the better one. <laughs> Mine's where all the good shit's going to be. People are going to be enjoying my stream. Uh, oh, wait, maybe, so... maybe the Sweetie Squad will pay him a visit and laugh at him uh, and bring up suits. Sure. I don't know, but we'll find out. I think brother. you. I think you and Sargon are both going to pull big numbers. I mean, Sunday is the best night to stream. Like, if it's what time does it start? Roughly Eastern, you know, five thirty uh, Eastern. Yes. Is that what it is? Yeah, yeah. Yes. So I'll oh start. Oh my out. god, that's that's kind of perfect. Like five thirty six. Yeah, yeah but, but but the Sunday. issue is that <clears throat> there is an issue because uh, as I said, I would just watch Jim's stream because it's going to have more content. It's it's with that extra DLC with, with Jim's commentary. Um, so, you know, you don't get that from Sargon's stream. Right. Are you saying Sargon's boring? No, if it was the other way around, if Jim would make a stream... No, I Sargon think that's what he's saying. I think <laughs> he just said Jim's stream has content. It's okay. It's oh okay. my god, I can envision okay. him just, like, starting off, like, Sargon starting off for, like, 10 minutes and then realizing what, what's happening. Well, he'll probably know beforehand. And then he just switches and then stream caps your stream. And then you get into this weird situation where you two are debating on your own streams. Well, and that's the beauty of it. I'm already prepared. I'm going to have men's warehouse commercials ready to play <laughs> until we can sort out the technical issues. Oh, no. I guarantee it. So I'm going to look at the way you look. look. I guarantee it. <laughs> By the way, somebody did a super yeah, chat earlier. Then he can just mute your stream and just talk about whatever he wants to talk, and you can't make a response if that's Well, why does he just show up on the same stream? We know for a fact. By the way, chat, press one if you think Sargon's watching this fucking stream right now. No, Everybody Ralph, knows. This is no, this is more fun. Not only will I get All more right. viewers and make more money, fuck it. I'm I'm looking forward to this format. <laughs> I think no, I think it would be smart if both of you just debated each other and both of you stream, you know? He won't do it though, if that's the problem. I mean Yeah, yeah. you have to understand, Kim. Like uh, he went on to a stream previously where somebody wanted to talk to him and he had like seventeen <clears throat> different uh criteria. You can't have any guests on. You can't have anybody say this. The super chats have to be turned off. You can't ask this question. You can only talk about this subject. Oh wow! No, yeah. oh, hold on, hold on. The super I, chats. I, 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 I feel like he's changed a lot since I, I I knew him when he was on Twitter. When he got banned on Twitter, I just you know I stopped talking to him because I, I live on Twitter and I had no really way to communicate with Sargon anymore. But back then, he seemed like a nice guy. He seemed really smart and intelligent. And, I, I don't know. Uh, I, I never. I, really... I actually organized that stream. I, I'm the one who organized it, and and I know why he asked that thing. Uh, the reason he asked is because before that he joined Big Alaska stream to talk with Andrew Anglin. The moderator was constantly intervening and putting up points against him, so he wasn't like moderating like. Well, yeah, that that, 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 ex started... that explains one or two things, but not the eighteen. He, he then started dogpiling. Well, hold on, hold on. Then then he started dogpiling Sarga. Like when uh, the debate was almost over, he started bringing four or five other people to talk against him. So it was like six pe people to one. Um, and I don't think even you, Jim, could, could win such an argument, you know, when there's six well, people. V, v, to be fair, you're right. I mean, bringing in 18 people is, is kind of bullshit. But to be fair, uh, that stream was set up ahead of time with the premise and the promotion that it would be a debate between Andrew Anglin and Sargon of Akkad. And Sargon shows up on this guy's stream and says, I don't want to debate. I'm not here to debate. I want to know why he was fucking Asians in the jungle. 
Yeah, but but in reality, it ended up being no, good no, no. Be, I mean, if no, no, no. If you're gonna throw out the rules, I, I agree with you. I, I do you're agree. And throw I, out I did the rules you. and what you tell people you're gonna do. You can't complain that you get dogpiled then because you threw the format away. Yeah, I, I agree with you that the introduction was was really bad, and I told him this as well. Uh, but in the end, if you watch that stream right now, well, actually, you can't. I think it's taken down. But but if you were to watch that stream, you would notice that it ended up being a bit. Like like they talked about the immigrants and you know Andrew's plan on zapping v, them. All, all, all it was, v, all it was, <laughs> him trying to say. All it was was him trying to say, Andrew, why do you fuck Asians in the jungle? Andrew, why are you fucking Asians in the jungle? That that was his whole shtick for forty five minutes. If I was the no, host I of the stream, I, like, like it was, I, it was if, a bad if, intro. Yeah, but V, if I was the host of a stream and I told people and promised them, I have a debate, these two people have agreed, and then one of them shows up and starts pulling that kind of shit, I'd be like, fuck it. He's not going to respect my fucking premise and show. Why should I respect him? I, I agree with you. Um, and, and I don't know if he personally saw it that way. Uh, but, you know, a, after a while, after those 40 minutes, I did think that it became a debate. And uh, when it became a debate, the moderator wasn't uh, interested in moderating, and he started dogpiling him, bringing more and more people into it. Um, so, so because of that, he, when, when he went on the Kumate, he just wanted to make sure that there's not going to be people dogpiling him, and he didn't say turn off the Super Chat. He had a bunch of criteria. I mean, yeah, I talk yeah. to I, I people, know, I he them had up, a I, ton I, I, of criteria for going out of that show. Yeah. I relate them to uh, to Tonka. I believe one criteria was that there's only him and Tonka, uh, that it had to happen that day because afterwards uh, he, he didn't want to schedule it. He said, like, it, it has to happen in, like, uh, half an hour or something like that. Uh, and the the third criteria was that um, he, he would uh, answer whatever question Tonka had. So th those were the criteria. I think there were more than that, but we'll we'll agree to disagree. I don't want to take away from well, the main event. You can still watch the stream. Oh, it's yeah, I, I don't want to take away from the main event, which is going to be this Sunday. <laughs> this Sunday, Sunday, Sunday <laughs> is going to be the main event. I'm so excited. I know. It's going to be so good. Uh, <clears throat> hell in a cell. But why can't he just come on with no, with no preconditions, V? Like... Who does this guy exactly think he is? Well, I, 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 I told you because when, when he came on with no preconditions, he got dogpiled. Oh, um, wow. And he just wanted to, to get his message out. No, there. That, that's fine, V. Not everybody can be a man. I mean, I show up without preconditions. I don't yeah, I was going to say, I've never heard Jim say, oh, God, you can't oh, let this, this, would, you, this would you go on Sargon's stream knowing that he's going to invite uh, B, he's going to invite Art, yes. he's going to invite Louis, yes. he's going to invite yes. you know, other friends, and yes. they, they would all just talk down against you? Yes. Um, sure. yes. That's I what would. that's what gay porn audio is for. <laughs> <laughs> I suppose, but I, I don't I don't see Sargon putting gay porn audio on a stream of Baker. Have you seen his Twitter account when he spammed black oh, dicks at everyone for two weeks? <laughs> yeah, but the difference is that Wait, porn that's is legal. How he got suspended? Oh yes. yeah, keep sorry. No, 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 he no, 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 no. He was don't. suspended yeah. for tweeting out black dicks at people for a week. Oh it's not it's not illegal on Twitter, Jim. It's not illegal to show porn <laughs> on Twitter, and you know, like. You but you have to mark your stuff sensitive content. You can't just start sending out, you know, dicks and yeah, inside of white. It's not. Dicks. It's not when he got banned. Actually, Sargon's off. Sargon's like, yeah. off. Uh, well, after well, I will say this: porn. the person that did it lied about being underage and reported the tweet. Oh. And the person, yeah, the person that did it was a general piece of shit that none of us like anyway. But it's just the well. fact that Sargon spammed. But he didn't just do this <laughs> once. Black Ox. He went on a I got suspended dude. Forward. He went on two or three separate sprees <clears throat> of spamming interracial porn. That was no. that was. A, uh, yeah, but but I want to clarify. Like, yeah, who even does that? V V. Who, who even does that? Did he say? Did he get from his personal collection? See, you know, you guys are in tight, okay? But from the outside third party, you know, looking in, like where I sit. When Sargon got banned, everyone was like, well, this is bullshit. Obviously, they're after him. You know, he was a martyr, right? <clears throat> Up until this moment right now, I had no idea he was spamming big black cocks at me. <laughs> 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 this, is, this is not that, correct. That, now I get it. <laughs> Team, it's, it's not correct. Oh, um, yeah. He did get suspended then for like uh, uh, one day, but his permanent suspension was not because he was spamming big black cocks on the what, Twitter. What was but it who for? 
Well, that's the thing. Like, he wasn't mm. informed. Like, Twitter just suspended so him. So, it, it and... was Big Black Cox. Okay, thank you. No, but it, it, it was quite a while after the Big Black Black Cox incident. Like, he, he's just... Oh, which, which incident, V? Which incident, V? There are multiple that's incidences. I, I, I can bring up his suspension date, and we can compare it to when he was... No, nah, I don't want to measure Cox, Big Black Cox on the stream I'll, here. I'll, yeah. I'll tell you right now, I got suspended for tweets that were years old. I mean, thank God I know someone on Twitter, and I got unbanned, but, you know, like... You know, the date and time of when you get suspended doesn't really have anything to any I correlation true, of when you send a tweet. The, the, the difference is that with the Big Black Cox, he was given a reason, uh, and it was a, a short suspension, I believe a couple of days, but his permanent suspension happened way afterwards, and there was no reason given. But who even does so, that? You know, like... I, yeah, v, this, what, yeah, that's this, what I'm asking. Who does that? It, does that ever occur to you? Okay, you're mad at the alt right. Let me start spamming a bunch of big black dicks uh, on I Twitter. Mean, yeah, that's funny. Funny. It I mean, it's funny. I mean, <laughs> I think it's funny. I mean, I, mean, I, I, I laughed at well about it. And, and, well, it's not the, the spamming of the big black cocks that uh, was funny. It's the reaction of the people receiving them. It's like, oh my God, think of the children that are on Twitter with other porn stars. No, they How weren't. The, most of the reaction I saw was just looking at, wow, this guy's a huge spurg. We just triggered him into turning his Twitter feed into a constant stream of big black dicks. Like, that that makes yeah, you look you, like you, an you idiot. You had the normal reaction. You, <laughs> you know you, what you I mean? You genuinely had the normal reaction. But what do you mean? other people who had a, a very funny reaction. It's like, oh my God, think of children it's like how dare you do so people like troll that? you into spamming big black dicks do you really think that that's gonna upset them you look like an idiot that, that what, what? Yo, well there, there were people upset genuinely back then like there were okay, people who, well. who legitimately started making the the moral argument that you should just show dicks on twitter because there no, are I, that might be awake at 2 a.m at night and see the big black dick I, don't well, per I got a perfect example. Uh, I got into an argument with this guy on uh, Twitter today. You know, he he criticized my Friday Fortnite tournament, and you know, he's a really really good. Uh, this story is kind of long, but I'll go into it. It's a good one. So he's a really good Fortnite player, but he's not popular. And my Friday Fortnite tournament was for like you know people that pull views because it was an entertainment tournament, not necessarily the best person in the game. So he was salty that he wasn't getting into my tournaments, and he made this big thing about how, you know, it was bullshit and it, you know, tournaments should be based on skill and all this, and he attacked me and said I was racist, all this other shit, right? So anyhow, I just ripped him apart on Twitter. He responded with this, you know, counter post to try to clap back saying, I shit on you uh, online and I've shit on you in real life. <clears throat> and he took a picture of him sitting on the toilet acting like he's shitting, but the toilet seat is down. So it's not even open. <laughs> And that was this response. And it's like, if you respond with like this cringy picture where you're going to, you know, do this weird thing, you know, to, to get this picture, you, you just lose. You look like a fucking fool. So I understand the whole point of like him sending big black cocks and it just him looking like a kind of a joke. Yeah, it was entertaining. But again, folks listening, Sunday, <laughs> Sunday, Sunday is when the real show began. <laughs> Yeah, um, I, it, it's going to be a win no matter what. That's that's what I, I just don't see how it's not going to be entertaining no matter what happens. Oh, there, so there's no way this isn't going to be fun. It, it's there, a there's no literally lose. no way this is not yeah. going to be entertaining. It, it just there's no way to lose. So say say he comes with a nothing burger, that's hilarious. Say he gets so worked up and he, ha I mean, there's just there's content for days off this. I just don't. What if he cancels it? I, that has. You know, people have mentioned that, yeah. I'm, I'm, just, I'm streaming it. anyway. Yeah, right, I was going to so. say, that, that's I, a win, I, I too, I do though. not think he will cancel it. I'm just saying this. Sargon's talking to you right now, isn't he? Well, you know what? Actually, let me check. Let me see if he's online. No! Okay. <laughs> what, what V means is not let me check if he's online. He means let me check if it's okay to tell them that he's online. And talking no, to he, him. he is. Uh -huh. Well, you, you can ask people on his own Discord. He's idle, so no, he's not mm. So okay. on on that video that Sargon put up, there's already almost 600 dislikes on his stream, and it's not even live. How many how many likes are there? About 280. Ooh. I just don't see how I could do anything worthwhile. I mean, he would have to have the bombshell of the century, and I I don't have faith. I mean, I, I see what he's linking to. He's linking to some old post that Haberman wrote years ago. Well, Jim's the weird, already the talked about is, many times. By yeah. the way, somebody did a super chat earlier asking you to talk about it. I mean, I guess you've already talked about it before, but maybe you could do a short 
version of what that I, I've, is. I've mentioned Medicare repeatedly in yeah. uh, like the Deviance videos. I went over the Deviant Art Coalition for Quality Control shit. I, you know, I've talked about it before. Um, yeah, I've always been open about that. I had posts where I answered that. It's not like I'm not ashamed of that. I had fun doing that stupid shit. The, the only thing that I know about Sargon is when he did the Kumate, like, when, I also didn't know what he's going to say, and usually when he does these things, it's completely different than what you expect. So, so well, he's going to get that out there. V, we'll, we'll v. see Sunday if I was right or not. I, I, I get it. Nice damage control. Listen, there's no way he's going to come out <laughs> looking good in this. He either fully commits to it and looks like a retard when I laugh at him, or he backs out and tries some simpering bullshit and saying, like, oh, I wasn't going to do anything. There's exactly. no way he's coming out. About, there's there's no way he's exactly. coming out looking good on this. Uh, I'm still no, gonna no, have no. a great time. Like, look, 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 what, what I'm saying is, <laughs> yeah, no. What I what I'm saying is, it's not if he's going to look good or not. What I'm saying is that you are thinking about, oh, he's going to talk about Haberman. He's going to talk about this and that. I think the topic is going to be completely different than what people expect. Is what I'm saying. I, I, don't it, know. I, I mean. You have to understand, I, I've, I've been talking to him for quite a while, and usually when he does these things, uh, like when he went on the Kumate, it was a completely different topic than I expected him to address. Yeah, well, I mean, he is linking to these specific things, saying you're going to want to read along. So, uh, you know, I, maybe he's just lying to his audience. I don't fucking know. Either way, yeah, it's going to be a we'll see Sunday, as I said. You know? So there's but, two but... options. It's like Jim said. Either he fully commits and he goes out there and tries to do this expose on Jim, or he gets on there and says, LOL, I was just playing you, Jim. Oh, look at how upset you got. He's going to look like a retard either way. Like, and, it, it... and let's also throw out there, just so this is established, that, uh, I, you know, I've been open about starting to do a, you know, starting to do a <laughs> regular Sunday stream making fun of skeptics. So it's it's interesting that after the first one did so well, uh, that all of a sudden he's he's doing a stream on me on Sunday. Uh, I guess got to put me in got to put I'm me in my place. I'm not gonna lie. I tuned into that stream where you were shitting on Bunty, and I was in tears. <laughs> I was in fucking tears. That shit was funny. <laughs> oh, they're they're dude. They're all like that, and that's the funniest fucking bit. And being able to go through their shit and laugh at it is gonna be great. You were like you were like Bunty. If you were the king <laughs> of fucking. Dog, guys. Bunty, if you were the king of fucking, Bunty, if you were the king of eating pussy, then why did she go with the other guy? <laughs> like, I was dying. I don't know. I, I, we've still got the sequel video to look at where he gets angry at the comment oh, section God. for calling him a cuck. Oh, and then the Monday Matt one about uh, fucking a meth whore and going to dirt fields. Oh. Like, how can you not talk about that? Oh, my God. I don't. I, I, I've seen a bunch of the tweets, but I don't know. Jim, you bad. were here when we played that on stream the other night, right? No, the, 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 no, you weren't here, Kane, but Jim was here when we oh, played yeah, the Monday Met. Yeah, when yeah. I saw that, oh, you bet your ass I'm talking about <laughs> I was that. I was say, you better fucking hell. See, this is just... the brilliance of this. Even if Sargon backs out, I've got content on like 30 of these fuckers. So I, it's going to be entertaining either way. We're talking about cucking and meth whores. We're talking about theft and lying. We're talking about David Shitred having his mommy chide him for not peeing in the toilet properly when he's trying to hit on a woman. Oh, like, oh it's going to be... <laughs> Oh, Lauren, 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 mommy told me to wipe the pee-pee away. Oh, it's going to be so fucking great. <laughs> it's a, like I said, it's a, it's a no-lose situation, literally. I wonder what's going on with Monday Matt. Like, like his career yeah. is, like, really over. Oh, like fuck, his... dude. I, I saw a video of his from 2013 um, where he's talking basically almost about being homeless and having to survive off Craigslist uh, garage sales. So, like, I think the YouTube thing was, like, his his shot at, like, a stable, well-paid career. So, I, I think he's pretty fucked up about it, even though he's not talking about it. Because right. com comparing what he's doing now to how he talked back then, it, it's I, I can imagine his world's fucking crashing down on him. Dude, I tune into, I'll, I'll go and, like, just every other day, just check his channel out or whatever. And the videos will have, like, 140 likes and, like, 2,000 dislikes. Like, I've never seen any shit like that. It, it, on his alternate channels, too, if you go to Three Buck Theater, people are like, oh, so this is where you're hiding, Matt. Disliked. <laughs> like, they're following him around. <laughs> if I were him, I would just make a video and just, like, you know, beg for forgiveness. I mean, what, el what else could you do? You, you really think that would work, though? It, I don't know if it would at work or point, not, but... but like this, this not, far what else does he have to lose what, at this what, point, V? What else yeah. could you do? What, what is his option right now? If you were him, what would you I do? Would, well, if I was him, I wouldn't uh, flag people, but uh, <laughs> a lot. I, I suppose what he could do is just 
try to keep up and hopefully some someone more retarded than him will show up and people will forget about him. No, nah, no one's ever. It's it's been a, it's been five weeks, V. It's like it's Dude. like we're we're into the past the first month. It's been what was that the ninth? So yeah, yep, it's almost five August, yeah. five weeks and people are still going to his videos and just shitting on him daily. The thing is, is he's yeah, not... but I don't think I don't think an apology will help. That's the thing. Like if he makes an apology now, and even if he's the most sincere shit on earth. Like, like he he's a born again Christian. He he finds the Lord and sees nah, well, the, look, the arrow of his way. It, it might not fix it everything, work. but at least maybe it would take twenty to thirty oh, uh, percent of the people out. I mean, yeah. I, I, yeah. Here's the thing. Uh, I saw somebody in your your chat saying you're not you're not hurting him by disliking his videos. I would like to point out if you go look at his social blade, his views have fucking just shot down through the floor. <laughs> like compared to he used to be. He was like two or three million views. Then it got to like one million and one and a half million views. He's on track right now for maybe seven hundred thousand this month. It's it's getting into like the tens and eleven thousands per day for Monday Matt on his view count. And I know you've already seen this, but on Twitter he he actually changed the link, you know, on his bio from the Monday Matt channel to the Three Buck Theater channel. I mean, it's he clearly yeah, so, I mean, he's it, done. it looks yeah. yeah. Last month he had one point three million uh, views. This month it's looking like he'll have six hundred and eighty thousand. So he's lost half his view count. I mean, just just so everyone understands, like he he's probably made about five hundred dollars for the month. Like you can't you can't support a family yeah. on that. No. Well, he's he's got more channels. Maybe they add up, and he's got the Patreon. <laughs> I haven't checked. But, but Patreon, the, thing is, the Patreon's down fifty patrons. Maybe. Yeah, I was supposed oh, to say. Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, what what he could do, I guess, is to actually make quality content. Well, that's a big stretch. Yeah, I mean, what, what do you think, Jim? If you would make well, more of the, uh, the the nigger teddy bear, well, do you think that would get them uh, more views? I, I think Matt is past the point of return. To be honest with you, I think whatever moment he had to try to turn it around is past. Hmm. Well, I he mean, just he could go so long without giving a video, and now it's just like, I, yeah, I don't know. I, I, he could put up an apology video, and maybe it'll appease some of his fans. But people are going to look at it like you're only doing this now because you're losing everything. Yeah, they they say that uh, no press is bad press. Well, that isn't necessarily true. If you're not entertaining, if you are, don't have charisma, you can't come back from negative press, or you can't turn negative press into into views, or or turn them into fans. Like you have to be entertaining or have charisma, and Matt has none of those. I mean, his name is Mundane Matt. Like he's he, the only thing I think he could do is just make an apology to every single person he's wrong. Well, I actually know something. why this is happening to him. Um, if you want to destroy someone, you, you have to get the people that raised him up to take him down. So, so you have to look at the people that raised Monday Matt up. The reason he was popular, despite the fact that he wasn't very entertaining, is because people thought it's this nice guy, you know, this nice collected guy does no wrong. And he, he's, he's very kind to people, right? He wants to say it on the fence, like he doesn't want conflict. And then it turns out that he's flagging all these streams. So this is when his own audience, like his own fan base, are cheering him down. And, and that's why it's, it's so effective. Against well, yeah, but V, you say like when he wanted to destroy somebody. I mean, let's be really, really clear here. The only person that destroyed Mundane Matt was Mundane Matt. Like yeah, he, of course. He, he flagged people, and then he got caught flagging people. And even when he got caught, he tried to downplay like, oh, I'll take some shit for a while. Well, we're in week five. He's half his views. He's lost uh, like 15,000 subscribers. He's lost 50 patrons. Like, he has set himself on fire, and he's still running yeah. around screaming. And not only that, Jim, he showed the evidence on stream. Like, he, <laughs> he, he literally grabbed the blade and shoved it into his own fucking stomach. Like, nobody, I mean, I guess we were in well, person. I, know, I, know, but, I know why they did that. Like, I, I actually know. Yeah, we, we, were, we were bullying the shit out of him. I yeah, was like, but, you're <laughs> lying. You're lying. I mean, we you were kind of, <laughs> we were bullying him in a certain way, but he didn't have to. What the fuck was he thinking? I, don't well, know. I know I can explain it. The psychology of mind and math is very easy to read. Well, so yeah. think of this guy, right? As Jim said, he, he's making uh, money from Craigslist, and then he finds success on YouTube. And, and he's making a big buck. You know, everything is fine. And then he starts losing money. And he's looking at his subs, his viewership. You know, he's not losing a lot, but at least he's not going up. So, so he, he, he's very upset about it. And then people start shit talking him on different streams. That there's YouTubers that are shit talking him, and he notices that maybe the reason he's losing money is not because he's not entertaining and putting quality content; is because people are shit talking him. So, so he gets really angry, right? He starts flagging videos, he starts taking down shit, 
and eventually people confront him. So it was like, well, they, they can't really prove that I've done anything because uh, flagging is anonymous. So I'll just go there, you know, like put, put on a display, be convincing, because I'm the nice guy Monday map. I'm the fence sitter. Surely no one is going to believe these people over me. Well, he so, also so he comes up here. <clears throat> yeah, he, he, he comes up here. And when you guys find a way for, for him to expose his flagging history, uh, th that's when he's like, oh, fuck. Right. And, and you notice that the 30 minute silence while he was probably trying to figure out how to delete shit and, and how to, to remove stuff. And the moment you exposed him with that, like it was the most damaging thing you could have done. Because yeah. if you don't show that he's a hip hypocrite, if you don't show that he makes shit up in his news, nothing would have been as damaging to him. Because the only reason he was popular in the first place is like, this is the nice guy, Monday Matt. This is the content for the moderate. I, I'm not an extremist. I, I don't watch JF. You know, I'm, I'm not uh, uh, a person that uh, is. Um, is taking hardline you know, stances. One of the I'm reasons like, it looks so bad for him is because he just spent an hour and a half fucking lying to all of our faces. If you watch the whole stream, yeah. it's it's like a movie the way it lays out. You know, it's like a plot. It, it has an arc to it. Yeah. yeah, it has <laughs> a, it has that narrative arc, and he just completely gets busted out. But that being said, nobody absolutely made him show that. I mean, he did that on his own. Well, and did you see the? He didn't, he didn't know. He didn't Did know you, you could. The, you the could people uh, defending him afterwards, they're like, well, okay, so he flags some stuff, but nothing <laughs> got taken down. But if you look at the screen caps, yeah, actually, videos were taken down. They're like three they or four of them. They yeah. were. And then there are also people, you know, trying to defend him saying, well, he was just, you know, he was just flagging, you know, bullying streams and uh, bullying videos. Dude, those people defending him didn't last long. It was like maybe a day, a day and a half, and they all disappeared. <laughs> yeah. Most of the people defending him, I mean, they're full of shit. Let's yeah. face it, but I, I want to say something to Monday, Matt, and I, you know, maybe somebody can clip this and send I'm it. I'm sure he's so. watching. Go ahead. Yeah. I, I want to make sure he gets this. Uh, if your career is done and over and it's, it's a rip and you know, you find yourself in a financial situation, I personally will give you $1,000 Matt for your silver play button. I want a trophy. <laughs> I want a trophy and I will give you $1,000 for it. So if you're ever really that desperate, Hit me up. He's going to take you up on that. You know? <laughs> <laughs> right. the money. I'll give him the money. I want it. I want it. You know, I mean, Tonka I'm going to frame it table. with a picture of him crying <laughs> next to it. You know? <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I, actually, actually, if I was bad, they that would be fake because I think that shit is priceless. Like, there would be people that will bid money for the, the trophy that made Monday Map cry. You put it on eBay. Is that what your suggestion is? Take it to a fucking gun range and record it. <laughs> well, but the evil, thing is, but I'm not think... heartless. I will give him one thousand dollars. That's saying. a fair price. I, 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 I don't think Matt wants to to part with that trophy. You know, um, well, one thing you can do to piss off Monday Matt, like if you really want to, and, and no one thought about this, which is weird. <clears throat> he's got this Google account, right? Where wherever someone talks about him on the internet, he gets an alert. Yeah. Like Google what I would do, and. and yeah, this this would actually be healthy for him because because obviously it's not healthy what what's going on right now. He he's in a bad place because of it. Whenever you're on a porn site, whenever you're on any forum, when, whenever you're somewhere on the internet, just type Monday Matt. Just do that, and, and his Google alert is going to explode. Like his phone will start going on fire, to the point where he'll have to disable that shit. And, and and maybe that that will help him regain his his balance. You know, get some of that chi back. But you know what hurts him as much as anything is that people don't want to be associated with him now. So, like, could you imagine going on his show or him coming on? Uh, Ralph, program? did like, you see your super? You've started a bidding war game. Somebody just said one thousand dollars <laughs> and one cent. Matt, hit me up. <laughs> like the price is right. <laughs> well, the the way I view it, I think Monday Matt would rather give up his house. That that will be the last thing that goes. I, I, I like, hate to he say, is it, almost probably the kid. Probably the kid. If he's homeless in a sleeping bag somewhere, he will still have that trophy next to him hugging it. So, you yeah, know, that, I, I don't think a thousand dollars is enough. That was that was kind of fucked up what I just said. But on, on a real note, um, you know, I, <laughs> as a human, you got to feel sorry for him. You know, like you know, you? He, he does have a kid. He does have a kid. Oh wow! Well. You know, he fucked up and he tried to ruin other people's you know income which in return fucked up his income, but you know, he, he does have a kid. 
But look, um, there are gov- came there are government programs that provide for the child. I, I don't I don't really feel but, the need to feel. No, like no. Him. I just hope that he like goes and gets a real job. You know what I mean? I Let's hope he honest. doesn't. I what this is what I think is going to happen. I think he's going to attempt to do this to the point where he gets evicted from his apartment <laughs> and things get really bad. I I think he will never give up. He'll try and try and try because he wants this so bad, and I think it's going to be a problem. Hopefully, he can recognize really soon that this is not going to work. There isn't really going to be a comeback, and that he can go out there and you know make a living for for his family. Well, he came. It's worse than that. It's not an apartment. He was, thought he was doing well on YouTube. So, like a year or two ago, he bought a house and got a mortgage. Oh no! Oh no, Jesus! Yes. That yes. Oh, no! no. Yes. And then he <laughs> bragged about it and said, "YouTube paid for this." Of course, YouTube didn't. paid for my house. Oh, it's oh. going to be bad. Does his, wife, does his wife have a job or his okay. girlfriend has a job she yeah, pays she most of the bills i'm gonna guess because his youtube channel okay. is really bringing in the bacon let's be honest i mean uh, yeah dude he better start selling his underwear and socks like that uh other <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> the fuck is gonna buy used underwear from mundane matt now let me ask you jim who do you think is the bigger uh loser monday matt or or dark side phil well you know dark side phil isn't gonna lose his fucking house is he <laughs> Yeah, he's got. I mean, Dark Side Phil has two houses, Matt. What are you doing? Wait, wait, wait. What, wasn't he actually saying that he was about to lose his house? It started like a. Uh, no, V. Started... Dark, Dark, Dark Side Phil is like, he's got like I don't know what you'd even call it. It's like having the worst luck and the best luck at the same time. Terrible, <laughs> terrible shit happens to him on the daily that he does himself or other people do to him. But somehow, some way, he always comes out the other end okay. I don't know how he does it, but. <laughs> The man is made of fucking Teflon. And I think Keem was right earlier when he said Matt needs to get a job. V, you should help out. Get a hold of Sargon and see if Applebee's will provide him with a, a, a position. <laughs> well, to be fair, Darkside Phil wants me to, uh, wanted me to, uh, sorry, Darkside Phil makes me want to shoot myself. Like, I was streaming uh, Tomb Raider yesterday, 200 people watching, and it's like, how many people does Darkside Phil get? And it's like 500. And it's like, fuck me. I, I'm, I'm like the discount Darkside Phil. Like, people, how the fuck does he manages? Uh, now, people keep track of his money because uh, they're, like, obsessed with him. Like, if people are really into Phil Phil and Phil lore and Phil history. Like, he's pulling in a good amount of cash through donations and bits and uh, PayPal and his Patreon. When, like, add it all up, he's probably making somewhere between five to ten grand per month just doing what he does. Yeah, I don't get it. How the fuck? Like, he, he bans people in his chat. He's disrespectful to the audience. It's like, I don't, he's fake and last guy on stream. It's just... Can you guys explain a little bit more about Phil? All I know about him is because I covered it on Drumler is when he accidentally masturbated. <laughs> <on the screen. laughs> that's, that's all I really know. So uh, you I'll give you a uh, background. Yeah, I'll give you a quick rundown. So Phil started off as one of the really early. He was kind of like Wings. He was like one of the really early guys doing like video game content. It okay. wasn't specifically like FPS stuff, but just playthroughs. He'd film his TV and shit. And he got um, really, really popular. Like, he was bringing in tons of views. The ad revenue was really good. He got a deal with, like, Machinima. He was represented. He was doing he was doing superb. But the problem was, is Phil would stream them. He would, like, stream the games, and then he'd clip it up. So instead of having, like, an hour-long segment of, like, oh, I did uh, part of Zelda today, he'd chop it up into, like, 20 pieces. Right. So after, after, like, five or six years of that, and his popularity starts to wane, here's a guy with, like, a, a YouTube channel that's got, like, half a million fucking videos on it. Um... At around the same time, these different groups of trolls kind of came around and started fucking with him. One of them was called Sons of Kojima. And so they just, they like to taunt him and mess with him and stuff. But, you know, like, as the years go on, right, Phil goes from a really popular uh, YouTuber to kind of a moderately popular one. And he starts to, you know, supplement his income with, like, Patreon. He starts doing the streaming stuff. He moves over to Twitch to do it. Um, But he runs into trouble where he'll do or say something stupid. And he'll alienate the people he's working with. So Machinima drops him. Then he tries to get another partnership, and he says something bad about them, and they drop him. He tries to promo a game on Twitch, right? You know, like uh, they have some kind of uh, bounty board or something when you want to like promote a game, right? And it, it, he's so he's so uh, just uh, he's he's got such a bad rep, right? That the video game he was going to promote on Twitch with that bounty board system, the developers of it contacted Twitch and said, "I don't want him playing this, please." <laughs> Please get him off our video game. Oh, my God. <laughs> so, and then add on to that, right? Um, it's like a classic YouTube story of falling apart. So his money source is shrinking, right? And his audience is shrinking. But at the same time, he decides he wants to move to another state where there's no income tax, no state income tax or whatever. Right. Um, but he has a condo where he lives, and he can't get rid of the condo because he owes money on it. So he moves across the country. He buys a house. 
now he's got a mortgage on his condo. He's got a mortgage on his house and he's leasing a car and the money sources are disappearing left and right. Then it turns out he didn't pay his taxes properly. And he's got like a backlog of like, I don't know, like 10 or 20 grand he owes the IRS. Oh shit. Right. And then his girlfriend leaves him because this is the most fucked up shit I've ever heard. She had like an attack at work or something and they had to send an ambulance to get her and bring her to the hospital. Okay. Phil finds out about it on stream and his reaction is to tell people uh, when he's recounting the story, I went in there and I told him, if you, if you have another attack, you tell the ambulance to go away. We can't afford it. Just have him give you a pill. And so like two days, <laughs> two days after that, she leaves him. She's like done with him. She walks away. That was like, Oh my God, what up. a fucking idiot. Yeah, he is a piece of shit. There's another stream where she's sick with, like, the flu and throwing up. I saw that. And, and he, he interrupts his game. He's playing, like, Star Wars. He interrupts the game and says, I got to go wake Leanna up. She's got to cook me dinner. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah, that's real. Uh, like, th this is not even the 1% of what he does. Like, he, he did this promotions where, like, if people subscribe to him, I believe, that he will give them a game, but get this right, it's not the game, it's just the box of the game. So 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 he will just what? show you like what? That's not true. That's not real. <laughs> no, it is true. Like he did it like four or five times. <laughs> oh my god. He would do he'd do unboxings and then he'd keep the disc and give away the box as a fucking gift to his audience. Oh I see I see a uh, chat from the regular stream and, and it's from Shibe and this person says, Jim, tell him about the time Pandalee fell down the stairs. That was see. Th this is the thing about Phil. I used to be really into watching it, and making fun of him, but he, <laughs> even I don't know all the lore, and I don't know about the panda leaf falling down the stairs one. Um, all I know is he's Did terrible. He at... Probably. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I know one word then. Um, he he gets this uh, fight stick from a friend, right? And the the fight stick. Uh, sorry, he he gives the fight stick to a friend, and the fight stick is broken. So so he just charges money for it. Like a, a modest amount. So he, what what his friend does is he repairs the fight stick, and the then the SP that goes to his friend and asks him to give the fight stick back to him once it was repaired and demands it says it was his. Oh shit, that's right. I forgot he had a fucking <laughs> uh, was it a GoFundMe? He had a fundraiser to do a project, Project Seven or something like that. It's gonna be this big video project with his friends, and then he got the money and he never did it. Oh my god. Yeah, he's he's always doing shit like that, but he finds some way to piss his audience off. He'll ban him and talk shit about him and call him detractors. But even though he has all this horrible luck and all this shit happens to him, whether it's self-inflicted or otherwise, he's still around. He's still making money. He's actually gaining traction on Twitch with more viewers and more cash. Now, so, are people donating? Is it like a wings thing where people are donating to him just to talk shit to him? No, he's got a, a legitimate fan base that supports oh, him wow. financially. Yeah, yeah. Well, talk about the cooking streams, the, the Chef Ramsay experiments. Yeah, he would do cooking streams where he'd be like, I'm going to make uh, bacon burgers or something. And then he'd like take, he'd finish cooking the bacon and he'd walk into the bathroom and pour the grease down the toilet. Like he'd do really weird shit. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> like, it's he just dropped really... the bacon on the floor and picked it up, put it in his plate. Like no wonder his girlfriend cooked for him even when sick. Like I don't what? think his girlfriend wants to get food poisoning. Because you, you got this guy walking barefoot, you know, in the bathroom, in the kitchen, dropping the sandwiches on the ground, picking them up, putting them back in the plate. I mean, if he's dumping the grease on the toilet, he's going to flush one day and be like, <laughs> fucking perfect. <laughs> in his house, the whole shit's going to flood. In. Yeah, I, I'd, I'd highly recommend if you ever get, like, some time. Because, like, with Wings, you know how, um, like, Sean Rankin and others put up clips making fun of him and stuff? Yeah. Like, DS. DSP has a lot. It's called it, like the DSP tries it kind of stuff. And um, there's so many videos of him just not knowing what to do. Like he'll play a game. He's got an audience wanting to watch him do well at a video game or be entertaining. But like he never reads the instruction manuals. He never knows what to do. He's <laughs> always getting upset. It took him uh, like crouch jumping in Half-Life. He didn't know how to do that. So he spent like an hour and a half trying to move barrels to climb a pipe. And people are screaming at him and he's completely oblivious to what the fuck is going on. <laughs> Oh, I, I you, think I saw it on your channel where, where he spent, I believe, four entire hours on a bus in, in Bloodborne and, and he couldn't get past it. And then he just makes an entire stream where he's basically saying that, that this boss is unreasonable, that developers are the problem. <laughs> and fun for him. Do you think any of it's an act or is he really? Is oh, it... no, no. He's, he's legit. No, he's 100% no. who he appears to be on stream. I don't believe uh, any of it's an act because he was in the. Um, <laughs> He was in the fighting game community before, and he had a bit of a reputation there for being kind of a uh, a pompous idiot. 
Um, like he won a tournament once where it was like fucking super street fighter on SNES. And he acted like that was the biggest accomplishment when nobody else was able to show up because of weather or something. <laughs> oh God. Uh, he, even with all into... this, he's still more profitable than Monday Matt. Yeah. Yes. Even with all that, he makes more money than Matt does. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I mean, the, the the thing with him is he went on a downstream, then got back up, you know. So, so we'll see the future of Monday Math. Um, yeah, but the, when, as when you compare said, it, he's got a uh, kid, yeah. Yeah, but I mean, when you compare it, though, I mean, DSP is just always lighting himself on fire, jacking off on streams, and he's still somehow surviving it. And Matt is just tumbling down like a boulder downhill. And fucking week five, his channel is just a ghost town. Dude, if Matt would just upload a video talking shit about everyone, if he came after me, if he came after, you know, you guys, like, that would help him more than what he's doing now. I'd watch no, it. I think yeah. it I'd, I'd watch that. No, but I think it would be a short-term thing. But, like, the thing with Monday Matt uh, is that DSP is actually entertaining to, to see him fuck up. Like, it's legitimately funny. But with Monday Matt, it's just, it's, it's not funny. That's it's a sad. It's, a like, sad. it's sad, right? Yeah, the, the whole shtick with him was that he, he was this kind dude that, that's on the fence and does not run. And, and I'll admit this, Jim. Like, I, like I, I wouldn't have to go public with this. But when Matt was here and you were accusing him, I thought you're a piece of shit. I generally thought, it's like, why are you picking on Matt? Matt is a nice guy. Surely he didn't flag, right? And then when, you, when someone pointed out you can reveal the flagging history, and I saw that Monday Matt takes more than five minutes to do it, I was like, holy shit, Jim is right. Yeah, so, get used to saying that, uh, V, especially after Sunday. Jim is right. <laughs> you know, at a certain point, apparently, we had a caller yesterday who was hanging out with mundane Matt and stuff at VidCon. He said that he wanted to, to basically tutor DSP into how to become a better YouTuber. Oh, good Lord. That is the worst. When smaller YouTubers or YouTubers that fail try to give advice to successful ones, like, that is the fucking worst. That's like my number one pet peeve. Kim yeah, Star, let me let me tell you how to how to do your channel. Like let, let, let me just uh, <laughs> That's <laughs> such a pet peeve of mine. I'm like, no, you're not giving me any advice. But yeah, I don't think uh DSP Phil or whatever his name is, I don't think he should listen to Monday Man at all. I don't think anyone should. That, that guy's horrible. <laughs> Entertainment-wise. No, I, I, I wouldn't listen to it either. Um, but yeah, I mean, it, DSP has a larger YouTube channel than Matt already. So he's established on Twitch. He's got like 180,000 subs on YouTube. So I don't know what Matt would be giving him advice on. How many viewers does yeah. he pull, Phil? Like 500, someone said? Uh, on his streams? Yeah, it's yeah. like on Twitch, like 500 to 1,000. Uh, his videos used to get a lot, but like it's really declined over the years. You can only spam so many videos before people are like, I just don't care anymore. Yeah, that's enough. You, you know who I would get? You know who I would get advice from on, on how to be successful on YouTube? Who? Coach Redpill. Coach Redpill, man. I know a little yeah. bit about him, but I did see Kraut's video, and it did seem like, you know, he was kind of a fraud. Yeah, he's, he's, yeah, gained, uh, he's gained, what, uh, 60,000 subs in a month? Like, he's it's crazy. He's yeah. tapped into the incel market. Yeah, exactly. Like, uh, I, I think um, the thumbnails are very good. Maybe the tags that he's using are, are are quite spot on and the time he uploads his videos. But he's getting like 1,000, 2,000 subs a day. I was looking at it like, holy fuck, like from, from this small channel. Well, yeah, V, all you have to do is go, go, to, go to his channel, click on the video tab, look at most popular, and every single one of them is uh, why women suck, why you shouldn't date women, <laughs> why married women are horrible, <laughs> why vaginas are terrible. Like he's found a market, like the people are loving this shit. So if he was, like if he's, Going forward, wants to capitalize on that. His channel's gonna fucking. By just the way, through. let me let me ask you this, Jim. Um, Coach Red Pill was on here last week. I think it was last week, and he said you you kind of lost your touch, that you weren't you weren't really up to par. Also, he's in the green room right now. If, if you wanna. Oh shit! If, if yeah, well, let's him. let's uh, bring him on in. He he had said that you know compared <laughs> to your past work, you you kind of lost your touch, and and I disagreed with him, whatever. But but we had that back and forth. Um, but he's here right now. You you saying bring him in? Well, yeah, yeah, I'm I'm always up for having people on. I'm not I'm not Tonka Ralph. I show up when I'm asked. <laughs> should, should, should I invest in coach coins? I, I, got, a, coins, I got a front row seat. I'm excited. All right, let, let's bring him in. Yeah, I'll, I'll be quiet as well. Yeah. Coach Red Pill. By the way, can we do two at the same time? I don't know if that's. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, Co Coach Red Pill, you're here, and uh, Jim's here, and and you said he he'd kind of uh, missed the mark lately, and. 
So. Hey, Jim, how's it going? Oh, it's going good, man. Oh, good. Uh, uh, v, I see that you're uh, defending uh, Sargon's honor. I think it's a horrible mistake what he's doing this Sunday, but uh, I'll be watching it. No, I'm not defending his honor. I just clarified uh, the people that asked me in DMs what's going on. And I pointed out is that uh, Ralph asked me to talk to Sargon to come on this show, and that's what happened. Well, he's not here, so you yeah. failed me. But 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 anyway, l let's get to the. I, I did my best. You know, I did my best. I, okay. I can't do more well, than that. I'm sorry. We're still here. You know, any time he changes his mind. But yeah, go ahead. Any, go ahead, coach. Anyway, that 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 you know, he, Sargon is gonna he, Sargon checkmated himself with this stupid Sunday stream because there's no outcome where he wins. And every outcome he loses. Uh, if he doxes Jim, as he's sort of like uh, insinuating he will, everybody's going to hate his guts because Jim, I mean, no respect, but you're sort of like the, the gesture of our neck of the woods. You're the guy who makes fun of shit. And so, you know, if, if the quote unquote king kills the gesture, everybody hates the king. And so uh, if, if it turns out that he's just, just a joke, just a prank bro, then Sargon looks like a fool. And if um, Sargon like uh, uh, just tries to compete with Jim in terms of views, well, he's gonna have fewer views than Jim, and so he's gonna look weak. So the the best move at this point is for him to withdraw and cancel that Sunday stream. But he's not gonna do it because he's too proud. His arrogance look, won't allow him to do well, it. Well, I mean, here's and my so here, gonna... here's my concern, Coach. Um, I'm worried I've lost my touch and I won't be able to handle Sargon. What advice would you give me? <laughs> <laughs> No, I mean, like some of the some of your later your latest videos, you know. So, uh, can I ask you which I ones those would be? Would it be the Ballad of Monday Matt with six hundred thousand views and twenty five thousand likes? Would it be David Katz from two weeks ago with half a million views and twenty five thousand likes? Which which video is losing its touch? Well, the Monday Matt video, for instance, Toad McKinney's the, the video. Wild, the, the wildly popular Monday Matt video with six hundred thousand views is not is not up to par. Yeah, but but you you know that lots of times how how popular a video is doesn't necessarily mean it's the best one. I never said Toast was good or that there weren't better ones out there. But you're making it sound like I'm on some trajectory downwards when the views and the interactions would seem to point otherwise. No, because like if you're looking at it from a metric standpoint, your your uh, your channel is going gangbusters, right? And and you're gonna blow the fuck away even Peppa the Pig this this is coming Sunday, right? Uh, with your live stream, no question. And and I think Ralph was saying that you're going to hit 30,000 views. I would not be surprised by that at all. But see, I, I take the medium as like an art. And I, I frankly, I consider there are relatively few people who are taking it seriously as an art form. And the ones who do, and I include you in that category. Well, you know, it, you you evaluate the material on a different standard. I mean, I take this this medium seriously as an art form. Okay, and that's why I take care with my videos, and I try to make them as good as possible. And that's why I experiment with the with the form. I mean, you know, some of them have been like the vertical aspect ratio or the two thirty five aspect ratio that I've been doing with my videos. You know, it's it's because I take it seriously as an art. And yeah, if you want to mock it, fine. You know, but I take it seriously. Okay. Okay. Not. Well, I mean, I guess my response to that would be. I mean, yeah, you're going to have some videos that do well and some that don't. But I, it just sounds really weird to say all your past videos are they're just not doing good from the Monday and Matt one. When no, that's, no, no, that's, no, no, no. That's clearly not, that, that's clearly no, 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 not no. the I, case. I, I did not say that they're not doing good in terms of viewership. I'm ter I'm talking so you, in terms you, you of like you like none of them. Uh, can you give me a criticism? What, what did you like? You don't like any of them. So what did you not like about Cyber EF77? Wait, hang on. Let me just uh, call up your channel here. Well, you haven't watched uh, it. I mean, you gave a you gave a no, no, an no. assessment of the quality. I, I, of I'm, content. I'm old. I'm old, and I forget the videos that you've made. What do you want to say? Wait, okay, I, hang on a second. I'm curious. Were you suggesting that he should try like 240p or some shit? Like, I'm confused. No, like like for instance, like the um, the the Reese terrible one, right? I mean, like you started it off with that like really cool uh, montage of comments that was really cool, and and then you you know it was sort of like okay then you just filled it up and finished it off or like the mundane Matt one where basically you quoted the the whole um, the whole stream the the Ralph retort stream and just put in a little bit of comment here and there but it wasn't as like polished as as a as a, as a video as some of your other ones. 
Okay. I mean, well, I, I like, mean, for instance, Pooch, the pause, it, it, your pause, fairness, your pause, Pooch, Pooch, I mean, and, and he was fairness. on that stream, but yeah, yeah, yeah coach. In, in all fairness, <laughs> I mean, the Monday match shit happened because of me. If I didn't start that pulley, the yeah, ball, I know, I know. Wait, wait, I, coach. So I, I I'm sorry. I, I'm sorry. You know, from starting the event, everybody's talking about to the end of the event. I'm sorry. I didn't keep it up to the standard that you were looking for, but there were videos in between those. And it's just kind of weird. You're like, oh, the Monday Matt one wasn't that great. And Reset Terrible was not that great. But you're not watching my other shit, right? So how can I take your assessment seriously? What didn't you like about David no, Cat's video or the Cyber EF uh, video or Bulba Gardener? Oh, you got your license. Like those all did fairly well. So, I mean, if I've lost my touch, I'd like that critique that's uh, that's deep diving. Oh, come on. Don't don't get upset about it, okay? I mean, I'm, I'm telling you, like in terms of views, I've, I've said so that in terms of views, you're doing gangbusters, right? What, what, there's nothing to criticize on that in terms of view, view count, okay? What I'm saying that is that on a qualitative level, some of your videos have been weak. What do you want me to say? It's the well, truth. Yeah, yeah but like it's, just, it's, video, it's just weird. You pop video, into the stream, you ask. throw out, you pop into the stream, you throw out the snipe, and then you leave. I, and it, it's just, it was kind of weirdly timed. It didn't really no, I was, make I was a lot of, a lot of sense to me. Uh, well, the first thing okay, you said look, when you came on stream it, was, uh, hey, hey, Rob, God, I, why are you so upset? No, that literally, look, You're you did kind of put, second, pulled second, it in. Okay, go ahead. No, it, it was a lightning round, okay? You wanted me to go through, like, a bunch of By things. By the way, Coach, it was a lightning round, but you still took up about 15 or 20 minutes, so it wasn't that lightning when, when you came on. But, but, yeah, go ahead. Look, uh, Jim, if you're upset, I mean, you think it's funny. I mean, you were just laughing just now about yeah. what I was saying about taking the medium seriously. So what do you give a shit about? If, you, if you're not taking the medium seriously, well, what, oh, well, what do you I don't, care? but I'm not going to let you run around and try to snipe at me and not give a response. I wasn't sniping at you. You I clearly was were, and now you're backpedaling, just like you did with Nick Fuentes. No. No. Yeah. Okay. Ooh. I'm not backpedaling. I'm telling you to your face. Okay. Right. I'm what telling you that. You did? What was the first thing you did when you came in here, aside from suck my dick and say Sargon was going to go down to avoid the conversation until okay, fine. Reeled, you back into it. reeled you back into it? Okay. So you feel insecure by the fact that your videos have, in terms of quality, gone down. No, That's this isn't about insecurity. This isn't about insecurity. Yeah. This is about you shit talking and me responding to that, coach. I am telling you to your face that I think that your latest videos have been weak. Okay. And you're acting like a little bitch. You, you're you're seeming to get your, your voice is going up a little bit, yeah. Well, you seem to be, you know, very ass hurt about my giving an intelligent observation about your videos. My, my, my counterpoint to that is what's intelligent about it if you're not watching enough videos to make an assessment. I watch all of your content. What you just said you didn't know what CyberEF was. You didn't know what David Katz was. Clearly, you okay. don't. Okay, fine. No, that, that's fine. You, uh, if you want to feel all hurt about it, fine. You know, I, I've given you a, a B on a couple of your videos, and you're acting like a, like a little fucking twelve year old. But no, let me I ask just, you. I, I can make a quiz. I, I can make a quiz with Coach uh, about Jim's videos, and we can. I'm see not interested in. No, it's not even a quiz. It's not. It's not even a quiz. But but but, but but what what is the what's the beef? I guess. Or, so what 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 is subpar? I mean, and Jim just asked that himself. Like what, yeah yeah what yeah. I, that's what I want to know because uh, yeah. the most we heard is basically that like the Matt video was kind of just a recap of the stream, but I, I don't know. But he pretty much made to... that stream happen, like he just well, said. Well, I don't he know any other way to tell that story. You have to recap yeah. half the stream, you know. So yeah. I, well, it wasn't coach, true. Coach, we need something real. We need some real criticism. Not only did he make the stream, the topic happen, but he also fed me the video that <laughs> got me the strike that has us on this channel right now. So, I mean, it, it would be impossible for him not to, to recap the stuff that happened. Uh, so Yeah, but here's the thing. See, I was looking at the video as a video, okay? Uh, not in terms of like what Jim's participation in it and all the rest of it. So, yeah, I'm not denying that he made that whole stream happen, right? But I'm saying that the video, as a video, was subpar. Toad McKinley's was better. What do you look, want me to say? I, I, you know? I, look, I, I would just have to disagree. Of course, I, I'm a little, maybe I'm biased. I don't know. But I, I just know that right when it happened, and I, I don't want to talk out of school or whatever, but... You know, I talked to Jim right after. It's like, of course, Monday night just just flagged us down. Like that, that's literally what happened. He came right yes, back I on. I know that. I watched it. I thought it was funny. Okay, 
I'm not disputing uh, you know, your, your participation or, or the fact that uh, Jim was the prime mover of that whole situation. And was it funny? Fucking A, it was funny. It was incredibly amusing. I mean, without him doing the poly thing, person. it never even happens, right? So he has to kind of go back through. I, I don't know. I, I, I just, I, I'm, I'm not... No, you know, it's that you guys... I'm looking at the video. I'm, not, I'm as literally video. not trying not to tear you down. I just, I just want to know what, what your exact, like. The what, only way the Jim could make the video it better is he could do a live video. interview with the fucking boulders or some shit. Like I don't know what more he wanted <laughs> well, to well, do. <laughs> well, team, team star, team star. Like I, I don't know you, okay? But uh, you, you seem like a fair guy. Okay, fine. Why don't you watch Jim's video and then watch Toad McKinley's video on the exact same topic? Toad's was funnier. Toad's was better. I'll, I'll watch it. I will watch them both, and I'll uh, I'll I'll tweet at you. I guess if you have a Twitter, and let you know what I think. Sure, but like, look. But I I gotta say this case. though. I gotta say this. I'm gonna be kind of biased going in because you know Jim made once made a video about Wings of Redemption, and someone asked me what I thought about it. You know, and I was like, ah, eh, it was okay because I have the you know I lived it. I understood that Wings of Redemption story like in real time I lived it, right? So if someone's there and they're part of it, um I feel like, you know, that's going to be the more interesting, you know, video off the cuff anyways because that's a person that was there, right? Was was sure. this Toad's guy was he in the stream the night that this happened? Nope. No. So no, I, but, think, but... I I I don't know. I think, you know, Medicare gets a a little well, bit Well, so it's kind of two different Thing. So, uh, Medicare's yeah. video was more of a blow by blow of the stream, and then he went into the Candace stuff at the end, which I thought was very important, and I thought he brought that back up in a in a very real way that needed to be brought back up. But the Toad video was was a different. It was it was more of looking back, you know, on Monday Mad's histories, uh, a little more uh, than than what Jim did. Uh, I think Jim's video was more made to uh, people who already knew. About Monday Mads, but, but, but it's also yeah. like Jim striking the iron while it's hot and having to put that information out there as soon as possible. So obviously, you know, if you want no, a very no, well made didn't. video, no, I didn't. That's, it, that's, that's a stupid. Time. So here, here's here's a good point. What it comes down to, you you're criticizing his video but not giving any you know real reasons for it. You're saying uh, this was better, oh, but yeah, you're not, you're not, you're not writing. Was, you're not saying why it's video. better. You're not saying that, why. That's it's not a real reason. Well, right? well like, I've been wanting. So, but you guys are not allowing me to. Go ahead, go like, ahead, uh, coach. But, go ahead. Uh, or you know, and and Ethan Please. and uh, Medicare and, and you know. Okay. No, go ahead. The the, the Medicare video, right? I mean, how long was that thing? It was uh, what fifty minutes. minutes. Yeah. And Thanks. yeah, and roughly, um, I, if I had to guess offhand, between thirty and forty minutes was just uh, you know, replaying what was on the stream on on um, on uh, the Ralph tour. Right. Yeah, a large, a large portion marginal, of that. Yeah. I'd say like was, maybe ten marginal, or eleven minutes marginal. was candid. You know, yeah. uh, maybe five minutes yeah. was the uh, Zoe Quinn stuff. Uh, talked a little bit yeah. about a few other things it's as beginning. well. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and and so it it was just recycle stuff. Okay, and see, it was recycled stuff, and it, it was just marginal commentary, and it wasn't as polished as say your your series on that guy with the glasses, for instance. I'll, I'll just positive. say this, I'll, and I'll let Jim respond. But 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 you're assuming that everybody yeah, knows. Right. No, but wait, oh, hold on, it's my show, coach, 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 say... coach, coach, okay, coach, coach. I want to get my thought, and I'll let you speak sure. perfectly as much as you want. Uh, the only thing is, you're assuming that everybody knows about the stream. So Jim has a huge channel. A lot of people didn't know what had happened you know what i mean it's kind of a blow by blow for people who didn't see it so there, there's a value in that in and of itself so you say it's recycled content well a lot of people didn't know about it, you know what i mean so anyway go ahead get, finish your thought look i take the medium seriously as a form okay <laughs> yeah and you you laugh and whoever i don't know who's uh guffawing but fine you can laugh at it however much how much, much you want but these videos are a, an emergent art form and some of them are really good and jim has made some of those videos that are really just transcend the medium and become something really good his latest efforts i feel have been weak what do you want me to say there are video uh, makers like uh amy yamato uh like uh, casey neistat whom i despise and yet i have to recognize that in terms of the form he's really pushing uh the art form i mean he's really made something new and so like, well, what i, I want I'm you to say is that kilroy is going to get major corporate sponsorship Massive, oh. absolutely massive, yeah. and you know what happened? You weren't there, you but if you had to talk with all these people, porn, okay? I'm not yeah. and if you approached the skeptics oh. and they went to Harvard skeptic, hey, and, and he said, Look, let, let's, have a, let, let's have a discussion. You shut the fuck up, 
Uh, well, why should I fuck with the shut the fuck up okay. old man? Okay. You uh, know, you, you, you come in here with your big balls, you know, as Jeff said, you try to suck up his cock a little bit. Mwah, mwah, mwah. And, and then you, you start to be all rattled when people challenge you on your shit. Fuck off. Mm -hmm. Okay. So as I was saying, I take the art form seriously. You said and this like 10 times. Like, are you an old man and, and you have to repeat the same wait, shit wait, over wait, and over? Wait, 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 wait. Yeah, I am. Let, 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 let him respond. Let him, let him respond. Yeah, let him go. Yeah. You know, you know and if, if my criticism of your videos, Jim, gets you that upset, then you too take it seriously. And you recognize that I'm right. Okay, well, I, I, I guess I would respond by saying uh, not only my suitless, but I'm artless now. Um, <laughs> YouTube is a place for fucking videos. Of course, some are going to do better than others. But I, I think it just comes off as a little bit disingenuous, and it came off like a snipe because you named the Monday Matt one, and then you bitched about Reset Era, but nothing about any of the videos in between. And then when I asked, what did you think of those? I've got to pull your page up to look. So I don't, I don't know, man. It just it comes across as a little okay. bit hollow to me. It doesn't ring as true as you might want to present it as but being. Then why are you so upset? Why are you well, bringing this shit it, out? If well, I could, if I could mention something real quick. Five times, old man. If I could but, mention but something up, real, yeah. quick, real quick. Uh, you know, I don't know if Jim is upset or not, but I will say this. As a as a YouTuber, if anybody says any of my videos suck, I get a little, I get a little fucking defensive. I mean... You know, I think everybody. No, I didn't say that they suck. I thought that I they. Think, were I think everybody loves them. their videos and they love their content and they put pride in their content. And if someone shits on it, then yeah, you're going to get a little defensive, I'm sure. I, I don't yeah. think you watched Jim's videos. I think you saw some people on Twitter saying that the reset era video was bad. And because of that, you thought it's a smart thing to do to take a snipe at Jim. Because this is always what you do, coach. You take snipe okay, at bigger I'm YouTubers. To, you you then wait for the bigger... You, no, shut the fuck up, because you talked up till now. Okay, you wait for the bigger YouTubers to give you attention, because that's all of your YouTube career. Start. You're just an so old attention whore that, that comes on other streams trying, trying to promote this channel desperately, trying to seek into every little drama that you possibly can in order to, to try and get more subscribers to your channel. So you see that Jim is a lot bigger than you now, and you think, you know what, I'm going to start some drama with him and say something clever and then fuck off. This is your style since you came on YouTube, and, and unfortunately, I don't think you're ever going to drop it. Well, if, if, I, can, if I can say one thing here, um, how, uh, how does it feel, V? Re regarding what? Well, you just told us that Sargon didn't like getting dogpiled with Andrew Anglin. But like everybody's jumping into this conversation between me and Coach, so how does it yeah, feel to be on the other the, on the other yeah, side I'll of that? that one. Is difference, though. I was here since the beginning. Coach wanted to come, knowing who the people on the stream are. Like if he wanted to have a conversation with you, like a big man, he should have asked on Twitter, and I'm pretty sure you'd have gone on his channel, or or he would gone on yours, and you would have had the one v one. Coach knew what he was getting himself into, and, and not to mention I was nice to him. Like before he came on, I actually said that I think he's he's doing well as a YouTuber. And ever since he comes on, he gives me disrespect. I'm not going to take this disrespect from him. Like, if he wants to banter, that's fine. I'm going to banter back. But I remember when he wouldn't come on the kill stream every time I was there. Like, the, the moment he would see me, it was like a spooky ghost. He was more afraid of me than fucking ghastly. And, and now he's, he's coming here giving some big-ass attitude. That's fine. You know, I can take it, but I dish it back. Okay. <laughs> uh, all I got to say is, the Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. I'm say it's a gold bond. It's, 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 I, I got people. I got people coming out of the fucking woodwork. I got talking this is just, uh, uh, coming at me on Twitter. I got coach popping in on YouTube. I, I'm it's just a all little comers. taste, right? Taking oh my comers. god! It's the warm up bout before the. This fight. is the pre-show. Just, just think about this and what it's going to be on Sunday, and it's just oh my god. Jim, I think for your stream Sunday, you're going to need a boosted board and a drone. <laughs> well, it's art game, you know. <laughs> I think you're going to need that. Step it up, you know, get like Casey Neistat and, you know, maybe coach will approve it. Well, I, I would disagree, coach. Um, obviously, I'm going to disagree. I'm biased. Is there some of my video shit? Probably. You you compared it to the that guy with the glasses videos. I thought those turned out fucking awful, to be honest with you. So I, I don't know if I'd hold that up as like a, a fantastic example of what uh, good content is. As far as like the Monday Matt one is, I'm, I'm working on a schedule. I mean, I got out of the fucking hospital. I get Matt to go on stream and do this, and then I got like three or four days to work with it. I've watched Toad's video. I thought it was funny as shit. I'm not denying that it's a good video. It was a good video. 
Like, I don't, so don't misinterpret that as me saying he didn't put out a good video. He did. It was funny as shit. Uh, was the reset terrible one? Was that uh, subpar? I, maybe you're right. I don't know. But a lot of the time with the shit that I do, it, it's, it's setting the table, okay? Uh, when I do like a Deviants video, uh, that led into a Hugbox video. And the way that works is you set the table. You pick a community or you pick a person and you, you create the content about them and then you get the reaction. That's why I'd get diaper furs threatening to show up at my house and shoot me with a fucking shotgun. Like it just feeds into itself. So when I did the whodunit stream, I got three suspects. I've got Mundane Matt, I've got Kraut, and I've got Reset Era as the three suspects that I thought were responsible. Well, I've already addressed Kraut and I've already addressed Matt. So I needed to put something out in regards to Reset Era. And that's kind of what that video was. I wanted to see what kind of a response am I going to get from this community? Uh, you know, and I planned on following it up with the stream, but then other crazy shit happened and that got postponed because of all the skeptic stuff. So, I mean, I use my channel for different purposes. I'm not saying you can't criticize. I'm not saying they're all great videos. They're not. They're fucking YouTube videos. I mean, I, I disagree with you that they're art. I would never call YouTube videos art. Uh, but, you know, I, I think it's an unfair judgment to say that the quality's gone downhill based on two videos that are spaced out with other videos in between them. Did, did Coach did, still left? Did, did I give him a heart attack to the old man? Did, did I kill him? I don't want him on my con. Please tell me he's okay. Uh, I don't know. Is he is he still in here? Was he on Hangouts or was he on Discord? Hey, he was on Discord. Hey, he was here. But I don't know where he went. Uh, oh God, what have I done? Well, I, I gave a reasonable response and he's not even fucking in here. <laughs> um, Coach is gone. I just looked on this. Okay, well, agree to disagree. I, I, all I know is that I'm in game mode. All right, this Sunday, it's going to be the big game. And, you know, all this warm-up practice is good. It keeps me on my toes. Gets me, <laughs> gets me in the proper mindset. A little bit of Tonka, a little bit of CRP. I'm sure I've got shit rat pissing on toilet seats. going to be running his mouth for the next couple of days. I love it. When I look at the people on the other side of where I'm standing and I see these goofy fuckers, I know that uh, I'm doing something right. So I'm, I'm hyped. I'm uh, I'm on top of the world right now. Uh, what time is it again on Sunday, Jim? Whenever he's streaming. Is <laughs> <laughs> what I'm fucking streaming. I think it was. Well, yeah, I, 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 it, was, was it was. It was five thirty. Yeah, yes, five thirty. Yeah, five thirty. I'm to leave. Thanks for having me. Just just in case Coach Red Pill wants to come out to tell me about the art forms. You know, I can't be here. I I seem to spook him. So I, I, I'm going to take my leave now. Uh, it was a pleasure, guys. Oh, remember, V. Tune in this Sunday and super chat me. I, I I definitely will. I definitely CRP will. Fear, CRP fears the gypsy. Confirmed. Ah, uh, well. Um, all right. Thank you, V. Appreciate it. Jim, final thoughts? I guess I you pretty I, much I just know. gave them. Is, is there something in the water this week? Like I don't know, man. But <laughs> I, I just had to say thank you to Sargon. Thank you to, you know, just all this drama. It's great. We set a viewership record. Of uh well I guess I guess this is the actual record as of right now over forty six hundred for the kill stream so this hey, is the I, most hey I'm kill, I'm looking forward stream. to it like I said yeah. as far as coach goes I disagree with him I'm not taking cheap shots at the guy I you know he made sixty thousand subs he's tapped into a fucking uh, you've been pretty huge, pro huge, coach huge, actually with a lot of stuff market. you said right I, I, mean, I just yeah I just disagree I, I think he's being a bit disingenuous but yeah, whatever you 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 live uh I just I'll be known as artless Jim for now on uh, I can live with that. Heartless, suitless gym. <laughs> but I mean, you have kind of, I mean, you kind of promoted Coach. I mean, not, you know, I don't know if promote is the right word, but you've been very complimentary towards him. So um, I don't know. We'll see. I, I feel like he picked up a lot of critiques that maybe he didn't have a full handle on exactly why he was saying what he was saying. This and, is uh, what I think is what happened. Yeah. I think yeah. somebody was talking to Coach Red Pool, Pool uh, Pell, or whatever his name is, and they were talking shit. Uh, about Jim's videos, and I feel like he took that conversation without watching the videos, and then he went and, and said something real quick. Because that happens a lot. Because yeah, it, it happens. It, it didn't seem like he really knew every little detail of the videos that he was critiquing and stuff. It just seems like you know this was secondhand shit that he was spewing on your stream. Yeah, it happens. I mean, I, I just feel like his critique wasn't really that deep. But uh, well, you know what? I'll, I'll live with the disappointment of. Yeah. Uh, of the Ballad of Mad not being in the Louvre. You know, what can I fucking say? <laughs> <laughs>
Well, he I kept so. he, he kept doing the why you get mad? Why you get mad without explaining like what his what his critique was? And it was like, wow, what the fuck is this? Like, is this? I felt manufactured. It felt fake. I was let down. The Ballad of Money Matt will not be registered by the Library of Congress. Yeah, you know, to, I probably should have shut up and just let V and him go at it because they seemed to really they, they had some, some fucking animosity, animosity there, was yeah. between those two. I didn't realize, but, but I, I, I felt bad. Hard. I felt yeah, I felt bad for Coach. I mean, you, you know, he's got uh, a bunch of people all talking at once, so I was like, uh. especially after V brought up dogpiling. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Jim, 5.30 p.m. Eastern on Sunday. Yeah, thank you very much. Sorry for jumping back in, but, uh, you know, he wanted uh, the backstory, so I wanted to throw that out there as uh, best I could. But yeah, How dare you? How dare you jump back in? Yeah, I was, I was completely <laughs> upset by that, but no. All thank right. you, well, hey, good good show. Uh, nice talking to you guys. Uh, everybody have <laughs> a good uh, uh, good night. Yeah, you too. Can, can we? Yeah, yeah man. I'm going to take again. off. Reasonable.